Yeah, so here's Van Jones and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is going to uh, argue that college athletes should be compensated for their hard work. I'm not sure where I stand on this one, so I'm kind of interested to hear what they have to say. So many people in America see college sports as an extension, a, a very nostalgic extension of high school sports, right. uh, where um, the quarterback and a cheerleader have a romance and they celebrate their, their victory over the, <laughs> the, the, ride of, the rivals at, at a malt shop. It's not that. It's a $6 billion a year industry. Last year, uh, CBS and TBS split up $1 billion just off of March Madness. There's so much money being made, and the people who are creating this, this wealth do not get to participate, but, but and they don't get to graduate, and that's, that's, that's a big issue. We have to... Yeah. What does he mean they don't get to graduate? Well, the majority of college athletes that are good enough to right, they end generate up getting, money... Yeah, they end up getting drafted into the... Right. Yeah, and from a basketball standpoint, you know, they don't even have to play in college. Some of them do usually at least for a year. Some people like LeBron James, they go straight from high school to the NBA. Right. College football players, they have to put in a few years uh, playing college football, but they don't have to graduate. Usually if they're good enough, they go straight to the NFL after a few years of playing. I mean, I got to say that I haven't heard what I'm, I'm sure that someone else in the panel is going to take a counter argument is going to make a counter argument. But I, I would say that based on what he just said, it seems to me like it would be pretty fair to compensate the players who are, you know, generating this huge amount of revenue yearly. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could argue, I guess that probably someone is going to argue like, well, they get a free education out of it or something like that. But um, that seems like pretty shoddy compensation, especially when, you know, I mean, like if you're if you're good enough to be a professional athlete, you're not going to need that education. And if you're not good enough to be a professional athlete, then, you know, it definitely helps if you get a piece of the pie while you while you're still good enough. Yeah, because in, in as a college athlete, you have to make grade. You're, you're going to school full-time, and then when you're not going to school, usually you're also practicing. Mm -hmm. um, and they practice year-round. It's, it's not just, you know, they're practicing during the season. They're practicing before and after the season, shortly after the season ends. And, you know, they don't have the time to go work at McDonald's or move furniture. You know, they, they have to sleep, too. And also, I mean, if you're... The I mean, like, if you're an athlete and people are coming are paying to come see an athletic event, then you are the primary generator of that money. Yeah, just like he mentioned, TBS and other networks are making tons of money. The university are making tons of money. Yeah, and the athletes, the the thing that is that is actually generating this revenue, are totally cut out of it just because of you know what's basically a, a scam system that's designed. To say, oh well, you know, you should be happy that you're even able to play for us. Not basically. only, not only do they not get paid, but if they accept anything that would be considered any type of compensation, as a such as a gift or like an endorsement. Yeah, That's I mean, it's, so it's basically this weird double standard where your university can profit off you, private companies can profit off you, but you can't profit off you. I mean, that's just bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, and what what this individual who played for Ohio State ended up doing was, you know, I'm not going to sit the bench and get paid nothing. I'm just going to go to the NFL now and get paid to at least sit the bench. So he ended up entering the supplemental draft that year. Um, his name is Terrell Pryor, and now he plays he plays for uh, the Oakland Raiders. He, he's not <laughs> their he's not their starter, but he gets paid now to sit the bench where he would have. You know, still had to go to school and gotten paid nothing to sit the bench. So, I mean, in a lot of in a lot of ways, that means that these uh, college sports organizations are shooting themselves in the foot because they're losing talent because they refuse to compensate the talent they already have. Yeah, and I'm not sure who this woman is, but I, I'm guessing she's going to argue the other side. Yeah, just looking at her, you can kind of <laughs> you kind of get that sense, don't you? Maybe we'll be wrong. I don't know. Keep, a, I think, a, a good perspective on this. Uh, obviously, most, we're talking here about football and men's basketball. But if we're going to start paying the football players, 
we have to pay the field hockey players. And we have to pay the men no, and the women not, swimmers. No, and we have you, to pay you don't. No, Interesting you don't. argument. Yeah, well, no one buys tickets right. to watch the field hockey the, players. Yeah, I mean, the, the argument here is that this is generating revenue. Therefore, these players should be entitled to revenue. No one's paying to f go see field hockey. Field hockey is not making, you know, TBS. No one, no one's turning on the TV to see how the field hockey game went. And even maybe on ESPN 12. Even in that same respect, you know, um, no one's even with college baseball. No one watches college baseball. They don't televise. They don't televise it. Uh, they college hockey. You know, for, so I, I, we're talking about the sports that are generating millions of dollars. Right, billions. Yeah, yeah. So and it, they they sell the jerseys at stores. You know, you can go to a store and and buy the jersey. I, I you know, I don't, I don't think they put the name on it though. I think that's the big difference. We'll see. Yeah. I so. mean, I don't know. We'd have to check on that. Yeah. The lacrosse players, softball players, Why? baseball players, because there's something known as Title IX, Newt, signed by Richard Nixon, June 23rd, 1972, that mandates proportional, equal treatment under the law, no discrimination, uh, when you're giving out federal funds for men and women. What? This is not about federal sport funds, discrimination <laughs> because you don't play a popular enough sport. That's I don't I don't see the argument here. It's not I don't see how it's federal funds. I mean, we're not just talking. We're talking about money generated by these games. We're not talking about money that's generated through tax dollars. So, I mean, unless I'm, you know, ex I, unless I'm misunderstanding something here, I don't see the point. Whether it be med schools, law schools, or sports. And there is no doubt in my mind that the moment, if we started to just pay football players and men's basketball players, you would have 12 lawsuits uh, the first day and you'd have 12 the next day. And every school would be sued because of this wonderful law, which I think the nation has embraced. The most important law, I think, in our country the last 41 years, Title IX, uh, from your own party, Richard Nixon. And I think that's something that we have to keep in mind. So it sounds real simple. Kareem, the, the look on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's face is like he can't even believe the bull that he's hearing. <laughs> he, he looks like he wants to slap him. It, he, um, he, was, he was amazing as a pro basketball player, but in college, he's one of the greatest of all time. So he knows what he's talking about. And uh, it's just... I would not be surprised, though, if this woman is simply playing devil's advocate because the show is crossfire. You can't just have everyone on there agreeing. No, yeah, there has to be a counter argument. That's the whole point of the show. Right. So, so, I mean, who knows how much weight this woman is actually putting in these arguments. I don't even know her name, but whatever. Well, but when you start to break it down, these universities don't want to do this because of the legal possibilities. Does the, she the look like the mom from Home Improvement, or am I... Just you know what someone said. That. Someone said she's the ugly version of Skyler, which I think they mean the mom from Breaking Bad, which I don't really see. The, I the, could maybe see it if she was blonde. Yeah, the actress Anna Gunn. I don't even think she's that ugly, but whatever. No, no. Some people, I guess, just have really high standards of beauty. Like, you know, unless you're anything, if you're anything less than like a ten, then you're like a two. Yeah. <laughs> That is all right. The the guys on the water polo te team or uh, some of the other teams, the swimming team, the diamond team, they don't generate any revenue. Um, if if you look at the revenue, the people. That I would even go as far to say as they they operate on a loss. Those teams because right. they they have to pay for equipment, and the coach gets paid. That's a that's another thing we can discuss is the the coaches of these teams. Even even the lowest of the low, because there's a, there's what's known as Division One A. You know, the even the lowest of the low coaches in Division One A make six figures. Wow! So it, the best ones are are making millions upon millions of dollars. So it, the coaches are getting paid, but the players aren't. So yeah, someone commented that it's TJ as a woman. It's TJ as a woman. Yeah. I don't see that at all. She has a very sharp-looking nose, first of all. Someone also and a very angular face. I have an oval-shaped face and a round nose. Someone also said that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is also known as one of the greatest in the NBA, and I do want to say that I I won't argue that at all. But in college, he was unstoppable as a college player. 
You know, we, there are some athletes in college, they, they shine more than others, and then when they get to the big leagues, there's more competition. And, yes, he was still one of the greatest in the NBA as well, obviously. And he was also in uh, the movie Airplane, if anyone's ever he, seen he's, that. He's, <laughs> a, he's a good enough basketball player that even I, as someone who could not give less of a fuck about basketball, even I recognize his name. Yeah, and well, I could I, like if you sat me down, I, I would have trouble naming like twenty basketball players. Yeah, in in college he went by his birth name, and when he went to the NBA, he uh, switched to his Islamic name, which is his kind of like Muhammad Ali. You know, he switched to an Islamic name. Yeah, previously he was Cassius Clay. Yeah, which is a cooler name. Actually, I, I right now I can't even remember Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's birth name. So Bob Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> That come to sit in the stands. Something when, when less cool than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Very few. They don't pay a lot of dollars. As most of you probably know, TJ uh, made a video recently about his Patreon account, mm -hmm. where he's asking his viewers to help him out if they feel uh, inclined to do so. Obviously, there's no eBay. Yeah. So this is Undertaker freak, and then a bunch of random numbers. Yes. Responding to that. Yes. It's called The Amazing Atheist E-Bags Again and Again and I'm guessing that it... All right. Yeah, got it. Um, a ton I of like you have been the, telling I me like about the Beavis, it. though. Yeah. And, uh, Van Halen sucks, If though. you notice also something up on uh, a George Carlin... What is that? Like a... I don't even know what it it's is. It's like a, a sticker, I guess. Yeah, on Beavis's head. But uh, TJ uh, will comment on that later. <clears throat> Pretty soon, pretty shortly, actually. Yeah. If it'll play. Yes. That part. He's so stupid, he crashed it. Amazing Atheist's new uh, e-begging scheme. E-begging scheme. It's the scheme. same thing that he tried last year in August. So Patreon basically Patreon. were fans. Yeah. He, hold on. He didn't try. He didn't try it last year. He's been done. He's done it yeah, the I've time. been doing it the entire time, but. I want, what I want to know is why specifically is my Patreon the problem? Like, why go at why if if you're against the concept of Patreon, why not go after any of the other ten thousand users of the site? That would be my first question. Like, why why single me out is the problem? And, and shouldn't he attack the user base too by saying like they're stupid? I guess I don't know. I don't. Uh, I I haven't watched the whole video yet, so maybe he will say that. Nor have I. Yeah. Pledge money for you to make videos. Basically, they're paying you to do stuff, to do videos. Something he considers hard work. You know, sitting in front of a camera, talking into a microphone. Really, really hard work. That okay. Dessert. So let's discuss that for a second. Talking into a microphone doing performance like you realize that it's about the actual performance not about the the actual physical act of what you're doing like i would think that someone with a george carlin sticker would be able to recognize that sometimes one person talking into a microphone can be a very significant act indeed no you're it's because it's you it, it doesn't care. and I, I would like to point out that george carlin was paid handsomely to talk into a microphone and entertain people which is exactly the same thing i do i do it on in front of an internet yeah. audience instead of a live audience but that difference is inconsequential yeah why isn't he bashing like all those comedians online to do the same thing because <clears throat> he has for me yeah. uh rightful pay i suppose that's one of the angles that he's uh given with this entire thing but uh you know, you're probably expecting me to say that, oh, he's greedy, he's just e-begging again because he's avaricious, yada, yada, yada. I actually have something different here. Uh, something that I noticed, something that he said in the new Patreon video that oh, he made yesterday you, that kind of made me scratch my head and go, huh? Huh? Now, I bet there's a lot of things like that in the world, actually. When you put that Beavis poster behind you, was that like your intellectual role model? Like, <laughs> one day I might be this smart. <laughs> If he's lucky. I don't know why I did him as a country bumpkin, but... Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> In August, he did the same thing. He uploaded a video about this Patreon thing where you pledge money and he makes videos. He said you don't have to. This is something that's completely optional. My content will remain free, but... YouTube is my only source of revenue. 
I do not have an outside job. I do not have a contingency plan if all of this just goes all around me, which it could one day, which is why it's a very stupid idea to make YouTube your number one source of income. Okay, well, hold on. Any Anyone's job could be threatened by a changing circumstance. Yeah, that's never happened before. Like, they, they don't ship jobs overseas. And there's, like, those things never happen. You're never, no, no, jobs are never outsourced. Nothing like that. And hey, people might, people might even stop coming to the subway where you work, Undertaker Freak. <laughs> By the way, um, your sandwich artist days might be limited. It might your, be over. Your days as a, a sandwich artist might soon be coming to a close. You never know. You should have a backup career. I guess that's why you have that application for you Burger should... King already filled out, <laughs> tucked under your pillow. I think he has like five jobs. That must be the explanation. He has like five jobs. He just runs around from each job to make sure he always has you know some source of revenue and income. And also, like he's basically saying that I should take, I should ignore the fact that I have an audience of 530 or 40,000 people. And yes. I have, I average over 100,000 views a video. He's saying I should just ignore those people and make some secondary job where I'd make far less money, my first priority. Yeah, and it's funny because he's wearing a Van Halen t-shirt, and if Van Halen would have focused on having real jobs... Like, hey, this band thing might not work out for you guys, you yeah. know? Yeah, go become an accountant. <laughs> he's also wearing a Detroit Red Wings hat if those players would have been not, like, I mean, do hey... You not, do you not think people went to Mike Judge, the creator of Beavis and Butthead, and said, you know, you need to f***ing invest your time in a real job instead of this animation They go to. You don't think they went to George Carlin and said, hey... You're never going to make it as a fucking comedian. You need to get a real job. I'm sure his argument would be that you're not on the same level as everything. That that's, well, that's, I'm not even, that's totally subjective I'm not even, anyway. That's, yeah. yeah, that is subjective, but I'm not even claiming to be on the same level of any of those people. In my opinion, I'm probably not. But, I mean, I'm still doing the same basic thing. Right. You know? I'm entertaining people. Obviously, people are entertained. Well, but I mean, the argument what you're saying is it can, you can be applied to a greater context. Like you'd say, anyone who's in a band, it's like, oh, you think you think you can be, a, you know, a musician? That's a ridiculous job. You're not even making any money right now. You need to go find a real job. Yeah. I mean, you can extrapolate that to any, almost any profession. Yeah. Um. Even even professional sports. You know, people will say you need a real job to fall back on in case you get injured, or something like that. He's got a Detroit Red Wings hat. You know. Hockey's a, a sport people can get injured in. I mean, like, right, I mean, just just looking at him now, we can see evidence that he's been a patron of other artists and creators. Yes. So why, why when I do it, is it all of a sudden, like, oh, my God, what the f*** are you doing? Yeah, and he, he, he says it like it's a scheme, like you're just trying to defraud people, like, oh, I'm, I'm pulling the wool over their eyes, okay, like... There's so many people on YouTube doing this. There's so many people in various like artistic pursuits. Like there's the guy, what is that? Like Saturday morning breakfast cartoon, who's getting eight thousand dollars a month from the people who just want to see his comics on, early. on top of the advertisements on his site. Yeah, on top of the advertisements on his site. Where, where's your video against him? Yeah, he, all, all he does is draw. Anyone could do that. How many artists out there? Do you really think some guy sitting there drawing is a job? Come on. Yeah, he should have known better than to. Concentrate on that drawing. He should have got a real job. Yep. Exactly. Now, later. The video he uploaded yesterday, he said that YouTube revenue is inconsistent, cyclical, variable, not always the same. One month, you're raking in the money, and the next month, you're looking at your earning statement and going, well, what the f*** happened here? Which is one of the reasons he's doing this Patreon thing. When the amazing if atheist Patreon looks at the opening statement the and he sees that things are not as good as they used to be, that's when he takes to e-begging. That's when he takes to whoring himself out with, with these advertisements for, for iced tea and Star Wars and crap like that. <laughs> what? Did you do an iced tea advertisement? I did. You did? I did one for brisk iced tea. Awesome. <laughs> No, he's like, <laughs> you know, it's like this pattern. Whenever the amazing atheist is low on money, he f seeks new revenue streams. How bizarre! Yeah. What? what a f***ing weirdo! No shit, Sherlock. You cracked the case, Holmes. I think uh, he probably just wants you to fall in line with, uh, you know, just getting, you know, an, a nine-to-five job, like... Like him, so, yeah, yeah, maybe like the, he does. Like I don't, the, I don't like pretend to know anything about him. I don't pretend to either, but he's telling me to get a real job, so he'd better have one if it's his advice to me. Yeah, he probably does. I mean, you know, and he, if he's, is, is this just basically like, and if I, if I'm miserable, 
other people must be miserable because my channel is not popular enough for me to make money to live on? I don't know. I mean, does it boil down to jealousy? Does he look at me and, and see me as such an idiot that it's like, that's what I, I should have that audience with that level? Yeah, here's a good question. If he had 500,000 subscribers and was making money on YouTube or he didn't have to like work at Subway or do whatever he does... So <laughs> Someone in the chat room said, wait a minute, TJ tried Waffle House first. <laughs> it was IHOP, but thanks, yeah. Yeah. Real jobs don't work for me that well, but, you know, whatever. But, 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 but even, say, even saying that, like, what if their situation was reversed? You had 35,000 subs and he had 500,000, like... Right. If I only had as many subs as him, I would have a real job because it would be a necessity. But if he had 530,000 subs and he was getting 100,000 views a video... And he was able to, to just churn that out and get those numbers consistently. Do you mean to tell me that he would be like, I'm still going to work my minimum wage job at this fast food place nonetheless? I don't fucking think so. That's when he starts doing the Patreon thing, asking the fans Patreon, to pledge money so he can make videos. And for what? Production costs, of course. Yeah, the, the, the camera, and the, the microphone, and, and whatever other stupid convoluted reason he throws out there. What? Like, not productive, How remember? How is that not a convoluted productive. reason? Now he's Cam gonna bring up not productive. Cam well, but let's, let's, let's address the other point first. I mean, cameras... I, ha I mean, I ha I'm currently renting a camera because I'm not able to afford to just outright buy the camera that I need. So I'm paying for my camera monthly. I'm paying for most of my lenses monthly from uh, borrowlenses.com and actually buying like these lenses are like two or three thousand dollars a piece sometimes or more camera bodies are expensive no editing hd video constantly is a fucking major drain no. on tj my computer. you lazy tj yes. you're just lazy and you want a handout that's all it is please give me my handout by the way my patreon is uh <laughs> hold on hold on let me let me let me put you on all right, here you go. It's now a, talk to the camera. Patreon.com forward slash the amazing atheist. If you want to contribute to my horrible e begging behavior by supporting what I do, <laughs> then you can contribute there. There's lots of different reward levels for different people. Uh, anyway, we're going to go back to responding to Undertaker Freak. If 17,000 some odd dollars people pledged for not productive, did they get refunds? No. And why should they have gotten refunds? Because the website never happened. He's got his that's family even, by the balls. He's that's not even true. Me. The website was actually up for months. And it, the whole, here's the whole thing. Like, here's the problem. We went to, a, we went to, the, we were, when we were looking for companies initially to do the website, we got, rec what was the name of that company that recommended Matthew oh, to us? There was, a com there was a company called Tivix, which is a, they're like a web development company. And we went to them with the concept, and they basically said, we'd probably be too expensive for you, but we have this freelancer that's done a lot of stuff for us. His name is Matthew. I won't reveal his last name. Uh, we'll just say Matthew Johnson or something. <laughs> his name is Matthew Johnson. And we went, to Ma we went to Matthew Johnson. We gave him the concept. He developed for $6,000 he developed a site that was basically a piece of and we got in an altercation with him over how his site was and we found out that even though he told us initially that he was totally freelance and he was working for VMware we actually found out that he was work well we shouldn't have specifically mentioned the company but I guess whatever um, he's working for it's a huge company all right well he's working for VMware and he has a full-time job there. So he basically misconstrued his employment position to us, or at least he didn't inform us of a change in employment position, which yeah. is why, of course, he was paying no attention to our site whatsoever, a site that he'd already been paid for. So we had to go and find uh, other developers for the site. We actually went to um, the Participatory Cultural Foundation, which is, which is uh, associated with Miro which was the platform that we were using. It was a Java, um, what was it? It was not a JavaScript. Django. It was a Django-based platform. And this was a reputable company. Anyone can look up the companies we're talking about here. They charged us, um, how much was it every, three, every quarter? Uh, $3,750. $3,750 for this site that was supposed to be so comprehensive that was the hosting cost that wasn't the development well it was the hosting cost but i mean they they um 
you know, because we, ha we have all these videos playing and shit. And they're also developing the site itself. And we spent the entire budget of, this, of what we had paying for those hosting fees and, and paying for that development of that site. But the site that they delivered to us, despite supposedly being a reputable company with a good reputation, was buggy as And they wanted more money for future development. So here I am, develop I have a $17,000 site that basically doesn't fucking work. And it's not because I made, the, I made the wrong choices of associations. I mean, obviously I did, but everything seemed reputable and upfront. And these companies had good reputations. So at that point we decided, you know, it, we're not going to be able to make this site work unless we just continue to pump, pour money into it. We weren't about to do another fundraiser. So what we realized we had to do before we could ever return to the site and start that development again and try to create that vision, which was a very big, comprehensive vision, we would have to build up a YouTube channel first. And that YouTube channel has gone through several concepts itself. I think we finally found a concept that does get content up there consistently. And if anyone goes to the Not Productive channel, they'll see that content uploads have been consistent. And I hope that one day that channel gets large enough and we have enough people on it that we can revisit the site, that we can continue development and get that up. I think but, what I was trying to be like, oh, you need to refund them their money. It's like people want it. It was put towards the website. Like, refund what? Like, he, he, I, I guess in his mind, he assumes we just took the money and we just, like, went on a vacation and we're like, well, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Fun times. Yeah, and we got supposedly got rich off that site. It's like, hey, do you know how much $15,000? That's, that's not that much money. It's not really, like... Oh wow! You know, like okay, if we, to, you know, put it in perspective. We try that's to enough. Buy... That's enough money for Anita Sarkeesian to make a video a year from now. Yeah, but it's like put that in perspective. It's like that's like the cheapest new car you could possibly find. Like even if we had just been totally unscrupulous, that's what we did. Like we can go get like a fucking Hyundai Elantra. Whoa, we're rich. Manipulate his fan base better than anybody I've ever seen out out there for money. And the reason he manipulates his fan base like that is because ad revenue is not always consistent. How's it manipulation? But yeah, thing... I'd, like to, I'd like to ask if he's going to say that I manipulated people, where is the manipulation? Watch my Patreon pitches and tell me what part of what I said is dishonest. Like, you've, you've, you've mentioned things I've said derisively, but you haven't actually presented any cogent case for why they're wrong. It's like, oh, he said he, said he need money for equipment. <laughs> That's bull. I will now provide no evidence to, for my statements. I mean, you don't talk about the cost of running a channel of my size at all. You totally gloss over that. You totally gloss over the price of HD DSLR cameras. You totally gloss over the price of lenses. You totally gloss over the price of having a computer that can edit HD video day after day and, and you know all of the fucking independent storage drives I need to store it on. Well, not to mention that the biggest factor of any, of a, like any person has is their time. I mean, you have to spend hours upon hours doing these videos. You can't just put out some video and be like, people are going to watch this. It's not how it works. I mean, yeah, like the video I made yesterday, that recent dub, I mean, I was probably working on that for like, I don't know, pretty much from almost the moment I woke up until the moment it was time to go to sleep. That really kind of doesn't, no, it doesn't piss me off. It, it just makes me question the intelligence of these people. The people that make YouTube their number one source of income. Somebody gets really popular on YouTube and sees that they're making enough money monthly to live off of, to, to pay their rent, to pay their car tag, to, to, to pay whatever. They can live off the revenue. So, real job? I don't need a real job. Contingency plan? What? I don't need a contingency plan. I can live off of this. Well, we've already addressed that Thinking one. that it will Yeah. That's more of his ignorant bullshit. Is there is there any more? I mean, you haven't seen the whole video. How no. much how much more do we have here? I'm not sure. Not not too much more. It's about eight minutes long. Okay. Will be the same. And then when that revenue stream starts to go downhill due to factors like AdSense, due to factors like people not really liking their content much anymore, due to factors Wait, like oh them yes, that's, hold on, that's bull. That's total nonsense. Just look at my views consistently. Week after week. I like how he made the argument. He didn't say directly. Year after why. year. He just tried to imply that's what ha was happening. 
No, I mean, my views are as good as they've ever been, probably a little better. Yes, that's not true. I mean, like, I used to be, I mean, like, back in the go, Cody... Go to Social Blade if you don't believe us. Yeah, I mean, just look at the metrics, for fuck's sake. Look at the actual data, you stupid fuck. I mean, come on. You just make unfounded statements. I mean, and you try, you're basically the one trying to mislead your audience about what's actually going on. So I don't... I you, Bill Maher. You, <laughs> Bill Maher. Yeah. Your mother in a hole. Go f that is a douchebag, <coughs> and I hate him. He gets on his dumb show and that all the time. Okay. That was they panic. They're like, "Oh my god, wasn't what it thought you <laughs> wasn't what you thought it was, was it?" And you know what? I feel absolutely no sympathy for people that suddenly find themselves I unable we don't to want pay. Your I, don't, I don't want your sympathy. I want your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Undertaker, send TJ money right now. $100. Be, will, will you consider becoming my patron on Patreon, Undertaker Free? <laughs> By the way, you also have a standing invite to appear on this show at any time, and people can go and t t his channel, Undertaker Freak, some random numbers. Tell him he can come on the show as well. We'd be glad to have him their bills because they had no contingency plan mostly because they see they can make a lot of money the easy way yes a lot of people aren't gonna like that a lot of people aren't gonna like me saying that but when compared to jobs that they could get out in the real world that are more stable that have a consistent cash flow when compared to this stuff on with AdSense and YouTube they're taking there the is, easy way let me just say for the record that there is no job It's thunder. Yeah. There's no crazy. job that I am qualified for that in this world that I could go get right now that would even come close to the income I make on YouTube at this point. So why would I possibly do that? Don't you realize that YouTube is a time investment? Don't you realize that I have a audience of people that I actually give a shit? Uh, don't you, you, you've been doing it for realize, eight years. Don't you realize I've been doing this for eight years of my life and the first three years I did it for free? And that up until recently, I've never asked my audience to, to be a major part of that revenue. But you know what? I think that I'd rather work for my audience than I would continue to work for advertisers. I would rather accept money from people who watch my shit and enjoy it rather than having shill iced tea. So, I mean, I don't think that's unfair. I don't think if, if I was doing the exact same thing, but I was doing it in the real world, like if I was going to like comedy clubs or wherever, and I was doing these performances and people were enjoying it and they could pay for it optionally, I think you'd be saying, wow, that's like the greatest entertainer ever. He don't even make people pay. It's pretty interesting that he talks about you doing any type of advertising when the site that he posts his opinions on ex wouldn't exist if it weren't for the advertising revenue that they make. Yeah. It, it costs so much to run YouTube. I mean, this is like streaming video. And yeah, it's not like a public service yeah. or anything like that. Exactly. So people have to make content that people actually want to watch for the site to be successful. I mean, come on, look. <laughs> just Everyone just honestly ask themselves this question for a second. If Undertaker Freak made enough money on YouTube... To live, would he keep his regular job? Probably the not. The one and only correct answer is no. Yeah. Not a fucking snowball's chance in hell. <laughs> All right? Anyone with any intellectual honesty knows that. I mean, I, I'm looking at his room where he's, he's at right now, and I'm not seeing some posh, luxurious surroundings where he's got it made. No, I see a drum set and a bed. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> And they find that the easy way ain't so easy when they've gone from two thousand dollars a month all the way down to five hundred bucks a month because of whatever. I have no sympathy <coughs> for them whatsoever <coughs> because they failed to plan. No you one failed to plan. No one, you plan to no fail. one on this You didn't earth get that contingency wants your plan. You thought oh, a real a job about it. <coughs> I think he's afraid of you. <laughs> Hold on, TJ. I swear you told me before that you wanted this guy's sympathy. I was like, man, you know, Undertaker. If free only sympathy. I could have the. the in sympathy of Undertaker Freak. My life would be complete. It's kind of funny, you guys. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that he, that his favorite wrestler is the Undertaker, which, which is also yours. Yeah. Which is kind of ironic. I'm hoping he's referring to actual Undertakers. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think so.
I remember earlier, TJ, you were saying that you that you thought that probably his favorite wrestler was actually John Cena. Yeah, I, I was going to say that he should like change his name to Cena Freak. I'm not f- that. I can just sit here and play video games. Or I can just sit here and talk into a microphone and get paid easy while all these guys work. Sit here and play... Have you ever heard of PewDiePie before? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, like why aren't 17 million? If you're gonna go after people for playing video games, many? like go after one of the gaming channels. Why are you going after me? I mean, first of all, and by the way, f-ing uploading video games to YouTube to make money is a f-ing hard ass endeavor. I mean, first of all, those recording software f-ing suck, mm-hmm. they have problems out the yeah. it's hard to get the. F-ing, I mean, if you're doing things on like an emulator, it has or to something, be licensed, it's hard to the emulators or, 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 or you'll get a copyright flag immediately. Yeah, I mean, so you pretty much have to give one of the networks, like, 30%. I mean, because they're basically, like, the mafia of YouTube at this point. Like, you need to pay them protection <laughs> money. Um, whatever. Hard. Yeah. Oh, look at that. $200 this month? How am I going to pay my bills? You should have thought about it. So the amazing should have been smart like me. Stuff, I don't think it's because of greed. It's him saving his own That's what it is, people. It's him saving his and keeping his own float when those bills come in and he looks at his revenue let flow me, and it's not the let me just correct a misconception the money that i make just on adsense if i didn't do any book sales if i didn't do any patreon stuff like the money the revenue that i make just from my channel would be more than enough for me to continue to live off of i might have to take a decline in lifestyle or whatever but it would be enough so this theory that it's when I'm just desperate for money, like, oh my god, I can't live. It's kind of missing the whole point of Patreon. It's to expand what you're doing and be able to, like, you know, like, let's say have less ads or have whatever and invest more into, like, what you're doing so you can, like, just focus more, you know, like almost solely just on that. That's really what the point of Patreon is, is not to, re- like, basically replace all of your income. Because most of these people, other people on this site have already make you know, some money from what they do. They just want to be able to focus on that more. Right. Because just because you have enough money to live on doesn't mean you have enough money to make the proper investments exactly. for the future of whatever your artistic or, you know, entertainment-related endeavor is. And you know what? Like, what is your... I don't... I still don't understand... I, like, he, I don't understand the objection to people optionally paying for content that they enjoy. Yeah. Like, what is, like, that seems like the most fair system in the world. Like, hey, if you like my sh- consider contributing. How is that, like, some, that he, he treats it like it's a nefarious thing. I think you're the only one doing it, TJ. And I think you should be ashamed of yourself. You're scam artist. I'm so f- ashamed of myself. What was I thinking? The same he needs to e-beg. And a lot of his fans would probably have no problem with that as long as his content remains the same. Personally, I think his content is really not all that great. I've seen better. <laughs> I yeah. just, well, I mean, look so, who's talking. So, so, just so petty. It's like, that's a totally subjective. Uh, I've seen better. It's like, okay, it's But great. I mean, look at what, look at his content. I mean, he, he ain't nothing great. I mean, is he trying to say the quality of videos that you produce is the same as the quality is that he's producing? Because he's obviously just on TV webcam. Yes, well. Who knows? I've seen worse, but hey, that's just me. But there are plenty of fans out there who not only will look past that, but will open up their wallets for him. So long as you know, <clears throat> so long as you know, you Patreon. are padding the bottom line of a guy the amazing atheist. <laughs> who refuses to have a contingency plan in place. Anybody okay. else in that? Fair position? enough. Hey, guys, guess what? You, I don't have a contingency plan. I don't. I don't have a backup plan for if YouTube fails. Is that unwise? Quite possibly. Maybe it is. Maybe I should be uh, going to night law school to get my law degree so I could become a personal injury lawyer or some shit. But uh, I don't have that going on. I don't have the time. I don't have the inclination. So yeah, he, he, what he's saying is correct. I don't have a contingency plan. If that bothers you, then feel free not to contribute. Yeah. Feel free not to contribute just if you don't want to contribute. Like, if you're just like, I don't feel like giving him any money, that's fine. What I, all I've ever said is, if you enjoy my content and you want to help support the future growth of my channel, you want to help me continue to pay for my camera and my lenses and my lighting and my microphones and whatever equipment I'm eventually going to have to get to make my outdoor videos stop sounding like I'm shooting them in a 
fucking wind tunnel. <laughs> you know, um, if you don't, if you want to be a part of that, then that's totally cool. I can appreciate it very deeply. And I hope that people will contribute or at least consider it seriously. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, I guess I'm pretty much done. 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 fucking subscribers in three months. The Drunken Peasants, greatest podcast of all, all time. time. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Awesome. Shower us with your praise, chat room. And uh, some people in the chat room are saying that uh, <clears throat> this is the show that's going to have Brett Keen and G-Man and Nef mm. Nephilim Free and stuff on it. That is incorrect. That is Saturday's show. You're wrong, yes. sir. That this is coming Saturday Saturday's show. at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we will have uh, Brett Keen, G-Man, and Nephilim Free... <laughs> and and I, I think a couple other Christian people. Maybe. And, and we will have us and, and Paul's ego and possibly, but unlikely, Dusty. Yeah, we wanted to have Dusty on because Brett Keane's been making a lot of videos about Dusty lately. But yeah. Dusty's get laid every day <laughs> philosophy is uh, overridden his desire to Dusty make has decided before bros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and by the way, if you get a chance, check out Dusty's latest video where he owns a street preacher in Denver. It's a really good video. Maybe we could even play that during the course of this video. Would that be okay? I'm sure Dusty would not care. Okay. No, he's going to DMCA us. <laughs> Dusty's going to be like, Yeah, you know what? Y'all. I say <laughs> we'll, we'll do that after, uh, after what we're going to do first here. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying if there's time, we could maybe... We could maybe jump in that and offer some commentary on that. Yeah, one. yeah, because it it's pretty awesome, honestly. Now, we uh, so we, we we figured since you're, you guys are not getting your your fix of G Man tonight, G Man, we would like to uh, present you with with a little bit of G Man related content. Nevertheless, if you go to G Man's official channel for his um, ministry, <laughs> his ministry. <laughs> His ministry, preaching to the choir ministries. Yes. Yeah. What the f does that even mean? Is he just like admitting that he only preaches yeah, to like, people that agree with him? Because that's yes. what that means. Uh, no, he. Don't, I don't. I don't think he knows what it means. Um. <laughs> anyway, the main video on his channel is uh, a rap against atheists. Now, I am white and I am lame in every way possible, but I can rap better off the top of my head than G-Man can in this rap, and it's the most inept rap you've ever it's, heard. It's actually the greatest rap song of it all time. It is f***ing terrible. No, I, I, I love it. When Ben sent me the link to this video, he said, G-Man has a rap video on his page. He makes the insane clown posse sound like Mozart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, literally, the, the difference between G-Man and the worst of the worst of of any rap group you can imagine is is unbelievable i actually think g-man is an unparalleled rap talent he's like a diamond in the rough waiting to be discovered diamond he has no sense rough. of lyrical rhythm whatsoever <laughs> he's actually perfectly in, uh, perfectly in rhythm i'm sorry <laughs> i can't agree you guys are gonna listen to this and be blown away i am a long-haired 30 year old white man <laughs> i actually was convinced by all of g-man's arguments after listening to his rap oh so you scotty so you're joining the other side now is that yes it? i have to become a christian there you go brett we gotta play the rap okay all right everyone's play it we're gonna play it right now <laughs> here it is the world premiere it's amazing g-man g-man and the masters, masters of, of stupidity. stupidity here we go yeah all right everyone the Preaching worst the high hat atheist is about to go down listen to this fucking high hat it's so bad yeah atheist, atheist oh Atheism is about to be Hello, everybody. I'm not feeling kind of sour. I'm still owning these atheists. I'm preaching to the choir by making their arguments look foolish with God's word. While all these so called free thinkers feed you a bunch of turds. The scientific <laughs> theories made up in Darwin's head are all these atheists dream while they're lying in their bed. Uh, all the atheists are sitting. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> G-Man has destroyed atheism. <laughs> as they, they dream it in their beds. I think this proves there is no God because he would not have allowed this to happen. <laughs> Wait, G-Man, I cannot tolerate this terrible rap song in my honor. G-Man! 
Stop you... believing in me. <laughs> yes. Become an atheist, G-Man. Please. <laughs> All right. Here, here we go. With a face of stone, we Christians not to words who say, and that's atheist owned. He couldn't even find a sample of like someone scratching a record. He's like, ow, 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 this. And you know what? The sad part is that's the best part. Seriously. Ow, what the fuck? Yeah. So Christians are crazy for believing in God While Dawkins and Hawkins are doing Satan's job Redline and live life work for Beelzebub While Robin Dupree just wants it's, it's Beelzebub, by the way and Beelzebub, no, you're wrong It's Beelzebub now Stephen Hawking's a guy who cannot who has almost no motor functionality has accomplished more in like a day in his life than G-Man ever could <laughs> in a thousand lifetimes. Yes. I don't know. He accomplished this song, you know, <laughs> I think you, yeah, you forgot that part. You know, that's what really brought it together. Yeah. I think atheism has been destroyed by G-Man. Atheists are bad. They are dumb. I hope they get hit. Buy a truck. See that right there <laughs> is, is better. Is lyrical that's, rhythm. That's literally the worst I can do. It. I can't even. <laughs> I cannot even be a as bad as him if I try. Atheism. To have his son. Strong atheists say there's no such thing as God. Red lines a goopo just putting up a big facade. Red line don't cry. Just get used to it, kid. You're gonna keep getting owned by this evangelist. All atheists. That doesn't even rhyme. It doesn't even it doesn't even come close to rhyming. Kid and evangelist, not even close. Kid evangelist, no, 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 that rhymes perfectly. I mean, I, I, I know that not about. every rhyme has to be like a perfect exact no, no, phonetic it, thing. Yeah, but, yeah, there's there's soft rhymes too. Yeah, like near rhyme, soft rhyme, but that's not even a soft rhyme. Not that's even, just not even close. You might as well tr you might as well be rhyming like baseball bat with marmalade stack yeah. i mean it just doesn't i don't that that's even better that's actually closer i yeah. don't you can't even be this bad if you i know I, i'm literally trying to be as bad as him so that i can make fun of him but i keep ending up being better it's fucking <laughs> sick you can never defeat g-man tj he has a talent he has someone, a talent uh, for being ludicrously bad someone in the chat room said that john cena is a better rapper and i have to <laughs> Yeah, John Cena actually is a and better And you rapper. know how much I f***ing despise John Cena. But yes, John Cena is a better rapper. Stephen than Hawking is actually a better rapper. <laughs> With his computer voice. Yes. Jeez. Watch him feeling all alone. We Christians have to words to Satan. That's atheist owned. Put your hands in the air. Atheists say we have the burden of proof. I just say that's a bunch of number two. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of number two. Proof and two. We have the burden of proof. I just say that's a bunch of number two. Why don't atheists say we have the burden of proof? You know that ain't the truth. Yeah. That's How about that, you stupid? That was off the top of my head. You idiot. TJ, you're a racist. You're the amazing racist. Yo, racist TJ and a middle-aged man. G-Man <laughs> is so stupid <laughs> that I can't even believe he's a real person. Like, this has got to be... Troll. This is not even trolling. Like, at this point, it's like performance art. I no. applaud you, G-Man, for your amazing no. performance TJ, someone I... says G-Man and TJ should do a sex tape. I say that G-Man is a troll, and I... And I challenge him to prove me wrong. Yeah. Prove, prove me wrong that you're not a troll. Prove us wrong, G-Man. Prove me wrong that you're not a troll. Prove this negative for me, please. Prove it. Let's hear the rest of his, his brilliant song. So bionic dance, stop running from a fight. Matthew 419, he actually has it right. Until someone can prove that God is not uh, real. Uh, Atheists like Redline, tell me how torment feels. 
what? Atheists take what? this advice for the rest of your days. Read your Bible and do what it says. Atheist own. Oh yeah. Atheist own. Atheist own. What the f G man? Yeah. Why would you? Why would you not only make like I can understand making that and then listening to it and being like, oh, this sucks. I'm not putting this. This up. is the. This is. But the, not. This is what he puts up. Like when you land on his channel, this is his. This is this video that automatically plays. Like, yeah, best foot forward. This is the best I have to offer. I could even understand him like recording it and be like, yeah, man, this is awesome. But after listening to it back after you've recorded it. The audio, the audio doesn't even like sound good. Like, it's like there's so much like breaking. It's like, yeah, he he's using his, a shitty mic for his, one his thing. His voice is clipping severely. Yes, during the whole song, 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 song. Using that term yeah, very loosely. That's extremely. Like, we have to do. We have to get a song. sample for our show of him going ow 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 ow. ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That li that is the best part of the song. It is. Yeah. It's the most uh, tolerable part of the song. <laughs> it's like the only part of the song where you're not sitting there like totally cringing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, G-Man. That needs to be, he, he should actually be rapping to that sad trumpet. Trumpet. <laughs> trumpet. 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 Don't become like G-Man, TJ. G-Man. G-Man. Trying to worry about you, TJ. I don't yeah. know if it's a trumpet or a trombone or what. It might be coming G-Man Part 2. Staying on topic here, Brett, uh, we... But two. We were we were pretty drunk when we first said, hey, Brett Keen, we want you on the show. I, I You know. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> and then, apparently, you know, fans of ours, they went to Brett Keen's channel and they told him, hey, drunken peasants want, want you on the show. So we didn't even know about this. He made this video making all these demands, basically saying, you know, you need to do these things or else we won't even be on the show. And the funny thing is, is that we didn't meet any of these demands. <laughs> and he still came on. Yeah. There's a number not, of demands not, you're going to better meet, guys. Not, not only did he. You better meet my demands right now, Atheus. <laughs> not, but not only did he make these demands, it, he. he we didn't. It wasn't like we even came to him and said, "We ain't doing your demands, bitch." I mean, like we didn't even know they existed. He actually called us during that show. The amazing thing is, it's just before I even consider going yeah, on the it, show. There wasn't even really a, a an IM message. It was basically like, "We're calling you now with all the people that you don't know," kind of ambush style type thing, which we were fine with. You know, we did it. We talked to them for like an hour and 45 minutes. A, a mouse can't ambush a lion. Yeah. Let's just be honest here. <laughs> so here's, here's Brett Keen's video, because we find it pretty entertaining, all the demands he makes, and makes it pretty much sound like, well, I'll only come on if you do this. Yes. And this. Now we're going to watch that and <laughs> laugh. We're not going to watch the whole thing. Yeah. It's like really, like 11 minutes long. We are going to watch Damn. his intro, though, because it's pretty f***ing hilarious. It's the final Jesus. Jesus, everyone! There he is! I'm hopping that. It's like, oh yeah, I'm about to come. Oh, I just came. <laughs> Brett Keen Hollywood. Oh, fuck yeah, just, okay, yeah. First off, does Brett Keen live in Hollywood? He lives no, in he Missouri. Lives, yeah. Missouri. Why is it Brett Keen Hollywood? Brett Keen Hollywood. His production value baseball. sucks. Jack Girardi, 10 feet tall. And it's not even debatable. It's not even debatable that Brett Keen's quality sucks. Like, his quality is shit. His quality is the same as it was back in, like, 2006. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's not even, like, like, a point you could debate. It's like, your quality sucks. It's horrible. He uses, like, a shitty webcam from, like, 1998. Turn off the phone, TJ. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brett Keen from the YouTube channel Brett Keen Hollywood. When I woke up this morning, I discovered I had many comments from atheist YouTubers claiming many, that the amazing like atheist and his friend Ben would like me to come upon a live broadcast of the <laughs> amazing atheist. I am more than happy to come on to a live broadcast of the amazing atheist, but there are some things that I would like to see happen before 
I even consider. Right. Yeah. First of all, the room has to be problems. all white. The room has to be all white. And I, I want chilled water. Only red M and M's. <laughs> the water my... better be chilled to thirty five point three degrees Fahrenheit. I guess if it's we're... not. I'm not going to show up. I guess that's where the the Hollywood <laughs> thing comes from. I think you nailed it, Ben. That's, yeah. where, that's where it came from. <laughs> questions that I would like to ask, and I would like the questions to be answered on the amazing. Who is your daddy, and channel. what does he do? I'd also like to ambush you with uh, some audio okay, so bites. Who is your daddy, in and or, what does he do? In order for Brett Keen to appear on my show, which he did, so we obviously know that this all this list is just bullshit. Yeah, it's total bullshit. But in order for him to appear on my show, I have to answer his questions on the Amazing Atheist channel. When the Amazing Atheist channel has 540,000 subscribers and his channel has like Five. what? I don't know. <laughs> Five. Seven, seven people. Seven dudes sitting seven. around like, Jesus! Yeah, Brett Keen! And for those of you who don't know, uh, Brett Keen was one of the early atheist YouTubers. Brett Keen actually has the distinction of being the person that inspired me to do the Amazing Atheist channel. Yeah, and TJ freely admits that. So no, that yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't deny it or back away from it, because back in the day, he was on there making atheist videos, and he was actually, uh, when we were doing that, when we were both doing atheist channels, he was uh, pretty much in a dead heat with me in terms of subscribers. For a long time yeah and didn't he blame you for the downfall of his channel ultimately? yeah he actually back in the you know it's so hard to find TJ orchestrated my downfall but i mean he had like this several part series about how i uh basically engineered his entire downfall on youtube i mean now he's changed his tune it, it wasn't his it admits uh, some culpability yeah, it wasn't his gross plagiarism well i watched uh i watched his coming out christian video where he described and no no Ben he's not a Christian oh yeah he's a, a he's... follower of Jesus who believes in the divinity of Jesus who is not a Christian but remember G Man already explained to us that that's not what a Christian is that's not what a Christian is that's not what a Christian is let me out of your mind oh that makes sense I'm glad you reminded me of that <laughs> you know <laughs> just because you believe in the divinity of Christ and view him as your Lord and Savior and obey his edicts does not make you no Christian. So basically, Brett Keen was in some financial trouble at one point, and uh, he was at the end of his rope, and according to him, he was sitting on a park bench in the woods. In you the know, woods? In the woods. That's kind of Why strange. is there a park bench in, in the, the middle ghetto? of the woods? In the ghetto? I don't know. But he uh, was, he decided to pray after he was the guy on YouTube for so long that said, you know, prayer doesn't work, all this shit. Jesus send me uh, uh, like a I check. Jesus for, send me some money. I, I was at Jesus the send end me a check rope. for five thousand dollars and solve all my problems. On the park bench, and I decided it was time for me you, to pray. You know what it was? He was watching those evangelists on TV. Like, you know, we just need to build the new church. He's like, wait a minute. I could just make a living by saying I'm a Christian and just like telling people I need money for like you know like Christian activities, like missionary work. Well, and here's, shit. here's. I wonder how long it'll be before Brett Keen is laying his hands on the uh, the sick and infirm and healing them. <laughs> here's the funny thing about the story, though. Okay, so he's praying, he's saying, "God, give me a sign. I, uh, you know, get, help me, and I'll I'll believe in you and I'll convert and whatever." So, and then later on, he mentions that either before he prayed or shortly after. He had uploaded a video asking people for help because he really needed help financially. And that's okay. You can't, I mean, I won't even fault him for that because people get there, whatever, you know, I'm not even going to. Yeah, we don't, we don't fault him for his financial yeah. problems. That's just so, silly. So he, his reason for converting to Christianity was all of a sudden he started getting all these donations and 90% plus of the people who donated the money to him were Christian. And he believes that that was the sign that God gave him. But it's like he uploaded a video asking people to do this. So how the heck is that a sign from God? You asked for it. it. You think if you wouldn't have asked for it that all of a sudden these donations just would have came in somehow? God helps those who help themselves, Ben. I see. Benjamin. So that's, that is Brett Keen's reason for converting to Christianity. He got donations from Christians to his that's PayPal that's a, account. I wouldn't, you know, that's pretty funny he would admit that. Like, I saw the Christians would pay me more, and I just decided yeah. I'm a Christian. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, the video is still up. If, uh, if you look up, you know, if you do a search for, like, Brett Keen Christianity or something like that, you'll find it. it, it it's still out there. So, yeah, uh... We'll uh, we'll listen to a little more here of his. Uh, it's almost like a, a hostage negotiation checklist. 
that he gives us here. Let's hear it. He would have to actually make a video or find the time to make a video before the broadcast answering some of my questions. There are also some God-believer individuals out there that I would like to be able to participate in the discussion as well. The individuals are selected by me. These individuals would be G-Man, who is a Christian. And Richard a genius. Raspberry, who is a musical genius. He's, you know... A I, lyrical master. G-Man, uh, you know, if... Uh, I, I, can't, I, I can't even say it with a straight face. You know, we, ha if, we have to transcribe his uh, his song so we can do a metal cover if, of it. If Jay Z happens to be listening to the show, I think he'll be giving you a call tonight, G Man. Yeah, I hope I hope that we just <laughs> gave you your big break, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> As a Christian and true empiricism, every single one of these individuals I have mentioned are respectful, decent, and have a reputation for doing live hangouts and discussions. And are more than happy to talk about science, religion, and philosophy. And this is total bullshit. So if the amazing atheist wants me to come on to his show, I know that he's going to have his friends and his fan base there. And all that I ask is that I have these individuals to be able to participate in the discussion. And I would all Isn't that revealing though, the the, the fan base statement, Brett? Because you don't have much of a fan base. <laughs> And I think that's part of the reason why all these demands are coming out, you know? Um, I think it's basically, I think it was just basically he didn't want to do it. And he was trying to come up with like a ridiculous list of demands that he knew I would never meet. But then probably G-Man and his friends were like, yeah, we got to go own that piece of shit. Breck. I don't know. I don't agree with you there. Why, why would Brecky not want to be on the show? Yeah. He, he literally has no exposure beyond that. Like he doesn't even understand like how YouTube works now. Like. You only understood it when it was like, upload a video and people will find it, because I'm like the only atheist on there pretty yeah. much. Yeah, now he has like a nine-minute intro with copyrighted music and Jesus and whatever else. Actually, uh, I believe that that's actually a re... like a cover. Yeah. Um, he, he put in the show notes that his son's band plays that, which, which is kind of, I mean... I, the music is, is actually pretty well produced, so I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... But still... Yeah, it's. Yeah. It, I mean, it sounds almost. I mean, like I, the final I, countdown. Yeah, I can't distinguish it from the, like at least the the music. I mean, it doesn't sound like they've done anything to alter it, really. Yeah. Also, like a video announcing that they too will be on the, the show with countdown. links in the description that represent their channel, so people can actually go over and see who it is that would be on the show, and get to know the participants. We're we. I mean, why do you want us to do that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, because all that's gonna all that's gonna do if if we link the participants to uh, to our audience, it's gonna cause their videos to get a lot of downvotes and possible trolling in their comments. Honestly, I mean, it's not gonna help. I don't our even audience know if you can... does not like them. Can you even troll G-Man, though? Is it even possible to I troll? think G-Man is a troll, and I challenge him to prove me wrong. I prove think, to me that you're not a troll. I don't think you could even troll G-Man in a way. He's just, like, so stupid. It's almost impossible. It just bounces right off him or just goes over his head. Yeah, because, I mean, even if you make valid points to him, he doesn't grasp them on even the most rudimentary level. You're a racist, TJ. Okay. I think that that's fair. I would like to also ask <coughs> some questions before I go on the podcast that will be in this video. I'm going to ask some questions, and I would like to see... I wish I could get to it instead of making an 11-minute like video. Well, what does he do? That's, that's just like a video where he announced that he was now a Christian. It was like a 15-minute video where he told this really long, drawn-out story, and then at the end, he finally admitted he is now a Christian. So theist Ben. Oh, a theist. He's a theist. Sure, a theist. He just he he was always a theist. He just always forgot to put that space between the a and the theist. I would pretty much say he's more of a deist than a theist anyway. Deist. I don't know because he believes in Jesus and he believes. So he in, says. Well, yeah. I mean, if he wants to call himself a theist, who really cares? In my opinion, he's he's still a moron. 
be mature enough and adult enough to actually attempt to answer the scientific religious questions that I give. Because they're not. If I feel that you actually cared enough and that you've actually made a video trying to answer these questions, then I know ask that whenever I go on the podcast, ask them questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, brother, are you a do scientist? You wanna, do you I, wanna, I highly doubt it. Do you want to go through the questions and answer them now? Yeah, I mean, okay. like, let's. I want to see what they are. And it's funny, like, these are his scientific questions. It's funny because he now he actually he's so much against ad homs, but if you watch his old videos, he attacked people all the fucking Dude, time. Dude, just in his video recently to Dusty, he's like. Well, Dusty obviously only has a third grade education, and he's fucking stupid, but, you know, I mean, it's not like he's, he's, he's turned over a new leaf and he totally abstains from personal attacks now or something. Like conversation. Dusty's a moron. Basically, what I'm saying is that the video that you make will be a test, um, as well as monument, of showing that you're serious about actually having a good adult-like discussion. If the video does not answer the questions, the discussion the fuck we want, Brent. Are you my daddy? Off, then I know that you're really just using people in order to make oh. more money oh. and oh. act goofy on a podcast at someone else's expense. We're wacky, and that's not what I want. If I'm going to go on someone's live show, I want it to be about an actual discussion and not a place where we get personal with each other and fling doo doo in each other's face. Like, wow. It's because you're a, a dull-witted moron, Brett. That's why you want all these preconditions. So, you don't... <laughs> so without further ado, uh, here's my question. Okay, questions, finally. My first question is, do you believe in absolutes? What? Do you believe in absolutes? Wow. Okay, yeah, in some instances. I mean, it depends. I mean, yeah, in some instances. I guess it's kind of a vague question, isn't it? Yeah, I mean absolutes like I I believe in absolute vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, comes in many delicious flavors. I know. He, he's just trying to funnel us down with some Christian logic. Oh, habit. it's he, he wants to be like yeah. This yes is ob no. this is obviously the first question in some like bit of sophistry that he's concocted. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it reminds me of Eric Hovind's. Uh, routine that he goes through. Have you ever stolen done. anything? Then yeah. you're a thief. Yeah, or, or Ray Comfort <laughs> type stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And is, without a god of the universe, what would be the alternative on why it is that the universe exists in the first place? What would be the alternative? Why does why do you even need an alternative? I don't need I don't I don't see the need for an alternative. I mean we we don't need to always have a working hypothesis. Did you have an explanation besides God? Yes, it's called the Big Bang. Well, where no. did that come from? It's like, well, well we're, the we don't know Bang. yet. That did that. We're, we're we haven't yet discovered that knowledge. You weren't we there. Really discover it. You weren't there. They weren't there to see God do it either. So I don't understand the there. You weren't there argument. But yeah. he left behind. We, we his, have this book. He left. He left behind his book of ancient fairy tales to tell them though. Oh, the book. My next question would be, what explains the fine-tuning of the universe? My next question would be... Well, multiverse why... theory has an answer to that. But, yeah, I mean, what does he mean by fine-tuning anyway? The, the universe is chaotic at best in well, many ways. Well, I mean, ways. basically, I mean, they say it's basically like, oh, if, if the cosmological constants were different, then, you know, reality would be different. You know, we might not have, there'd be plenty of universes where if the laws of physics were a little bit different, we wouldn't have stars and planets and all that stuff. But we do. Right. So, I mean, I mean it's basically like um, someone, it's basically like, I think, uh, who was it? It was the guy that wrote... Um, the um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Douglas Adams. Yeah, he was talking about a, a a sentient puddle that was like, wow, obviously, because I'm in this exact shape. This is this is you know, it's like this puddle fits perfectly in this hole. Don't you see? <laughs> it's like magic. This square peg fits in the square hole. The only you explanation think that the is the universe creator. is rational, if rational at all. I would suggest looking rational, in the dictionary under the people, word rational. People are ra people can be rational. You know, there's nothing that like that's a that's a character trait that can only belong to to sentient beings. The universe doesn't have to be rational. The universe can't be rational. That's like a that's a that's a character trait. 
or a, a, a way of, of approaching situations and problems. The universe doesn't have a sense of rationality. It's just governed by laws of physics. For some reason, many atheists out there ask me the question of, what do you mean the universe? Which, by rational? the way, are descriptive laws, no, not obviously prescriptive laws. They do laws. not comprehend that word or understand its meaning of what rational and logical actually means, ironically. How did DNA and amino acids arise amino? and where did the genetic amino. code come from? Why does, why does the genetic code have to come from somewhere? Well, I mean, it, it came from a, a very gradual process that took place over billions of years. Well, yeah, but he's insinuating that, you know, someone sat down and wrote the genetic yeah, code. Yeah, he's saying that, obviously, the point of creation was God. I it, remember, it just reminds me of the episode of Family Guy where they present the creationist view, and it's, it's basically the, uh, the genie from I Dream of Genie, and she just kind of nods her head and like organisms just appear on the surface of the earth <laughs> yeah but he's talking about the genetic code like it's like the da vinci code and and somehow we just kind of like crack the code god is sitting there over like his computer like god damn it not work not now honey i'm working on the genetic code <laughs> <laughs> ain't you seen gattaca <laughs> basically i'm asking you the origin of dna the origin of life itself the funny I thing is, I don't, I don't understand how he can honestly ask this question when he's made videos in the past where he talks about abiogenesis. I mean, he knows this stuff, so he's clearly feigning ignorance. Yeah, I wanted to find videos of atheist Brett Keen to have him debate himself and just find, like, atheist, uh, you know... Uh, theist Brett Keen. It must be so surreal point. for him to now be asking questions that he himself has answered pretty yeah. well in the past. Yeah, many times before. So it's like, okay, well, how can you possibly posit this question when you already know what the real answer is? I, the, the one video that I found that was amusing was his blasphemy challenge video from back in the day. Because he did the blasphemy challenge thing. I, yeah, so he's going to hell no matter what. So I don't know why he's bothering with this Christian shit. I don't expect you to know he's everything. He's already uh, repented, like you TJ. To make an attempt at your alternative or understanding of it. We all know that atheists love to claim that the universe doesn't have the capacity to contain a god or an entity like it in the universe. So being that, what was that? I would like to hear... What? What did he say? He said that the universe doesn't have the capacity con to contain... God? God, yes. Uh, okay. I don't... I don't see the point there. I don't get it. What is he? What is that even supposed to mean? To Which me? is weird because Jesus was in the universe, and you believe Jesus was God, right? I've heard a lot of Christians say that God is everywhere and everything, but now he's saying no. That's not. That's not true. I don't know. Whatever. Your alternative or solution being that you are allegedly the amazing atheist. Allegedly. So I expect nothing less than amazing. How, how, are, you, and how are you allegedly the amazing atheist? Things. Oh, he's saying you're allegedly amazing. That's what he's trying to say. Yeah, that's not new. No one's ever used that one before. Allegedly that's amazing. That's so original, Brett. Brett Keen. But he wants to be mature and have this uh, adult discussion, as he has said. Being that you believe there is no God behind it. You believe there is no God. <laughs> See, but he needs to look up the word atheist in a dictionary. He does not believe that there is a God. He, it's not that he believes there is no God. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Brett always challenges people on words. Do you know what the meaning of the word logical or rational is? It's like, do you know what the meaning of the word atheist is? <laughs> so then what is the answer and solution to the equation? What are you talking about? My next question equation. is... Equation? What equation? What is that? I didn't see you present equation? Equation what equation at any does, point. does Brett Keaton do? Like when he's adding up his McDonald's total? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. The chicken nuggets are the holler. Oh, they're actually they're, they're not on sale anymore. One ninety nine. I mean, give me a fucking break. How does irreducibly complex enzyme chains evolve? And how do you Ir did he just you actually do the irreducible complexity thing? Yes, it appears so. Like I know for a fact that he's argued with that before. I mean, I've, I've, I remember seeing videos where he basically mocked Christians for use, even using the words irreducible complexity. And he was right to do so. Oh, well. For the origin of 116 distinct languages. Forget all that, TJ. God gave him money. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot. God bribed him. Now he's uh, now he's got to fight God's battles. And families. My next question is: Why did cities suddenly appear all over the world between 3000 and 1000 BC? What? Why did cities <laughs> suddenly appear every time? God was near. They didn't suddenly appear. People built them. Yeah, the, they they it was actually this process where people lived in tribes and then villages and then cities. Why did the internet suddenly appear? Al, well, Al Gore. Yeah. Al Gore is God. Al Gore was like snap his fingers. Time for the internet. Can you explain <laughs> the expansion of the population during these time periods? It's called agriculture, moron. My next questions would be <laughs> How is independent thought possible in a world? Well, Brett, you're proving that one already uh, to be incorrect. How do we account for self awareness? How is free how do we will account for self awareness? Material universe. Is this a list of like Brett's dumbest possible questions? How do we account for self awareness? I just oh. there's. Have you ever read a book on neuroscience? I mean, like, if you really want, I mean, if you're genuinely curious about, I mean, I know you have no actual genuine curiosity about the subject of, of how consciousness arose, so you won't actually read anything about it. For you, it's just a question to be like, you can't explain it. God did it. Actually, actually, it can be explained. Just read a book on neuroscience. I mean, we don't know exactly how consciousness emerged in, you know, all those details because we're still investigating, but we know a lot more about the brain than we used to. And we do know that it is the seat of consciousness. And we do know that it is uh, an evolved organ. It's, uh, it's part of evolution. Like, that's why if you look down our ancestral chain, you can see creatures with brains that are similar. You can see how, you know, like... <clears throat> uh, uh, if you look at, like, any of the other great apes on the planet... They have physiologically similar brains that are quite not quite to the level that ours are at yet. Um, which is, you know, not to say that all evolution is necessarily progress. I mean, features can regress too. Yeah. Like creatures that are trapped in darkness might lose their eyes uh, over, you know, a few million years. But, uh, you know, you can clearly see that there is this physiological similarity down the ancestral chain and if we look at our closest relatives on this planet we can see remarkable similarities between our, ourselves and them i didn't know that brett keen i knew brett keen was a was a christian now i didn't know he was anti-evolution too yeah i think he's a, he may even be a young earther from what i from what i've gathered i think he's a flat earther as well <laughs> well actually uh i believe nephilim free is a geocentrist whoa yes at least he's stated that before in videos that he's made. So he, that he believes the Earth is the the center of the universe, or yeah, am I, I, am I misremembering? No, that would, yeah, that would be geocentrist. Yeah. He, heliocentrist is when they think the sun is the center of the universe. <laughs> yeah. Someone wrote in the chat. I think Brett Keen is suffering from Alzheimer's. <laughs> How do we account for consciousness? Where did consciousness come from? If Didn't you just you just asked that same question earlier, but you used the word awareness, but it's the same question. You no, know, there's been some new findings in the universe within this past week that has blown the atheist Lawrence Cross's theory of we came from nothingness completely out of the water. What? How Wait a minute. We the 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 theories that they proved were the were that the, they proved that the Big Bang happened because they found the the waves. Yeah, from the oldest uh, light in the So universe. how does that, yeah. what part of that discredits Lawrence Krauss's ideas? Is that going to be explained? Could you or, explain it? Could you explain it? and consciousness. <laughs> it's just, I don't <laughs> get it. On what basis can we make moral judgments? By what authority? They use that one on us on the debate. How can you explain to me that it can be any more than just a moral opinion on things? What is wrong? What is right? What is good is evil? I would like you to explain. Why I really loved suffering... the way that Paul's ego handled that particular question in the debate too. Yeah. Oh, what did he say? I didn't. I didn't see uh, the whole debate. Just some parts of it. Well, Paul was basically like, they were like, by what authorities? Like, uh, the authority of the United States government. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they have laws they pass and stuff. And you know, if you if I murder someone, I'll go to jail. And also just empathy and 
the fact that I wouldn't want anyone killing me, so why would I kill them? Or I still think them? it's disappointing that uh, we can't see Dusty in Bright Keen debate. We have to set that up sometime. Well, Dusty might show up. Maybe those. Maybe maybe we'll get lucky and the the women will cancel on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a dick thing to say. Yeah, cock blocker. Even matters in the first place. You gotta figure why out who the they human figure out who Dusty's gonna does, date and write them and be like matter if there is make an anti amazing atheist video. So the amazing cock blocker. Don't date Dusty. We need him. <laughs> is that we a need, website? We need him Don't for date Dusty dot net. That's awesome. God, if there is no force or bean, I need to hear your opinion on why you say it is force or bean. Bean. It's a bean. In the first place. If there is no. <clears throat> All right, that's enough of that. Let's move on. Yeah. So let's um let's let's didn't we have some kind of Sean Hannity bullshit as well? Yeah, of course. Or do you want to do the one with the all Republican, all white panel? Probably all white panel. Yeah, we can do that because that's on the same topic. Yeah, it's a nice so. little transitional piece. This is a typical, I guess, Fox News panel where everyone's a conservative and there's no all, all there's no other voices being presented, and then it's presented as like this is a sampling yeah. of America. They used to have what was that guy's name? Colm? <laughs> Or something, Hannity and Colm. Colm's, yeah, right after and, and Obama they got, got elected. And they got, rid, they of got rid of him. Yeah, they're like, oh, you're too, you're too liberal. Even yeah, though it really wasn't. When, when they had George Bush in office, Colm's was there to kind of keep the balance on Hannity and Colm's, even though he probably got to speak about half as much as Hannity did. But then almost right after Obama got elected, they got rid of Colm's, and Hannity got his own show by himself. Yeah, so here's uh, here's this panel. I, I like how it says Stoned America. Stoned. Welcome back to our audience Hello, edition of bro. Hannity Stoned America. Now we're going to bring Talk back our audience Hannity. of experts and pundits in just a minute. But first, advocates for legalizing pot have long claimed that it would make using the drug safer. And they even say that it would lead to an economic boom in certain areas. Well, among those who feel that way is my next guest. He helped push the... That guy is awesome. I just want to say he is one of the main people that made this happen. <clears throat> He actually lobbied originally just to make it legal in the Denver area, and that's kind of what spurred the whole movement there. Cool. Legalization efforts in Colorado, and is now like the director of communications fan. for the Marijuana Policy Project. Mason Tavert is here. Mason, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. See that pause? He was stoned. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with satellite. No, 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 no. He was stoned out of his mind. It, took, it just took him that long to even comprehend what Hannity was saying. Are you saying. high right now? Are you high right now? You know what's funny is these it, Christians, are, they say they're against, stone, they're against being stoned, but they're not against stoning, <laughs> I guess. So. Somebody just said you're stoned. Uh, I knew he was going to do oh, it. Oh, wow. I, have n I swear I have not watched this yet. And, and wow. I knew he was going to pull that card at some point, but I like how he just did it right now. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. And the dude actually does look stoned in that frame. Well, yeah, because I paused it. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Uh, we actually <laughs> went to some, one of the dispensaries. We're going to show that later in the program tonight. Do you have any financial interest in this at all? No. You know, like most Americans, I simply think marijuana prohibition has failed. And I'm dedicated to trying to end it and replace it with a more sensible okay. approach. So just like right. someone might work for a nonprofit on gun rights, I'm choosing to work on marijuana policy. All right, so you see the kids in the video that when we went out to the 420 event this weekend in Colorado, you see them, they're smoking pot, they're smoking a lot of it, very stoned, they're all happy. You heard the... They're oh, all no. happy. Oh, no. Not happiness. I thought that was... A bunch of consenting adults were having a good time. Life, life liberty. liberty. What was it? Life, liberty, yeah. and what? What was it? The third one? I forget. I can't remember. Life, life liberty, liberty. Pursuit of... The pursuit of miserableness. Oh, was the, when it was a pursuit of money. Oh. Yeah, exactly. it was the pursuit of money. That's what it was. Doctors and their observations about people that smoke pot on a regular basis, even people that went to school with them. Um, what is your experience, Ben? You see people smoke pot regularly. Do they have the same? Did he ask me what my experience was? Yeah, he did. He said, what is your experience, Ben? What is your experience? You weren't in Colorado, Ben. You weren't there. Wasn't you there. weren't there, Ben. <laughs> Motivation that you do. Maybe you smoke pot regularly. <laughs> I, li I like how they keep bringing that back. You, you smoke pot. You, you probably smoke pot left and right. Stoner. You fucking stoner. You like Cheech and Chong up in this bitch, right? Huh? Yeah? Right? Huh? 
Well, we know for a fact that marijuana is an objectively less harmful substance than alcohol, as a lot of your uh, guests have pointed out. It's less addictive, it's less toxic, and it doesn't contribute to the violence and, and injuries we see with, no, it, with marijuana. But it, takes away or, people, me, with but it takes away their ability to function, their motivation. Their, anybody that I've met... Well, not in according my, to the Institute anybody of Medicine. That I've met, I'm, I'm telling you a story. Okay, it, yeah, stoners are unmotivated. Stoners are unmotivated, yeah, yet we fucking is, got it legalized yeah. in fucking Colorado. Hannah, you just said, fuck science. Historically, I'm right. But, like, I mean, the, the, the unmotivated claim is just ridiculous. If, if we were unmotivated, then how would we have fucking possibly pulled this off? Anybody I've met in my life that smokes a lot of pot has, zero, like, zero motivation. They're not people that I consider bright, energetic, happy <laughs> people. In, in my there was someone in the background yeah. that said that's not true. Yeah, that's such bullshit. So at least someone there is someone there is out. like that's Andy, bullshit, Sean. And while the security guards are removing them, weed. remove that man from the studio, please. Yeah. F yeah. What, what is it? Fox News security will be after him. My life. That's been my experience. That's quite frankly, <laughs> that's that just, just has fact. something to say about who you hang out with. But the fact <laughs> is that half of Americans have used marijuana. Right. Our last three presidents, some are of you our a Supreme parent? Court justices, you know some. <laughs> Where's this are you a parent bullshit coming from? Are you a parent? Are you a parent? You know what it's like to be a parent? Hey, you know, we didn't have your fucking kids. They're not our responsibility. Go fuck yourself. One of the most productive people in this country have used I'm marijuana. I'm talking about people that uh, no, not I'm used. Not There's a very different distinction here between experimented, used, and those that smoke it every day. Those that need... Smoke weed every day. day. For example, let's say you have kids, no and you see these videos of these kids at the 420 event. Your 21-year-old son or daughter says, I'm going to the 420 event, Dad. How many uh, riots and murders and rapes were at the 420 event? That was It was out of control. <laughs> Did you see that girl that they just raped and then decapitated her and then fucked her head? That was horrible. That could have never happened on any drug but marijuana. It totally destroys people's moral fiber. And you're going to say what? I'm going to say, well, Have first fun. of all, it's illegal to consume marijuana in public, so be careful. But I'd much rather them use marijuana than go out binge drinking. I mean, you're going to an event There's that is the equivalent between... of the one biggest frat party of the year for alcohol. And you're trying to somehow suggest that all marijuana users are these right. young Do you stop stoner at marijuana? kids. I mean, Do you want to legalize you simply... crack? Do you want to legalize heroin? Slippery slow. Anytime one of Sean Hannity's guests that disagrees with him starts to make a point, he changes changes the subject and, and talks over them yes. every time. That's Well, that's his. That's the way he works. Well, basically, Sean Hannity, is the, his logical fallacies he favors are, are the slippery slope and moving the goalposts. It's constantly, well, you want legal weed, then you must want legal crack. And what's going to happen when we have the legal crack? Children are going to be doing crack in the streets. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just ridiculous. This isn't a discussion about crack and heroin. I We're talking you, about no, you want to legalize pot. I'm alcohol. asking if you want all drugs legalized. That's a simple question. That's well, a logical I think question. That, I think, like, like, like most Americans, I think the drug wars failed, and we should reexamine those policies. I asked you and a look question. I didn't like ask you if the drug minimums. wars. Do you want to legalize? Taking a page out of True Empiricism's book here. I asked you a question, and you tried to answer it. Now I'm going to say you. I asked you a question because your answer has too a much yeah. nuance in it. Answer. I want you to answer. Because this is what this is what Hannity wants. He wants him to be like, yeah, legalize all drugs and give them to children. <laughs>
You know, I, I, I'm not so sure if this panel is just regular voters. I think this is a so-called expert panel. We'll see what happens here. I don't know what's going on, but it's okay. Head back to our me. studio audience. All right. Um, what did I promise? Yes. What did you think about that conversation? Well, you think this is just that was the not beginning. a conversation. You think it's a that was you berating drug? someone you who was trying to have is, a conversation with you. The thing is, all of this is creating pot culture. I'm not as nervous about the drug as I am with the obsession of the pot culture. Pot culture. Uh, yeah, that's what new. What happens with young Cheech people and Chong was is never a thing. they don't learn how to cope. Yeah, when like they start years ago. smoking exactly. pot, You're a young person. to relax. Right. I'm way too type A for any. I never relax is the thing. Uh, right. But when people don't learn to cope, okay, I'm just gonna point they, out that Scotty is a high strung motherfucker and he smokes. So it's not like it's not like it, it's gonna have some some sort of. Uh, actually, my, actually, my life has fallen into shambles. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. you shambly motherfucker. I you have no motivation. Yeah, I have no motivation. To do Actually, TJ and Scotty both have no motivation. They sleep on my couches and then they wake up when it's time to do the show. Yeah, yeah. we're like, mm -hmm. Ben's like, guys, come on the show. He's like, come on, let's, let's do it Saturday, dude. It's cool. Yeah, what, <laughs> Ben actually has what he calls the TJ stick. He laughs TJ a few times to wake him up. No oh, man, I'm fucking too high right now, dude. Let's just do the show in like three weeks. It'd be cool. People Become adults who smoke all the time. You, you and I are the same way. <laughs> Type A. All right, we, Joanne. All right, let me go to Todd Starnes. Todd, you come Todd at this from fucking Starnes. Oh, my you God. No fucking issues. way. I hate that dude. <laughs> Morally, dude, do you see stop this it. as Pause part it. of America? Dude, okay. before, before, okay, whatever Todd Starnes is about to say is going to be fucking retarded because Todd Starnes is literally the dumbest motherfucker on the planet. I don't even know who he is, who but is I'm excited he? now. Look, every single, look. Every single time I hear about, like, conservatives are having a hissy fit over something on Twitter, there's always a tweet from Todd Starnes, and it's always the dumbest fucking one. Okay, let, let, let's roll it. Well, I've got to hear what this motherfucker I think everyone say. should tweet to Todd Starnes, smoke pan every day. Let's see. Now now he's going to say something intelligent just to piss me <laughs> off. All right. But no, it's probably gonna be not. some intelligent new Al almost, cer almost certainly not. This dude's retard. Let's see what he's done. In decline. Oh, I, I think absolutely that's the case. What we have here is a case of money oh, over God, no morality. Wonder. And, you know, right now, it's, it's really funny. Folks, we're watching the, the chuckleheads, you know, we're watching these uh, folks doing what they're doing out there and getting a good laugh about it. But when the body count starts rising, when more people start dying, <laughs> then maybe, yeah, yeah, it's real funny. It's yeah. funny. Yeah. Your I told you. I fucking told you. Your logical fallacies are funny. Your slippery slope argument. When, when the, the bodies body pile up from weed. What? Huh? I'm sorry? Excuse me? <laughs> That's also like an argument from consequences. When these really bad things happen... I'm just going to say... It's, it's going to be really bad, and we're, and we're going to sit there as conservatives and be like, we told you so. Did, you know, like, in his Give mind, in his mind, day. there's, like, news reels from the 1930s of, like, the people in concentration when the Negroes camps. Get, when the yeah, no, I'm saying, when the Negroes get the marijuana, they're going to rape your white women. I just saw, like, the, the mound of, like, Holocaust victims, and then it's like, these are victims of pot. <laughs> Isn't it real funny? Real funny to talk about. But, but real this is a funny. classic example. This it's is a classic real example, Sean, funny. of people just not giving a damn anymore. You know what? It's not that they, no, 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 crumbling. wrong, incorrect. It's not that people don't give a damn. It's just to think you're a fucking moron. And you know why? Because you are. Yeah, because you are an idiot. And you fucking throw logical fallacies out left and right, and you're basically retarded. That's why that he's laughing. It's not. It's not because he just does doesn't care and he just has this cavalier attitude towards human life he just knows that human life has not been put at any great risk by legalizing fucking pot hang on a second i think what you're saying is they start with marijuana yeah. then they drink and, you and then know what? they snort coke and, and they do blow and they do this hold on he said what? they snort coke and then they do blow <laughs> Snort coke and then do blow. Yeah. These guys don't even know Snort what coke. First I got now. a blow job, then we had some fellatio. It's like, <laughs> those are the, the same. Sorry. Well, well, so where do you draw the line? Well, That's the issue. Where do you draw the line? Well, listen, so if you look at cigarettes, right, there's a huge push out there talking about how bad cigarettes are for you. Alcohol is the same way. What are we seeing about pot over and over again? It's how great it is. Gavin's talking about how great other drugs are. It's not, it's the, no longer the conversation is, is medical marijuana helpful? Yes, the doctor said so. But is other weed potentially bad for this you? This guy's slurring his speech. <laughs> he, he he's drunk? drunk on the show. Is he yeah. drunk on the show? I'm just fucking, man, I'm fucking, you ain't talking about the way, man. Good. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Keisha. Yes. Why yeah. is there a promotion? That's my problem with it. I agree about Why the is cigarettes. There, it's a good analogy. A, a whole society you can't smoke a cigarette even right. in your own apartment in New York anymore. Right. Yeah. Well, Sean, you just coming from an attorney's perspective, most of my clients, I do criminal defense work with adults and juveniles. I would say nine out of ten of those clients have use marijuana on a regular basis. And these kids who are committing crimes, they were high on marijuana. So their judgment is all we're messed up. up. And on I the do weed. believe it's a gateway drug. That was hopped up on the weed pill. It's not for anyone. It's a gateway drug. If you legalize it broadly, it's, it's going to be more available right. to kids. Last, last word, Guy. You don't have to be a civil criminal to Guy. And I know... Alcohol as a child. Easier if it's legal. You don't have to be a super criminal now. So how much easier is somebody passing it to him? Well, listen, look at them. You think everybody's 21 in that pot, uh, the pot party? Honestly, well, you think everybody's 21? The majority there's no of the pot smokers in America are not on the campus of uh, Colorado. <laughs> Just like, look around the room. First of all, everybody on this panel is going to be talking out of different places. The sound guys, the camera dudes, they all smoked before. Every single one of them. Look at the guy on booze. Look at the guy on booze. Look at his hey, beard. Wait, wait, Listen, wait, look at his wait, wait, beard. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, 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 first of all. Let him answer. Wait, 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 wait. He's a friend of this program, and I work with him for years, and I can tell you that's not true. That's never not true life, about him. Not true. No, you life. said today. I didn't say today. That's very today. Do you have to be high to tolerate, Sean? Now they uh, got candies made out of marijuana. Yeah, the candies yeah, made out of the marijuana. Hey, hey, it's the guy that peddles fucking Arby's. <laughs> it is. It's What's the, the Arby. The fucking got the guy that peddles fucking Arby's. Talk about. Is I it think, really? Yeah, that dude fucking makes commercials for Arby's. Oh my god! It's if, the dude that if, peddles fucking Arby's sandwiches, telling us like, "Watch, dangerous." I'm like, not sure if Arby's is overseas, but for people that are overseas, Arby's is basically this American chain that's known for selling like roast beef sandwiches. Right. Is yeah. It, it's, it's giant, decadent, che often cheese-covered roast beef sandwiches. Yep. With tangy sauce that you can put on it. Yes. I enjoy them, but I know I shouldn't. The Pope or the pro product guy's argument was pretty stupid. That guy has a beard. He must smoke weed. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. But, you know, I mean, like, he, he's overwhelmed by, like, a sheer mass of conservative idiots, and he's, like, the token, well, black guy. Yeah, he really is the token black guy. We use that a lot, but he really is the token black guy. Yeah, on, on Fox show. News, like, let's throw a black guy on the panel just so they can't whine about being underrepresented. In the shower, he's like, I'm like, oh, G-Man! -Man. Oh, oh, oh! G-Man! <laughs> Okay. He's called G-Man because he found my G-Spot. This is a total digression. No, it's not. Because we're about to t we're about to play some G... This is Atheist Pwned Rap. Yes. Which I think is actually what the first one was called. I think it was Atheist Owned, and this is Atheist Pwned. I don't know. We'd have to ask him. So are we playing that first or are we doing this story first? No, no, no. Yeah, uh, we're going to do G-Man first. Okay. G-Man and the masters of stupidity. So what the fuck is S.E. Cup doing here? Don't worry about it. <laughs> G-Man will play. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. The world premiere. Like that head banging action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's doing it too, yeah. Tic Tac Tattle, I'll crush you on the battle. Kicking your tail from Jersey to Seattle. God and Ben, you know God is real. DJ is fake with no second kill. Trust me, Smith out his opinion. Okay, hold on. He's playing out. So, um. And now G Man's. Fuck here. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he's using clips from people's videos, but he hasn't cut the audio out. As, yeah, I mean Ben actually pointed this out to me earlier. And it's really easy to do that. Yeah, I mean like so as this song as this is playing, and what is this Wonder Share TM shit like? Just just go to like Pirate Bay or something. Yeah. Figure something. Yeah, out. G Man. Just like look, spend ten bucks, find a free or find a free software or something. Just like do something. G Man talks about how he doesn't monetize his videos. He could at least monetize enough to get ten bucks to. <laughs> yeah, or however much yeah. it is to get like the paid version of whatever program of this Wondershare program. I'll tell you what. Like, Let your channel pay for itself. You know. Yeah. If, you if know? you're doing like a low budget channel, you can at least bring in a little bit of money to to get better stuff. So uh, I think the best, what was it, something about, like, uh, he rhymed battle with Seattle, so that's never, yeah. been, never been done. But. See, battle and Seattle. The battle at Seattle. But from Jersey to Seattle. Yeah. Okay. All right, you ready what about, for more? There's, there's country outside of those two things, though, so, like, does that mean there's people on that outer periphery of the country that are actually still better, like, where he can't beat us? Plus, that leaves the entire globe. So, like, there's atheists in other countries that apparently he can't own at all. 
Oh, what the fuck was that? That was just um. A oh, I know what that is. A screaming infant. Okay. <laughs> Dear God. All right, ready? Yes. Here, here, here comes some more of the world premiere. But listen, don't mess with me. Stick your dick I here. The one. I'll own you in the base and fry your bun. I break you like six. Okay, okay, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to. Uh... Sci-fi brain can't comprehend. Hey, Godzilla's there. Yeah. It's pretty fucking hard to sound intimidating when you talk about buns. Like, I'm gonna roast your buns. Like, no. I'm gonna butter your bread and roast your buns, boy. <laughs> If you can't even curse, you can't. You cannot do like a hard rap that's gonna like. I'm like this badass, and then you know s stray away from profanity. You have you have to curse. You gotta at least say ass. No. No. Yes. No. Jesus has got me not pretend to turn from sin. Avoid your end. Believe in Christ. That's how it begins. Listen to a raw when he's talking to you. You silly free thinker, stop acting like fools. So get on your knees and start to pray. And read your Bible and do what it says. So get on your knees and start to pray. And read your Bible and do what it says. Okay. Get on your knees and start to pray. And read your Bible and do what it says. Okay, so the chorus of this song is read get on your knees and start to pray. Read your Bible and do what it says. Okay, I just want to point out, like, all of the missed opportunities to actually do something that rhymed there. First of all, I could have just said, read your Bible and do what it say. Yeah. Like, it's raps. I mean, that's not grammatically correct, but you could do it. Okay, you read your Bible every day. Read your Bible, because sin don't pay. <laughs> read your Bible, don't join the fray. Read your Bible, because God don't play. Like, anything. Yes. There's so I'm many special rhymes there. TJ. It's just like, nope. No. I don't think we need to announce. It's just here. a rap. Why would I need to rhyme? G-Man is the greatest rapper of all time. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe top ten, sure. <laughs> no, no, of all time. No, no, he can't be defeated. There's, there's John Cena is way better. Dude, you should mm -hmm. challenge G-Man to a rap battle. <laughs> all right, G-Man, let's throw down. I'll, I'll fucking battle rap G-Man. I have to have time to write down my verses though. Get on your knees and you start to pray. Then read your Bible and do what it says. Uh, 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 uh. Is he fucking the Bible? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, uh. Read your Bible. Uh, 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 uh. It's not even a frame. It's because Godzilla's in this part. Yeah, but it's barely. He's like, he's on the bottom of the screen. He's Tic Tac right Tattle, do you really want to battle? I'm speaking that booty with my godly paddle. Jesus, for me to share my faith. Griffin is afraid of having a debate. Oh, everybody lived like a zero seven two here. Right? What the fuck? I know, right? Yeah, you can show everybody, show everybody's faces. That's fine. It's Thunderfoot. You're a middle-aged man, Thunderfoot. Well, you actually are. You chose Jewel, Atheist Blue, Stop being a fool, Don't give us a liar with an 8-8 vision, Even you blind by blaming religion, of all the bad things that make you sore. Religion is responsible for all the war, Atheist sick of getting owned, come to Jesus and quit being told. Oh my god! Yeah, it's really? like really. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. can't even hear what you're fucking saying when you you fucking idiot. It, it it's funny because maybe it would look like uh, what's her name Car Christina or Karina Rod, I think mm -hmm. that's her name. Uh, it it would have looked like she was dancing to his song, but you could hear the music that she was really I know right to in her video. So such like he just misses every opportunity to do something right. It's just funny. <laughs> So get on your knees and start to pray. Then read your Bible and do what it says. Get on your knees and start to pray. Then read your Bible and do what it says. So get on your knees and start to pray. And read your Bible and do what it says. Why is there so much um, in this um, video that makes um, it look like he wants yeah. it in the ass? I'm just wondering about that. There's I'm subliminal out. messages in there. I think the chorus <laughs> of the first one was better, personally. The ow, ow, ow. Ow, 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 ow. He should have just brought that chorus back. I don't know. That would have been kind of redundant. No. <laughs> he could have done a variation on it. He could have been like, TJ, these people. Ow, 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 ow
TJ. What? These people in this chat are being ridiculous. G-Man would be flattened <laughs> in a bait with Thunderfoot. How dare you say that? G-Man you know would destroy Thunderfoot. You know what's funny? Recently, I started getting requests to have Coughlin on. TJ. TJ. Leave me, me alone, TJ. Leave me alone. <laughs> Stop, mate. You're fucking destroying me, mate. God damn it. How, how were you destroying him, just for the record? I, 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 well, me and Galen announced we were going to do a video against him. And, like, we're going to do a video against you. And, it, like, we literally never even, we didn't even put it out to, like, but, like, even just the threat that we were going to do it was supposedly destroying him. So, I actually found that, like, if you say you're going to own someone and you have a big channel they imagine it being so much worse than it's actually going to be. So it's kind of fun to just be like, I'm going to make a video destroying you. And Please they just don't. let him sweat and then don't even make the video. <laughs> but if they ask, be like, it's still coming, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, it's still coming. I'm going to pwn you, man. It's going to be real bad. Leave him alone. Because they gonna think have, you're going to have a lot of trolls on there. Some dude. irrational part of their minds thinks you actually know like their dark secrets. Like Coffin's like, he's going to talk about the time I fucking. Fuck. Don't say it, that. It didn't. It didn't. Don't, don't say it. Don't. Disclaimer. Yeah. I am a liar. Yeah. yeah. TJ is full of That's ridiculous, TJ. <laughs> People say such a bad English accent. Like That's, oh, well. that's how he sounds. I'm, he, blame him. That's a perfect impression. <laughs> His English accent must suck. Yeah, he must suck. Because that's how he f***ing talks. Go watch his channel. Does he still have a channel? Yes. I don't know. Who cares? I didn't even know he was still around, actually. I thought someone told me he got banned, like, forever ago. Yeah, well, of course, but just like Is he Is Fred he Coughlin, Coughlin Hollywood now? <laughs> <laughs> Coughlin actually could be the Jesus. <laughs> At least last time I saw him. I don't know. Maybe he looks different now. I always smoke the wrong end of this thing and feel like a f***ing idiot, because I'm always flipping around in my hand. I'm like, yeah, what the f***? Oh. Apparently... Some historians, some Bible scholars, um, found a piece of paper that said that Jesus may have a wife oh, or shit. have had a wife. Sweet. Was it? Are you sure it was a wife and not a husband? I'm New not sure. New evidence shows the centuries-old document may be a forgery. Let's mm. feel it out. Let's bring in Michael Pippard, professor of theology at Fordham University. Great to have you, professor. Thank you. Uh, the first question yeah. before we get to the actual document. 33 years old, during that time, called rabbi, hey. uh, which was a term of respect for an elder. That's true. Bet you're the same age Jesus was when he oh, died. Shit. Does, that, does that mean that I'm the second coming? Yes. Yes, I think it does. Holy shit. You have your own show? You have to be crazy, though, Ben. Sorry, we're going to go with some Romans. We're going to fly them in. <laughs> some Romans. <laughs> How about some Romanians instead? Romanians. All right, That'll it, work. They'd be Close cheaper. enough. I think they'd be cheaper anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Easily. <laughs> you can get like 10 Romanians for the price of one Roman. And they're just as good. I mean, almost. You know. Should Jesus have had a wife? Right. Uh, I don't think that Jesus was married. And I don't think that's a pious answer. <clears throat> or one out of, coming out of religion, but out of historical plausibility. Jesus mm -hmm. was an itinerant man. He wandered around. He was an apocalyptic preacher. And he had some actually controversial things to and say about marriage. Uh, that people game. needed to leave behind their father and mother to follow him, for example. So I do not think Jesus so, was... Like, this is, this is the, that's the that's kind of shit, dude. Jesus was like the first rock star. He was getting tons of pussy. That kind of sounds to me almost... like that remind, He reminds me so much of Charles Manson, but you know, most of Charles Manson's followers were women. Most of Jesus's were men, so... Y yeah. I mean, like, I've always thought Jesus was just like... You know? <laughs> I don't say that in a derogatory way, but I mean, like... You know, he just, he just gives off the vibe you know no, I have, way, no way dude jesus, i have a pretty well developed jesus, jesus was getting laid all the time yeah he was but it was you know no, mostly 90 percent men yeah i'd say and masculine looking i would women. i would say 90 percent <laughs> women 10 percent men just to be like well might as well try this okay well you know i have a, a really profound theological disagreement on this point scott yeah so, i think so you know i don't know if we're gonna overcome this you weren't there historically married. I don't think we have good evidence for that, along with John the Baptist and other folks like him. Uh, but then again, uh, we, we can't know for sure these kind of things, and new evidence is interesting for us. So we get I, to uh, the proof. I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, I found an ancient document that said Jesus liked mint chocolate chip ice cream. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I did. 
It's pretty awesome. It's kind of so, strange. Uh, as Je- if Jesus the Cold was, Stone Scrolls. If Jesus was from the Middle East, he'd probably be lactose intolerant, wouldn't he? No. Well, he's the son of God. I, I mean, so. come on. I guess so. Learn, learn some fucking logic, bitch. He's the son of God? I thought he was God. Well, he, you know, he, he's both. What? Yeah. He's both. You got to get down with the Jesus. And he liked mint chocolate chips. Some people will tell you like chocolate, but that's bull. Ta-da. Maybe, maybe it was a new <laughs> All right, now really what like, do though. you see in this? Uh, sure. What do I see? Uh, well, this is a, a Coptic fragment of papyrus. So Coptic is the language of early Christian Egypt, mm-hmm. uh, and Christianity flourished in Egypt very much uh, from the second to the seventh century, and even up until today. Coptic. And it's a fragment that has a collection of sayings about family relations. Is it, not Coptic. Just on its like first oh. blush, does this look? Like, kind of legit. Like, is this a language that you recognize? Uh, I, I, I certainly recognize the language it's of Coptic. Yeah. Right Do you recognize this as too legit to quit? <laughs> oh, good. As too legit to quit. It's like, is this legit? Is this legit here? Is it too legit? Is it too legit to quit? I oh. I don't understand that, like they would even think this is evidence. It's just, it's just some really old document that mentions Jesus. Some At some point, like... It's like a thousand years in the future, people are going to like still, they're going to be like reading the Harry Potter books and be like, this is true and it really happened. And then occasionally someone will find a fragment of fan fiction on what's left of the internet. It says here, Snape Dr. Hermione. It's like, that's not true. That's not part of the official <laughs> gospel, of Harry. I hope that does come to pass. Paul Chow. It will. It'll happen. I'm a prophet. Ooh, I see into the future so clearly. That says CNN. This right, right here. This, problem, this no? CNN. That's you know what we you know we missed that in our analysis uh, earlier. CNN. So now, CNN. now we have defin- breaking news here on, <laughs> on CNN. Uh, what I would say is that this <laughs> document looks unprofessional. That's pretty cool. Uh-huh. Uh, at, at, at the glance of someone who studies Coptic and uh, ancient papyri, uh, at first blush we uh, we thought it looked unprofessional. It did not necessarily mean fake uh, because there are a lot of unprofessional handwriting in antiquity. Handwriting is a skill that is acquired. And, and, and it's and, not easy to figure it out, right? So what else do you look for here? Right. So the main line that everyone was focusing on is this one right here. So wait, if I advance it, I think we're yeah. going to know what the quote is, right? Yes. That line supposedly says, Jesus said to them, my wife, she will be able to be my disciple. That's right. And no doubt uh, that those terms... So someone wrote down that Jesus said something. Yes, that's never happened before. <laughs> like, I mean, like, of course there's, I mean, like, look at all the different writings about religion that exist today. Do people really think it was different back then? Of course everyone ha- is going to have different interpretations I mean, there's tons of books that didn't even make it in the Bible that have totally different versions of biblical events. Yeah. I mean, like, there was, there's a ton of writings on, on these subjects. Yeah, and, yeah. Most of them are lost to time. But, I mean, like, of course there's different versions of the same fucking story because it's a fucking myth. It's not the truth. It's not something that actually happened. It's not you a fucking weren't historical there. fact. You I, weren't there. How do you know, bitch? Because I was there, bitch. Oh. I was there, too. <laughs> Who are you? I was, Terms are I there, was Judas. Uh, and we don't. What we don't have is the context, right, of of what surrounds this text. Uh, and so initially, people said, "Well, it could say Thomas. Jesus said to them, my wife is the church,' or my wife and Jesus is said my to them, my wife gives great or, Mary Magdalene.' We don't know what what it would have said. A lot of people have said that about uh, Mary Magdalene, right? Indeed. She got. She yeah. got uh, implicated in the Gnostic Gospels, right? right, which is a right. whole division of Christianity and of yeah. itself. You know, these, this is what they didn't want you to know. These people. Yeah, I've read uh, some of the Gnostic Gospels before. What they didn't want you like, to know about Jesus. Like the, like the, the Gospel of Thomas. Novel. Yeah, like that was like the, um, the uh, Jesse Ventura conspiracy of the day. The untold truth about 11, I mean Jesus. Well, of course there were uh, biblical writings that were taken out of the Bible. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we were watching the show on History Channel briefly just as we were bored. It was banned from the Bible. And they're talking about the apocalypse of Peter, wow. The concept of universal salvation, where it's like, what was it? They said, like, well, yeah, the go- you, you go the, to heaven, right? In the Gospel of Peter, it basically says that if the, people of, uh, the, if the people in heaven look down on hell and see the people suffering, um, they will petition God to have mercy, and God will allow everyone into heaven, regardless of whether or not they, they were, you know... Sinners or not. So the the church, of course, was like, hell no. The Catholic church is like, wait a minute. Oh, hell no. Because if we did that, people would just feel free to sin. Yeah. The idea that everyone is not doomed to eternal pain and suffering is offensive to religious people. How dare you say that? God loves us all. 
God f***ing hates you! That's right. That's one, one positive thing we can take from all of this is maybe it directs people to some of the texts that we have a fuller versions of, mm -hmm. of, of, of Gospel of Mary, Gospel of Philip, these other non-canonical texts. So the big question becomes, do you yeah. believe this papyrus is Gospel legit? Gospel of Tyrese. You're saying you don't think it is, Jesus and that's because a of what is news, coma. especially in your community. Right. What suggests that it's not real? In the small community of Coptic papyrologists <laughs> around the world, uh, we <laughs> have been very busy this week, and especially a couple of folks in Germany, an American scholar named Christian Oscar and a Romanian named Aline Suciu uh, did a lot of work analyzing this fragment over here. What this is, is a second fragment that was part of the anonymous donor's collection. It's a Gospel of John. When I think, when I hear anonymous donor, I think of like a sperm bank or something like that. There is sperm on that. <laughs> yeah. You see that hole in the middle? That's, yeah. actually, that's actually not a hole. That's a substance co coating the top. Wow. Yeah. Someone was, so it, it must not be about Jesus. It must be some sort of ancient pornography. Well, Jesus was a big porn star in the day. A lot of people don't know that. He was. Yeah. That's because he was hung like this. So it wasn't... You gotta remember Jesus that. Jesus walked on the set. Bam, 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 bam. Did he, like, help build the set, too, since he was a carpenter? Hell yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, of course. Jesus fragment in Coptic. And we were told a year and a half ago or so that this is kind of a run-of-the-mill uh, fragment that we have water into wine and get okay. hose drunk on So it. when this one went up online a couple weeks ago on Harvard's website, that was the first time that the scholarly community had seen this fragment. And uh, I believe that these two scholars have shown definitively that this one is a forgery. Well, well the first clue is that Harvard had it. Now, if no, it had been no. at Yale University or something like that, it would be much more... <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that like a preppy joke or something? <laughs> Well, uh -huh. I, <laughs> the first clue is that it was Harvard. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you You're goddamn just elitist You're not faggot. at Harvard, TJ. No, I'm not jealous of that. You're a f loser, buddy. <sighs> oh, I went to Harvard. I'm not going to make this a Yale Harvard Yale. thing, uh, us versus them. I don't think. At least not today. Historically speaking. At least speaking. not today. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm better than normal for people, for I went She's to Harvard. a world-class scholar, and others who saw this with their own eyes uh, were, were great scholars as well. So uh, I, I'm not here to criticize them. What, what I want to show is just one, uh, yeah. one spot here. You can see there's a hole the in this the fragment. Spot. And you no, can see a that a word is written kind of around the hole. Yes. This, uh -huh. little, this little new, this little N oh, is yeah. underneath the hole. On the other side of the fragment, they, the, I presume a forger wrote right through the hole. So we have some really unusual scribal practice uh, that I don't, I don't think any of us have seen another example of So the of same donor like that. gave you something that yeah. he said or she said was legit. You have found out it is not, which of course cast doubt on this. It's on right. top it of is, everything else about it, so you don't buy it. It's not That's right. legit. So all of the it's too legit, actually. Legit. No, legit. The, the one on the left quit. is too legit to quit. <laughs> the one on the right has to quit because it ain't legit. Holy so. shit. You got you to gotta remember these things, Ben. Got to get you some knowledge, dog. Pieces of this one that seemed to be dubious at first mm -hmm. are, are now, uh, were now more dubious than we were before. Made uh, manifest by the fact that its source collection is also seen to be problematic. Thank right. you for and explaining so the what is obvious. Meaning how, these, how these papyri uh, came through various collections papyri. into the hands of this donor, that papyrus. is kind of the question I like papyruses forward. better. Uh, who's this donor? Uh, they should change the papyrus. More about this person? Is papyrus. there other, other forgeries around uh, that we need to be concerned papyrus about? Papyruses. So historically, it would not It would have made sense for Jesus not to be married, although many men his age were. Right. This document that was supposed to be a big aha, we probably don't believe. And the last thing we've learned is that the plural of papyrus is papyri. Indeed. You didn't know that already? <laughs> of course I did. No, I have no clue. <laughs> What's funny is that platypus, the plural is platypuses. Yeah. And you would think it'd be platypi. I like platypi better. I like platypuses better. You just like it because you it can say pusses. pusses. Yeah. yeah. I have to say, yeah. Platyp oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's move on to the next story. This guy, some guy, whatever, whatever the numbers are, some guy. Some guy ate something. Okay. He ate 67 or eight something or another. Yeah, so apparently he hates you now. Yes, he hates me now. And I didn't know who he was before, but now that he hates me, I know. He he actually uh, debated Onision, if you can call it a debate. It was more it was more like our debates against G Man and all them. I could see that. Yeah. So yeah, I'll play the video. He made this video, uh, I think, like two days ago or so, and it's entitled "The Amazing Atheist." Is, an atheist. is it rude to eat pizza and make videos? 
No. Yeah, but that still doesn't stop the amazing atheist from being a f ass. He he already gets off to uh, a strong just start. No, just no warning. Just like yeah, I'm gonna preach. I'm gonna <laughs> just jump right into it. Sucker punch. Sucker punch. Yeah. This is a very uh, emotional. Yeah, he has a very emotionally powerful intro. It's eight two seven. Okay. Some guy Some people might be wondering eight two why I'm seven. Going after the amazing atheist, even though I'm subscribed to his channel and every now and then I like one of his videos. Well, guess what? After this video is done, I'm unsubscribing from this channel and I'm not liking any more of his videos because I'm getting sick and tired and fundamental not understanding of how he does the same things that he bitches at other people for doing. Let's get into this motherfucker, shall we? So recently, we the amazing atheist posted a comment on my friend MDA's video about Smosh being a bunch of money-grubbing jackasses wanting $250,000 in donations for a game, as far as I can tell, has never been made. His comment then went to detail how NBA is a leech for making videos only about popular YouTubers so he can leech off their popularity for his own personal gain. Well, if that was true... So, what's basically going on here is... What is it, MDA? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that's the... Okay, Must Destroy All. That's yeah, the guy. Yeah, Must Destroy All. His name is... Uh, the guy is I Must Destroy All. You guys might have seen him. He's like... um. He wears like a troll mask, but he says he's a demon, even though it looks like a troll mask. I don't know. So he fucking, uh, and he never admits it's a mask. Like even in private conversations, he's like, hey dude, what's with the mask? He's like, there is no mask. This is my face. Like, okay then. Anyway, so that guy made some videos about me back in the day. And I was browsing YouTube one day, or, you know, yesterday actually. And I saw one of his videos at the corner of my eye. It was about Smosh. You know, and it's like, oh, Smosh did this. And I, I click on it. I see it's like a year old. And I think to myself, just like popped into my head, I bet you if I left a negative comment on this video, <laughs> he would make a video response to it. And I just left the comment. I'm like, you know, you're, you know, you have to go after Smosh to leech off their traffic. And, you know, so he actually did make the video, and I was pretty amused. I left a thing like, nice to know I can make you, like, dance like a puppet whenever I want to. <laughs> and I mean, like, I was, I mean, I, looking back on it, maybe I was being kind of a dick, sure. But, I mean, that's kind of my nature, so whatever, I'll own that. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I do that just, you know, to kind of fucking, I'm amusing myself, really. And the video that the guy, that uh, I Must Destroy All made against me was not even, like, against me. He was just explaining why he disagreed with what I said. And it was actually pretty respectful and nice. I was like, oh, well, that's, you know, pretty cool. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing. kind of just flipped through it. But it seemed like a pretty decent video. And so yeah, I thought that was the end of it, you know. And I didn't even, I mean, and so then this guy, some guy, 827, makes this video about the comment where he is, like, pissed off on I Must Destroy All's behalf. I, I've watched I Must Destroy All before and enjoyed his videos, too. Yeah, I mean, I, he, he's pretty good. He's talented at what he does. Yeah. Um, and this guy seems like he's pretty good as an on-camera on personality. He has, like, good charisma and passion and shit. But I don't understand why the fact that I left a somewhat snarky comment on his friend's video that his friend wasn't even that butthurt about Especially when his friend's main thrust of his channel is, like, going after other people's channels and thriving off of drama in the first place. Um, I don't understand why he's so... Yeah, yeah, and, it, like, he's calling you a ass and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, just, like, right off the bat. Not even, like, hey, Amazing Atheist, what's up with this? You know, this is kind of disrespectful. It's like, no. He's like, the Amazing Atheist. He left this mildly snarky comment on the video, so fuck him. <laughs> like it, the level of anger just doesn't seem pro at all proportionate to what actually happened. So I was pretty Fake amused by outrage. this. Yes, I mean I was pretty amused by this video. How and the f different than anything you made your f***ing career on, jackass? You want to talk about leeching? Let's talk about leeching, TJ. What about leeching twenty thousand some f***ing dollars from your f subscribers for your f damn not productive website, which lived up to its name not productive it's a content aggregator site like that shitty break.com 
fucking website. Okay. I mean, we already went over this with yeah. uh, with Undertaker Freak. I don't remember exactly what episode of the Drunken Peasants it was in, but we literally went through point by point and talked about all of these arguments when they were brought up by Undertaker Freak. So, I mean, we could we don't really have the time. I don't really have the resources yeah. to refute them again. But for anyone who wants to go look at that video, it's out there. I'm sure someone in the chat remembers which video it's in, and they'll link to it or something. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and you totally owned up to the website, you know, right. not working out the way you had planned. Right, and I explained why. I explained the companies we used. I explained the prices that we were paying for hosting, for web design, you know, the comp and, and, you know, all the companies and the independent designers that were used during that process. So I don't really see how that hasn't been all made transparent at this point. But I, I mean, I guess that maybe the information really hasn't propagated widely enough that he's already basically heard the refutations that I put forth. Okay, it's nothing more than that. Failure of everything you made it sound like it was going to be a YouTube replacement. It has no community on it. I actually it specifically just... said that it wasn't going to be a YouTube replacement because yeah. that's what I did with, that's what I was trying to do with free speech vids back in the day. And Not Productive really was the updated incarnation of free speech vids. But I realized after trying to do free speech vids that you can't really compete with YouTube. They're just too big and powerful. Yeah, even, they're Google. Yeah, well, if, I don't even know <laughs> if they were Google at the time, but they still, you know, they, they pretty much had the internet video game dominated. I wanted to be a competitor with that guy with the glasses. But actually, that guy with the glasses has suffered major traffic loss in recent months. That's why they've even had to come to YouTube as a platform uh, with the League of Super Critics. So, I mean, you know, I didn't expect the marketplace to undergo that sort of change. So I, after the website, you know, basically wasn't ready after all the budget was spent, I decided we'll just put the website on hold and focus on building a YouTube channel. And you'll see that that channel has had somewhat regular content. You know, I've, I've tried to get more people on there, but it's pretty hard to do when you're also running a large YouTube channel and the Drunken Peasants channel now, which is getting to be a pretty big channel in its own right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just is one of those things like it hasn't really panned out exactly how I wanted it to, but I mean, I don't know what to say beyond that. It's not like I can just sit here and be like, I can't ultimately defend the end result, be but I don't really think the result has ended. I mean, that's still a work in progress. And I mean, it still 000. continues to get subscribers. It still continues to attract new interest. So, I mean, hopefully one day the vision will actually be achieved. But it's been a harder path than I could have imagined. Yeah. Dollars in your fucking pocket, and you know goddamn well you didn't need twenty thousand dollars to make that motherfucking website. Shit is leeching. Somebody responds to a video. Oh, and they're somehow leeching all of a sudden. Could this possibly be related to the fact that you and Daniel, uh, Mr. Repsion, each other, and that might make a mutual disrespect for my buddy here? Because I can't remember the Archfiend. What's he talking about? Like, fuck each other. I think that he has this idea that Daniel and I are like extremely intimate friends. When the you guys have never met in real life, right? yeah, we've never met in real life, <laughs> and we only talk socially on very rare occasions. And you know, even then, pretty briefly. I mean, we're friendly acquaintances, and we both respect what each what you know what we what we're doing with our channels. But I'm not some like close in some close allegiance with Daniel. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's, 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 uh, I mean, I would, I guess I would consider him a friend, but I mean, we're not close. We're not, we're not even close enough as friends for him to make like hyperbole, Yeah. you know? I mean, if anything, they would say like me and you are like, yeah, you, your buddy Ben or vice versa or whatever, but you know, not with Daniel <laughs> or I mean like with Galen even Galen Scotty I mean there's tons of people I have way more close association Paul for you sake I mean I've done more shows with Paul um Mr. Repsion is kind of just like whatever I'm pretty sure that a lot of what this guy is saying is just for shock value yeah I mean well I'm about to, I mean I'm letting I'm kind of letting him get through his video and just defending myself but I do have sort of a a, a criticism that I'm going to make towards the end. Okay. About him. 
making a video about this. I goddamn remember myself making a video about this. So where the fuck was my response? Is this somehow not biased? you, you jackass. And speaking of bleaching, what about all that bull Cody Webber did to you? you over and running off with your fucking money and now I can't be friends with him anymore because he took all the money I was supposed to be making for my book and ran off with it. And your book sucks by the way. After this video, I'm unsubscribing. Cody never ran off with any money, so I don't know what that story is all about. Like, he does not even understand, like, the history of the events he's referencing, for one thing. I never said Cody ran off with any money. Um, that never happened. I mean, no. there was some dispute over how Cody's property was going to be returned to him. Yeah. And, and, and that was that was an issue. But other than that, there was really no issues between, between the separation of Cody Weber and, and us. Um, I mean, there, there wouldn't even have been an issue at all if Cody hadn't decided that we were taking too long trying to figure out how to get his stuff back to him and made some big public Tumblr post about it. Um, but that's, I mean, distant, that's ancient history, but it, Cody never f***ing out of any money, so I don't know what he's referencing there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead. ...from your channel, and I'm not liking any more your videos, because I think I've just finally realized how much I actually hate you. Your video f***ing irritating, because now they have nothing to do with atheism. Every f***ing now and then they do. Mostly it's just about how you dislike pop culture. When the vast majority of people who watch your videos also dislike pop culture, it's f***ing senseless. Why call yourself the amazing atheist? Call yourself the amazing pop culturist. Because guess what? It's all you f***ing <laughs> talk about. You had six videos in a row about how you hate Why Justin does he B. call himself some guy when he's actually one specific guy? Doesn't make a lot of sense. No, but I mean, like, that's kind of silly. I mean, obviously, the channel was named several years ago i mean like eight i've been on this channel for eight years i actually do do a lot of videos about atheism if you look on my channel my atheist playlist is the largest playlist on there with nearly 100 videos right but also not only for the sake of your audience but the for for your own sake you decide not to talk about the same thing every f time yeah i mean i mean if i'll talk about religious topics if i think there's you know an interesting point to be made an interesting observation but I'm not trying to artificially force my thoughts into that category, especially when, you know, I try to do a consistent show. I try to put up new content on YouTube persistently because I understand that's one of the things people appreciate is that I do create constant and persistent content. So, I mean, you know, if all that constant content was about atheism, people would get bored. Not only that, not all of my audience are atheists. I mean, plenty, there's plenty of people that watch me that are Christians, that are Muslims, that are whatever else. You know, so it's not like everyone wants to constantly hear about only that. that. I mean, my atheist videos are popular, but they're not even among my most popular videos. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely something. But, I mean, I've, I've tried to stay true to that spirit. I mean, I definitely am cognizant of the fact that that is in my name and people expect it every now and then. Well, it, it seems like he's making the argument that, like, well, you don't talk about atheism enough. You talk about pop culture. Which is and stupid. it's funny because, you know, if you look on his channel, he talks about pop culture. There's a video about how he thinks the new Ninja Turtles movie is going to suck. Well, it, also, you're not trying to change the world. You're, you're an entertainer. Right. You know? It, it's more about entertainment value. You know? Sure. And, I mean, it's about, it's about putting out ideas, sure. But, I mean, for the most part, it's about helping people pass five or ten minutes of their time listening to what I've got to say and hopefully uh, saying it in an entertaining way that you know, provokes some sort of new thought or maybe just gives them something to cheer for or against. And I'm supposed to want to watch that? Why? Everybody hates Justin Bieber. He's a f***ing stupid f from Canada. And excuse me to the Canadians out there, but I'm a because you guys had to deposit that in our country. <laughs> I think what? it's, you know, I think it's pretty funny that he's like, no one gives a your Justin Bieber opinions. Now let me tell you mine. Now I'm like, how can you criticize me for for including that in my videos and saying that it's irrelevant and then go right into a tangent about it? Yeah, I don't really get where he's coming from saying that like Canada deposited Justin Bieber. I'm pretty sure that famous people from Canada come here because there's more money to be made. Right. And, you know, there's plenty of Canadian comedians and other types of actors and that come here, I, I don't know 
talking about here? Well, Canada Canada sent him down as like a, a virus to taint the United States. <laughs> Apparently. He was created by a, a secret branch of the Canadian military to destabilize our nation by uh, seducing all of our young girls into being lesbians by making them fall in love with a, you know, androgynous man-boy-girl thing. Although, I guess he's looking more masculine these days. It's funny, people in the... Uh People in the chat room are saying, change your name to the sober peasants. We are not sober. Dude, we're not even close to sober. Yeah, not even. If we're if, if it seems like we're sober, it's because we're overcompensating, probably. Yeah. Yeah, a little effort goes a long way. Yeah. It should be just legal to throw him into a f no. He's a disrespectful little just like this who has the balls to say, oh, well, you're just leeching views. Because, you know, I don't Everybody like the fact that you're creeping up on 20,000 subscribers. Bieber. That intimidates me. I know Even though you I have, like, are so in my Are you that bored with him that you just want to, like, sing over him at this yeah. point? <laughs> I, well, I, I, have, I, have a, I have a theory I want to share about him, but I'll, I'll let him get through his video. There's not much left. 300,000 something people who watch my videos are more than that. Uh, you're you're creeping up on my territory. I'm sorry, but when big YouTubers do this kind of shit, and he is a big YouTuber, thank God, if 400,000 some people watch your videos, then you are a pretty big name, aren't you? When they say that, it off because at that point, you don't have the right. Oh, they're leeching for views. How much money, jackass, do you think people like us make off that? Does that ever equate to you? No, because you're a really amazing atheist. That comment is so cheating. It's so cheating. It's almost so cheating. It's something Repsion would say. God, Seems I can't even believe there was a time on this Jesus. website where I had like a modicum of respect for you and actually thought that underneath all that lard, you had a bit of integrity. Okay, I'll eat. I'll eat it later anyway it's <laughs> uh you, you know he get very passionate a video from from him over such like he's nearly crying literally over a comment that i made on his friend's video that was mildly mildly snarky it's like does that really warrant that level of passion does that really warrant like your eyes welling up and just Fuck, I can't stand it, fucking God. Like, your entire body animated with sheer emotional it, hatred. It was borderline melodramatic, like, the... Well, uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, this guy has made a bunch of videos against Onision, which is, you know, Onision is a piece of and probably deserves whatever. Um, but I think that he's getting bored with Onision, and he's trying to uncomfortably force me into being the new Onision in his life. Because even, like, in his next video, just because I, I left a, another snarky comment on that video that he just made, you know, he can sit there and be like, you're a piece of suck, you're a... I leave a snarky comment on his video, and all of his little, uh, his fans are like, you're such a dick, TJ. He, uh... He you're such an ass. He put out another video yesterday, too. It's like yeah, and, 11 minutes long. And his other video, his 11-minute long video, which is a response to the another little YouTube comment, once again, not even that offensive, just a mildly snarky comment. In his 11-minute response, he basically says, oh, he left a snarky comment. That's like something Onision would do. The amazing atheist is the next Onision. It's because he's trying to get that in his life. He's like, oh... I'm bored with, with the real Onision, so now I'm going to try to manufacture a new Onision out of the Amazing Atheist. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in being your Onision, you little crybaby. Yeah, TJ wouldn't even be Onision's Onision. No, so I'm sure it's <laughs> not going to be yours. So stop with the melodramatic, emotional histrionics. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's unbecoming of anyone with a modicum of intelligence, which you obviously have. So just knock it off. Quit being a baby. It's the internet. And, you know, I must destroy all. Wasn't even butthurt about it. In fact, he's come to me privately and said that he doesn't know why you're acting like such a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I'm just putting that out there for you. So calm your bits, dude. Thanks. So this is, um, <laughs> yeah. So a, uh, I made a video recently <clears throat> called Up Into Club. And it was uh, basically a um, criticism of 
all this music you see in popular culture that rotates around going to the club. I, I mean, people used to go to the club to hear music. Now people listen to music to hear about the f- club. <laughs> and it's disgusting. And I decided that I'm not going to f- stand for it anymore. And so I made a rant. And a lot of people agreed with me. A lot of people made some straw man arguments like, Oh! Well, you know, a lot there's there's other types of music being made right now. You should just seek those out. It's like, yeah, I mean, I understand that. I understand that there's different subcultures with different, you know, musical approaches and philosophies that are out there making music today. Everyone gets that. What I'm saying is that good music actually used to permeate popular culture sometimes. You know, there was the shallow, vapid trash, but then there was also the good shit that kind of redeemed it a little bit. And I don't really see too much redemptive in mainstream music. So anyway, this is a very belabored explanation yes. of the clip I'm about to show you. Um, this is I the made the video, premiere. and some <laughs> fan made this using clips from the video, and this song actually summarizes my philosophy and how I view the world. It's, it's clips from the video where TJ's about songs about being in the club made to the beat of songs that usually talk about being in the club. Yes. <laughs> so here's the world premiere of Up in the Club by the Amazing Atheist. It's yeah, and who and Sir James K on Tumblr. That's uh K A E K A Y E, sorry. All right. Here we go. was amazing yeah <laughs> stupid 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 i like it <laughs> it's catchy yeah that is that music and that song is exactly how i view the world yeah yeah you were saying that earlier That's... yeah like that that is my experience out in like everyday life. I just hear that song as I look at people. I just hear the we fucking stupid, we fucking stupid. It's like okay, thank you for letting me know with your every action and thought and deed. <laughs> you should like make a music video for that. I'll I'll ask permission. Yeah, yeah, that would be crazy. I ac- I'm, I'm actually gonna do that. <laughs> Welcome 
to the Drunken Peasants Podcast. I'm Ben. I'm ZJ. ZJ is here. And I am ZJ, part two. Huh. And we also have the late, great Paul's ego, who Hello. is dead. I, I, I've just been informed that I'm dead, so I might be a little unsteady tonight. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, I, we're good that's, to go. That, that is understandable. So, Paul... <laughs> um, we uh, we recently received well I shouldn't say we yeah, Scotty I received a disturbing message recently received a uh, disturbing message okay and uh, I just like to play that for you right now so okay you can listen okay. to that yeah yeah okay Scotty you are a nigger you are garbage I will destroy you I am your enemy. You will be destroyed by my power, for I am the great po- I mean, uh, I am anonymous. You will never figure out who this is until it's too late. One day I will appear behind you with a baseball bat. For I am strong. Like when I was a kid, people always be like, you know, Paul, you pr- I mean, you know, anonymous guy, you're pretty strong. <laughs> anyway, you're gonna Ben and TJ too. You know, I, so um, I, I, I would have thought that maybe it was TJ, but he no. said Ben and TJ too. Well, yeah, and and at one point he slips that his name might have been Paul. So uh, I don't know, man. You know, we well, don't know any Pauls if, but you. And, the and actually, fits. we well, uh, I don't, I, we I, sent I this over. In this we sent this over to Brett. We actually sent this over to Brett Keen, yeah. our forensic audio expert. Uh huh. And he reverse and, uh, engineered it. Yeah, he reverse engineered it, and and uh, we were able to come up with this. Scotty, you are a. N- you are garbage. <laughs> I will destroy you. I don't think I we need to play the whole thing there. Your but, enemy. Uh, that is clearly your voice, Paul. Well, I, in my defense, and just let me, let me put together my defense real quick. I, I currently don't have a way of, of changing my voice uh, hooked up to my computer. Um, oh, no. So, <laughs> Sounds like an echo we just heard. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Uh, oh, no. no. I, think, I, think we better, I think we better like load up the guns, T.J. I think Paul's coming for us, man. Especially me. He's gunning for me. Why? What, what, is, this, what is this hatred you have towards Scotty, Paul? Yeah, I, what did I yeah. ever do to you, Paul? I don't other, have, other, They other, make you want to me so badly. I don't. I don't really, literally want you to die. I just wanted to call you a nigger, but don't have you know the balls to do it myself. Uh, so I covered yeah. up the voice. You got me. What can I say? <laughs> it's clearly me. You know, yeah, it's, it is clear. I think. I think it's. I think it's Paul. I think he, he, he's come. He's come clean, TJ. It's unfortunate. <laughs> we, the bread. We respe- the bread queen was too good. Like I was gonna deny it. But then I heard yeah. the bread queen's breakdown of the situation, and, and it's obviously me. I'd be stupid to sit here and deny it any further. Well, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you're able to admit that, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you're able to come clean and admit that that was you, because I it was so it. obviously you. And, and uh, I just want to, I mean, I want to say thank you. I mean, I know we've had our problems with bread queen in the past, <laughs> but, you know, he, his expert skills as a forensic audio examiner have been invaluable to the process T- TJ, of I'm, I, this I'm actually thing. getting a message from Brett Kane. Can you can you basically uh let, let, let's pull this up TJ. All right, let's okay. see. Brett 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 actually Brett actually wants to join us on the show. Yeah, okay. He wants to join us on the show. Welcome yeah. to the show, Brett. Oh, uh, hello. This is the Butt King. <laughs> hi, hi Butt King. Hey, how you doing? Oh, uh, uh, this is the Stallion. I'm I'm a Stallion and I have actually done some further analysis on this file <laughs> and what i have discovered is that that is not paul's voice oh, wait wait so it's not paul no it's not paul who is it but so but, but he just confessed that you're sure it's not paul no well, actually well, it was the amazing atheist wow so and what? it was not directed at scotty it was actually an attack on my family oh <laughs> oh is it also because you have health problems 
that that is that is classified information and i will <laughs> thank you to stay out of my business and to stop insulting my family <laughs> I was trying to cover for you, Brett. I was trying to cover for you. Yeah, we, we knew you guys were in cahoots when you did all those hangouts with him. Yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah, How yeah, is cahoots I... doing these days, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Good old cahoots. Yeah. All right, so we, we hung up on Brett. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> Brett's dead. Fuck yeah. Brett's dead. We launched him, a... and he is now dead. I criticize popular atheists frequently. Because oh shit! What the hell is that? Should be held oh, yeah, that's so, that's something else that, that, that we're gonna play later. We, we stand by it because I believe. Yeah. I don't know who people. I don't know who that person is. <laughs> oh, someone that we're gonna play later. <laughs> He's garbage. <laughs> yes. We're gonna have fun. with His him. name is garbage and trash. Yes. <laughs> yes. His parents yeah. knew. <laughs> they, they knew. They, they originally had a name him like Danny or something, but then they they the the doctor pulled him out and they're like, oh, his name is garbage, garbage yeah. yes. trash, and we're gonna change his last name to f <laughs> garbage <laughs> trash, f garbage trash, f the third. Awesome. <laughs> um, so what, how did you guys did not make that intro? Oh no. Um, the the song itself, we did a contest on our channel, and we had few fewer subscribers actually i'm we were like three thousand we're deep. so lucky we got someone who was good and yeah. then a uh, guy from australia yeah uh dorian silk um and he has a band called the midnight city hoods and uh he he's just like yeah i'll do it for you mates or however they sound and um <laughs> he, he 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 threw me a um a, a rough version of, of what ended up being this final song um, probably a week after we did that and I was like holy crap that's really good and then I showed Hugo and uh, we decided he won before he finished we yeah. didn't tell anyone that though yeah. and then uh, so yeah we got that and then we um, then we did the visual stuff but that's I, easy yeah yeah. are, um, are you guys uh, are you guys formerly religious I am he's not he was raised with I wouldn't say an atheist. His mom's not necessarily an atheist. He was raised without religion, though. But I grew up as a Christian, uh, and my parents know I do this. Sh know I do this show now too. So yeah. that's always fun. They're pretty cool, though. Yeah. About it. My I mean, mom's pretty good with it usually. Yeah. Uh, your dad's basically like uh, Bill O'Reilly's cousin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so is my dad, but he doesn't know I do this show because I don't really. I haven't discussed. But yeah, and then I wasn't really raised in any religion, and I was kind of lucky. Um, it just, they, they never brought it up. It definitely wasn't an atheist house by any stretch, because we, they certainly don't, I don't, just don't think they ever thought about their place in the universe. I just don't think they're that interesting of people, so I don't think they were like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll, I met maybe your we'll mom, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. My parents are dullards. <laughs> it seems like it's just like too damn lazy. It's like, we could think about that, but... I really want some McDonald's. I'm just going to go to McDonald's now. You kids worry about that universe stuff later. <laughs> Don't you ever think about the meaning of life? <laughs> nah. Nah. Big Game's Mac. on. Uh, think about Big after Mac. the game. <laughs> so yeah, are, you guys, um, uh, are you guys pan smokers? How does that work? Pan smokers? Yeah, yeah they, they don't know the term. They don't they understand our terminology. <laughs> okay. Pan, pan, is, pan is pot, which is weed. Smoke weed every day. Is, is pa pan is a new slang term for it marijuana? Is, yes. It is in our universe. No, no, no. It is. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Is it okay? Uh, Actually, no. A, a couple weeks ago, because I, I never have, and neither is he. A couple weeks ago, a friend of ours. Uh, we ate pot brownies. That's what you're trying to get yeah, to. Yeah. He made his pot brownies. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't. Like Nothing happened though. Maybe he was just shit at making them. Maybe nah, he, he sucked. He you sucked had at eat, making. You had no. eaten the one. I tell you what. If, tell you if what. it was good pot brownies, you guys would have been high out of your mind. Yeah, it so. just takes no, a were... little longer. It takes a little longer because it has to go through your digestive system. He only uh, ate one. No, I eventually ended up eating two because I I started out with less because people told me start with less because you don't know how powerful it's gonna be the, yeah. the brownie. So I did, and then I ate the whole one, and then nothing happened, and then the next day because we we got like. 20. 20 of he them. gave me 20 for like five bucks. He's a really good friend. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then I had two and nothing still happened. I think they were just sh I think he That's did yeah, because low, he, low he grade weed. that I got high and I, I know I got high because I was like, we should go to Taco Bell. And then I got up to go and I was like, we probably shouldn't go. <laughs> this isn't going to work out. We're going to, I'm going to go to prison or die. Um, but 
He doesn't Taco think Bell he was out. Right he was on his computer. Home. He was on his computer in the living room, just look, like watching YouTube and stuff. But then he walked over and he had a can of Ready Ready Whip, like the whipped cream. And he looked at it, threw it in the trash, and then looked at me and goes, "Is that going to be okay in the trash? Like it's not going to explode or anything, is it?" <laughs> you were totally high. I just no, don't think not. you noticed. That's something I was. That's awesome. Say. That's <laughs> No, what? You, like, you were dead serious. It wasn't like a bit. You were trying to be funny. You were like, seriously, is this going to explode? That's <laughs> something I would say normally. That's so dumb. I'm that Did... stupid in real life. That doesn't count. <laughs> hey, let me ask you guys, You guys, because you guys go after religious subjects. What's the angriest you've ever made anyone on YouTube? Um, hmm. We could go, uh, we could say the Steve Christ, but he's just crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, uh, we'll give you a couple examples, and you can, I guess, decide if they were angry or not. So there's this guy, Steve Christ. Steve who, um, Christ. Steve Christ. You can look up on YouTube. It's the Lord Stephen Christ. This is, uh, he has, like, thing. three YouTube channels. One's Steve Christ. One's the Lord Stephen Christ. Yeah, he thinks he's Jesus and Satan combined, and um, basically we're inside of a hollow earth, and it's his, and, and ice is going to fall from the, the space, which is a sphere in the middle of the hollow. Anyways. He has an hour-long video explaining this. It and, makes no fucking yeah, sense. Yeah, and he thinks he's got to warn people or they're all going to die, and the final kingdom is going to be in Australia. Anyways, uh, we commented on his videos, and we're like, nah. And he got really mad, and he made a uh, video um, where he quite literally said, I am now cursing Jake and Hugo of the Bible Reloaded to uh, have bad dreams and other bad stuff. <laughs> And he is a sorcerer. Awesome. So have you yeah. guys had bad dreams? Since no, we, we we did actually a, like a daily live tweet of that. We were like day one, day one, no <laughs> nightmares so far. And then, and then I go, and then day two, no nightmares. But I did have a wet dream. Maybe it's working. But he he <laughs> up a little bit. And he's then, helping you out. And then we I, we asked him. We're like, so what? And he's like, well, you know, I took it back. You know, yeah, you're, you're not gonna like, have no, bad dreams I anymore. You. I yeah. rescinded the curse. He, he's a nice I, sorcerer. I am, I am the Lord, so yeah, I can like, do here, that. Here, here's a, I have, I, I, here's the final question that I have written down on this piece of paper, which is, um, which one of you is better? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna say him. I'm gonna say me too. <laughs> <laughs> we know our places. And we modest places. as well. Right. Um. Well, let's assume this means better human being just across the board. Fact. If no, no, I yeah, win, yeah, better in all ways. Yeah. Which one I of win you is by better like, in all I, ways? I win by, like, technicality, but I still win, and it's only because he's he's just the, the most cold and heartless cunt you've ever met in your life. You know what? That kind of reminds me of, like, me and TJ. How so? Because <laughs> you're, you're the, the cold and heartless cunt. I am? Yeah. I didn't know. Makes sense. I can I, see that. I get that. I get it. I thought I was warm. You've never been snaken for a nice guy, TJ. Never <laughs> once has that happened. Like, TJ, he's a, he's a good guy. It's most like, hey, that TJ. <laughs> well, if that's what you guys think, I quit. <laughs> Finally, I mean, okay. <laughs> anyway, here's this. Yeah, uh, I believe his name is Ryan Wiley. I, I could be mispronouncing his last name. Um, and he, uh, Grind and Willie, that's he believes name. that popular atheists on YouTube are not being properly held accountable for what they say. But he's going to do the job. Yeah. He's dressed for business. Yeah, and actually I need to start it from the beginning. I right. criticize popular atheists frequently because I he lives in Michigan too, apparently. Be held accountable yeah, so you guys should go beat his ass. ass. Yeah, I, I think he goes to U of M, so go down to Ann Arbor and, you know, actually no. We don't condone that. <laughs> <laughs> Officially. Wink. I believe that when you have power and when you have popularity, you should be able to represent the movement well. well I'll tell you one thing. If you want to be the one that represents them, you got to get better audio for one thing. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I got in this for the power, so I don't know why he it thinks is. that's a bad yeah. thing. I mean, clearly, I, this is for the influence that I can wield over the masses. My sphere of influence. <laughs> I control the day's events. But many times what happens is there are several individuals who are popular and are never checked. So of course they're going to do the things that are in their own best interest. And many times that's contradictory to what they should do. And, and let me give you some <laughs> quick examples. This guy is so fucking stupid. Yeah, and uh, by the way, the title of this video is called Holding Atheists Accountable and uh, Thunderfoot. Just all of them. Fuck him. <laughs> he's the arbiter of atheism. He's, the, he's basically saying, I am the atheist god, and I will now make my bold declarations. <laughs> Thunderfoot is, is the atheist? thumbnail. 
Yeah, I believe yes, he, is. he is. Yes, he is an atheist. Yes. Okay. <laughs> is that it? Is the video done? No, no, no. no, no, no there's no. more. Okay. Unfortunately, like, uh, unfortunately, there's more. I mean, I've made an entire series explaining why Jacqueline Glenn is bad. Which no one would watch. And Jacqueline has become popular. In my opinion, she became popular because she was a female voice. She was young oh, yeah. in an area where it's usually old white men talking about things. What? Old white men? I don't know what he's white talking about. Oh. Hey there, Sonny. I'm the amazing lady. Yeah. Hey. You're a middle-aged man. No. Um... I think he's talking about like uh, Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, those kind of people being like the seen as like kind of the main voice of atheism at the time. Right, like, but he's basically saying like, no, no, Jacqueline Glenn isn't popular for anything she says. Or oh, any, I like, know her personality. Tra- I know. No, it's just she has. That's the only reason anyone looks. So no, we could just put I, that. That's why he looks. You can tell. Him. I wouldn't argue that it doesn't help her case. Everyone sure, her. it probably but helps she, a little. But, but she I mean. Must- she, she certainly isn't only subscribed to because she has female genitalia. It's not like she turns the camera on and is like, boo, 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 boo. Like, I mean, yeah. basically, basically what this guy is saying is like, why aren't I popular? If, if I was a chick, I'd have a million subscribers. Maybe he should uh, take those top two buttons down and see what happens. I don't know. I feel like he yeah. thinks the collared shirt gives him legitimacy, too. He's like, I'll put on this collared <laughs> shirt. People will listen to me. That's work. how this works, right? People Maybe. see a collar. They, they know I'm serious. <laughs> now, of course, this isn't on Jacqueline Glenn. It's not her fault that she's an attractive Popping young female. It says <laughs> much more about movement atheism in general that we can't accept certain opinions or you can't become popular unless you are a woman, right? That we need this distraction of a female yeah, to, like, be a Wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah. So, the two most popular atheists on YouTube that come to mind are you and Dark Matter. But neither of you are female, to my knowledge. But I do have big. <laughs> yeah, but they're not perky. That's what they mean. They're perkier than they look. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, you're gonna talk right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm taking. I mean, personal. I mean, I might have to drive down to Ohio and do a field test just. Yeah, 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 yeah. I rub, yeah, I rub you my, know. my face just. Yeah, I have enough just... beard right now to make it tickle. Just give it a jiggle. <laughs> yeah. But when Jacqueline does make videos, when she makes points. They're usually talking points. They're usually not well thought out. As opposed I mean, I to sign that... language. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, he's he's saying talking yeah, points. Yeah, I, I know what he means. Okay. Video responding to Jacqueline's response to State of Daniel, which was just terrible. Like, she wasn't even responding to what Daniel was saying. And usually That's not the true. talking points she does repeat. And by the way, State of Daniel is mental invalid who doesn't even deserve a real refutation, but she did actually give him one. And this guy is... But my main problem with this dude's video is that he's supposedly going to be taking atheists to task, but you'll notice that nowhere in his video does he actually make any f***ing arguments of his own, and he's constantly criticizing, like, they didn't make any arguments, they didn't make any arguments, Mother, you're not making any arguments, you're just <laughs> declaring it, like, by fiat. Jacqueline Glenn, only is she probably because she's a woman, she got If she didn't have man, ain't no one listening to her, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and also, it kind of comes across as, hey guys, pay attention to me. Look at all these popular people that I don't care for. It's so we can put it in the tags, like Jacqueline Glenn. Like, yeah, I know, right? like I'll get views for this, right? <laughs> yes. Are not very good. Things like fundamental Islam is the truest Islam, whatever that means. And of course, there's I would assume it means of... it's the Islam that sticks closest to the <laughs> Quran and the you know, Sharia Just law. Just like fundamentalism. Yeah, Christianity. Christianity. Yeah, it pretty much means the same. Yeah, and it, 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 right. we haven't. We know what fun, fundamentalism is—a defined term you idiot i mean you're not making any case for what you're saying things about islamophobia that she's talked about before but the point is that i think jacqueline should be held accountable right that she should have to make better videos because she has all this power and influence it's the same thing with american atheists i think she should give me editorial <laughs> control of her channel i don't really know what, what, what then i'd be what satisfied. does he mean held accountable does, he, does that mean yeah that doesn't what does he even sense. mean like yeah. you, held accountable how Other, she needs like, to be arrested lie. by the atheist police apparently <laughs> is it, is it, atheist police come in the door get down but you're not representing we, atheism we, correctly isn't how we judge this sort of thing the court of public opinion anyway yeah. like if you're popular it means that other people agree with you. If you're unpopular, it means you're a douchebag and no one does. So it's like... But there's people out there that want to artificially, like... Like, you know, if, you're, if your opinion is the underdog opinion, just accept that and try to change people's minds. But then this guy's like, no. 
I have to change what's popular in order to, to you know, like, you can't do that. I saw him yeah. commenting on Twitter. Uh, he, he was talking, I, I, I think he's friends with Repsion and uh, uh, TJ, when you made your, your comment to him about the shark fin soup, mm -hmm. he was like, so now all of a sudden TJ's a, a vegan or whatever. I never said I was a vegan. <laughs> yeah, I know. He was, he was, yeah. His typical straw man tactics. No nuance exists. <laughs> They're raising all this money. They have David Silverman, who's making over a hundred thousand dollars a year doing this tour circuit, and they use so all the money people are paying, who cares? to do things that might get them more donations, might make their group be more influential, but it doesn't actually help secularism. Okay, so here, here's the thing. <laughs> what? Pe I know. <laughs> people watch. People. People watch it on YouTube because it's entertaining. You know, it's it's not because it's you know trying to change the world or anything like that. And that's why no one watches your videos, dude. Because yeah. <laughs> they're boring. Yeah. And the, the thing about a, uh, American atheists not helping secularism at all, have you paid attention at all? They've been only probably the most influential uh, atheist secularism group in the United States since its inception. Uh, Everything they do is good so far. It, I mean, sometimes they're a little. I think they. That's a. Uh, Christmas that's actually. That's dumb. actually a common misconception. They're garbage. They're, they're, garbage. they're garbage. No, no, they're garbage. And <laughs> I don't garbage. need a reason. I don't need to explain that statement. I don't need a reason. I have just declared that they're garbage. <laughs> I also like that. And that should be respected because legit. I'm awesome. I guess. And you you wield influence and power. I know I'm not wearing a collared shirt, but if I was, you know. If you had like a suit on, maybe I'd listen to you, TJ. But Ooh, just wearing a regular t-shirt. Oh yeah, get, yeah. get a yeah, tie a and you hat, automatically man. win. I think a monocle yeah. would help too. Yeah, monocle. So, just, so the 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 battle is we just have to out fashion this guy. We need fox furs of some sort. Ooh. <laughs> we could get fancy. Of course, th this problem of accountability, I'd say, is very frequent within popular individuals. I mean, Thunderfoot comes to mind. Thunderfoot has pretty much embraced pseudoscience lately, especially in regards to feminism. Especially. Okay, so so someone in regards to feminism, someone who is popular on YouTube for uh, you know being very educated as far as science goes is practicing pseudoscience. It's Apparently. like you can go to Thunderfoot's channel and see real science. He, you right. know, he'll do scientific experiments. Th Thunderfoot is, in fact, a scientist. It, 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 <laughs> yeah. This guy said he studies mathematics and economics. So, how can he make the determination that it's pseudoscience? Look, what I is mean, the basis you know, for I mean, it? There, there's there's, oh, yeah, there's STEM fields; they're all the same. <laughs> there's people out there. I mean, look, there's people out there with scientific degrees who are full of shit. Of course. Um, Thunderfoot is not one of them. You can't. I mean, you can disagree with what he says, but you can't. You, labeling it pseudoscience is ridiculous. I mean, pseudoscience is something like reflexology or, or homeopathic medicine. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you take this miracle cure and you'll be fine. You know, just we have we have the, the sure hidden to, cure for cancer yeah, that the medical sure to, industry has suppressed. Yeah, make sure to dilute it by ten thousand parts, though, <laughs> or it's not effective. Has he even really? watched any of of the like Thunderfoot's videos though, or does he just look for subscriber counts? Like, I'm going after them next because he like tore apart apart solar roadways recently, and it yeah. was awesome. Yeah, that did, was awesome. And he, and he was filming his his experiments, and it was beautiful. <laughs> and he went through all the math for nothing. It's what are you watching that I'm not? He just I've... wants people to be held accountable. For not agreeing with him. But what does hell? <laughs> I don't know. It means accountable. Right. Accountable means until they share my opinions on things, they're not being held accountable. Well, he's saying that Thunderfoot <laughs> is is practicing pseudoscience in regards to feminism. I don't really know what sort of science that, Thunderfoot was talking about. Is he like saying um, like you don't need I don't know pap smears to check vaginal health, and you can just like look at it and like <laughs> blow on it. And so is is he a proponent or an opponent of feminism? Because he was just talking about the only reason people care about Jacqueline Glenn is because she looks nice. Yeah, I mean, and, we're getting mixed oh, messages here. Yeah. He, he's acting like his viewpoints are so enlightened, and he said something more sexist. Let's <laughs> see what he's saying. Uh, apparently, men and women's brains are different. And that's why they have <laughs> certain roles which they'd be better at. Yeah, well, he's saying that Thunderfoot claimed this. Oh, okay. Yeah. But male and female brains are different. That's not even right. like... Yeah, I don't even understand that's like, beyond, where he's going. Uh, I mean, you know. They have more connectivity I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I think that 
you know, all human beings run a, an a intellectual and emotional A to Z, but I mean, there's definitely certain tendencies. In, yeah, you I'm know, sure most of that's hormonal too, but. Right, yeah, I mean, there's different chemicals at work yeah. and shit. So, I mean, um, that, I mean, like, I don't know what Thunderfoot was extrapolating from that, but I mean, that statement in and of itself is not incorrect or pseudo science. And he calls this uh, sexual dimorphism, right? And people started calling like this argument neurosexism. And of course, it's completely pseudoscientific. There is no good evidence to back this up. There are not well-researched, you know, well-debated papers on this. Yes, there are. It's just like some what silly mean, little research. So once again, he's just declaring something by, yeah, there's nothing like that out there. It's like, yes, there is. If you've done <laughs> even research you'd realize that what you're saying right now is bull. But I guess you don't care because you're just like, I'm going to go down the list of popular atheists and be like, this guy's bullshit, this chick's bullshit, they're all bullshit because they don't agree with me, and I'm the <laughs> smartest. He's just trying to throw up drama to get views. It's so obvious. Well, he's succeeding. We're yeah. helping him succeed. Yeah, yeah. No, just, look at this guy. You're what enabling asshole. him. <laughs> yep, you're, you're an enabler, TJ. You're going to be giving him his fix. <laughs> I'm an enabler. Search that can't be reproduced. And of course, Thunderfoot, it, it, his entire brand is logic and reason for the win, but of course, he's essentially embraced pseudos, or pseudoscience, uh -huh. right? That's the uh -huh. problem with creationism, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Thunderfoot has made uh -huh. this entire series about it, uh -huh. but I don't think uh -huh. he's learned the point. Uh -huh. The reason creationism is bad is because it masquerades as science. And of course... I like how he explains really everything like we're science. stupid. So it doesn't matter... <laughs> like, it's the problem so with creationism is that it masquerades as science. It's like, <laughs> what? Okay, like, why are, are you, do you, are you just imagining yourself talking to an, an audience of fucking stupid toddlers with vacant expressions on their faces? <laughs> <laughs> I can't follow what you say. I like how the toddlers what have is southern science? accents. They do. <laughs> Little burly redneck toddlers. Name's Spud. I'm Spud. My name's Spud. He's the only one who has the answers, guys. He has a collar. God damn it. I don't know my dad's name. <laughs> Mama said daddy wasn't no good anyways. If you're religious or non-religious in your pseudoscience, it's always bad. And, and I think groups like The Magic Sandwich Show should hell, hold him accountable. People like DPR Jones... Magic Sandwich Show needs to hold him accountable. He, he never corrects Thunderfoot, even though he's clearly wrong, and he allows him to come on his show. Right? Uh, and Aaron Ra has sometimes criticized Thunderfoot, but I'd like to see one of them be brave and maybe make a video or maybe directly address Thunderfoot on his points about feminism and all the stupid things that Thunderfoot has done recently with gender politics. And, you know, I can talk about the amazing atheist. He's another good example. Yes, you could. <laughs> yes, you could. Yeah, yeah. He talk could about talk. the amazing... Oh, it's on. Talk about him. He's what do you have to popular, say? But he said really dumb things about the First Amendment. Things that are not even close to factually true. Oh, okay. I'm talking about Richard Dawkins, right? Oh, wait, wait, no, He's... wait. You're not going to get into specific examples? Oh, how unusual. You said some really dumb things. I said dumb things which will not be pointed out or explained <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Correct. Awesome. <laughs> That's really holding... It, it, he holds me accountable when he makes blanket statements with no... Re have the, with nothing to back them up, no argument, no sort of like, for instance, he said this, and that's wrong because of this, and here is my evidence for that case. No. Here is my argument. There is no argument. <laughs> this guy's a better theist than he is an atheist because he just makes like moral pronouncements <laughs> and judgments about you. He's like, this is how it is, and everyone's like, oh, okay, I take it at face value, thanks. This guy knows what he's talking about. No, I don't know what you said about the First Amendment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He, he let me know nothing. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All you need to do is just accept what he said, blindly thing, on faith. One thing I've noticed is that he's telling all these other people that they should make videos uh, standing up to Thunderfoot <laughs> and whoever else. Why doesn't he just do it? Yeah, you he know? Be, he's not the hero we need. He's the hero we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> he is not in line with most people's political views. He supports people like Pat Condell, who is a racist. Like, there's no other way to look at it. Or I'm talking about Sam Harris, who also is an Islamophobe, 
And if you don't think Sam Harris is an Islamophobe, think about some of the things he said about racial profiling. He thinks that the United States should start profiling Muslims. Now, how do you do that? How, how do you profile a Muslim in the airport? So, I, I don't know. He's saying Sam Harris said this. I don't know if Sam Harris ever said that. I don't know that. either. I'm not taking his word for it, certainly. I don't agree with racial profiling, but I'm not sure if this person actually said that. I think we, we need to keep tabs on the Eskimos, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're fucking, yeah. you know. They're just out there wailing whenever they want to. Yeah, those seals are just sitting around hanging out, and bam, they're dead. You know, could be bombs in those seals. So we do don't wanna, know what's going on. Do you want to move on from this guy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fuck this guy. We let him talk. Long We're enough. done. We're done. It looks like Bread Queen made <coughs> a um Bread Queen. A, a movie trailer. I don't a know if it's movie a movie trailer. I don't know if it's a where movie he destroys atheism. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, wow. Atheism will be defeated and destroyed so, and dismantled all in one trailer. Wow, yeah, yeah, wow. I don't know if he's actually going to make this movie or if he was just having fun making the trailer. It looks like he just... Like his around. lazy f*** <laughs> can make a movie. He's got health problems. Oh, by the way, Brett, your family sucks. <laughs> <laughs> your family sucks. But I would be willing to take military action if necessary to prevent them from becoming a nuclear threat to the world. I don't believe at this stage that we need to have war powers approval or a special uh, authorization. These are the people your parents warned you about. You can tell it's Brett Keane's voice. <laughs> He's like, the parents warned you about. The parents warned <laughs> Are you guys familiar with Brett Keane at all? Never. I'm not. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll do a crash course in Brett Keane yeah. for you. Okay. Pretty exciting. So... A long ass time ago, there was an atheist YouTuber called Brett Keen. Once upon a time. Long time ago, back in the early days of YouTube. And he was quite popular. And he got into it because he basically would repeatedly um, he'd plagiarize stuff and claim it was his, like classic poems and songs and shit. Okay. And uh, he would, you know, he'd get. In, yeah, he'd like docs, <laughs> he'd like doc drop people. And uh, he got, he's basically been kicked off of YouTube at least a hundred times under <laughs> a hundred different names. And at this point, he's now a Christian who hates atheists and says that we're shit, and this is his atheist movie trailer. He's the hardest working troll. <laughs> yes. Hellbound Solus Primate Productions presents... You, you, uh, you hear that song, though? <laughs> Brett Keen actually wrote that song just for this trailer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he <laughs> That's did. That's Brett. Brett did Don't that kill shit. yourself. They love watching others suffer. Oh, wow. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I don't know if we told you guys this, but he was an atheist, and now he's a... Uh, uh, he's, he says he's not a Christian, even though he believes that Jesus... He believes in the whole Jesus thing, but uh, he's... Does he know the definition of Christianity? I've, no. Apparently, apparently not. I don't think so. Because we've had him on here before. He's a little confused and about he says things. he's a theist. He's not a Christian. He's a theist. Yeah. His, his conversion Riley. story is beautiful, too. His family was in financial distress, so he took a walk, and he's like, man, I should e -bag. So then he e and people gave him money, and he's like, God exists. And, well, he said that they were mostly Christians that were donating money to him. Okay. Mostly. So all of a sudden, he becomes a Christian So he e -bagged and Christians gave him the most money. There and you he's go. He's like, I need to be a Christian He's now. just loyal to whoever if it was Muslims, If it was Muslims, it would have been, he'd be, you know, Muslim. If it was Buddhist, he would have been Buddhist, you know, whatever. By the way, visit audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasant. <laughs> Peasants, that rather. That was by no means forced or uh, out of context. I have a great yes. idea for a website now, though. Hold on uh, now! It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like the eBay of religion. I can be like, hey, whoever donates more, I'll convert to your religion. <laughs> that oh, my is God, amazing. we'd probably be really popular. And like, like people mind. who are YouTubers. And rich. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't steal that idea. I'm stealing it. Yeah, we've already, we've already made the channel yeah, already. The, the domain name is registered. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you were standing here right now, I it's would Coughlin. They're not happy unless they you. kill someone or they're something. They're not happy unless they're hurting someone. <laughs> what? He sounds. He sounds like someone who who's like a perverted phone caller. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Would you like me to take my pants off? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> you want to <laughs> my big hard meat sausage? Yeah. Meat that's sausage. Tasty. As opposed to my veggie sausage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, there is veggie sausage. And and here's the they play the tip uh, the clip of TJ here. Finger that says F your God. 
He he plays it twice just to hammer it home. This is your god. Oh, racist <laughs> TJ. No the amazing, amazing racist strikes anyone. again. You are. You on the other hand should. Okay. Oh, he endorses suicide. War and destruction. They have no morals or no mercy. Nazis. Killing. <laughs> it feeds them. <laughs> Atheist, the movie. For, uh, later. Get a machete, cause we're going to an orphanage. Hide your children before it's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I've fucking... said that many times, in fairness. <laughs> yeah. I fucking hate orphanage. They hate anything that is intelligently designed. Yes. <laughs> Too late. I am a fucking idiot. Oh. Atheism, the most non-trusted awesome. group in America. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're burning the American flag. Woohoo! They're American. the most non-trusted group. Time to in kill America. 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 Yeah. So as you can see, uh, Brett Keen is a Renaissance man. Oh yes. yeah. Basically. He's brilliant. He's talented. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty. F I bet you guys wish you were as smart and uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, let's play a story. All right. Play a story. Are you going to give us You're, a video this time? Share the screen with them, Ben. Don't you already have the video? I don't know. It says, yeah, yeah we Hello, do, we do. my name is Patrick. Oh, hold on. He's going to introduce Wait. himself to you. Are hold you on. ready? I'm, I, I need to collect myself first. Is this okay. Alabama? <laughs> no. This is Hulk Hogan's uh, skinnier cousin. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, ready? He's not ready. Yeah. I'm so ready. Hello, my name is Patrick not John ready. Coleman. I'm a psychic and a medium and a shaman here in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and so, and last night, the reptilian showed up. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, not again. <laughs> Good intro. I, uh... I'm a psychic and a medium and a shaman from Chicago, Illinois. And last night, the reptilians showed up. It sounds like a fun sitcom. If he wants to be taken a little bit more seriously... Either more or less sleeves. You have to commit <laughs> one way or the other, because this this like full shoulder tank top not doing it for me. <laughs> I would say the facial hair could use some tweaking too. <laughs> just maybe a little. Like it either needs to be thicker or just not there at all. Yeah, he's in this weird limbo stage, like a psychic. And, uh, it was about seven oh. of them, and I'm going to explain to you seven how this happened. Seven reptilians. Okay, so kind of like the seven when, um, dwarfs, I'm listening to certain people scary lizards in a instead. podcast, or when I'm talking to certain people on the phone, I can close my eyes and I can see their face, but their true face, what they really, really look like. Oh. So I was listening to um, a certain person on a podcast, and was it um, me? So I was just like closing my eyes, and and that person was talking. And their face was just kind of shifty. Like, um, here, let me show you what that looks like. Because uh, there's an effect on this camera that kind of shows uh, people what, um, how I see it. What a so happy, what a happy coincidence that is. It looks kind of like this, and it's kind of like this. There we go. <coughs> Sorry. So when people are talking... So, I... in, with your psychic vision, you can see faces than with your eyes. <laughs> That's an amazing power. You kind of see them like this. But um, it's kind of blurry like this. So I can see them talking, and their faces are like this. And they're talking, and uh, it doesn't matter if it happened in the past or if it's yes. right now. I bet you I guys didn't know faces. that your true face was blurry and green, but it, it is. reminds me of that one song that... Take me on, take, take on, on me. me. I don't know the words. Yeah. My my wife can play that on the ukulele, so. Really? Yes. Will you get her on so we can listen to that, and then we can sing it? It'll be a whole thing. No, no we'll one wants We'll be famous. That. No one wants that. Worldwide. No, yeah. There, are too, many, I, there I, are too many white girls playing ukuleles. <laughs> That's true. Name three. Name three. The chick from Scrubs. The okay. chick from New Girl. What the fuck? Zoe Deschanel. Okay. I'm going to count Zoe Deschanel twice because she's that. Oh, I'm a quirky white girl. Okay, fine. You win. I'm so quirky, bro. That's... Quirky. <laughs> when they talk. I wonder if this guy okay. plays the ukulele. So let me One of the reptilians off, probably off, did. And that off. Okay. What they call so it a uke. listen to this podcast about uke. something really important to my life and my journey right now. Rebuke and the then, uke. And um, then all of a sudden, that person's face 
sort of turned into a reptilian face. Oh my and god, y'all! That person went. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait! Hold on, hold on. So not only, not only could he see the person's true reptilian face, but the reptilian knew that he could see his true face and decided to do like a little. Shh. Let that just be our little secret, y'all. <laughs> okay. He's the best guy I've ever seen. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I like him. Let's get him on the show sometime. He's a shaman. He's a shaman. What is, does, he doesn't have like a long robe or beads or much of a beard. He doesn't look no. like a shaman. He doesn't you just have a have, stick that makes noise. But his his true face has all that. Uh, <laughs> I see. Shaman face. And then, because that's why I'm not going to tell you who it is. And then, and then that person smiled at me. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're a reptilian. And um, wow. so then another. <laughs> oh my that's gosh. That's, you, say, right? that's the name. That's the name of the sitcom. Oh my gosh. Yo, reptilian. He didn't mention <laughs> that this was after he took the acid. Yeah. It's yeah. just like my name is Earl, except. Always, they turn out to be reptilians. <laughs> yeah, he goes around the world meeting reptilians and making things right for them. But actually, reptilians are not the only creatures he encounters, as we'll hear later in the video. Oh, reptilians kind of sort of came up to the, the, the third eye surface, and, and then they their, their tongue came out. And, all, <laughs> and I, I was like, <gasps> I, was, I started to get really scared <laughs> at first. And then I was like, no, I'm a good person. If anybody wants to hurt me, then that means they're evil. They're really, really evil. And I don't believe that reptilians are really, really evil. I just think reptilians are reptilians. Humans are humans. Things just are. There is no good. There is no evil. Wait, so I was able to push so through that fear. You're good. You're, just a minute ago, you're good, and anything that would attack you would be evil, and then all of a sudden there is no good and evil. So how does that work? Uh, why, why am I even focusing on that when he's talking about seeing reptiles? I don't like, know. I think at this point we've just resigned to an end, and we're like, all right. <laughs> Fuck it. We we buy in. Teach Everyone us, buys shaman. in. Teach us, oh great shaman. Teach us of the reptilians and their lessons. I mean, I was ter I'll be honest with you. I was terrified. <laughs> and pushing through that fear was like, I'm getting visited by reptilians now. Okay. So I've been vi visited by ghosts and aliens and demons and everything else. So now the So he's been visited up. by ghosts okay. and aliens and demons. Wait, wait. Well how do aliens it. fit in? With ghosts and demons, aliens wouldn't they just be like? I don't know. I wish my lo I wish I were as crazy as this person. I wish I could live my life and just be like, oh, alien showed up again today. Oh well, you know. Yeah. Every day is Picard's life. <laughs> I know, right? Right, you know, he gets to meet the like and demons. You know, he's just like walking down the street and he's like, he just. A demon walks by and just kind of tips his hat like, "How you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I'm fine. I'm Thanks for asking." Pretty good, demon. Thanks for asking. I'm really happy that you're here today. Now I know you shouldn't want to hurt me because I'm good. I mean, you might be evil because usually demons are evil, but you know, I don't believe in good and evil. So you please don't hurt me, sir. He's like, <laughs> and he eats him. Say, y'all reptilians, don't bite me because I might ask you to do that again. Oh, maybe. my. Is he, the, right. is he the gay guy from Family Guy now? Is that yeah. what he's, he's well, officially he, that guy. He sounds like that guy. <laughs> Toby but they just sort of like, they just sort of came eye. forward. There were about seven or eight of them, maybe nine. But they just sort of came forward and regarded me. And I just regarded them back. They just came up to me. They were all like a little bit different. They all looked a little different. And they just came up. To that me adds credibility me. to the story. No. The fact that they don't all look exactly the same. It sounds know? like any typical racist white guy explaining any other race. <laughs> like, you know, the Asians, they all look a little bit different, and we were a god at each other, and then that was it. <laughs> at first, I thought they was going to do some kung fu, but, you know, then they just walked on by. Oh, what if the reptilians know kung fu? We're in big trouble. Yep. Out of their head. I added that. <laughs> Some information was exchanged like this. Like this. What? Some there? information. It was almost like they were Information was exchanged for doing like this. Something. And I'm not sure what that is yet, but uh, it was really pretty cool. And then I slept really, really well. And then slept I woke up this well. morning with a list of things to do. And um, that's how we, that's how, that's where we are. Because if I am going to be a psychic medium and shaman uh, and be a really good Couldn't one, you just I'm pick trying one. to do, do you have to be all of those things? He's an overachiever, I mean, goddammit.
Yeah, it's like, you know, you're making the rest of us look bad. He's yeah. blowing Ryan Wiley out of the water. Right. You know? Ryan Wiley, he just has a math degree. This guy is a psychic. He's a medium. I don't even know why, how those two things are different. He's yeah. also a shaman. And he's met reptilians. He's met aliens. He's met ghosts. He's, he's got met a better haircut and a better demons. fashion sense. Yeah, this is... this. Is, Ryan he needs to also. step it up. He definitely cut that himself if you look on his... Right. All yeah. right. It's, it's certainly irregular where you like it up a little bit. Like he goes him, to... Though. He goes to the store and he sees all these shirts like, man, why they all got sleeves on them? Ugh. It's so hot in my apartment. I don't want to spend the extra electricity <laughs> on the AC. So, you know, you just got to do what's right and you just got to cut your sleeves off. It's really economical. And then you can use the sleeves as a bandana and you can, you can wet them and you can just be cool all day. Uh, his name is Patrick, Patrick Coleman. Coleman. I guess he has uh, two names, though, but I'll let him uh, discuss that. Yeah. Sure. I'll let him explain how he has two names. So, uh, yeah, we'll get him on the phone right now. Here we go. He's a, a shaman, folks. He's he's a bunch of things. He's a shaman. He's a... Psychic. Yes. He's a medium. Watch him not answer this time. Come we, on. We, we, we talked to him earlier. Come on, Patrick. Come on. Oh, Patrick. Hello? Hello. Hello, Patrick. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you? Uh, I'm good, too. So, uh, la last time on the show, um, we, we looked at one of your videos where you talked about um, being visited you by... Fun, you made fun of me. Made yeah, fun yeah. Of me. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We did. Yeah, we did. But, you know, now... No, now please, you... please, please. What? Sleeves are not part of my nature. Sleeves are not part of my nature. Sleeves are not sleeves part of my nature. Yeah, because he cuts the sleeves off of his shirt. Right. Yeah. And you, you did a pretty good job, but that, that you know, on, on, the, uh, on the right sleeve, you did a good job, but on the left sleeve, you, you got a little sloppy. I'll be honest with you, Patrick. Well, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm blind. Like I said, oh, I'm okay. Really oh, all right. So uh, introduce yourselves to, to the audience, Patrick. Tell, tell us about who you are. <laughs> Hello, my name is Patrick John Coleman. I'm a psychic medium and a shaman in Chicago, Illinois. And so, uh, I, I, I always thought a psychic and a medium were the same thing. What's, what's the difference there? Well, I'm a traditional, like a psychic in a traditional sense, like Sigmund Freud, uh, Edgar Cayce, Jane Roberts, uh, Carl Jung. Um, we are people that have had like pain, nightmare, horrifying things happen to us, and then mm -hmm. we try to make sense of them. So that's a psychic part of it because we we try to figure out why people think the way that they do. I, I wasn't aware that Freud way. and Jung were psychics. Actually, that's um. Actually, that's they were. They oh. they were. They um. Oh okay. Um, if you look it up, um, Carl Jung had um, Philemon. The uh, he had he had a community of spirit guides the whole thing mm. about psychotherapy and a lot of metachlorians in his blood as well <laughs> well i mean blood is blood mm. i mean i don't watch tv but um the thing about psycho psychics are i'm not i don't read tarot like i don't read like i'm not going to tell you your future but um i'm a traditional psychic in that i'm very interested in why people think the way that they do why are people people Does that make okay sense? Uh, okay sure i guess yeah uh, um so, okay. so so the other the other question if i could read your mind is that you're like why are you a medium why are you so much why are you a medium and a shaman why do you I, I actually over? what what exact what exactly is a shaman in your mind because your definition of psychic is a little different than what i would call a psychic but maybe your definition well, what would you call it what would you what would you call a psychic uh, you know, someone who who uh, can you know read the future, um, maybe has the ability to read minds as well. Well, I mean, I'm not saying I can't do that, but what would okay. what would like so? And the and the last show that you did, you said mm -hmm. he's an overachiever, psychic medium, and a shaman. So let's go piece by piece, psychic. Ah, uh, uh, okay, hold on. Talking about spirit guides. 
Okay, okay so media, <laughs> you guys do a great job at exposing. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so medium, like next question, go. Um, my next question is why, why do you have this belief, uh, that you're not supposed to talk to us? Cause you were telling us about that earlier off the air. Well, I mean, dude, seriously, like I, I got pulled into a van <laughs> and the van, <laughs> not just like, a van. Seriously, my life was like at the, the are you the sure it van. wasn't like an SUV or a, like a, maybe a crossover hatchback? Something like no, that. and it's like it's the dumbest white trash uh, CIA ever. Because they like they pulled me into a van and said, "You're not supposed to talk to these guys." So was it was it the CIA saying this, or was it the reptilians saying this, or who who was saying this? To oh you? my god, it's so ridiculous. I mean, like when the reptilians show up, it's like, what what are you supposed to do when there's aliens in your apartment? What are you supposed to do? What you gonna do when the reptilians come for you? Um, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? <laughs> no. Um, I, okay, so next question. I'm right. a psychic medium and a shaman. So what's a right. shaman? Shaman, right. Go ahead. Okay, so a shaman is someone who has been to the spirit world, and they've seen reality for what it is. So they're basically like performance artists that come back and, and help people. Like, can I heal a... Of course not, that's crazy. But you you have had things in your life that have hurt you. Like, mm-hmm. everybody's been hurt. You have a broken heart, don't you? I mean, let's talk about your last girlfriend. I mean, what sure. a nightmare that is. I mean, mm-hmm. really. So, um, I'm from Edgar Casey's hometown of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. So, Edgar Casey was someone who came up with cures that the medical industry uses now. Isn't that interesting? Um, he was able to tap into the Akashic records. So let, let me just let me just let me just pull you back for a second. Um, what 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 exactly you, you said you talk about a shaman being someone who's who's gone to the the spirit world. Uh, what exactly is the the spirit world for those of us who are uninitiated? Well, I, I'm going I'm to tell you this. Like, I did not choose to be a shaman. Okay. The um. So you were kind of like shaman. Actually, that's like, yeah. Actually, my elder shaman cut my dick off and fucked me like I was a girl. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, like, imagine, imagine my pain nightmare when all this is happening to me. Like, did, um, did you really? I, mean, I know you guys think I'm. Cra- no, I know no. you guys think I'm crazy, and that's fine. That's fine. I like, I don't care. Right. But um, when this happened to me. Um, you know, I was, I was, I came to Chicago to study comedy at Second City. Like I, mm-hmm. I enrolled at Second City, which Tina Fey went to, um, John Belushi. Like I peed in everybody's, like I peed in every urinal. I'm like, I'm marking my territory. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I moved to Chicago to study comedy at Second City. But when I got here, I had a near-death experience. And there were some wonderful things like about this reality. And now I live on a street between two huge graveyards. And I died here. And now I'm, like, I'm, somehow I'm alive. It doesn't make any sense to me. Right. The world so does not make what, sense to me. What, what, was, what was the spirit world like? I, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm kind of curious about. Like, what, what, did you <laughs> see, what, did you, what did you see your experience in, in, the, in the spirit world? Uh, realm. Oh, you're kind of making fun of me. That's okay. No, but, no, no, um, <laughs> no, no. I want to. I want to no, know. I'm, you, I'm, you, I'm interested have because. You played, have you, no, have you played Silent Hill? Yeah, have you sure. Silent Hill. So is it like it's that? Like is it like running around? It's like running around trying to find a key to some. It doesn't exist. It's like grabbing postcards for people. Um, the spirit world is very much like trying to. <laughs> Like to deliver a postcard to somebody who doesn't even exist. Uh, um, I see. I call them I call them spirit plungers. So you know you guys are atheists, and that's okay. Right. I love you anyway. But um, Thank when you. I was pulled into this, oh, I I, I'm, I may not even be. I'm probably an atheist as well because I'm pretty God right now. <laughs> but um, when you. Uh, 
when you get when you get pulled like shamans are pulled into the spirit world mm-hmm. and they're they're shown things about this reality and I um see. like one of the, the tasks that i had to do was i had to go through all the trash cans in my alley and pull out the recyclables <laughs> from the other trash and so there were there were some spirits that were like Oh, he's not going to be able to do this. And there were some spirits that were. So wait, 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 hold on. I I, I actually have a question for him really quick. Okay, go ahead. I have a question. Okay. Now I'm, I'm not, I'm not insinuating anything because uh, you said that you got out and you're okay, but you were institutionalized at one point, correct? Mm, I'm about to be institutionalized tomorrow. So. Oh, really? Yeah. They're putting me, they're putting me away. Are you? No. Seriously? Yeah, like this is my last last day as a free man. Um, there's things that, that I can't reveal to you, but uh, <laughs> yeah, have you seen? Have you? No, have you seen uh, Friends? The you know Friends, the show Friends. No, I've never seen it. No, I thought you didn't watch television though, so I don't. know. I, I don't watch television. I, I quit. But I'm I'm going away tomorrow. You won't hear from me again. So. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, so you're you're gone. Like at, after this yeah. point, you're, there's no there's no more Patrick Coleman. You're just gone. Well, I'm I'm a, I'm not sure what's going to happen. The the oh, way okay. this world works, the way this world works is, if I'm not a psychic medium and a shaman, then why am I still doing this 16 months later? Uh huh. Okay. So I have I have a question. Okay. Um, you you kind of mentioned in your in your video that we watched last time. Uh, you mentioned that you'd had encounters with ghosts, um, with uh, demons, uh, with aliens. Um, so that, that's kind of interesting. I, I, I was I was kind of wondering though, uh, like what else is real? Like goblins, zombies, <laughs> you know, elves, I'm, I'm a, trolls, well, if you, like uh, vampires, well, uh, werewolves. Like well, like how much. Like I, I mean, you obviously believe in some stuff that I don't believe in. So I, I'm just interested. No, I, like I, I, in I, in your world, like how much of this stuff is true? Like is is all that out there, or is it just the stuff you mentioned before? The the thing is that I have no beliefs. No I beliefs. Have no opinion. No opinions. I, have, I mean, I don't believe in anything. As a shaman, if I start to believe in something, it gets crazy really fast. So I, see. I don't believe in anything. Like, I don't believe in anything. Um, things happen to me, they they are what they are. Like, um, and I know it's, like, funny, the last time that I, that I saw you guys on this episode, you know, like, oh, he doesn't judge anybody. He doesn't judge anybody for being reptilian or whatever. I mean, when reptilians show up in your apartment, you're like, what are you supposed to do? Get mad? Get angry? I, I, mean, I if don't I told know. You, if I told you that some grays made sure that my oven was turned off, <coughs> so that I would stay home. I'm sorry, what did you say? What, if some what? So, if I told you that some grays showed up in my apartment, to what is it? What, what, what are grays? Grays are aliens. I mean, it's, it's so fucking ridiculous, guys. Like, I really cannot process this that happens to me. It's like, Oh, some grays showed up in my apartment to make sure my oven was turned off. Is that what like is that like the classic thing? the classic white alien with the big head and the big, big black Absolutely. eyes and stuff? Oh, okay. Are so the here, uh, so here I'm laying in my bed, yeah. and then like some grays show up to make sure I turn off my stove. Isn't that lame? I mean, so they went. A, they traveled. A, yeah, that's pretty lame to travel across the universe. Just like, <laughs> hey. Patrick, turn turn your stove off, bro. You forgot to turn your stove off. I don't know. That's kind of actually how is that? That's actually kind of considerate of them. I mean, they traveled a long way just to give you that piece of information, and you know, otherwise, you maybe your house would have burned down or something. They're very considerate people, and I know you guys think I'm a crazy man because I think you're crazy. (laughs) Well, because we're all insane. No, I don't. I don't. I don't believe you're crazy. I I don't believe anything. At all? <laughs> no. Who believes? I have that? Who no, no. I have. I have. I have no beliefs whatsoever. I'm. Me. I'm like you. I, I've ascended to the rank of shaman. So. Wow. How yeah. did this happen? Shaman? Yes, he is. Yeah. Now. I just became one. Talking. I can to you. tell just yeah. by sitting next to him. Ben oh can God. tell the difference. 
Yeah, yeah. It's like instant. So, Bam. TJ, can I talk yeah. to you? TJ. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. TJ. Yeah. I have a message for you. A me- from who? Um, I want you to uh, throw away everything in your apartment that does not make sense. I don't have an apartment. I have a house. Well, you want me to, you go you want to throw away everything that doesn't make sense? Yeah. Throw what away is, everything that does not make sense. Okay. Give me a... What, what is the standard for what makes sense? Okay. So you guys are atheists, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So have you w- looked at the work of Fadem Tabare and Joshua Luxor? No. No. Do you, do you know that uh, the female psychopath and narcissist is destroying humanity? Mm-hmm. Okay. The female psychopath narcissist? Yeah. Sounds like my ex. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm going to break it down for you guys. Okay, break female it down. Female psychopath narcissist, like, no. They, right. they do not know. They do not know they're sick. Okay. Female psychopath narcissist. Okay. I, we, we... Tabari, Joshua Luxor. I have mm-hmm. to go. I love you. I'm being arrested right now. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, Patrick. He got his plug in before he got arrested. Yeah, Patrick, you're not. Patrick is never going to post videos to his channel again. Yeah, yeah, I'll believe he that. He will be when gone tomorrow. Yeah, we were we were nice to him while we, you know, we were nice to him. I think most people expected us to to be unkind. To no, him. no, the whole the whole. Well, it's it's funnier if uh, if he if he's able to espouse what he yeah. believes. Yeah, and, and he, he deserves he deserves a place to air his his uh, his views. He yeah. has an unconventional way of looking at the world. Yeah, and that's fine. That needs to be be shared. For yeah. the, the, you know. Now, by the way, earlier he did tell us that when the reptilians captured him, that they took his computer away. But he did upload a video five hours ago, and he he told us that he did it on his iPhone, but. The thing about that is, is that it doesn't it, really look like it. it. it you looks, guys can go to his channel and judge for it yourself. It looks but. like all of his other videos, which are supposedly from his computer. Someone sent go. us a Ryan Wiley montage, and the the question is, can you survive a Ryan Wiley montage? The answer is probably no. Yeah, let's let's see how long we can take. Can you survive a Ryan Wiley montage? Let's find out. <laughs> Can we turn it up? for some more free unsolicited advice. Today we'll be talking He's about Jacqueline Glenn, star of my... He's given us free unsolicited advice. Thank you. Wow. I could never get that anywhere else. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. You're so I'm benevolent. So, well, you know, it's look better... No, no, look. It's better when Ryan Wiley gives unsolicited advice because he's so smart. Didn't you know he that he has a math degree? <laughs> Did you not... Were you unaware of that, Ben? Are you not aware he, of how unworthy you are to lick Ryan is, Wiley's <laughs> math degree? Is this something that he says? Often? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, if if I, there was, I, actually, if, I don't watch any of his, his stuff. The only thing I've ever seen from him are was the a one, few tweets and the one that you did a video on. Oh well, look at his Twitter when we have him on our show, and you'll yeah, see like a thousand it's, tweets within a couple of hours tonight. He will take to Twitter to to send me five thousand tweets. He thinks having a, a and every time and I'll be like, can can why don't you if you have all these opinions, why don't you come on the show, Ryan? Yeah. And he's like, I will not degrade myself by going on your foul programs. Ah. <laughs> it's like okay, he's like you. He basically just said, oh, you would just win with rhetoric, whereas I would be trying to use reason and logic. Reason and logic in how what? many characters? Yeah. You know, I'm <laughs> I mean, sitting there like. He, okay, if, if, if that, it'd, be, it'd be one thing if you didn't want to engage me, right? But you write me constantly on Twitter, and then I say, okay, you obviously have a lot to say to me. He's mad about this. I am. tough. Because if you have that much to say to me, you can say it to me in a format that I can actually respond to without annoying my entire Twitter audience by spamming them with 10,000 tweets to at Ryan Whiny well, no, no, that is a new Twitter account. Yes, Ryan, right there is a Ryan Whiny. Yeah. I know, Actually, they keep tweeting me. Why don't you love me? <laughs> really? That's yeah. that's how That's funny. We we funny. do we do posit that Ryan has a a secret crush on you, Jack. Yeah. I 
Didn't yeah. you know? Do you know that he has? Well, he has a playlist dedicated to he you. He was like, people don't just I know, watch Jacqueline. And you know what? I haven't watched a single one of those videos. Aww. Jacqueline's an attractive girl. I know. And that's why. I need to, I need to watch. I need maybe people I should. People want to watch her. <laughs> Jacqueline has. <laughs> is the only reason anyone cares what she has to say. Yeah. Seriously. I heard him say that on whenever you did your video on him. It's like. I'm know. sure that I'm sure that wasn't insulting at all. I mean, no. you know, something along those lines. No, but, I mean. Honestly, I don't care. He's a feminist, though. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I love the feminists who bash me in ways that relate to my being a woman. It's like, you know, if you, if you don't like my ideas, fine. But whenever you, you know, start using, you know, words that are like, I don't know, whenever you direct your statements at my body or, you know, something about me that's like feminine or the fact that I only have an audience because I happen to be a woman, it's like, you're a feminist, really? I mean, PZ Myers did the same thing. It's kind of hilarious. Yeah, that fat. St Don't read our chat room while you're uh, on here, because there's a lot of trolls. No, our, our chat room is very enlightened. <laughs> yeah. We attract only the highest caliber of listener here at the yes. Drunken Peasants podcast. Jack and Glenn like hate train hour. And I'd like to clarify that I don't actually hate Jacqueline. Like, I have nothing personal against her. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So he titled all the videos... But wait a minute. Train, That's but... bull**** because, because actually even in videos he's done that we've responded to, he said, and that's why I hate Jacqueline. So oh, he, he's okay. kind of... Thunderfoot is a horrible I mean, person. Kinda... He's kind it's of like, flip-flopping on that. It's like how someone prefaces a statement that's in extremely offensive with no offense, but... <laughs> like well, I'm not racist! That... You know, right. like something like that. I don't actually hate you, but I'm going to end certain statements with and that's why I hate you and title the string of videos hate train. Right. Yeah, yeah, he did call it hate, hate train. train. It yeah. almost sounds like an abusive title. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, I think I think I know what was going on in his head when he titled that hate train. Makes me think of soul train for some reason. Probably yeah. the the word train. Yeah, exactly. That would probably be the connection. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that I don't like Jacqueline Glenn, and that's mostly because <laughs> I feel like she's actively trolling to be my least favorite atheist on YouTube. Trying to what? I don't know. I don't know. No. Oh. He's trying to... <laughs> YouTube, I heard you... So here's what Jacqueline should do. She should, one, maybe go on YouTube or, I don't know, somehow take a religious studies course and really understand religion. And, and okay, literally... so let's... Jacqueline, you don't understand religion. At all. What a, what a, okay. what a qualification to talk about religion, Jacqueline Glenn? I guess maybe the fact that I was, you know, raised Catholic and went to Christian school from kindergarten through senior year in high school and then actually did take theology courses in college. Uh, but I guess, you know, that's no. not important. I mean, <laughs> no, that didn't happen, Jacqueline. You are a liar. Liar. I don't have a I don't have a math degree, but I do talk about religion. Oh, sometimes. that's that is the problem actually. Your lack <laughs> of a math degree. I have a bio If you degree. only had a math degree, you would understand that you're an idiot. I, I don't hear a lot of people that have degrees talking about the degree that they have. Why don't normally. you know what he should do? He should he should get you know how like some people put the pictures of their lover on, on their shirts or whatever, like <laughs> corny shit or their kids. He should have his math degree on a shirt so that everyone he meets can see oh wow you have a math degree that's so special and they tussle his hair up good job go. ryan congratulations on your meth degree i mean math I mean, degree I, I i've done videos that are scientifically related like about biology and stuff and at no point <laughs> have i ever felt the need to be like and i have a bio degree like it's just so pompous yeah Ugh. So, uh, he made a video about TJ recently. No one cares about your bio degree. The only thing that's... Yeah. Right. You know, Don't or you know? have to say. Yeah. You know, exactly. No, no. Every... As far... Your audience watches your videos on mute. Let's be honest. You, you know, know? I, I, I am not going to deny that that happens, but to say, <laughs> that that's, to say that that's the only thing that I <laughs> have accomplished, you know, the only reason for any success is because of people fapping to my videos is a little bit offensive, you know. I just wonder, for someone who's a you know, feminist. Yeah, no, no, offense, feminist. no offense to you, but like, there's better stuff you could fap to on the internet, exactly. right? I say that all the time. There are girls that like have their 
popping out in every single video. Like, right. Face? Uh, like, you can, in, in five minutes, we could be watching, a, like, not even five minutes. In, like, oh 30 God. seconds, we could be watching, like, a girl shove a baseball bat up her ass or anything DJ we knows. wanted to. Yeah. DJ knows. You, any, you could. Anything. <laughs> Like bam, there it is. <laughs> but they're gonna just. What are you like, Emerald? Now it's yeah. like bam. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the porn Emerald. Yeah, that's what you are. Uh, but no, like, but but why would you jerk off to Jacqueline? You know. Thank you. It's yeah, just, I don't know. It's it's creepy and it's like you know weird. But <laughs> I mean, I've done it a couple times. I'll be honest. A couple times. Just twice. Twice. <laughs> you know, well, know. this week, but <laughs> you know. Talk about like today. Today, yeah. not not today, not today. Really? No, I was too busy off to other stuff. <laughs> Jacqueline is a small part of my story schedule. Well, I you pencil her in. Too. Very small. Very small. Insignificant, really. Thanks. You're once, welcome. Once or twice, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. let's let's continue with this the Ryan Wiley montage odyssey of greatness. Do, do you want to keep going, or do you want to play the? Video? No, no, we. we the ch Ben, do you not remember the beginning of this video? It's can you survive? We I have cannot to. Survive. We no, we gotta get through this. We gotta that, go through this. I'm having a hard enough time knowing that I'm gonna have to play another video of it. Engage. We'll do that later. Engage. Okay. Improving your content would just take maybe we're searching a half an hour before each video, making sure and reaching out to people. I'm gonna write an assignment for you. I would like you to research for at least a half hour before you make your next video. Well, you I know, have a math I never degree. ever research anything. You know, I no. just kind of. You just pull. You, you just. She, she actually tweeted me that one time, and I didn't know who he was. I just figured it was some like you know religious douchebag trying to harass me. You know, don't you ever read anything? Don't you ever do any research? Like they do research outside of reading the Bible. So that's always frustrating. So I responded, not knowing it was him, being like, "Yeah, no, I just." He was like, "Okay." <laughs> And then later on, I realized, like, oh, that's that kid who makes all those videos. It's like, kind of funny. Someone who read that that had no idea what was going on was like, this girl pulls ass on her channel. I got to watch that shit. Yeah, that's, maybe that's how you got so many people over there. Uh-huh, exactly. Um, <laughs> no, but, but he, you know, he, he's a, you, have you ever done, what's the, have you ever done research on your videos, Jacqueline, or is it just you, you make it up as you go? I, I like to completely fabricate everything that I say. Yeah. Right. So. Uh -huh. That's, you know, that's better because then you can just make any point you want, you know, exactly. Uh -huh. like actually that that's the Alex Jones approach. I don't know if we, we were just watching an Alex Jones yeah. clip a moment ago. You're familiar with Alex Jones? Yes. Right. We were just watching Alex Jones clip a minute ago and we found out that atheists are actually secret cultists because he's done extensive research and it, his, his research has indicated that. Yeah, a lot of people have done research and, and proved that atheists right. worship the devil too. You know, perfect. yeah, Makes he sense. did. That's what he did, and and uh, and he he showed his evidence. Oh no, I'm sorry, he actually did not show his evidence, but but he <laughs> has evidence. That's the important oh, okay. thing. Evidence does exist that there is evidence of something <laughs> existing. So uh, to that, I would just say to have him go look at my the most popular video that I have is that stupid response to the Ray Comfort quote documentary evolution versus god if you watch mm -hmm. that video it's like a 15 minute video i made like completely going through every single point and including you know all these different I, facts and science yeah. and i use my textbooks of college and stuff you know it's not like i just totally you know made it up so i mean if he wants to see videos with research you know go through my videos some of them honestly i just do videos on stream of consciousness type things, you know, an opinion that I have, on, of a feeling that I get about a certain situation that I've encountered with no, my family. Jacqueline, how to no, Jacqueline, no, look, it, you know? no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Every video, <laughs> look, no, Jacqueline, you have to follow, if you want to be successful on YouTube, like Ryan Wiley, you have to follow the Ryan Wiley recipe for success. 30 minutes. And that requires at least 30 minutes of research before each video. I mean, if I'm making a video about my experience with no, 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 you have to no, you have to research Jacqueline, your experience in, further. In the comments section of every one of your videos, I need a detailed bibliography. Right, please. Okay. I want to see at least like 20 annotations yes. to different articles and stuff. All right, <laughs> you know, cool. I I want to see empirical evidence for everything you say. Uh huh. Even <laughs> even just like your your opinion. Well, at stuff. least 30 minutes worth of evidence. Right. Yeah. That's what you need. Because that's all you need is this 30 minutes. Exactly. Let's, what other tips does uh, Ryan have for Jacqueline here? This is so interesting. People who might know a little bit more than you and, and trying to make sure that everything you're saying is okay. 
And I'll even offer, right? <laughs> I have an email. I put it in my... Wow. <laughs> really? Wow. Ah, desperation. The scent of desperation. Wow. <laughs> wow. So is, is he just, like, butthurt or something? What's his problem? Yes. I, I, I've pieced this all together just now. Yes, and me in, too. The, in that moment, yes. I was like, I see the narrative now. Did you snub his ass or something? <laughs> I, I, no. <laughs> was he sending you like pervy messages or something? I don't know. I, I don't think so. No, he's okay. like, I have an email. I can help you do research. Yeah. <laughs> Write me, Jacqueline. I can help you. I can save you from yourself. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how kind of him, though, to offer his help. Yeah. He's I think it's guy. in my about section of my channel. Jacqueline, I will proofread your videos before you make them live. Wow. It's not always the case that putting an A in front of the word means it's the negation of that word. Some simple... Ex he's, we he's not wearing a collared shirt here. He's wearing an A-Eagle shirt, so that means that he's anti-Eagle, I believe. Yes. <laughs> How convenient. Yeah. Examples, an apple. Priority, where people believe, well, I believe well, in evolution. Did you say, for example, an apple? Yes. For example, an <laughs> apple. I'm sorry, is P-P-L-E a word that I'm not aware of? <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. It's, okay. You never heard just of it? Because, yeah, just because, yeah, well, it doesn't make any f***ing sense at all, does it? <laughs> yeah, just because just because Apple starts with an A doesn't mean you're happy anti pull. <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah, me oh, too. What a I, I was taking a drink. <laughs> oh my god, he's so stupid. Why? <laughs> Why does he think he's smart? If only he realized that he's stupid, this wouldn't have happened. Right now, I'm going to extend my offer to Ryan Wiley. I think his, I, th I think his math. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. You can, you can send me your videos before you make them live, and I can edit out mistakes like <laughs> thinking that apple is the A negating the word pull. Okay. <laughs> Just offering my, my, my email is in the description of all my videos. <laughs> feel free. Yeah, feel free. I'm pretty sure at this point that his math degree was something that a homeless person wrote on crayon on loose leaf paper and just kind of handed to him. <laughs> and therefore I'm smarter than those creationists. That's I'm good at math. So yeah, American Atheist, not my biggest fan at the moment. And overall, I understand their strategy for allowing Jacqueline Glenn to work on behalf of them because atheism at the moment is usually just a bunch of well-off white guys talking about things. And fortunately enough for Jack and Glenn, she's a younger white woman who doesn't talk about feminism very much. What do you think about that? I mean, I am a younger white woman that doesn't talk about feminism, but I talk about <coughs> women's rights issues. No, you don't. I don't know. You're wrong. <laughs> I do all the time. I mean, like, that's one thing that I get frustrated about with feminism, because, like, just because I don't identify as a feminist doesn't mean that I don't support women's rights. Like, Let me ask you a question thing. about the feminists, actually, because I've been wondering this. This is kind of a digression, but we can't okay. focus solely on, on Ryan here. We'll go crazy. Um, <laughs> no, no, I, I was wondering, like, I, I always hear, you know, uh, whenever the, the MRA crowd starts bringing up, like, oh, well, here, here's our, here, you know, the, the feminists are like, what, what ways are men oppressed in society or discriminated against society? And then the MRAs show, like, you know, the custody laws and the, you know, unfairness of the draft and, you know, stuff like that. And the feminists say, actually, those things are part of patriarchy. So, because, you know, it's only, that, that's only, it happens because women are thought as weak. But I'm just kind of sitting there like, okay, so if we all agree these are problems, what does it really matter what the cause is? Why can't, why can't there just be like, let's work together to solve these problems that we both agree are bad, but instead it's like, no, let's quibble over what's causing them. Or I let's mean, quibble over what we're being called specifically. Right. You know, let, let, that's really, I mean, like, they're, they're just like, let's compete for, the, for like these, these bullshit labels and distinctions that are just kind of meaningless anyway. Yeah. I mean, like I did a whole video about it titled like I'm radical feminist because I wanted to make the point that why don't we just say gender equality or you're fighting for equal rights among everyone? Why do you have to label it fem feminism? Because I mean, think about it. If you did that in terms of the atheism movement or whatever the hell you want to call it, you could say I'm an atheist, which I'm sorry, Ryan Wiley, but that actually does mean not a theist. 
would you actually go around saying I'm a Christian and I'm, you know, a Islamist and I'm a Buddhist and, you know, like I'm anti every other religion? Or would you just say I'm atheist or anti-theist to put specific labels on every single different mind, like tiny category to me just seems so. Yeah, then it gets then it just gets stupid, like metal genres, you know, it's just so dumb. Like (laughs) use one word. But one I don't know. word. One word. Patriarchy. Yeah. I yeah, um, yeah. I think it's wait, dumb. we're not. All right. Are we? Are we continuing with this Ryan Wiley shit? If you want me to, Let's, I. I want to. I, I, I want to out a while ago. I want to get through this. Do you really? I want to. Yes, I want to get through it. We got to okay. take the challenge, Ben. We're not uh, going to do the other Ryan Wiley video. Fuck that. We're okay. just We're just going to do this one. Okay. Sure. You do get to enter for free, but American atheists won't pay a dime for your travel or lodging expenses to get to Salt Lake City, Utah, which is nowhere near most major cities. And how gracious Other than of them Salt to Lake offer City, ten Utah. whole pro- Wait, yeah. wait, wait. What did he say? He said that they wouldn't pay for what? Something about them not paying for travel expenses? I don't even know what he's rambling about. Uh, they actually did pay for my travel expenses, so... I don't know. Is he talking <laughs> about himself there? I don't, I, don't know what's I, don't know. I don't even know what's going on. Okay. Let's keep going. Price is worth a value of forty dollars. That's a four hundred dollar value in total. But hey, if you're not well off to take advantage of this opportunity, they might point you in the direction of ride shares and shared lodgings. But if you don't want to share your time with a complete stranger, too bad, so sad for you. Because apparently, atheism must be a subculture of the well off. I mean, wh- so he's wait, complaining. Wait, wait, wait. That's, that's he's ridiculous. bitching that it costs money to go to the conference. I mean, like they can't just put it on for fucking free. You know how expensive conferences is. It's like really, really. Right. He's he's <laughs> acting like the conference. People. What is the, the conference is supposed to roll out the red? Hey, Ryan Wiley's coming. Roll out the red carpet. Throw down the flower petals at his feet, I mean, for he is a, a, a fucking perfect being. I mean, there are conferences you can go to that are free. I mean, Skepticon is free. So if you're actually, if you need to go to some event that's Yeah, but they don't, they don't, they're not going to pay for his hotel though. So, and they held it and they held this, this conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, which wasn't near anything. They did it on purpose because of whatever. I'm not going to go into the reasons, but it it had to do with Mormonism. So, (laughs) no, no, it actually, it was just a slight against Ryan so that he couldn't go. I care about those people who'd want to come anyways. Well, this is pretty much what is happening with American Atheists. They've decided to create a really crappy contest where even if you enter, they then own your content and can do whatever they want with it. Now, usually when you do these type of contests, the organization owns the right to use your content. They don't own it. No, they want ownership. Which means, if they use the, your video, they don't have to cite if you have a YouTube channel, if you have a Twitter, who you are, what your name is. They might put some of those things in, but they're being charitable by doing it. Values. Okay. But the, are the, were the, I'm assuming the rules of this contest were there up front for anyone to read before they entered. So, I don't yeah. really see that. I point. mean, I specifically had to mention that fact in the video that I made for them. I mean, it's, there's rules like that for almost any video entry I've seen for different things. Like, they want to own the rights to your content because of legal reasons, because shit's happened before, and people get sued, and they're a nonprofit organization. They can't afford that. It's kind of a cover-your-ass type of move, you know? No. I'm sure if you ask for a citation no. or something like that... It's just they would purely you, out of spite. It's legally beneficial to say that. No, it's, it's purely <sighs> out of spite, Jacqueline. Right. Okay. Think about what Jacqueline Glad has done in your two videos. He's obsessed with you, Jacqueline. About Islam. <laughs> Her, her big arguments have been that Muhammad has done a lot of wars, therefore he's not peaceful, and that he married a young girl, therefore he was a pedophile. But, but for many of these Muslims, they already believe that Muhammad is perfect. So even if he married a young girl, that's part of his virtuousness. So you have to understand, the axiom starts with Muhammad being perfect. So you're not going to attack that by saying, well, Muhammad married a young girl, therefore he's a pedophile. So you're not allowed to refute the assertion that he's perfect by showing evidence that he's not? Apparently. <laughs> but I mean, I guess I guess, I guess what I, I guess I get what he's saying that you know, if if someone just assumes that he's perfect, then everything he does is perfect. Therefore, you're not going to be able to change their minds well, by pointing to things that you think are imperfect, but well, I mean, yeah, but you it's know, the same thing with 
people's interpretation of God to say that God isn't great or God isn't awesome and point out the horrible things that he's done, like, I don't know, genocide. Um, right. I mean, because it's, it's at oh, some oh, point, it's it, be yeah, it, it becomes you know? hard to defend, right? Yeah. I mean, and that's part of the reason, you know, that people were able to get me to open my mind to atheism because they pointed this shit out. And honestly, I hadn't looked at it like that before. And whenever the evidence was stacked up against me, I had to fold. I mean, pointing out the negative things to people who previously, you know, ignored those facts because of their idea of this perfect being, it might change I, their I, mind. You never know. I want to. I want to. I want to say that Ryan Wiley is actually tweeting about our show as we're doing it. So let's see. Let's let's <laughs> let's respond to some of Ryan Wiley's tweets. Apparently, defending myself on Twitter is desperation, but responding to a significantly smaller channel four times in four weeks isn't. Respond. You you keep responding to us. All you have to do is stop engaging us, and we'll fucking leave you alone. Uh, how are you? You're not defending yourself on Twitter. No one was attacking you on Twitter. No one was going. I wasn't going after you on Twitter. You were fucking tweeting at me. It's impressive that Jacqueline Glenn knows I want attention without watching any of my videos. How skeptical of her of her hashtag logic. I mean, there's a whole entire string of videos that he's made called the hate train or whatever the hell i mean he tweets me non-stop i have other people commenting on my shit about him it's kind of transparent without having to right the yeah i know but he doesn't understand that he thinks like unless you're an expert on everything he's ever done you're not allowed to talk about him at all i mean i've been doing this for a while i'm used to different people being trolls now normally they are you know theists but i'm used Some... to different trolls approaching me like this and it's no different you know, it's the same pattern. I've seen it so many times before. He thinks that, you know, I'm, I'm making an assumption off of him. And it's like, yeah, but I've seen it so many times before. After a while, it's not surprising anymore. And it's easier to pick up on. The, then he said, uh, when did I say I hate Jacqueline? Never did. Again, if you misrepresent me, I can be whatever you want. Well, I mean, you called your videos hate train. Hate train. And also... Right, and, and also, I do believe that in the last response we did to you, you did say you hated Jacqueline. Now, if I'm mistaken on that, I apologize, but I do believe you said that. Um, if only there were a way to defend yourself from these accusations, says Molly Cox, um, sarcastically, because, I've, he, because everyone knows that I've offered to have him come on this show, and Ryan Wiley's response to that is, if he's misrepresenting me when I'm not there... Why would he do better when I am there? Maybe if you were here and you feel like you're being misrepresented, you could respond in real time and correct me and have a discourse. And you know what? If you're so much smarter than I am, you're so much brighter and more intelligent with your fucking math degree and your collared shirts and your professionalism, <laughs> then you could come on my show and show me for the fucking retard I am. Come show how stupid I am. It's just like your little fucking moron friend Coughlin. He's always, TJ's an idiot. TJ's a moron. Then come on my show and prove it. Come on my show, match wits with me. Hold on, who was his friend? Coughlin. No, no, no. Oh, it's not it would have been better if it was louder. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> you suck, Ben. I had it. But any, an edible napalm, any of these guys out there that criticize me for being a stupid fuck who doesn't know what I'm doing, who's not funny, who's not entertaining, who is in no way interesting, who is just a fucking idiot talking out of his ass week after week, and he just keeps getting inexplicably rewarded by these retards on the internet. Why aren't we popular like him? Ah! Why don't you come on my show? Come on my show. Have it out with me. Show the world how fucking stupid I really am. Show them how I'm a piece of shit. Demonstrate it for them. <laughs> but I want Ryan Wiley first. Uh, I don't know. He, he might have some more tweets, but I guess we'll just proceed with his video. Okay. Okay. It's not working. Oh, shit. What was, was his friend's name again? Which one? The one that you said his friend was like fighting you or something too. Coughlin. Uh, yeah, Coughlin. Do you know who he is? No, I thought it rang a bell, but I don't think I've interacted. He's with him. a he's an English wow. guy, uh, and yeah, he used to. He's he's had a lot of channels, kind of like Brett Keen has. A yeah, lot he, of his he, channels have vanished he's over the very, years. Similar to Brett Keen in that regard. Yeah. It's the wrong way of thinking about things, and it's very relatable to saying, "Well, Muhammad had a bunch of wars." Therefore, he's not peaceful. Really, you have to ask the question, 
who is Jacqueline making these videos for? Because in several parts of that second video response, she says, oh yeah, this Muslim made this video for other Muslims. But I think for a lot of people who watch Jacqueline's video, it's pretty apparent that Jacqueline doesn't make videos for religious people. She makes videos for people who are non-religious. We got through it. I didn't get through it. I would have stopped watching it. You suck, Ben. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, you do. There are some Wait, people asking... So what do you what do you think of that last point, Jacqueline? I don't, I don't make videos for religious people. I make videos for what? Just atheists, or I didn't hear what he said. Uh, he he. It kind of cut off, but I mean, it, it was basically just saying you're preaching to the choir. You're just you're just making videos for the other atheists out there. Well, in a sense, I am. I mean, there are a lot of atheists out there who are closeted or who are afraid to even maybe admit to themselves that they're atheists or they're on the fence. You know, I'm trying to get those people. And also, there are a lot of religious people out there who I make videos for. Not every video is intended for the exact same audience. You know, there are I mean, videos uh, out there. Not, not even all your videos are atheist videos. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, to think that every single video has the exact same intended audience or the exact same, you know, desired results is kind of moronic. I mean, like you said, I don't even make every video about atheism. Like the video I just posted right before I got on this was about... Uh, radical feminism and the negative effects that I see of it and how frustrating it is to deal with you know so it's not it's not always about atheism and whenever it is about atheism sometimes I am directing it towards atheists because they're too silent and really whenever you're trying to get something accomplished having a large percentage of people who agree with you be completely silent is not helpful so I'm trying to get those people to speak out and do things and vote you know so yeah sometimes videos are directed towards atheists but I have a lot that are for Christians and are more soft-spoken and are a little bit more <laughs> not dumbed down but phrased in a way that is not going to you know immediately get them pissed off and stop watching the video kind of thing so I mean it just depends on the video yeah we're and gonna I think play I have, I have to calm down a little bit too in some no you videos. didn't like, you're angrier in my videos <laughs> no you're, you're you're right you used to be you used to be a little angrier I, I missed that Jacqueline you need to you need to get the rage back well, what I, needs I, to happen in your life to there was fill a little more anger. edge before at the beginning yeah. I would have to say and a little Christian too I think it's, um, I think it's just about anything like whenever you do anything you're you're more I don't know more radical almost in the beginning like whenever I first decided to become a vegetarian I was way more radical about it and I was talking to people mm. and making them feel bad about eating meat and now I'm like I don't care what you eat I'm just doing this for me this is what I personally think I'm not pushing it on anybody and now it's kind of like that a little bit more. I, I got I got shit on for eating veal yesterday. Actually, <laughs> both um, both my brother and Ben were <laughs> were pissed at me. I know people who but, yeah who are not vegetarians who are against that too. So yes, and they're both they're both they both had like steak too. So it's like <laughs> no no it's okay once they're older, but when they're little, just come on, don't eat them when they they're little. Lock them in the fucking box and don't let them move. Don't. They're fine. They like it. Yeah, they, they like, like it. the box. Um. So Jacqueline, in, I, I watched your first video, and you mentioned that that you liked Onision back then. Do you still like Onision? Just a question. I haven't I haven't watched his stuff in forever. Okay. The only reason why I say that I liked him was because he got me into vegetarian stuff and also into some atheism stuff. So that's kind of the reason for that. Like I think that when I initially started making videos, it was because I saw him making videos and I wanted to make videos too. But ha then they got kind of weird for me watching him, and I stopped. <laughs> yeah, she are. Oh, hey, there we go. It's G-Man. G-Man, what's going on? We're we, everything's going good, G-Man. How's it going yeah, for you? Yeah, it's been a while buddy? since you've been on here. How's it going, guy? Oh, I'm on air on Drunken Peasants again. Yeah. Yes. You know we always you're, call you're you on, on air. You're on the air with Jacqueline Glenn. Yeah, Jack. Jackie's here. Hello, G-Man. Oh, how you doing, Jacqueline? Good. How are you? I'm 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 doing okay. I'm a little tired from work today. Oh, uh, uh, okay. All right. Well, we don't we don't want to bother you, G Man. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you don't have to be on if you don't, you're busy. If, you, if you're busy or something, you know, you don't you don't got to do this. You know, we just we no, just no, we just no, want to. I got no problem. I look forward to these conversations. Oh, cool, cool. I don't even know what we're gonna talk about. We were just talking about you, and then we figured we'd give you a call. Um, we were actually we were kind of talking about the whole uh, Catholics aren't aren't Christians thing because actually I believe Jacqueline, you you went to Catholic school so, too, right? Yes. And so ben, did I. Ka ben and K Jacqueline through 12. both went to Catholic yeah. school. So maybe you could explain to Jacqueline real quick why why Catholics aren't Christians in your view. 
I mean, I know we, I know we kind of done this before, but maybe we could, maybe it'd be a little different with 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 Jacqueline in the mix, you know? <laughs> okay, all right. It's it's, it's just their doctrines. Uh, for example, uh, a Protestant Christian believes that um, that they're saved because of the work that Jesus Christ uh, um, accomplished on the cross. Um, anyone who places their faith in Him alone is saved. The Roman Catholic, however, placed their trust in a trust in a plethora of things. Uh, the Catholic Mass. Um, they they they. They put their faith in the seven sacraments, rosary beads, Hail Marys, and a whole plethora of other things that are not um, required uh, in Scripture. Mm -hmm. I give you like the brief, the brief uh, explanation of it. Not to mention the Pope. Uh, the Pope is uh, claiming the, the 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 Pope claims to be the vicar of Christ or to be the person that is um, the head of the church. Uh, the Protestant believer believes that Jesus Christ is the head of the church, not the Pope. We don't believe in apostolic succession. Uh, there's no proof that after Peter, that um, that that whoever was the person after him was actually considered an apostle, because by definition it could not have been. So what do you think about that, well, Jacqueline? I mean, yeah, I agree with all that. I always thought that Catholicism was fucking stupid, but I don't think that that means that they're not Christians just because you decide to you know, have your specific definition. I mean, weren't Catholics kind of the OGs? Uh, I'm talking about the Roman, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. Anyone who buys into the, to Vatican I, Vatican II, the Council of Trent, who, who, who believes the Pope is the head of the church, who, who believes in these nuns, who believes that Mary is our mediator, and so is St. Paul, St. Jude, St. all these other people, St. Augustine. Yeah, you can Wouldn't praise these dead people when they can actually hear your prayers and pray on your behalf. G man, the reality you... is the Bible says that there's only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man that, the man Christ Jesus. G man, so I don't you... understand why people think that Catholics are Christians and <laughs> pagans of anything. G man, would you agree though that the original Christian church split into two churches, and that was the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church? Would you agree? Uh, with that? Yes, if I'm not mistaken, the the cat the, the Greek Orthodox Church uh, during that particular time was first. And the second, and the Catholic Church broke away from them. No, the they existed. were the same Long church, those... and then they broke apart. It wasn't that it was the Greek Orthodox Church. It was the Roman Empire Church, basically. Uh, you know, the new Roman Empire in Constantinople and the old Roman Empire in Rome. It's kind of like Star Trek and then Star Trek yeah. Next Generation. <laughs> but my whole point is is that the church existed before the Greek Orthodox Church uh, came into came into be. Uh, and, and, the, and the church existed long from? before the Roman Catholic Church has ever well, put together. Jesus. So, my, my, my big thing is, like, how can you say that a bunch of, I mean, the Catholics, I mean, you could say that some of their theology you don't agree with, you don't agree with apostolic secession or whatever, um, that's fine, I get that. But, I mean, the Catholics do clearly worship Jesus and call him their savior, so how can you possibly say they're not fucking Christian? Uh, there's a lot of people out there calling Jesus their savior. Uh, the Mormons do the same thing. Are they Christians? Well, the yeah, Mormons I would say I would say they are. God. I mean, well, really? if if really? yeah, I mean, well, if you believe in the divinity of Jesus, mm. they have a completely different version of Jesus. Though they call him Jesus, but it's it's not Jesus. I mean, they thought he was in America. Right, but they 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 you know it was like just because you update like Nolan's Batman is not the same thing as Tim Burton's Batman but it's still fucking Batman you know what I'm saying just because you change a well, few key details here and there question, uh, sure uh, uh, Jacqueline uh, if you don't mind me asking you a direct question how, how does one become a Christian believe in Jesus uh that's not enough believing in Jesus does not make you a Christian it just means it just means that that that, that you follow someone called Jesus it's a heck of a lot more to it than that I mean, like, there's so many different definitions. I, could you find me one quote Christian that follows the Bible word for word? I mean, there are so many different uh, quotes. I'm, one of, them. I'm Every, one of them. Oh, okay, really? So you follow the Old Testament, or are you one of those Christians who say that the Old Testament doesn't apply? Not only, not only does G-Man follow that the Old the, Testament is valid, very valid. G-Man has a 100% prayer return rate on all of his prayers. He gets a 100% rate on that, Jacqueline. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want you to change the subject. I, I, I would love. Do to you wear wear two different cloths at the same time? I mean, do you? There are so many. Do you eat shellfish? I mean, like there are so many specific oh, things. Oh, like, I gotta tell you something. I love shrimp. 
I love pork. Oh my God, I you're not a Christian. Lobster. You can't be a Christian. I love all those things because I understand that the Old Testament. Let it be known that G Man is not a true Christian. No, it was so oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very much a true Christian. I can assure no. you of that. Okay. No, no, you, you don't. Back to everything no, no, you don't obey scripture. the Bible. He you don't obey scripture. You, you, you're disobeying TJ. God and you're going to hell. No. TJ, you don't understand. No, he has what? the ability to choose what he wants out of the Bible. And as long as he follows the version that he thinks is applicable, he's a true Christian. And everybody else is not. Right. Well, Jacqueline, wait, you didn't answer my question, Jacqueline. And this is not subjective. Uh, exactly. How do you become a Christian, Jacqueline? She I did answer you your question. She I said you believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus. That's what she said. You uh, Jesus this. himself would disagree with you. He said in John chapter 3 that you had to be born again. That's so vague. That could mean anything. Oh, oh I, I, I can go into detail because I can go into that whole chapter. I'm quite familiar with it. John sure. Chapter go three, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just saying that uh, the born again is, a, is, a, is just a term that's open to interpretation like anything else. I mean, it's completely subjective. So what's your interpretation? A lot of people think... My, our interpretation is that being born again consists of believing in Jesus, accepting him as your savior, accepting his dominion over your life, uh, in, you know, uh, following the teachings of whatever you think the Bible teaches. And there's many disagreements as to what the Bible actually teaches. Okay, so Jacqueline, what's your uh, definition for born again? I'm curious. I've heard it different ways. A lot of people think that you need to have this like revelation or some kind of epiphany where you realize that you're the scum of the earth and then you have to accept Jesus Christ to save you. Some people actually believe that just means baptism. So I'm not sure exactly because I don't give it away. I don't think it means anything. Well, it but means, it actually means, and, and this is how I interpret it, okay? It means that you have a change of mind, okay? Mm -hmm. that, that you can't look at the world the way you look at it now and expect to enter the kingdom of God. As an atheist, if you look at the world the way you look at it now, you could never, ever, ever believe anything that comes out of the mouth of Jesus. Okay, because you probably lack a belief that he actually existed. I don't know. Maybe you believe that a person named Jesus existed, but until you're born again, you can't accept anything that he says. Okay, but the whole thing... You know what thing, I mean? So it's a change only, of mind. Okay, I get it. But the only thing that matters in your entire statement is my interpretation is. That's how you started it off. There's different people who have different interpretations, and that doesn't give them any more validity than anybody else's. It's all just somebody's opinion. Okay, so if it's somebody's that opinion, is. Jacqueline, let's, let's stick to the actual topic. We, we're talking about whether or not Roman Catholics are Christians and whatnot, right? So, so yeah, well, well, the, the, one place it says you have to be born again. Another place says that you have to turn from your sins, and that all that all, that's all coincides uh, together. You turn from your sins. You got to be born again, and you got to and, and and that you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to believe in His life, death burial and resurrection in order to be a believer you have mm -hmm. to confess with your mouth the lord jesus christ you have to believe in your heart that god rose up from the dead and if you do you will be saved that is scripture that's romans chapter 10 verse 9 uh romans chapter 3 so verse 23, let me just romans let me just ask hold on let me, let me just ask though what about what do, what about catholicism doesn't recognize that because it seems right. to me I'm like everything just you just that. said oh, catholics got would... a bunch of saviors um jesus christ is not the most uh venerated person in 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 right, Roman but but even Mary. but even the saints and and all the other religious figures, their power is still derived from the same God that all Christians claim to worship. So I mean, it's not like these are separate deities or separate saviors. This is all part of the the one general concept of God and His holy power. TJ, you're building an argument based on ignorance. Everybody who okay. calls himself a Christian. <laughs> oh, okay. Listen, I'm listen, sorry. Listen, TJ, listen, TJ, listen. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't know I was doing that. Okay. Mormons, for example, don't believe what I'm talking about right now. Mormons aren't they Catholics, though. That Lucifer and Jesus were brothers. Well, I it was the series. It was look. The so Book of Mormon was like the series reboot. Jesus okay. I actually, brothers. You know. <laughs> It's like there's old Doctor Who and then there's new Doctor Who. And it's not like, I mean, you know, Star Trek, Star Trek The Next Generation. I mean, it's a little different, but it's kind of still the same. It has an extra uh, few chapters to it. Right. I mean, it's, it's still the same basic story of this. there's God and there's Jesus and you have to capitulate to him and this is what he thinks and obey these rules. We're talking about Roman Catholicism, though. We're not talking about Star Trek. And of course, no, no, Roman well, Catholicism. No, well, I'm, 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 I'm making actually what's called an, 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 an analogy. Which Bible has more I'm comparing pages? Two uh, hey, I've heard know. of those before. Uh, yeah. Okay. Analogies are a good thing. But the problem is this analogy does not fit. That oh, okay. Roman Catholic. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying. I hear Jacqueline Quinn's explanation. Okay, right cool. We'll, we'll let Jacqueline talk. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. I don't understand what I haven't said that have you yet. I mean, the definition they of a Christian is somebody who believes 
that Christ is a savior, and by that definition alone, Catholics most certainly qualify. <clears throat> okay, Jacqueline, so, so, so when Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, should enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how do you interpret that? When he says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, should enter the kingdom of God. And then in Matthew 25, when he says the same thing too, when he gives examples of people who say they was a Christian, but was found that they were not a Christian and they were eternally separated from God. Right. How do you interpret I can, I mean, it, that's, it's, it, the problem is that you're asking me how I interpret something, which completely invalidates anything I'm about ready to say because it's all based on subjective opinion, but I will play along. <laughs> I don't, I don't really get how this is that confusing, to be honest, like it's just frustrating to me, but you could say that people who claim to be Christians don't quote, enter the kingdom of heaven because Maybe they said they believed something but didn't believe it in their heart or were only saying it to fit a part of a group. Or maybe they said it for personal reasons and didn't actually embrace the true meaning of being a good person, etc. You can interpret being that. Being a good person isn't going to make you a Christian. Okay, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, G-Man. We see demonstrations of that constantly. G-Man, does the moon <laughs> exist? Oh, God. Yes, the moon, yes, the moon exists. Uh, does it uh, emit its own light? Scott? It's been. Yeah, and Ben, the moon exists. But uh, Jesus said that not everyone who calls me Lord, 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 into the kingdom of God. And the Bible also warns about false prophets and false uh, and false Sure, and but false no, prophets. we're not, we're not denying, look, no, no, look, look, G-Man, 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 we, we accept that the Bible says that not everyone who says they're a Christian is a Christian. I accept exactly. that. That's fine. Yeah. That's but what, it doesn't, say. it doesn't in any way say... There, it doesn't. That doesn't mean that you get to decide who's a Christian and who's not, just based on uh, your yeah, interpretation. Hey, G-Man, the Westboro Baptist Church would say that you're not a Christian. Yeah, I mean, I there's can. plenty. Hey, G-Man, are you more? Well, every what what fucking Christian doesn't quote scripture? I mean, there's a if you go to Catholic churches and you sit in the pews, you know what book is in front of you? It's the fucking Holy Bible. How, G-Man, how do you feel about the yeah, Westboro Baptist so Church? Got the Catholic Bible with some books that got included in it. That is not harmonious well, what, with the rest what, of the Bible. What Bible, you know, what Bible do you that. what Bible do you read? What version? I use me personally for serious study, I sure. use the King James Version. But I will use other translations if I if, if I'm if I'm in a situation and that's the only translation around. Okay. But most of the time I use the King James. King James. Okay. But, but I, I like the point that you were making before. You were asking him, what do you think about the Westboro Baptist Church? Oh, those people are a bunch of heathens. They're, they're, they're definitely because not their, Christians. Because in their opinion, they would call you not a Christian. So what authority yeah. do you have over them in deciding who's better <laughs> Oh, oh I, I can demonstrate mine, though. I, but I can demonstrate mine, though. <laughs> but they he think has a they're notebook. demonstrating all the time. He has a Show notebook. Show me one place in the scripture where Jesus Christ taught that we're supposed to go outside of dead soldiers' funerals with signs that say God hates fags and fag enablers. You show me one place in the scripture where Jesus said to do that. Just one place. Obviously, there's not going to be a place for that, but there are different different places in the Bible where it talks about, you know, a man not lying. Well, show me if we if, if if we have to have that specific of a quote and verse to dispel something, then show me the quote and verse that says Catholics aren't Christians. Uh, I would have to show you through theology. Obviously, um, I believe that the Roman Catholic Church is teaching a lot of falsehood, and I'm sure Jacqueline Glenn and you and Ben Scott and and Ben. We're Scott's not here, actually. G-Man, okay, G-Man, so do me a favor and wish Scott well, a happy birthday. Say, hey, hey, Scott, or G-Man, say, uh, wish Scott a happy birthday for us. It was, uh, it was yeah, it was his. All right, thank you. There you me. go. That was cool. Right, now you can All right, tell go on with what you were saying. Sorry. Oh yeah. So, so basically, what I'm saying is, is that um, you guys would agree with me that Roman Catholics aren't Christians, because you don't believe that God exists. Right. Well, no, I mean, no. I mean, well, right. that, for uh, I mean, from our perspective, I mean, we, we don't we, we're not really trying to judge who's a Christian and who's not because we we don't really believe in Christianity to begin with. We're just trying to peg how your definition system works because we're kind of confused I by it because it seems like every time every time I talk to you, G man, I always feel like there's this this very like evasive sort of, of thing yeah. where you you know you're always your position's very slippery you redefine terms as you go along you know you, you lose the thread of the argument and then kind of like try to act like we derailed it somehow when we're just trying to make a point that's on the same thing so I'm, I'm just I don't know I'm, I'm just kind of like 
I get frustrated talking to you sometimes because I just I can't figure out what the fuck you actually think because you you're never very direct about it. You always keep everything very direct. vague and ambiguous. Are you serious? Yeah, you know, you're, Are you you're, serious? I'm never direct. Yeah, I'm very serious. Like you're never direct. When what, I what? first met you, what did I say to you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I was pretty fucking high and drunk. <laughs> The amazing atheist, the amazing racist. The he did. very first day I met. Oh you. well, no, no. Look, you did call you a racist. You're very, you know, you're very direct and forthcoming with like, <laughs> you know, snarky comments and stuff. Sure, <laughs> but I'm talking about the, your arguments and positions. Back like it's evidence. very, it's very difficult for me to actually peg what you think. Like but, I don't have a good grasp of where, where, what your theological framework actually is. And I've talked to you several times. Because I don't really know what you necessarily believe. Fully so. But, but you'd agree, uh, G-Man, you'd agree that, that we're not racist, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely uh, uh, believe that. Uh, All right. Because if, 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 if you guys were racist, I wouldn't be here right now. Right. Cool. Because we're not. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Jacqueline, is there anything you'd like to ask to, to G-Man? Anything you're curious I about? Mean, not really. Okay. <laughs> I, I got a question I'd ask Jacqueline Glenn. Okay, go okay. ahead, G-Man. Um, Jacqueline Glenn, do you do uh, video responses? Very rarely, but yes. My friend Chew Empiricism made a video about you, and oh, I noticed that God. you didn't respond to it. Who? What? Yeah, who Chew is... Empiricism. And I, and I was planning... I, it's really weird we're talking right now, because I was literally going to make a video response to one of your videos. Don't ask me which one. I have it downloaded to my computer. It's been sitting which one? But, um, but uh, a friend of mine made a video response about you, and you never... Um, you never responded. That's because it's true well, empiricism. Well, the thing is, is YouTube's changed. Like, I, they don't allow you to put video responses on videos anymore. So unless I, like, go out and actually search for myself, I normally don't come across them. And I don't know what the video is even called or who that person is that you mentioned. So I didn't see the video. Oh, okay. All right. All right. What was okay, it? What so... was it? What was it on? Like, what was it about? Uh, you, you said something about Christians. I forget. I, yeah, I, I really forget <laughs> that one video you did on religion. <laughs> hey, uh, but, um, can, can we pull up True Empiricism channel and about, see this oh, video? Really? Yeah, let, I, I'm curious. I want to see what's going on here with this video. This true is, empiricism TJ video. is asking me to play a True empiricism, empiricism video, but TJ didn't even want to talk to True Empiricism ever again. Just well, uh, I guess okay. that it would only be fair to bring him on again right, if we watch it. No. <laughs> maybe you, maybe you can. Let's just let's just we'll we'll put a pin in that for a second. Let's okay, uh cool. let's Who is let's. This? I, I, I want to know like about this person. I, it seems like you have a history with um, TJ, so I'm kind of no. Curious. Yeah, well, true empiricism is um, he, he. I don't know how to describe it, but he, he 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 was in here once, and we kind of had like a heated discussion where he asked me a bon bunch of what I interpreted to be leading sort of trick you questions. didn't answer my question and then he you know every time i tried to answer one it was like you didn't answer my question so i got pretty sick of him pretty quick and and just kind of fuck it yeah and then <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect timing yes it was uh, i'm doing something right for a change i know i want to rematch with uh I, I have a request i want to rematch with thunderfoot no i, I want to rematch he kicked my butt he beat me the first time no, you feet. said that you won, and we but played I the Rocky music for you. So you, 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 so you now feel like you didn't win the debate. Well, you weren't, you weren't prepared for I the lost debate, that though. Debate and, I, and I made it very clear I lost. Why so did I won, you? I no, you said that you won. It's out there for everyone to watch, man. No, I said I lost. He beat me. The video is called "My, my Lost." Uh, 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 G Man versus uh, uh, Thunderfoot. My you lost. You said that during it, though. You said that you won, and then we played the Rocky music for you. So no, you, no, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you look at the title of my video, I said I lost. I, yeah. I, so I, what it, going public right now saying I lost. Why do you feel like you lost in retrospect? Yeah, when you said that you won. I did a won. very poor job of uh, talking about his, his – uh, when he was asking me was uh, – did I believe that evolution was plastic or something like that? So I want to talk to him again and start so, and, off with some questions. And what him. else did you do, G-Man? What, what else did you do to Thunderfoot? Like what did, what did you do at the end? <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, oh! I was imitating his voice. I was this his is accent, drunken right? For crying out loud. I was trying to be funny. Yeah, okay. it was. It's fine. That's the tenor. Of I, the show. I liked how you called him a hoe, but 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 not really. You were like <laughs> thunder. You, well, no, no, no. <laughs> you you said Thunderfoot ho, and Thunderfoot was like, he just called me a hoe. <laughs> but don't you watch wrestling? 
Don't we do. Yeah, we all yeah. do. Me, well, me and Ben do. Jacqueline probably <laughs> doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. Jacqueline, not. do you watch wrestling? Probably uh, not. No. I didn't think so. Yeah. Jacqueline Glenn, do you debate? Because TJ's afraid to debate me. I've been asking this guy forever <laughs> to debate me. What are you talking about? We so debate all the time on the show. We're, we, we, you come on here and we have our little, our little spats yeah, how all the time. Are to have a rap whole battle? Thing to debate? A rap battle. Man, what's the name like, of this in true empiricism battle, video? We're supposed to have a debate, and you keep telling me we're gonna have a we're gonna have a rap battle, and it never happens. And you're mad at you. I'm very busy. I'm sorry. A rap battle? Okay, what about a yes. Debate? Yeah. G Man makes rap videos. Do, should we play one of those? I, I'll instead? debate you or Jacqueline Glenn. I'll even debate Ben for crying out loud. I'll no, you don't want to debate me. Even that didn't you, end ben. good the last time. <laughs> ben has to get drunk to debate. Yes. You. And I'm not that okay, wasted. Okay, so I'll tell you get drunk, drink as much liquor as you want, and then debate me. I already did I, I, that. That's happened once yeah. before. <laughs> if oh, you couldn't yeah. tell that I didn't even know that. what was going on, uh, you would have known that I was wasted. Jacqueline, was... you should you should have been here for that show, Jacqueline, because yeah. it was hilarious. Ben was so fucking drunk that he kept asking the same shit over and over again. <laughs> yeah. And I was kind of like, oh my god. So, G-Man, what's the name of this true empiricism? G-Man. All right, G-Man, G -Man, we're trying to find this true empiricism video. What is it called? Uh, okay. I'm looking. He makes a bunch of videos, so we, I don't even we know. don't see it. I don't see Jacqueline's Both name. Both in the... channel, true empiricism. Yeah, I'm there. Video I don't see well, how long ago was it. Okay. How about this, Ben? I'll, oh, hold I'll, on. Uh, hold on, it, no. I okay, see we one. found it. Yeah, I see we found, one. I think we found it. Yes, thank you. But Jacqueline Glenn, how would you feel about a debate on the existence of God? I think I can beat you and show you that God exists with my answer prayer argument. Uh, you can, okay, but you understand how many people have experiences like that. Look they, at all the contradictions uh, in the Bible. Never mentions uh, any of them, and it, it advises... Pause that shit. All right, we're, we're going to watch this true empiricism video here. Can we put that on the screen? Okay. Yeah. I can't see it. nothing, by the way, guys. Let me oh, hold on, G-Man. Hold on, G-Man. We're going to share the, the screen with you in a second. Should I okay, do cool. it? Yeah, just go ahead and do that. Do, 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 do. All right, you should be able to see our screen in a, in a moment, G-Man. Okay. Can you see it? Nope. No? All right. No. Uh, I'm just going to go to your channel. It's going to be out of sync, but we'll just see. All right, let's 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 take a listen to what a uh, true empiric. It's um, how long has it been? I don't know. I can't read it from here. All good. Just play. All right. Are you all right, Jackie? Are you? I'm all is good. your is your psyche collapsing? Not yet. Not yet. It's about. The video to. is going to be a very quick response to Jacqueline Glenn. Jacqueline Glenn is claiming that she uh, is going to disprove Christianity or disproving. G can I stop it now? <laughs> oh, okay. Jesus. And she goes on talking about, uh, <laughs> go on talking about, well, look at all the contradictions in the Bible. Never mentions any of them. And it, it advises everybody to go and look on Google. Well, I can do the exact same thing. I advise everybody for any, uh, any supposed accusation. Can we just go and Google it because you will more than likely find a response. To we can, can we just stay really quickly I'm that the, the annotation placement in the video is horrible? Yeah, I'm already about to fall asleep, G-Man. When does this get good? <laughs> Just watch it. Okay. If this okay. is the Jack and Glenn one. Just watch it. Right. Every it is. single uh, supposed contradiction thrown at uh, thrown out at these atheists. Majority of it is just misunderstandings and ignorance that needs Bible studies uh, to be taken into consideration of uh, a different language. Also, uh, <laughs> this girl she goes on talking about. The, there are similarities between Horus and, and Mithra, and even if you can disprove these, you, you can't disprove all of them because there's a lot of other gods that were before this. Yeah, you can. And for a real quick example to show you how these people who are trying to compare these things don't have a clue what they're talking about, and they're just basing these things off of their ignorance and their understanding of Christian society, where well, we celebrate Christmas on the 25th, for example, uh, you see a consistency with these supposed gods when they're trying to parallel them to Jesus Christ, where they are supposedly born on the 25th, which many of these gods are actually disagreed upon as to whether or not they would have been born on the 25th, depending on, you know, these Egyptian gods or whatever. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered if they were even born on the 25th, because guess what? Jesus wasn't born on the 25th, and anybody who actually does research... G-Man. Yeah. 
what's going on with this guy? Can you like even explain to me what he's talking about? Okay, I tell you what. I tell you what. If you guys <laughs> let me bring true empiricism on the program, no. I'll let no, him. No, speak no, no. So I, I am not going to say. I've already seen. Okay. I haven't seen this, but I've seen people like commenting and saying <laughs> similar things to this guy. He starts off by saying that I my attempt was to disprove Christianity, and the first like. Within the first 30 seconds of the video he's referring to, I laughed at that notion saying it's impossible to disprove a negative. So right off the bat, he's already wrong about the intention of my video. And then he goes on to talk about details and specifics like the birthday being on the 25th. The point is, is that very few parts of Christianity seem original. That's the point. It's so clearly plagiarized. I would love plagiarized. to debate you on that. I would uh, love to debate you on that someday. <laughs> Someday, Jack. Because I disagree with you 100%. Someday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, see, I, I see, don't that's doubt the problem it. with you big time YouTubers. You know, you guys get so big, you forget how to actually defend oh, your Oh, G Man. Oh, why yeah. I, I, I want you to actually debate me. I'm I want so either big. TJ. What's that, G Man? I either want TJ, Cold the Dusty, Thunderfoot, or Jacqueline Glenn. I can throw you in the mix too. It doesn't make a difference. I, I fear no atheist. I don't believe that you guys can prove that there is no God. Well, you can't no prove one has ever said But that I can prove that God exists God. with my answer prayer argument. I can prove it. All right. All right, G-Man. Thanks, thanks for being on. We're going to have to let you go. We got a few more things we got to get to. All right, cool. All right, we'll we'll, All right. we'll get back to you on that debate Thank thing. You. Why, don't you, uh, why don't you write me privately or something, and I'll, I'll see what I can do on that. All right, I'll do that. Thanks. All right. Thank you for being on, G-Man. No problem. All right. Have so Jacqueline could disprove God has anybody ever actually seriously attempted that? I mean, come on. I've disproven God several he times. Has, he has a prayer journal where he marks that all of his prayers have been answered 100%. Okay, well then all it, those kids in Africa must just have, you know, a bad Well, no, the thing is that the answer is It's like a magic yet, eight ball only with less answers. Right. It says he says it has three answers. <laughs> yes, no, and I think the third one is wait. Or maybe, or something like Outcome that. Outcome unlikely. <laughs> yeah, it's like, reply hazy, try again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so we're going to bring Ryan, Ryan Wiley on here. I'm excited. Here we go. Sexually excited. Yes. <laughs> You've been waiting to talk to him for a while, TJ. Are you nervous? No. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about talking to Ryan, because I'm, af I'm afraid he might even be more frustrating than G-Man. But we'll oh, see. No. I don't know. I if like that's G Man. Possible. I like G Man. Like, even though I freaked out on him when I was wasted, I like G Man. Yeah, yeah you he did. Like a, he's a nice guy, at least. Yeah, you know? yeah, he is. Might be frustrating to talk to, but he's not like insulting well, or anything. Well, he was telling me that slavery in the Bible is okay, but slavery that happened to African American ancestors is not is not okay. So okay, well, that was a yeah, discussion that's... I had with him. <laughs> so that was very frustrating. Anyway, here comes Ryan. Here he comes to save the day. Yeah. America! What the hell's going on? What is happening? I don't know. Hold on. We'll bring Apparently it. we're having difficulties. Not really. Difficult. diff o -cult. Here he is. Alright. Here he comes. Here he comes. In our asses. Oh my god. Yeah. Is he on? Ryan? Yep. Yes, I'm here. There Hello. you are. Hey. It's a miracle. Can I, can I have a chance to it's explain a like, miracle. why I don't like, don't it's like a miracle. Can, can I have that? Yeah, yeah go, go ahead. ahead. Go so, ahead, sure. So, so, 30 minutes of prior on. research oh. is not available whenever you're doing things live. Well, I've, I actually have been consistent on this in, in the past. I actually made a video about it more than a year ago explaining that I mm -hmm. think that live debates are not meant to create knowledge about a subject or spread knowledge. Right. Rather, it's about talking. So, points. you it's think? About, well, I, you know, I, I can agree with you to an extent on that, Ryan. I mean, like if you're watching like a news show, I mean, the no, Democrats but, but, like, and the Republicans I, I, are not making very substantive I, I, I points against each other. I would like at least understand this, because right, this is what creationists do. Well, no, no, no. Here, here's what I don't understand, Ryan. I don't understand why you make so many tweets. Because, towards me well, and, and, to, and okay, wait, hold so on like, and towards Jacqueline if you don't want a discussion if you don't want a discussion don't address me because I will give you a
discussion every time. Because I don't think this is a discussion. I, I, there's no reason for me to believe that. This but is you can discussion. do it on Twitter. You yeah, can do it on Twitter. Right. No, you, you're right. You don't. You don't. But you don't want. You're the one who doesn't want a f***ing discussion, Ryan. All you want to do is stand on your pedestal no, no, and preside no, I, I, from I, I on high. Video and then you respond to it, right? <laughs> That well, what? Okay, that how is that any different than? Look, but if we if, if we do it in real time, if we do it in real time, there's so much more that we can exchange right, 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 quickly but, but and easily. In real time, you can't think about subjects. You have to do okay. it in real time. Wait, wait, wait. Right? Yeah, you can. That's you not, can think. I mean, I'm capable of thinking think in real time. Subjects, but that's not how we do science. That's not how we do math. This that's isn't science, science or math. This is not science right. or math. But, this is f discussion. It's a separate area. I honestly prefer this type of forum because then if somebody says something, you can quickly correct them if it's a flat-out lie or off-base or interpreted in the wrong way. Right, or you can do a gish gallop where you just shout out a bunch of bull**** and no one can ever actually deal with it, right? This is what happens in creation circles, and you don't see, like, perhaps there might be a problem in this in other medias. Uh -huh. I think this... the other media is, I mean, this is, does not allow people to get away with saying anything because you have to be held accountable for everything you say when you say it, and it's no, a you lot to lie. No, you don't. What? Well, it depends on who. It depends on who you're having a discussion with. Right, I mean, look at you. Look at you right now. Right now, you're using discussion as a tool to to make your argument against us. Isn't this right, so I much don't easier? Think this is very effective, though. I think it's going. Okay, to be... it's. Go ahead. Okay. No, you go ahead. It's fine. I just don't think it's a very effective thing. All right, excuse me. A very effective. Like I'll do it for you because you guys asked for it. Eventually, right? Eventually, you wore me down, right? Okay. But I, I don't think this is a good way to do it all the time. Right, and I, I just wanted to get that across. That I don't. But think, this isn't. I don't. I don't think you should. You should automatically assume that someone's a coward, or they're unafraid. They don't want to have a live debate. Much in the same way that if if a scientist says I don't want to have a debate with a creationist because sure. I believe they're dishonest, then I, I think I think it's a reasonable suggestion to say, hey, I, I don't like debates very much. Right, uh, I don't scientists think they're very also don't engage. Scientists also won't engage these creationists in petty Twitter fights. Right, exactly. That's my problem with. Petty, it's not a petty. Twerk, okay, no, no. Right? Hold on, hold on. Let's 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 just get rid of the characterization of it as as petty. Let's. But here, let me just explain things from my perspective for a second, Ryan. Right. Can, can I at least hold explain on. the power dynamic? Right. You no, guys no, no. Hold, hold on, hold on. I, I will. I will. I promise. I promise. I will yeah, let okay, you I'll explain the power dynamic. I will let you explain it. Just give me one second. My problem is that you perpetually respond to me. And you, you perpetually right. throw okay. questions at me, and you, you make arguments towards me, but then you act like you don't want to debate every right. time okay. I so, try okay. to invite so, you on the show. I, I think the problem is you're thinking of that I'm actually directly addressing you with those tweets. The right. idea is I'm trying to actually create this counter, counter argument to what you're suggesting. Right? right, I understand that. But what I'm saying is that you, don't, it seem, you right. want to make this counter argument... But so, you don't so, want a counter argument to the counter argument. Now, hold no, on. I now, think, why don't I you? I think it's fine. I think you guys can always make a video and say Ryan mm -hmm. is wrong, right? Right. I don't. Sure. Ha I don't have that same capacity with your audience, right? Everyone in my audience is going to see what you're saying. It's not the same for your audience, right? True. Not everyone in your audience is going to understand the direct context of what I'm saying. Sure. So I, I think it's completely fair for me to directly live respond in tweets. Like I, I don't think it's. That but do you understand how asking for a video every time? I don't. You I don't want a video. Is a little bit I, I don't care if you guys respond to me. I, sure. I really don't. That's 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 a mischaracterization, right? I'm responding to your points. If you want to respond to my points, great. I, that's awesome. But if you don't want to, I don't care either way. The point is that I want to spread the notion that perhaps what you're saying is wrong. That's it. And sure. There are t like you guys are not above criticism. That's, that's No, no, I agree. Well, we're not I above criticism, but we're not we're also not above we're also not beneath <laughs> defending ourselves from criticism I either. either. I think you no, guys hey, Ryan, 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 no one has ever said that we're above criticism. I welcome criticism. If I hadn't welcomed criticism, I would still be but, a Christian. Have you seen some of the responses? 
like some of the responses I get to the arguments I make. Ryan, uh, the thing is, I, and you want you wonder why I, ca I categorize you into the attention seeking group. It's because I of don't the way. So let me like, finish. What, what I, it's what let me finish. I don't let me finish. Attention. Let me like, finish. If, if it's because of the way. Let me. Okay, I, you can I keep talking. Finish, finish, that's fine. We can just keep talking and talking and talking and no one can make a point. The point. Stop suggesting I want attention. Period. If you don't want me to suggest you want attention, then don't use attention seeking behavior. The titles of your videos and the aggressive nature of your communication is in a way that resembles so a troll. Joke. The joke is... It's not a joke. All, all I, your videos are... I actually explain train. this, and I explain this. The reason I call it the hate train hour is because a lot of people you feel want to that get whenever views. you're... You want to get views too, Jacqueline. Don't pretend you're a bug. Well, but we, we admit that, though. You're the one who seems to be in denial about it. You're saying you don't want popularity. But you, you say you want to I counter our narrative... Right. No, you no, you you say that your objective is to counter our narrative. Well, how can you counter our narrative if you don't match our popularity? You are the one who's sitting here bitterly talking to me about the power dynamics. Well, you know what? You can have the only the way you get uh, more supposed power. I don't consider what I have to be power just because I have an audience. Yeah, he's not one of the X Men, definitely. I, so, so but but I mean the the way you. Can I, can I right, you know, I, I understand. Okay, you're doing it for a higher purpose. You're doing it so that you can counter the narrative. You're so benevolent, Ryan. You're so benevolent. God damn it. You're so benevolent. Okay, yeah, sure. Here's the point. Here's the point, right? I, I think you have this narrative, right, that the only way to critique your guys or to critique anyone who's popular is for one person to become popular and take them out. But that's that's not that's not at least the spirit behind like keeping that video keeping atheists accountable like i don't think it should just mm -hmm. be me i think a lot of people should do it so when sure. you're suggesting that i'm doing this to become popular it's you're kind of missing the point right it's it I, I i want more people to understand that perhaps something's going wrong perhaps Maybe you should consider addressing things in a different way because yes. the way that you're doing it right now is very much resembling of a lightning rod like it's you are not aggressive. trying to have a conversation yeah you are okay trying so, to attack. so we can we can move into the first amendment Right when you suggest oh, things okay. like my interpretation of the First Amendment is equal to someone else's interpretation, you're missing like basic constitutional law. Mm -hmm. Teach us, Ryan. Teach us. We didn't do our half hour of uh, you know. Do I research. do I really have to explain <laughs> how the judicial branch works? Like you go ahead. Oh God, Ryan, please. <laughs> so I, I never learned this in, in the eleventh so, so, grade. So at the same time, you can't consider me both consent or condescending, and then. Let this me... is Ben. I'm very condescending, but go ahead. Explain it to okay. me, teach me. <clears throat> Do, is this real? Like, you don't understand that the Supreme no, Court... I'm no, 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 no. I'm sarcastic. I do understand. <laughs> but then oh why, my gosh. why don't you suggest things like, oh, Thomas Jefferson said this about the Constitution, therefore we should do this. That's no, no, no. Look, look, no, no, no. Look, you're, you're, see, where you're confused is I'm saying that the what Thomas Jefferson said laid down a certain philosophical framework wherein the constitution and the bill of the, right. the bill of rights okay. I, I should be that. able to be amended and you know look i understand that you and i disagree about how that should take place i think the founding it's, fathers it's were actually history. mistaken it's, it's a matter of law no no i That's, agree i agree i agree with your interpretation of how the law is now i even don't even disagree it's no i know no, look fine i agree i'm not all right, fine. It's like, not interpretation. You're right. You're absolutely right. What I'm saying is the way that it is is wrong. I'm right. criticizing the okay. existing I, I, system. I think okay, and I am advocating I, I, I for change. Right. right. But where Where does your change come in? Do you want an amendment to the Constitution? I don't know what I want. I either want so that's a, the problem, right? That's that's no, no. That's I I have part. I understand. I have an objective in my mind. I don't necessarily know the means by which that objective could be achieved, and I'm not claiming to. I am just advocating for uh, certain reinterpretations of how our rights and protections should be in in, a, in an era that's drastically different right, right, than right. the. But but you have to understand. How is that going to happen, right? Because I, I don't have a clear answer from you. Do you want to change the Constitution? Should Congress change that? Should the Supreme Court have a new ruling suggesting I don't, the first... I, any of those would be fine with me. Well, if you're going to Congress, there are problems because that's not how the Supreme Court has interpreted the First Amendment. Not even <laughs> sure. close to what you... If you believe the Supreme Court, well, there's problems of precedent. Again, it's not even close to what the Supreme Court believes. 
So right. your only option is amending the Constitution. Right. One, good luck with that. And two, it would be I, crazy. I like, never. I, I but here's I the thing: I, I the never. Of what you're suggesting. No, no. I, but I, I, I never recall saying that this was likely to happen. All I said right, was that I, I advocate for that change. What you're advocating. Okay, well, what are the consequences? Consequences of what you're advocating, if you believe that the First Amendment should just expand and protect you on YouTube, would mm-hmm. mean that, first off, that YouTube couldn't is, uh, establish any type of terms of service. Like, they couldn't kick people off their website. It, 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 would, mean, it would mean that you would have to allow someone like me to go on your channel and make videos. That's, that's the consequences of that. Well, not necessarily on my channel. No, no, no. It would have to be on your channel, right? If you have a private channel, you own it. And if you believe the First Amendment should just expand like that, that's the natural consequence. Like that's what's going to happen. If you I don't. The Constitution. I don't really and think that is a natural consequence. Slow. I think there's. Yes, I think there's. A natural consequence. No, I, because, I think there's. I think there's ways that that could be. Right, I think there's definitely right? ways that that could be negated. I don't agree with that interpretation. That's not what I advocate. Um, okay, okay, now you so can, you're, I mean, you're, you're making a, you're, 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 you're basically applying a slippery slope fallacy to this where if, no, no, I'm you're basically saying that if, slope, if right? this, if, if, if I, if we have corporation and they can't establish first amendment rights on their brand, right? It would have to expand mm-hmm. and allow anyone in what's keeping me from going to the Supreme court saying, I believe I should be able to post on the amazing atheist channel because, Obviously, well, because, because channel, the basis and, it's because I'm not saying that just any private corporation has to just but it's totally. On, it's on a private communication network. No one can stop me. Well, no, because it's not because my channel is not a communication network. It's part of a communication network. Well, it's part of it, but everyone but, has the right to create their own channel so that they can put their own speech you, out there. How would you write that, TJ? I don't know how I'd write it. I'm not a lawyer. So then, don't talk about it. That's what do you mean? Don't talk about it. Can you? So you're telling me that anything that you believe, you can explain down to the gnat's ass every single aspect well, of how it should work and be implemented. Are you really making that statement? Because I don't think anyone has knowledge that it's that all encompassing. Here's, here's the point I'm making, right? Mm-hmm. If if the only way you can change this, and if it's so far away from current existing law uh-huh. that you would have to not only change the constitution but change the constitution in a completely radical way, right? then you have to have some way to change it and you'd have to understand the consequences of that such type such a type of amendment uh-huh. that's that's the point right i don't think you understand the consequences of such an amendment there's look there's always going to be consequences there's consequences to any any action everyone knows that one thing I, but I, you you can't no one you're, you're basically saying i can't that my interpretation is invalid because I can't explain every aspect of how it works, no, I, and I, I can't, don't think you have to and I can't everything. wait, and I can't I, with one hundred, you know, I can't with one hundred percent accuracy tell you everything that's going to come as a consequence to it. So I'm not a prophet. I don't know the I'm future. Asking. You seem so to think you are. Here's what I'm asking for, right? Give me at least some idea about the amendment. At least, at least, make me understand how you can create. You don't even have to be specific. But just give me some ideas as to how you can create a constitutional amendment to the Constitution. Or sorry, not a constitutional amendment. An amendment to the Constitution Mm -hmm. so that it would keep YouTube from taking down your videos and keeping other individuals from essentially going to the Supreme Court and suggesting that they should be able to put content on your channel. And beyond this, understand how the ramifications of allowing any content on YouTube would drastically alter our society because there'd be no such thing as copyright claims. There, there, would, <clears throat> there would be, it would be so drastically different and so counter to the idea of private property and, and the right to establish yourself that the consequences would be catastrophic. You and, know, and I, that's, that's I, look, I, I actually, look, I actually, I, I, I can kind of see what you're saying now. Um, but I think that we have to reinterpret how we, we view things like intellectual property. I think that, that the, 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 you, we already see that line breaking down. It's been breaking down ever since Napster hit the scene. And now, you know, people feel like they're entitled to media, that media should be absolutely free to them at all times. And they don't want wa- to pay for it. They don't want to watch ads. They don't want it monetized at all. They just want it. 
And that's the attitude that people are having. And I think that it makes sense for the culture to be responsive to that. And how I would, the criteria that I would set up to prevent someone from taking over my channel in, in the, what I'm proposing is, is you base it on the size. YouTube is huge. There's billions and billions of users. There's yeah, I was actually just going to ask you a question, Ryan. Right. Let's, say, let's just say, for example, instead of it being a majority Christian uh, population in America, let's say it was majority like atheist or something, for example. And let's say Google decided to ban any searches <coughs> related to Christianity. How would you feel about that? Uh, so you're confusing two different things. No, I'm, I'm just asking you, how would you feel about that? How would, would you I feel, feel like about Google, it? Does, right, Google I, have I, the right, I, does Google have the right to censor the information that you can I, find? I, I just feel like there's a pretense in this question, as in there's a big difference between what I personally dislike and what is constitutional. For example, I'm not the biggest fan of In God We Trust on our currency, but there have been Supreme Court decisions that have said In God We Trust is absolutely constitutional. So... So, so do you, to answer so your question, in, in your, would, in, would I be okay if Google banned all searches on Christianity? Probably not. But I, 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 I mean, there are a lot of things that I don't like that are constitutional. Hey, right? Ryan, I'm not the biggest fan of guns, but right, you have a Second Amendment right to own <coughs> firearms. Mm -hmm. but there Ryan, are limitations on that. Ryan, one thing I wanted to ask you is, you, you said that you are a proponent of feminism. So how do you defend your claim that Jacqueline is only popular because she's an attractive girl? Right, well, and that's I, not no, my no, position. Wait, 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 no. Wait, no. He's saying only popular, not to be confused with popular. No, okay, so, so can I explain the argument? I, and I don't think it's that radical, <coughs> right? Right? Okay. I, I, personally, I find it strange that all of a sudden, right, Jacqueline's being promoted by a number of big atheists. And, and there's something to be said that currently a lot of the very popular individuals on the circuit – are older white men and i think they can solve that problem by promoting a woman right by promoting a younger woman so perhaps they don't look as you know xenophobic or maybe just intolerant sexist. or even sexist like yeah. right uh, so so the, the assertion seems to be that oh you're a feminist how could you ever dare believe that someone might have gained something by being attractive right i, I don't blame jacqueline for being attractive that's, what that's were the words? The okay, hold on, wait, wait, wait. What were the words that he used in that video? Because I feel like God you're damn it, Jacqueline. A Does it, I'm explaining my position. Oh, right? God, God damn it! Oh, oh, you're God damn it! Okay. He's mad. No, I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to ask. Because God damn like, it! My, pay no attention my, to the man behind no, no, no. the curtain. Like, see, it's what? fine because the thing is, is if you had worded it in such a way that was very you rational take your own and really, like, I'm I mean, talking you to you about. Like, I, you, I, I will you change the subject? Will you change the subject? That's not, not how you worded it whenever you I'm, said I'm it. I'm just asking all of us to have the same standard when it comes to this. Uh -huh. Right? So, but, I'm wrong. But, right? but look, but, don't, don't, don't you see, though, like, I mean, if, as, like, from the feminist perspective, right? right. If you basically say of Jacqueline, but, you know, but, with, so, with, so which is, problem, with, if you just have this purely conjectural stance that that's the reason for her popularity, I then don't, don't you see how that... True. I, don't think, I don't think Jacqueline's completely okay. popular because of her... Her okay, well, that's fine. Say. But, but yeah, I mean, even, even if you put that, that out there, doesn't that just kind of invalidate the success of any woman who's attractive, who makes it in anything? No, no, no. Is... I, I, think it says, I think it says even more. I think it says something about the, the people within our community, right? That perhaps if, if someone can be, <clears throat> become so popular, having any type of expertise or, I don't know, at least in my opinion, not having a good grasp on all the things they talk about, that perhaps it says something, the things we care about, that perhaps our community cares more about attractiveness oh, and having solid arguments. Like, I, right, and that in and of itself is not something that you would find insulting if said to you. I don't think it's that insulting. I, 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 I'm not even wow. insulting you. Wow. I'm insulting <coughs> okay. I'm okay. insulting, what the, I don't understand, like, can you please like, at least explain to me why you find it insulting? Well, is it kind of like if you say like, uh, Black people can run fast or something like that. I don't no. think it's like that. No, right? you don't think so. No, here's what I'm saying, right? Okay. That okay. If if there are a number of individuals uh -huh. that don't care as much about I don't know intellectualism and care more about attractiveness, perhaps that says something about how we view women within our own movement. And why is it that I fit that criteria? 
because I don't think you know everything about you talk about. No. I don't think you know a lot about Islam. I don't think you know a lot about feminism. I don't think you know a lot about mental illness. Okay, so then why don't you say that in your videos? Why even feel the need to mention my gender? If you made videos and approach them with the issues that you have with the words that I'm well, saying in the Jacqueline, topics, you haven't seen my fine. videos. You've seen, you've seen the misrepresentation that oh, has been in the drunken peasants. Like you've admitted it. You what? haven't. She has watched your videos. We play no, your videos unedited, I watched, dude. I watched this only. We watched play this. your videos we unedited, dude. Them. We just played some of them. We play your videos without even editing them. We play all no, 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 10 no, no, minutes no, of your they're, boring they're, ass they're, video. They're, they're, you watched, you in all fairness, montage. that one video was edited. Yeah, that, well, oh, it was well, a yeah the yeah, montage. That, yeah. Sure. But, right. Uh, of, of course, if you keep watching videos where you don't see the entire context, it's really easy to misrepresent. Right, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Okay, imagine this situation. Imagine I went to medical school, and in my class, we had very few people of other ethnicities. There were a couple of people in our class that, you know, potentially applied through a program that gave preference to a minority because not enough of them were being represented in medical schools. How do you think they would feel if I went up to them and was like, man, you know, you're smart, but you do know a big reason of why you're here is because you're black, right? You don't think they would take offense to that, even if it may be true? That's totally I, I would think, I would think that's offensive, but I don't think that's the same style. That's of what you're argument. doing. That's I don't what think you're doing. that's what I'm doing. I don't I, care what you think. That is what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So so here's the point, right? One, I don't have full faith that you've seen the full context of what I've said. Mm. So right from the start there's no, there's no... The conversation well that we've the had, the problem the problem with that is is i mean in i mean I, I, anybody can say that i mean that, that you can say that about anyone's argument at any time is oh well you don't you don't understand the entire context um, right, i think i think that's fair i think that's fair because i mean there's always going right, to be a larger so, context so, than anyone can really you know so, hold in their head uh, at any uh, given time I, I talked about debating i think that's a, a problem of like the video style right that uh -huh. that perhaps if you make your videos so short that sometimes you can say things that are wrong or say things but, that perhaps but, don't come out the great. You know but what, Ryan, though, Ryan. But Ryan, you make 10 minute videos and we make like three hour videos. Right, and and the thing is too, I mean, well, I think okay, that- Okay, so there is, there is one difference. Your, your point about- Okay, what's the difference? Okay, we we didn't do 30 minutes of research? No, 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 I, I, I whatever. All right, oh, so okay. here's, here's the difference, right? You're doing mm -hmm. a, live, a live stream of the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? You're, you're, you're directly responding to yeah, it. Yeah, we don't get actually... to edit out anything that we say. You right, know? we don't. Right, okay. So the, the point is you're actively engaging that all the time. I think you can attack me for not preparing well enough, which is why I attack your videos, right? But hold on. I think on. that goes both ways. Hold on, though. I mean, look, honestly, I think that you're, 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 you're probably defending yourself better here then you've ever defended yourself yes. on Twitter. On Twitter. I mean, I think your point about not wanting to come on the show is totally invalid because you've, you've no, actually I, been I, able so, to express... So, no, so you've been able point, to right? express your views so much better here. Don't you see how much easier it is when you can uh, actually yes. respond to so, what we're saying in real time? I'm just saying, like, why, why were you so afraid to come on the show? No, I mean, no, you no. can say... Uh, okay, I'm sorry, not afraid. But why, what, what was the objection there, really? I mean, is it really that bad? Is I mean, I, I think you're getting points across somewhat. I mean, I don't agree with everything you're saying. You probably don't agree with much of what I'm saying, but at least you're able to actually advocate for your position now. Isn't that so much nicer? Isn't that so much nicer than just tweeting from the shadows constantly? So here's the point, right? We live okay. in a world where we don't know what's going to happen. Like, right. I would, I would say you're, you were more fair than I thought you would be, right? I think that's fair, but we also set a precedent in our actions. Personally, I don't believe that scientists should be debating creationists, mm -hmm. or we should we should debate on positions where we have some type of we back and forth be, debate uh, where we don't actually right. take long times to think about what we actually believe. So that's, but the, that's but why the thing that's, is that's, though that was my objection. And I right, but that. the the problem with that analogy is that a scientist has verifiable empirical evidence you're 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 you saying Jacqueline doesn't understand Islam that's just your opinion that's just your interpretation that's subjective so I think that that does merit debate I think that does merit I, I, I discussion wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's entirely subjective 
Okay. Well, I, I think in many so, ways. The so you believe Jacqueline that you can. Not understand Islam you can. Objective. All right. Well, give but, me an example of a way that Jacqueline doesn't understand Islam. Yeah, I'd like to hear this. Don't okay, don't bring don't bring I, I, get I, that uh, no no don't bring G Man in here. Look right, I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Oh, That's why God. I don't like live debates, oh. right? All I right, all right, all right. And get specific examples, right? You don't have an infinite amount of knowledge in your head. You I yeah okay that's fair enough, fair enough. So is there any, like give give me an, can you give me an example of any of the specific examples of of something that Jacqueline or I have said? Well, you've already kind of went over it with me in the first amendment. We've kind of discussed that already. But but you there was other instances where you said Jacqueline was ignorant. Like you said she was ignorant about feminism. Can you give us a demonstration about right, about I, that? So at the same time, you're both suggesting that you're not a feminist yet you're believing in clearly feministic ideologies. Almost, almost verbatim, right? You can't make the statement, the I'm not sense, a feminist, but I believe in women's rights. That's, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's, it does make sense, because I can say that in the same sense as me saying, I'm an atheist, but I don't want to also identify as anti-Christian, anti-Islam, anti-Buddhist, no, 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 no. anti-everything. Because the, it's the purpose... With, the it's purpose. pointless. The, the, the point is, is, by saying feminism, you're excluding a no, gender. No, 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 no. You don't know the history of feminism. I don't give suggesting, a shit about suggesting suggesting you're not a feminist but I'm a humanist is an incredibly ignorant statement. If you because watch the one video, humanism is a completely distinct Ryan, ideology. Ryan, exactly, and I said that in my video called "I'm a radical." Then feminist. why would you it, call yourself "I'm not a feminist but I'm a humanist"? If you understand if you, the things, then why are you saying them? Did you watch my video? Because listen, I said in my video that technically, if you look at the definition of a feminist, no, 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 no. everyone, let me finish, okay? If you look at the definition of feminist, I would classify as a feminist. And I admitted that willingly in my video. Okay, so I said it more than, let me finish. I said it more than once in my video. And then I went on to explain why I don't like using that word and why I don't. There are a lot of people who are atheists. They don't believe in God, but they don't identify as an atheist. And as much so as I, I don't really like it, I understand their reasons for doing so. And if you watched my video, you would also. So here's the problem I have, right, with that statement. At the same time, you're suggesting that people need to call themselves atheists, even though they might want to call themselves agnostics. And then on the other side, Agnostic you're saying, I believe everything that feminism believes, but I'm not a feminist. Like, I don't know how you can hold those two positions. I explain. Okay, fine. You I'll can't just say, I again. explained it, right? I will explain it again. I, I'll explain it again, okay? In the video, I said I was a feminist. If you look at the definition of the word, I would qualify as a feminist, as would TJ, then, then as would why any. Do you expect let me finish. Not to call themselves let me finish. Agnostics. Let me fin well, great. I was going to get to that can point. I if you let me finish. Can I finish? Agnosticism okay, is not anything in reference to belief. The word agnostic is a position of knowledge. Saying you're agnostic is admitting that you don't know. I am an atheist, yet I am an agnostic because I cannot know for sure or prove anything definitively as many Christians will also claim to be agnostic theists. They are not mutually exclusive terms. So whenever you say that you're agnostic, it tells me absolutely nothing about your position of belief. That is where the word atheist comes in. Using the word atheist is different than the word feminist because atheism is not excluding a group of people. Everyone who doesn't believe in God can fall under the category of being Anybody who doesn't believe in God can fall under the category of being an atheist. When you say that you're a feminist, that is excluding men. Why no, sit it there is and not. say no, it is why, not. why sit there and say that you're a feminist the and a it's men's rights feminism is why because... sit there why sit there and say I guess you're a if you get to talk as long as you want, activist. you can just talk over me forever. Can I at least address some of your points as you, you explain them, right? <clears throat> you're suggesting okay. that feminism is exclusionary. It is not, right? We live in a society where Feminine, or sorry, excuse me. Females are the non-privileged category, right? They are the non-privileged. How can you possibly believe that? Do you know what's happening in my state? There's a bill for an eight-week abortion ban. I want you to I think about that. I understand that there are issues with women's rights. No, 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 no. Women are disproportionately disadvantaged in our society because there are certain attacks made to make it so women cannot live on an equal footing as men, right? It's happening in the United States. Hobby Lobby is happening. Attacks I made on a video women's rights that. are happening, right? Equal pay is not happening. It's, it's not the same, it's not, equal pay is not happening. 70, it's like what, 70 cents to a man. 
right? Yeah, but if you look at even if you do, if you look at all the factors, women work less. Women take maternity leave. There are a lot of factors that work into that statistic. Don't just look at the econometrics. Maybe if you did your maybe if you did your thirty minutes of research before, you would know that. Hey, this is my field. If I've looked at econometric studies, it's ninety-five percent to a hundred percent controlling for everything. Why did you just say 70? Why? Because that's the actual gap right now. Women earn 77% to men. There's Your an econometric- Your numbers keep changing. 70, 70, 7, 95. The numbers, numbers change changing. because we're talking about two different things, right? If we just look at men and women, women earn 77 cents to a man. But that There's... is not fair. Whenever you take into consideration okay. the amount then if you of time take in... and the Wait. ambition and the Hold ambition on. of women, men go- How... Go ahead. Ben, Ben, Ben wants to interject. Something no, no, here. I, I just wanted one at a time to talk. Go ahead, Jacqueline, and then Ryan respond when Jacqueline's done. I'm just saying it seems as though your usage of the 70 percent is manipulative, knowing full well that there are reasons for that number being the way that it is. Then you switch to 95. If you believed technically that it was 95 to 100, you should have said that to begin with, because otherwise it makes it look like you're trying to win an argument without being totally honest and transparent. So let me explain why I use two different numbers, right? The 95% controls for everything. The reason why that's unfair. Then why would you use that to begin with? Please, can I explain, right? This is, right. this is. Quiet, quiet for a second, Jacqueline. So I'm the waiting. reason why, why the 77 to 100 might be interesting is because there have been studies that shown, that have shown, excuse me, that have showed that if you take the same resume, you put a man's name, you put a woman, change nothing. Men will be called back more. So there's this additional problem where women are getting less access to opportunities. That's why you have except to compare for, Except for, of course, of me. I'm getting all these extra opportunities because I happen to be a woman, right? Let's not forget <laughs> that. I think, I think it's completely fair for you to take advantage of those opportunities. Oh, but then you do. Did I say the opposite? It, but you, the way I, I that you use it. Come on, be honest. The way that you used that was a jab at me. Don't try to lie and it's weasel your way out of it. I'm trying you to understand it in a why video things happen. The Jacqueline Glenn hate video. Gee, for Christ's sake, at least admit to that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Again, do I have to explain? Like the point of the hate train hour is to illuminate this fact that whenever you criticize someone who's popular, they think that you're just a hater. By saying, "Oh, it's just the hate train hour," therefore you're a hater. Listen, there is you're such a thing. It'd point. be like it'd be like it'd be like if you called a video "fuck niggers" and then <laughs> it, inside the video it was like, "I'm you know a totally non-racist message," but like I don't understand why people are confused. If you actually yeah, watch so, the video, you'll see I'm saying the opposite. So, let, let me give you an example of something I think is really important. Right mm. when when Stephen Colbert did um, that bit on. Uh, the uh, Washington Redskins. Right, the Redskins. There thing. were a number of people that thought he was totally racist. Sometimes, sometimes you can use like a turn of phrase or use language to try and prove a point. Right. right. So, how do you some... feel about the Redskins, Ryan? Do you think they should be called the Redskins? I do not. Okay. I I agree with I don't that. Think actually, that's very relevant. Okay. So... No, it's not. It was just an aside. Yeah. We're sorry. We're not all we don't we don't always stri stick strictly to topic. Um, yes. so uh, I I mean I, let's just uh on, on this feminism thing like I don't understand why feminism wants to be this ideology that can uh basically tell people that they're a feminist like oh well you agree with everything you're saying so just join us it just makes sense to join us it's like no I I'm I I don't like I don't like everything that you do I don't like everything that goes on in your community so I don't want to join you because frankly you know you could talk about how feminism just stands for equality but if you look at a lot of the feminists out there or at least a lot of people who are identifying as feminists that's not what they believe so I right. think that so, it's fair so. to say, oh, I don't want to be associated with those people. I don't, I don't want that label. And plus, I find the label of feminism to be exclusionary because it sounds like something that is focused strictly on women exactly. and not and on right. both so, genders. Because, so we want, might... we want something that's more egalitarian. That's what we like. Exactly. We're... Right, right. So, so let me talk about so, that. Sure, go ahead. I, I want to I ask you a question. If I Again, identify... I please respond to what TJ said. All right. Well, hold on. Jacqueline will ask you a question. You can respond to both things. No, no, no right. it's, it's fine. Right, I just want to say, like, I agree with I agree with what TJ said, and I want to add to that. If we don't identify with the term feminist, 
but agree with all the at least important components that go along with it, why do they give a shit whether or not we accept the title? Obviously, uh, uh, there are negative uh, uh, things that go along with it, but if we advocate for women's rights, and I've seen TJ do it, I've done it, what the fuck here, is the Jack, problem? Can, like, can I respond to this with a question? Why do you think it's important for atheists to come out of the closet? Political reasons? Same thing. Same thing, right? But because there's I'm, been, there's been in the, much in the same way that I'm atheists- Hold on, one, 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 at one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Can I please at least get some time to respond? One at a time, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan you go answer. first. You, you go ahead, you got the floor, go ahead. So. Much in the same way that atheism has been attacked for years and years and years, and certain groups have tried to take away certain rights, the term feminist has been attacked. Terms like feminazi, right? There, are, In fact, there are a number of books describing this phenomenon where for years and years and years, people have been attacked for this idea of being a feminist, much to the point that people no longer want to associate with the term because they think it's evil. I, I, I would hope that at least in some way, being an atheist, you would at least understand in some ways why- Yeah, no, why I do get it. Certain... I get it, right, so... I get it completely, but I still find the term in and of itself totally and completely unnecessary. And I feel like- What if someone believes the if, term if, atheist is unnecessary? If they were I, a secularist, I, if, they were, if they were a secularist, I wouldn't give a shit. But that's right. Not I mean, because look, that the atheist. I don't know about that. Look, right? atheist. But, but the, the, the thing right. is that atheists. You, if you go to like a skeptic conference, there's people that identify as skeptics. There's people who identify as brights. There's people who identify as atheists. Right, there's people there's who have all all these different right. identifications that are very similar, and they all they form a coalition together. Here's but it's like if, if but if we, we, when it's like I'm a feminist. Oh well, I'm a gender egalitarian. It's pretty much the same thing in a lot of ways. But for some reason, the feminists are just like, no, fuck you. If you're not a feminist, you're not with us. You're against us. And if you make any criticisms towards feminism or anything that any feminist, popular or otherwise, does, then you're a misogynist, you're a sexist, you're, you're opposed to women's rights, so okay, on and so forth. Whenever I, I make videos, whenever I make videos encouraging people to come out as atheists, it's not necessarily that I need all these different to term atheists. It's not that. It's that I need them to be able to at least admit to other people that they don't need religion in their life, and that leads to political change. If they identified as a secular humanist or a skeptic or whatever makes them comfortable, I really don't wouldn't the same, care. The same, that same notion within the movement. I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. I don't think we have. There's a reason why there's this push for this word atheist. Right, because it's been demonized for so long. Mm -hmm. Much of, as I said before, much in the same way that a lot of people believe feminists. But that's the has thing. Been like, there's not another way. And there, to are a lot, there, uh, so. and there are a lot of people who say, "I'm not a feminist. I believe in all these things, except for these certain policies, which are very misogynistic." Mm -hmm. Right. I, I think that happens. I think there are people who say, "I'm not a feminist. I'm an egalitarian. Therefore, I believe in certain policies that are misogynistic." Like, I, I think it's certainly true. Well, give us, like, I, I know that I, I'm probably called misogynistic. I mean, I'm called misogynistic constantly because I've made videos oh, know, critical of feminism. But, I mean, I've, I've, I've asked, you know, how am I misogynistic? What, what have I done that's misogynistic? What have I, what have I advocated that's misogynistic? Now, I, I admit I've made some statements uh, that are inappropriate that you know were, were made you know from a very stupid place but if you actually look at my positions if you actually look at what i advocate if you actually look at what i stand for i've always been for gender equality i've always been against sexist assholes i've made several videos advocating for women's rights advocating for um you know uh, things like planned parenthood and 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 so on and so forth and uh, you know I, I think that it's it's strange that i'm constantly attacked by these feminists simply because I've made criticisms of some of the contentions that feminists make, which have nothing to do with equality. They have to do with things like, here, you know, they have this, the theory of the, the, the ever active and, and churning patriarchy that's out there, uh, the, the old, you know, this, this old system that's been debunked, that's been, you know, not debunked, but it's been irrelevant. It's been obsolete for fucking generations almost. And yet they're still acting like it's in full force. It's in full swing. Women's rights are under siege constantly so, so from all I, sides at all times. That? Yes. I, I, I would just like to say that it's very unfair to try mm -hmm. and characterize like fringe members of the group as the center. And, and I don't, I you know, I don't think that. it is. I don't no, think no, it is I, the fringe I, because. I'm actually, 
I'm actually very good friends with several people who identify as feminists. And I am as well. Our, conversa our conversations are very friendly, and we really don't disagree on anything. And they actually are able to understand my choice to identify as someone who advocates for gender equality instead of someone who labels himself as a feminist. They don't care as long as I support the same things and fight for equality, which I do, and they get it. Just the same, I don't care if I have a friend who doesn't believe in God, who calls himself a secular humanist instead of an atheist. It's semantics, it's unnecessary, and it doesn't matter. All right, guys, uh, we've been on the air for about uh, three hours and 10 minutes now. I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap the show up. Ryan, thank you very much for being on. Q &A. We yep. got a Q&A. Okay, I guess we're gonna do a Q&A segment after this, but um, Ryan, thank you for, for finally coming on. I hope that it wasn't uh, nearly the, 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 re the purely rhetorical exchange that you were fearing. I hope that you know, we were able to cover some substantive stuff here. Um, and uh, you know, I hope that maybe you'll come on again in the future. Um, Jacqueline, do you want to stay on for the, uh, the Q&A session or do you want to go? Um, I actually might need to go somewhere, so I will okay. right. get ready. So we're going to go ahead and let go both of our callers go now. And uh, we are going to, are we going to take a quick break before we do yes. questions? Let's take, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back to answer some questions from our audience. Video questions. And unfortunately, some of the questions are directed towards uh, Patrick, who... Who's now in jail. Is, yes, who was arrested by the uh, reptilian Illuminati space syndicate or something. We'll try to answer it the best we can. Thank you for being on, Jacqueline. All right, it was fun. See you guys Thank later. You. Bye. Bye. Bye, Jackie. Bye. <laughs> There's no way it was fun. We subjected her to hell the entire time. Yeah. It was, it was a nonstop barrage of horror being flung in her face. And who do we have with us today, TJ? Uh, I don't know. Is it the Bible Reloaded guys again? No. No, I don't think so. Uh, oh, be, okay. I just got Must be done. that. What happened, Paul? Did you die? I don't know. We got, Paul, we got yeah. Paul's ego. Yes, yes. Hello, everybody. We got Paul ego how's it going sorry i had a little lag and jumped it's in right. and probably I wanted... ruined a ruined a fantastic joke no <laughs> no you didn't you saved me paul you saved me oh. it's okay um why is why why have uh paul's id and uh paul's super ego never come back for a second appearance i don't know i it's one of those things it's kind of like uh playing the godfather you know you don't yeah. want to do it twice I see. Even though I suppose he, he no, he didn't. Yeah, I, I'd never want to. I'd never. I'd never want to bring the id and the the super ego back. I think they've Why said not? their piece. They've said their piece. Okay. They're done. I liked. I liked id. You know, you got to get. Well, id yeah. Back. Everybody loves id. So what you been up to, Paul? It's been a while since we've had you on. <clears throat> I've been having the worst fucking time at work, and uh, that's about it. I mean, I. I genuinely have, uh, like the summers are so awful for my work. So, oh. so because but of the other heat. than that, what was that? Because of the heat. Yeah, the heat and just I'm, you know. Oh no! Somebody in the chat says, "Ask Paul about ICP." Paul, that's not good. What about ICP? Tell I, us about I, ICP, uh, Paul. I, I tell us about ICP, Paul. I flirted at one point with liking ICP. It was in the 90s and I got into the whole mythology of it. This you know, sounds like had... this sounds like a, a drug addict confession almost. <laughs> it feels <laughs> like one. You know, I was into heroin. It was the 90s. I know. Living life I, on the feels, edge at the time. It feels like one, but uh yeah, no, uh, it, I uh I liked their Joker's cards thing. Like the each right. one of their albums was a Joker's card. Yes. And right. I, I I was like because they were saying, you know, once the six card drops, this whole uh, dark carnival is going to come rolling through the whole world and it's going to reap the sinners, you know. And I was like, what are they going to do when that doesn't happen? Like when they drop the sixth card and nothing, nothing happens, what's, what are they going to do? And they just kind of copped out and said, it's always been about Jesus, yo. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, man, yeah, they, really? I remember the exact line. It was like. The carnival is God. We've always been behind him. Oh, like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah, that was exactly it. Yeah. And it was, was. like, really? 
all of this, cutting they should chicken have, necks. They should have just died before the sixth one could drop so that people would be like, rumors have it the sixth Joker's <laughs> card is in a bunker at the center of the earth. <laughs> and if it is ever played, the world will come to an end. That would have been so much cooler. I think yeah. so. But they, but they just didn't have the balls to die after the fifth album. Yeah. So, so tragic. Uh, it, yeah, it really is. But you're a juggalo, Paul. Just I was uh, well. I wasn't. I wasn't even a juggalo at no, the time. No, you. Nah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I was. You gonna be down with the clown till you're dead in the ground, Paul? Much clown love, TJ. Much clown love. <laughs> when I in the '90s, when that when that shit was going on, I lived in an area not too far away from Detroit, where that shit was just insanely huge, and I knew so many people that liked it. I just never really fully. My got thing into about it. Is, is is how can you be a posse if there's only two of you? Yeah, two, pe- two people does not really constitute a posse anywhere. Well, you know, you know, ICP used to be called the Inner City Posse. Yes, yes, but it still yeah. has the problem of having the word posse in it. <laughs> I think there were so more it's... people in it maybe back when it was a posse. Like they had That's a band true. of singing. Maybe they had a couple of singing girls. You know. To do oh in between the raps and that makes them a posse. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I I don't accept that, but we'll move on. <laughs> you want to move on? So yeah, yes. what's going what's going on in the universe? Should we get G Man in on this? Yeah, yeah. I guess we'll bring G Man on. G Man <laughs> and the masters of stupidity. <laughs> uh, excuse me, TJ. I would like to know why you put a banana in your butt. It was for science. <laughs> Here for the go. purposes of science. G Man. It's G Man. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> G Man. G Man. Hey G Man, hey. I, I have to ask you a question. Don't ask uh, G Man any questions. Because it's been it's been a while since you and I talked. This is Paul's ego, by the way, G Man. How you doing, Paul? Um, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, listen, have you have you, you come to the realization that everything that you believe is silly and horribly wrong, or are you still G-Man? I'm still G-Man, and okay. I don't believe. <laughs> and and uh, have you come to the conclusion that God exists and that you need to repent of your sins? I have not <laughs> come to that conclusion. So I guess we're Some... in the same fucking boat. We're in yeah. the same place we were at the start, G-Man. Somehow I felt that there that that would be the case. At this point, yeah. Somehow, I thought that too. You know? <laughs> I didn't. I was sure that Paul would be uh, a radical Christian by now. I thought G Man was going to convert him. Well, G Man uh, did convert, but then he, but then he said he was just joking. Yeah, the whole chocolate atheist thingy, right? Chocolate atheist. <laughs> oh, by the way, go get him, G Man. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> oh, oh, we're we're gonna play that song, dude. Uh, I know you guys liked it. Yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna play it right now, and then we can we can comment on it. Okay, guys, you know. can you hold on one second, guys? One second for me. Are uh, we live? Yes, we yep. are. Oh Lord. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. So. Um, oh, G Man's got right. things to do. Apparently. Yeah, G Man's got people no, to no, see. I got, I, I got people go, calling go. me. They don't realize I'm busy. That's what it is. Ah. So, but, but go ahead. <laughs> All right. I'd like to hear G-Man go up there and just, like, yell at people. Like, shut up! I'm on the drunken <laughs> peasant. Trying yeah. to spread the Lord's word right now. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. All right. Preaching the choir ministries. Here we go. Oh, we're not live. Okay. Yes, we are, we are live. live. Yes, we're live. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mic check. One, two. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's how we do. One Here time. we go again, and I'm preaching to the choir. Sharing a uh-huh. truth, snatching you out the fire. <laughs> Yo, check your position. Walk away from evolution. Stop it, mocking G-Man. God. But take the God. That was a pretty cool beat until you started rapping on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was well, I made the beat. beat. I made the beat. <laughs> You did? Well, you got a lot more talent doing that. 
then. <laughs> Maybe you should just make beats you should, for me. Yeah, you should just sell beats to like people who can rap. I can yeah. rap. Why don't you play? Why don't you continue? Oh, okay. To play okay. The, okay. Uh, okay. 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 We'll continue. I'm sorry. I didn't. Know Tyler's that. revolution. Stop trying to split a pea from a pod. Use logic and reason. Place your faith in God. Jesus has the power to save your soul. Satan has the opposite as his goal. So get on your knees and take care of business. Jesus is coming. Better beg for forgiveness. Who get the Fuck gay it. man? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I like the I like the Bill O'Reilly you put in there, G Man. The the, the Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, the Bill O'Reilly. That was pretty stuff. awesome. Yeah, we that like part. that part. That's my favorite part right there. <laughs> That's my favorite part too. Yeah, I enjoyed just, that. I didn't G-Man, like. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care for much of the rest, but you know. It's G-Man, a good thing I own the original, and and everyone knows that that's not true. So <laughs> that's drunken peasants uh, editing. You should, you should I don't know what you're talking about. Shame yourself, G Man, using that kind of language in a rap song in front of exactly. the children. The, of the children. children. <laughs> I, I I did an awesome job uh, changing my voice, didn't I? Uh, of course, that never happened, but you know. <laughs> no, no, no. It happened. We we just heard it right now. That was that was G Man's uh, new song. Let's uh, can we, yeah. can we hear some more of the of the song? Okay, let me just. Yeah. Christians, you're all in danger. Dilla honey spreading delusions and grandeurs. He's on a show called Atheist Experience. When Christians call in, he doesn't take them serious. When he tells his lies, he's very persistent. He wants to change your mind, make the truth non-existent. Don't get your hopes up when you call that show. All they're gonna say is I don't know. I want to marry He's a liar from hell who doesn't have a clue. When he's lost, and hang the phone up on you. Why is uh testify? I have a question. Why why is yeah. Jesus such a gangster in this song? Yeah, yeah. Right. Jesus is Jesus like you. Gangster? Yeah, you know, you made him so gangster. He's all just like he's gonna he's gonna. You need to like beg his forgiveness, and he's gonna. It. What's going on he's, with that? He's gonna hang the phone up on you. Is what I heard. Oh, actually, yeah. so my Mac. The, the atheist experience would do that, but uh, Jesus is not being gangster. Uh, that's actually me listening to some criticism, some criticism from these fans on YouTube that's telling me that um, I'm not doing enough dissing in my raps. So, you know, okay. I listen. Oh, got it. Yeah, and, I, and some of my critics are here now. He's called TJ and Ben and Scott. Scott's not. You know, here. I I I wasn't on beat. You know what I mean? I wasn't dissing enough. You know, you know, I'm not gonna cuss so. <laughs> I heard it. I heard it in your song. Yeah, there was cussing. I don't know. There was lots of cussing. Heard it. I heard excessive I didn't hear uses any. of the F word. I, I don't know. Maybe my, my earphones. <laughs> I, have to, I have to fix my earphones because I don't remember saying anything like that. Okay. Maybe I'll hear it again. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, hey G-Man, how do you feel about yoga? Yeah. Do you think yoga is satanic? Uh, as an exercise, no. As a What's... practice with people meditating and thinking they're having out-of-body experiences, yes. So what is, how, how is, how is that, I mean, like. Because we're going to watch a video that we want your opinion on that, that someone made. Okay, well, let's just, let's just show them the video and we'll see. All right. Okay, cool. This, cool. this guy's the Vigilant Christian. Are you, are you oh, familiar oh, with him? the Vigilant Christian Mario, yeah, the Vigilant Christian Mario, yes. I know yeah. who he is. Yeah, we know. Mario. We know who he is, too. Mario Brothers. Dun, 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 dun. He's like he fucking nice Batman. Movie. Yeah. He's the Batman. Waking up the church. Exposing the entertainment industry. Yeah, uh, the vigilant Christian, he believes in the Illuminati, by the way. The Illuminati. Do you, do you believe in the Illuminati as well? I believe that the Illuminati exists, yes. Do I believe really? in the Illuminati? No. But I believe that they exist, yes. I don't talk about it because it's not relevant to what my channel is all about. Okay. <clears throat> what about you, Paul? Do you believe in the Illuminati? Of course. <laughs> You're part of the Of course aren't I you? do. I yeah, am. I'm you, pulling you, the puppet strings. You've got that reptilian look about you, you know? I go to the Bilderberg group meetings and, you know, 
Hillary always gets drunk and makes a fool of herself. It's good times. It's really not all that evil that, you know, people think we're, we're doing nefarious things. We're just being rich together. <laughs> yeah, really rich at the cost of uh, American citizens. And whoa, 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 G-Man, whoa. That's socialism. <laughs> yeah, sounds like socialism to me. Yeah, communism. Socialism. First he makes rap songs. I, I, I live in a communist nation. I'm not a communist. I live in a democratic... <laughs> a, 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 Capitalist? A, a, a capitalist society. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First do you think, he makes. Do you think, uh, how do you think Jesus would have felt about capitalism, G Man? Uh, to be able to own your own business and be able to make a profit, um, I don't think he would have a problem with it. However, if you're talking about the corruption that's involved in capitalism, I know he would have a big problem with it. Hmm. Just wondering. Okay, so it does say, "Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's." Here's some more vigilant yes. Christian declaring truth in the darkness. Exalting Christ in a world of idolatry. <laughs> Have you guys ever had exposing him the New Age movement? He asked if we ever had him on the show. We, I, I made him an offer to come on, but he didn't want to do it. Oh, okay. All right. Him was scared. The vigilant Christian. <laughs> Hey it's everyone, you're here with the Vigilant Chris Mario, and you're here for another edition of... The intro is 50% of the video. In today's video, I'm going to be okay. talking about my personal experience as a yoga instructor, and how I realized that yoga is in fact a satanic spiritual practice. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's stretching. Hey, bro. <laughs> like See, the my stretching, I don't have no problem with. I don't have no like, problem with the stretching. Like my puka shell necklace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks fucking great, doesn't it? <laughs> TJ, you just don't like me because I was the popular guy in school and you were just a fat piece of shit. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. That was you basically good... what he said in one, in one of his videos. You had the good sense oh, really? not to wear puka <laughs> shells. Not, not those exact words, but, you know, saying, like, he was the cool popular guy. I don't know. He's cool. Yeah, he's cool. Everyone I must have missed him. that video. I must have missed that video. It's the one he made directly to TJ. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I know right off the bat. Now that sounds like an extreme claim, and it might be hard for a lot of you to believe. But please watch this entire video before making your conclusion. No, I don't on think we're going to get all the way through it. So things we're going to talk about is, like I said, my personal experience. <laughs> I could do as that. As well move. as the spiritual roots of That's yoga. That's easy for me. And I like to see that. Christian yoga, which is gaining popularity sure you would. in modern culture today. Christian yoga. Christian yoga. That's when you do it. That's when you do it for Jesus instead. All right. Yes. Now, everybody, let's enter the supplicate yourself to Jesus pose. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Feel the there's Lord's no love. Thing. There's no such thing as Christian yoga. Um, I would he like that. He, he just said it's gaining popularity, G man. It ain't gaining popularity with me. If he's talking about stretching, yeah, then maybe that. But all the meditation and all that stuff that go with it, I doubt that. So, so, so just meditation is, uh, like, satanic in nature? Is that what you're saying, G-Man? I'm saying that if if you're doing yoga and you're, and you're opening yourself up for other spirits or something to come in you or to influence <laughs> you, that that's evil, yes. Did you hear that, TJ? You're opening up for something to come in you. Yes. Thanks, you man. know what I mean. I'm Thanks talking about like coming out. inside of you and live inside of you. You know what I mean? Uh, or to interact inside of you. It's not getting any better. We do, we do. <laughs> it's like when Johnny Cash was singing to the prison and he was singing the fucking John Henry song. And, uh, you know, yeah. that line where it's like, this is the first morning I got up, the sun came up, and I couldn't be up with it. And they, they all laughed. Like, hey, he's like, ah, oh, you dirty minded bastards. Mm hmm. It's like hey, that uh, situation. DJ, uh, yeah. Last week you had an uh, awesome rants here, and you had another feminist here. Yeah, no, no, no. Here no. And you mentioned that you was going to call me, and you didn't call me. What's up with that? I think we did try. Even to your call fans him. was saying call me. I think we did try to call call him last week, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, we did. I'm pretty sure we did. We did. Nope. 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 Nobody tried to call me. I was waiting too. Oh man. And how Christians should have nothing to do with this. So let's get. Uh, right into it. So seven years ago, I started to experience depression and anxiety, and I went to a psychologist. And a it's lot of psychologists that he would feel now, that way when he was the popular kid in school and everyone liked him. Yeah, I mean, you'd think the puka shell necklace alone would keep him from being depressed. 
It's like every time he looks in the mirror, like, damn, I'm cool. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm fucking cool. <laughs> God damn, I'm the coolest motherfucker you've ever seen. Look at me getting all this pussy while TJ gets none. <laughs> <laughs> G-Man has no idea what to say right now. Uh, I'm just letting you guys be you. Okay. <laughs> he's, just, um, he's just, he's actually, just standing outside the glass. The Christian, uh, I thought I you like would. I, thought I you don't would. agree with everything, but, but I like his program. So do you think that everything that happens is just this well-strategized uh, conspiracy where, you know, there's like, you know, tens of thousands of people in on these conspiracies that secretly control, you know, what the world does? Yes and no. I believe that that uh, that you do have people orchestrating things in the world, but I think that some people on YouTube and in our personal lives have an unhealthy interest in what's going on behind the scenes. It's a remarkably lucid answer to that question. <laughs> I, I, I give you... I give, I give you props about that. That that was pretty damn damn good. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the truth though. I mean, like there are some people that pay a little bit too much attention to what to what uh, these the, these politicians and some of these rich people are doing, and they think that that they're influencing the mu the music industry and in various you know parts of life. And the truth of the matter is, um, you know, some of that stuff is going on, but I doubt it's the way that these the way these uh, conspiracy theorists uh, when YouTube are saying, like 24-7, you know, everything is a conspiracy. No. Yeah, every time, <laughs> you know, that, every time there's... Some of this stuff is... Every time there's even, okay. like, you know, every time there's, like, any sort of disaster, like a plane crash or a mass shooting happen, like, every single time, it's like, this is part of a secret plot to control the population orchestrated by B the Bilderberg Group or the Illuminati or Obama or, you know, whoever else. Yeah, yeah. Obama makes well, the school shootings though. happen. What if that was true, though? Or I how mean, would that affect you two? If I, that was true? I, I would imagine if it were true, people wouldn't really be able to get away with saying it very easily. Uh, but I mean, even if, I mean, if it were true, then I mean, that'd be pretty fucking crazy, I guess. I'd just be like, I guess I was wrong about that. Yeah, it turns uh, out every every disaster that's happened in the last 300 years has been orchestrated by the Illuminati. Who knew? You know, there's got to be. Yeah, no, believe. And, but there are, you know, we're talking about people who do. There are people out there who think that, like TJ said, anytime there's a fucking hurricane blows through town, it, the, the Illuminati was behind it. Or someone. You know, or hard, some, someone. You know, the, the yeah. government or, you know, some coalition of evil people who have some dark hidden agenda. Yeah. But I mean, I, I really think. I really think, like, when it comes to, to, like, the corruption of rich people, it's not really that hard. It's not like a, a secret evil agenda. I mean, it's an open evil agenda of, like, we're just going to crush the poor and continue to do everything we can to increase our wealth. Yeah. That, that's one of the reasons I don't, you know, lend any credence to all the Illuminati stuff is because it's not, it's being done right in front of our faces. <laughs> I know. Like, what would well, be like, the point of a secret cabal? Well, yeah. Like why well, even why even waste the time to have a secret meeting somewhere? You're just doing well, it. Mainly, do it mainly because there's nothing we can do about it. That's why because they're in control of everything. But let me ask you guys something. In 2008, when we when we went through this financial crisis, you wouldn't say that that was orchestrated. I think it was orchestrated by a bunch of greedy people on Wall Street who put their hands a little far a little too far in the cookie jar. And uh, fucked us all. Now, of course, there was collusion in the political class, too. Um, they, they destroyed Glass-Steagall so that they could start trading in these exotic derivatives and stuff like that. But um, as far as it being a conspiracy, I don't, I, I, don't really think it, I don't really think it fits the definition. I think it was a fuck up. Let me ask you a question, Paul. I think you're going to get a kick out of this. What is a, deri a, a derivative? Yeah, I have no idea. And neither do you. <laughs> So. <laughs> exactly, 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 exactly. Um, and by the way, I believe that all of that happened because they want they, they want to purposely destroy the economy because they want a different system of government and they know the American people would never go for it. Who that much they? I actually believe. Who, yeah, who whoever the, the heck is that... running the world? Because it certainly ain't Obama or whoever's running this country. It ain't Obama. That's for sure. So do you think it's the Obama's not calling the shots? Do you think it's someone that, or a group of, of people that control the entire world and they're all uh, in cahoots with each other, or what? How do you of think course, this yes. works? Yes. You think so? I believe, 
I believe I, I believe the 13 richest families in the world are pretty much running things right now. And no matter how much you talk about it on the Internet, it doesn't make a difference. You can't stop them. In fact, the Bible says you're not going to. Only Jesus Christ is going to be able to stop. Oh, people. well, then that settles it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Case closed. <laughs> the Bible said. Oh, OK, then. This stuff is predicted in the scripture if you go read Revelation. I mean, this stuff is predicted. I know. You know? I had to read it. Before. Revelation 13. Uh, I forget where in Daniel, but I know uh, it's in Revelation. And lo, the 13 richest families will control the world with their corporate oligarchy. Yes. And lo, they already, the car they already the do. <laughs> they already the, do. <laughs> the Koch brothers. And lo, the Koch brothers did descend from the heavens. <laughs> like, I don't well, I would, I would say, mind. like, uh, I would say ascend from the hells. Why how come is, there's, how come heavens we, can be heavens, but then if it's hell, it can only be one. It's, it's a singular thing. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that is true. Well, uh, actually, that's kind of easy because you have the sky that would be considered right. uh, a heaven, then you have space that would be another heaven, and then oh, the okay. other place is where God dwells. But it's all. I mean, it's it. Okay, there's there's really no actual delineation there, but that's fine. Well, actually, there is. <laughs> Unless you count the visual. atmosphere, I guess. Scripture, yeah, like right? That. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why was uh, why was why was you know the sweet Lord so vague in Revelations, as right. to as to write? Why didn't he just put beware the Koch brothers, beware the Bilderberg? You know what I mean? Like, why isn't that in the Bible? Why well, is because it, why but if he it, like, if he'd done that, then they would have just called it something else, you know. A man with two shekels will bring a red light to the sun. You know why does it have to be that? <laughs> Revelation 13 talks about a beast coming out of the sea, and that beast is supposed to be uh, um, a uh, a government system or a individual. But I mean, but that's much. just one interpretation. You could say a, you could say the beast represents like a million different things. Like yeah. what? Like what? Well, I mean, like you make, could say, you could say the beast. Off the top of your head. You could say <laughs> the beast represents an army or a political movement or even a literal fucking beast. I mean, it could be it could be any number of things. Well, let me tell you this on behalf of us in Christianity. Um, none of us believe that a monster is coming out of the water. Oh, uh, bullshit. Hand. You know damn well some of you do. You know no, damn we well. Believe. You know damn well that there are some Christians who believe that there's going to be a literal ten-headed beast coming out of the water. I've if never I, you know what? One. If I've I was a, if one. If I was a Christian, I would go with the ten-headed beast option. Well, that here's sounds the thing. Cool. The, the people that believe that probably aren't real Christians. To G -Man. Oh no, I wouldn't say that. When it comes to eschatology, uh, we can disagree on some things, but I I've never met a Christian that believes that a real monster is coming out of the water. Considering what the Bible teaches. Well, teach that's what it should be people. then. If the if the if this all this shit ever actually does happen, I hope it is a literal monster. So G Man could be like, oh, I guess it was a literal monster. <laughs> Oops. I want him to be. Cool is, though, I want him to be cool watching the is. TV, and then Godzilla should show up and fight the Beast of the Apocalypse. <laughs> you know, that would cool be a fucking that, sick movie. Yeah. You know, the cool thing is, Amazing Atheist. What? If this stuff does happen, you're gonna be a Christian because you're gonna know that we predicted it was gonna happen. Oh, okay. And by the well, way, we're living in I'll, that system. It's called it's called the New World Order. We hear we hear our leaders talking about this stuff all the time. Yeah, Hollywood. You Hogan. know, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. You know, I'm not I'm not talking about Hogan. <laughs> or Hall and Nash or none of those guys for that matter. I was like D-Generation X. D-Generation X? Yeah, I was like them. All right, so you want to go back to yoga, satanic? Who, who cares? I don't think yoga. anyone. I don't think anyone cares. We've we've veered off the topic like okay. twice now. Okay, G-Man, G-Man, we uh, we <coughs> recently saw a video. Let's take our our, our um, stuff off the screen for this. Yeah, sure, we can do that. Let's see. <coughs> yeah, we should be talking about my rap. No, no, G-Man. <laughs> no, no, we get something better for you. This okay. is uh, this is G Man. I think it's called G Man the Opera. G Man the motherfucking opera. Have you ever seen this G Man? G Man the Opera. No, I want to see that. It's it's called G Man the motherfucking opera. It's pretty disparaging to you. I will warn the, uh, you before you go <laughs> the, in. The oh, it's, it's a parody on me then, probably. I'm assuming. Yes. 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 It's a cartoon. Oh boy, let's see this. Side and ten atheist, I think. Yes. Oh brother, hi. Right, let's see this. All right. I got it. Why? <laughs> 
before your eyes I just destroyed the no true Scotsman fallacy I broke the ninth commandment or did I commit apostasy? You have no grounds to judge me with your subjective morality Once again I have exposed your atheist hypocrisy My knowledge is extensive in all matters of biology Natural selection is a strict impossibility I'll believe in evolution only when you show to me A canine turned into a non-canine in a laboratory <laughs> God you do not worship is believed in quite consistently And answered prayer must logically add its own causality You can't say he's not real until you've been to every galaxy So let me ask you how can you reject him so emphatically? <laughs> I'm preaching to the choir with my stupid ministry Reputing your assertions of the Bible's inconsistency I talk a load of about biblical slavery And underneath the carpet I sweep anything I'm savory whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, you know what? Me and Side, it's my me and Side Ten's going to war now. I'm <laughs> this gonna is, kick his this, behind. I'm gonna this kick is the, his butt now. This is the best part coming up here. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll let you uh, do a response. Yeah, after, yeah. You can respond to it after. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Before your eyes, I just destroyed the no true Scotsman fallacy. I broke the ninth commandment, or did I commit apostasy? Read your Bible and do what it says, and you'll be just like me, the winner of the jackpot in the fucking dump lottery. Read your Bible and do what it says, and you'll be just like me, the winner of the jackpot in the fucking dump lottery. <laughs> and then he's crushed by him. You have man. to admit, it's pretty awesome. I'm gonna kick his butt. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm all gonna right. kick his butt. Side ten atheist, if you're watching this as war, I shall respond. That's all I got to say. <laughs> that was I the most. That was. Respond. I had to walk away from the mic for a second. That's the fucking most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, oh, dude, God. did you see Brett Keen? Oh, it was the yeah. best. <laughs> that wasn't Brett Keen. That was Matthew Bell. He had lying down like that. No, no, one no, day no, you no. should there invite was... him. Brett Keen. <laughs> Brett Keen popped up at one point, and it was perfect. yeah. My... Brett Keen and Shanny is me. <laughs> okay, and I will. Hey, be Paul. Side 10 Paul. Atheist. Yeah. Paul, I have an idea. Okay. You and I, you and I should uh, make an independent movie about Brett Keen, and you can play Brett. Okay. And <laughs> well, actually, before you do that, before you do that, and you I'll, owe play me a rap I'll play G-Man. I'll play. You G -Man. owe me a rap battle. You owe your I fans, do. and you owe me a rap battle. You promise. You said that now, you were going to do about, it. Now you're talking about. When you're talking about a rap battle, G-Man, I got to ask you, are you talking about spitting a bunch of written, or are you talking about coming off the top? I'm talking about yeah. doing, listen, let's have a rap battle. You make a rap, and I shall respond. No, I okay, make a rap got it, and got it. You you're, talking about, you're talking about spitting written raps. See, that, I, no, all I need is, all I need is can do written raps. I'll put something together. Anybody no, can no, do no, a no, written no. rap. Oh, you mean doing something off the top of my head, off the fly. I'm talking, I'm talking about freestyling, is I what can't I'm talking about. Unfortunately, yeah. I can't freestyle. That's a man. That's freestyle. that's the man's game. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> a man's, man's game. game. <laughs> but I guarantee you, if I'm given the same amount of time as the amazing atheist, I'll come out with something better than him. No disrespect. Yeah. But you owe your fans and you owe me a rap battle. I don't care if All it's right. on your channel or not. I will come here tomorrow if you want with something prepared with music and everything, and lay up the smack us down all over you, man. All right, I'll tell you what. Um... Don't I'll, make promises uh, that you're not going to keep, man. Come on. We'll, Be we'll, real. Come, we'll reconvene next week. TJ, our, don't make a raps. promise that your ass can't cash. If you can come back on Damn. the show next Thursday, we can, we, can, yeah. we can lay down our raps there. Cool. No problem. I got no problem with that. By next Thursday, let's, hopefully you'll have let's, something ready. Let's keep them let's, let's at like two minutes apiece. TJ is actually shaking okay. right now. Yeah, I'm sh yeah he's, he's visibly doing shaking. He's doing I can this. tell. He's doing this. And, and I want to promise all of uh, the Amazing Atheist fans, if he's serious, you will be entertained and I will kick his butt. I just want to let you know that. Oh, man. I'm oh, going no. to win. <laughs> you have been called out, TJ. The gauntlet okay, has by been the thrown way, down. It's kind of like it, I can't even Atheist be that scared of vote. I'm going to kick Atheist. his butt. Let's watch his final video. Tim Black. All right. Yeah, Tim. Black. I find it very entertaining to listen to this weird bastard make excuses for his fetishes. 
excuses for and my weirdness. fetishes. That is your philosophical leader and your little movement. A man who went. Oh, you missed it. Oh, that, Some... That's the infamous banana video. Yeah. Okay. Deep in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see it. <laughs> Sodomize himself. Banana in his butt. So fun. You know, I want to talk. Yeah. Brett King took away my virginity when I first saw this video because he's the one who showed it to me. There you go. <laughs> wow. Of course, of Just course he did. Took away my my visual virginity when I first saw the, this. <laughs> the, the beginning of that statement. Uh, Brett Keen took my virginity. <laughs> uh, I was like, Hold no, on. no, no, no. He took my visual. <laughs> My visual. It's not what you said at first. So he and fucked I was like, you in the eye. What's going on here? Yeah. Popped your eyeball out. No, no, good. I watched that video. You sticking that banana up your butt. That's what it is. Talk about a story here. There was a, a philosopher. It's so weird that we're watching ourselves. Watch right. It. It's very strange. Yeah. Very Back in the old Greek days, named Diogenes, and uh, one of the things he did was he uh, masturbated in public. And when the authorities of the time were like, hey, you masturbated in public, he was like, no, I didn't. I was just uh, scratching, scratching my, my belly and yeah. my dick, you know, it got in the way. It just got in the way. And um, I think I'm the spiritual heir to Diogenes. So I think that that's where that's coming from. It's a tradition of sexual perversion that reaches back through the ages. What the fuck are you talking about, atheist? <laughs> I pity the fool. Oh, oh wow. Oh, I gotta. That's gotta be. If I ever do like another intro or outro, I gotta put that in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's too classic. What the fuck is you talking about, atheist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout this video, he's all sweating and like wiping that's gotta his head be, off. Oh, Ben, that's gotta be a drop. You gotta. We got to get that as a drop. Yeah, yeah we, do need we it. totally need that. We need to start doing that more often with these clips in general. Like whenever we hear something really fucking off the wall like that, we got to like start building a soundboard with it. Tim the bartender. He's a Christian. He calls himself Tim the bartender. He's I don't. Gonna... I'm not. We're not, I'm not. We're not 100 percent sure about his religious beliefs. Yeah, so. not sure. About I don't that. want to assume he's a Christian, but I mean, he kind of talks like he is sometimes. I don't know. Uh, he doesn't sound like one. Some weird me. shit. Don't nobody care about that. What is this shit? How many of my brothers watch this shit? Okay, no. If you are not. black and you watch, uh, he's, he's gonna, <laughs> he's about to say if you're black and you watch this shit, they need to take your black card away or something like that. Okay. Watch this shit. Let me know. Okay. Somebody will be around promptly to remove your black card, motherfucker. What is this shit? Oh. It's garbage. Oh, so this okay. guy, this guy speaks for all black people. That's good to know. No, he doesn't. No, no, I'm yeah, I'm I'm very aware that he does not, but um, <laughs> that's what I'm mom. saying. I mean, he's it seems like in his own mind he does. Yes, you know, he's like, I will revoke your blackness. Like, I love no. I love how he's he's uh you know hearkening to like Southern Baptist preachers by mopping his brow with a white yep. handkerchief as he does this. He's I gotta I gotta know. incorporate that into my video. He starts talking. You really like do. One later it should be. On. Should I use a black handkerchief because I'm yeah. white? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. I think that's right. the rule. No man with rhythm should watch this shit. Your rhythm will slip away spontaneously. All coolness gone. See ya. Fucking with the amazing analyst. <laughs> that analyst, analyst. <laughs> Get it? Because he gets in and he magnifies your asshole and he, he studies your asshole. What? <laughs> I don't know, but I like okay. it. I like, I think I I like it too. With you. I, think I like the look on his face. I oh, know. Yeah, we've yeah, been exactly. saying that. We've been saying that for the last two videos. Actually, TJ has kind of been like, hey, you want to go out sometime? Yeah, you know. I was, <laughs> I was kind of seeing, you know, if maybe Chris, uh, recipro He's, he gets angry when I do that. It's, yeah. very, it's very interesting how angry he gets. Um... <laughs> Let's uh, let's keep going. Well, he, yeah, he's obsessed with your butt. That's another story. I know, it's very funny. Call me a homophobe. I'll call you a heterophobe, bitch. You're a heterophobic. I'm heterophobic. Okay. What's that? I oh, okay. guess that you don't want to brought up women. sexuality. I don't know. Cause you Did lack you sex. I lack sex. Yes, he is married. I am married. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> I don't know. It's it's it doesn't. No, it's no, no. not like any of this is supposed. To, it's not like any of this shit touches already, on reality. Anymore. We already talked about this. Tim Tim said, you know, whose dick did you suck to get, uh, you know, their daughter to to marry you? Remember? Right. So yeah, he knows I'm married. He said that last week. Yeah. So now, but now all of a sudden, I don't get any. <laughs> I guess he. I guess he thinks it's just a, a cold, barren, sexless marriage. Okay. Okay. I don't think you. I don't think no woman uploaded that video either. I think that was you looking for attention. Vlad said some woman uploaded. No, it. You the only uploaded that that's shit. Looking for attention is this bartender guy right now. <laughs> I know. He's right? the only person looking for attention right now because he seems to be obsessed with you <laughs> and what you're doing with your banana and going and, and going into a lot of detail about it. I know. Well, like I'm, every. I'm telling you though, uh, G man, you when you first came on the show, that's the first thing you wanted to ask was why did he put a banana in his butt. Oh, that's a yeah, good question. I, I was just curious, I, and I still want to know. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> don't know. If it was a you. ritual. Would you? He did it. Would you, he, he did it for Would you like him to show you again, G Man? What happened? No, I think somebody <laughs> made a bet with you. I think I think you did it because somebody made a bet with you, and you lost, and you had to do it. No, I think that's why you did it. He no. did it because he liked it. <laughs> I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've that, done. That's yeah. what happened. I've done plenty of weird stuff. Trust me. Uh, um, yeah, yeah I, I've I've been watching some of your older stuff. I I, I hear you, and I <laughs> use some of that material in my videos sometimes. <laughs> uh, I'm I you know you it's just all over you yourself. need you need to do more <laughs> videos about me because I could be a gold mine for you, G man. You just go through and you just start refuting every amazing atheist video, and you'll get you could just you can call yourself uh, the amazing counter atheist or something. And you just go around and you refute everything I do at all times. You can be my professional e expert refuter. <laughs> what's t what's Tim the bartender gonna do then? I don't know. Oh, that's true. That Follow puts Tim. That, that puts lead, Tim bro. out of a job. Yes. Shit. Yeah. I forgot. Sorry, Tim. We forgot you were there, buddy. Let's play some more. Yeah. Market oh, employee. Yeah. And your tight ass corduroys. I know what type of guy you are. Last picked. Did he say tight ass corduroys? Yeah. I wear I wear giant loose baggy jeans just for tight corduroys. Just for like I know what kind reference. of guy you are. You're one of them tight corduroy guys. <laughs> yeah. The ones I'm always staring at in the mall. Yeah. I mean, How come I I've mean, never uh, heard of this guy? Because I hate them. Watching they supple asses as they walk up and down the promenade. I know yeah, what kind of guy. How does he know you wear corduroys? He like, doesn't. Like, I don't. He, I don't. He doesn't. He's just imagining me in corduroys. He's like, I know you wearing them tight pants, boy. Come on. And a belly shirt, too, so I can just see your belly button. I know what you're wearing. Oh <laughs> you wearing a black like lace lavender, thong under there? Bet you smell like I lavender. I bet you are. You just, got out of, you just got out of the shower. Yeah. Hair's still a little damp from the shower. <laughs> oh my God. Your neck in you know what? I think I think I think when you go take your showers, you need to close your windows if you have a window in your bathroom because <laughs> he might be stalking you or something. I don't know. Wow. He might I'm be so stalking you. Silk suds running down the crack of your ass. <laughs> I know what kind of guy you are. Tim the, Tim the stalker. Tim the stalker wow. bartender. Tim the stalker. <laughs> stalker. Stalker. Huh. He been trying to mislead you. Lead you astray. <laughs> He was trying to get you to be indoctrinated with the with the word I say with the word of nothing. But hey, I'm not here to judge that man, but I am here to show love. Love for him sending you to this page with your nasty ass. Oh yeah, you nasty motherfucker if you came from the amazing atheist. Cause he's a nasty motherfucker. Now I know some of you are casual observers of his fuckery. Well, let me tell you what Ooh, you're going like to get here. Too. And for those normal fans of mine, those regular subscribers of mine, this video is not for you, but please sit back, drink a drink, relax, hit your feet up. Drink this a one. drink, cuss, and be just as derogatory as you're saying TJ is. He's a hypocrite. <laughs> I, I really want to know if this guy considers himself a Christian or something, so I got to chat with him. But listen, man, uh, you're doing a, a very bad job and representing my side a very poor job of it you know yeah i don't know if he is so i can't well, really say anything about nasty. that i'm gonna find out i'm gonna make it my business to find out all right 
Yeah, he is kind of hypocritical because he, he, he attacks me for things that he does himself for the most part. Yeah, with his so, mouth. Pretty right. much his mouth is just as dirty as what he's saying that you are and whatnot. So he well, needs I mean, to go check I, himself I, before he talks about somebody else. I am a foul-mouthed, angry, opinionated motherfucker, and he is too. But, you know, I'm not coming after him on that basis. Like, man, why are you always yelling and cursing and being all foul-mouthed and having opinions and shit? Because, I mean, it'd be hypocritical of me to do because that's the exact same fucking thing I do and am. So, I mean, I actually relate a lot to this guy in terms of, like, content style because he has a similar delivery and mode of uh, fucking... I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's why he's so angry because he's like, man, I should be the one with 580,000 subs or whatever. I do this shit better than this white boy does. I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, he's definitely copying you. Um, how long <laughs> has he been on YouTube? I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I like a year or something like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, try to get his attention. And, you know, I'm not as big as you, but I have my ways. <laughs> you, you might be getting his attention now. Yeah, you, you probably may be. are. Yeah. Yeah, he's, oh, okay. he, he's watching. Tim, the he's... bartender. I am G man, and I would love to have an audience with you. Because if you yeah. ever come out and say that you're a Christian, I'm gonna call you out on that because you're not. Not talking like that, you're not. No. He's he's watching right now, furiously masturbating to TJ's corduroid <laughs> ass. <laughs> I still want to know how the heck he knew you was wearing corduroys, even though you're not wearing. Them. It, it's it's just one of those. It's I mean that's the funny thing is like it's just a little vivid detail of his mind's eye that he just <laughs> he wanted me in tight corduroys, so he put me in tight corduroys. I mean that's just how it what it boils down to. Toes <laughs> who been trolling my damn page, just trolling it. I see you trolling, 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 trolling. I said, look, hey. I don't got a problem with you being gay, but don't try to force that gay man sex shit on me, bruh. That ain't how I roll. So I've been bashed for it. a banana up his butt forcing homosexuality. Well, well, what happened was when we were when we were watching the original video, we were making like I'd say in the first video we made some slight jokes at his expense because he kind of seemed a little uptight about it, and then he got really upset. So of course in the next video we like really doubled down. Well, I did anyway. I doubled down on just like making a lot of very like. Um, homosexual or you know, like homoerotic remarks towards him, basically. So he's probably referring to that. Mm. But I mean, it okay. wasn't. It was really done in jest, just to kind of piss him off, because he's kind of oh, an okay. idiot about it. Who gets like you know really? I mean, it was. It's apparent, but I mean, he he doesn't really seem to get the joke. For him, it's just like, oh well, he's pissed off, so he can't see past the fact that he's angry to what's actually going on, which is just me pushing his buttons intentionally, which is not hard to do because he's a very irascible person. Did you invite him to your program at all? No, but he's, he, he said he wants to come on, Will so it? we're going to get him on here. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment because he, he mentions that in this video, and I just want to get through this video here. Okay, we, we, right. we should probably try to get through it a little faster then. All right. Because I call them butt pirates. Because I call them salami smugglers. Because I call them sm <laughs> pole smokers. That's what they are. Holy shit. I uh, just realized yeah. this, is a black, this is a black version of you my know, fucking stepdad. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's a pretty. He's preaching, but he's not preaching. He's I don't preaching. Know what he's, doing. he's preaching his own little gospel. You going to skip a little bit ahead? He's sexy. And the men don't fuck the other men in the ass. That's not homophobic. That's just the way we like it. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. bitch. I like how he's. I like how I make a few, like, slightly like I make a few gay jokes at him, and he ha and he feels the need to make this like long presentation about how heterosexual he is. That's because like, yeah, you know I mean like. He's that's not the reaction of an actually comfortable in his heterosexuality man, just so you know. No. Like, this just makes it look like there's something to what I said. You realize that, yeah. right? You have the self-awareness <laughs> to see that, don't you? Like, this is, yeah, the, over this is the overcompensation <laughs> of someone who's, like, you know, got some sort of struggle within themselves that they're not making public. So... Yeah, to give you some yeah, downer bullshit. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, because some of the amazing atheist fans were upset about what I said about TJ, my videos are being flagged. Therefore, I must discontinue all fun talk about TJ. TJ, you win. You win. The internet. That's what he wins, folks. He wins the internet. TJ. I won, won the, the internet. internet. Wow. What the fuck? All right. My first decree is all the feminists are kicked off of Tumblr. And I don't even know what else yet. But some more shit's going to happen. From now on, all, yeah, all Google results will be porn. That'll be my next decree. Uh, so why are people flagging his channel? I don't know. We, I, I don't no, think... one, no one said to flag his channel. Yeah. I don't, we don't even know if people really are flagging his channel. That could just be a talking point. I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Could have happened. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if anyone, fans, if anyone, them, look, right now. if anyone did flag Tim the bartender, don't fucking do that shit yeah. in the future. We don't support that. We don't want that. That's not, you know, a, that's not a method of support that we care to encourage. So just know that if you do choose to do something like that, you do so in defiance of, you know, what we would want. So, yeah. I'll tell you folks, it was, it's been fun. It's been entertaining. Uh, TJ, if you want to have me on the Drunken Podcast, man, just, you know, send me an invitation and I will be there. And we'll keep it fun You've got an invitation. and entertaining. Because I'm sure we have Bring some similarities, now. but some Bring differences. I don't know if we can All get right. here now. now. You know, I'm still not apologizing for being an asshole. I hope you will not apologize for being an asshole because that would ruin the fun. See, I respect I mean, you as a human he, being. He basically... He just said he respects you as a human being. That's because he knows this is all a fucking pageant and a yeah. game. I mean, you know, it, 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 you, if you're on YouTube long enough, you know it's kind of like the WWE to an extent. Like you got. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? You got to break kayfabe. Predetermined. It's you're real. breaking. You're breaking kayfabe. <laughs> it's not like it's not like it's predetermined, but I mean, everyone kind of fucking plays shit up. The people who don't don't really get the kind of attention they want. So everyone TJ knows broke that kayfabe. you know people have to exaggerate their characters and shit. I mean, it's just like the reality of how you fucking entertain people. No one wants to hear you just, like, sit there and dryly state your opinions in a fucking polite and respectful manner. That's boring as shit. No one likes that. People want to see you yell and scream and get passionate and irate. Like, and fuck this bullshit. Yeah. Fantasize about I hate what your it, opponent as is wearing. Much as, <laughs> as much as I hate to admit it, it is true. It is definitely true. Nobody wants to watch a boring channel. You're right about that. Exactly right. You're right about that. Russians mock Obama with laser show. Well, that sounds like, I mean, like, does it, I mean, we almost don't even need to watch the story, but <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Russian vitriol directed at the United States and President Obama has intensified. First, the foreign minister tweeted pictures of President Putin holding a cheetah and President Obama holding a poodle. <laughs> and then there is this, a laser light show in Moscow showing President Obama eating a banana and also wishing him happy birthday. Putin's government did not put this out, but the U.S. Embassy, but this is projected onto the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. And oh President Putin God. slapped sanctions on the United States and other countries. Oh, wow. It's, it's, I mean, like, did our country, I mean, do we go from a cold war to a prank war? What's going on here? This, yeah, I actually I, think this is pretty awesome. I, I like, like <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if this is how Russia and the United States are going to feud with each other, just let it happen, you know? Yeah. Because this could be fun. We could just have, like, a massive international prank war between America and Russia. This could, uh, this could escalate into some pretty interesting areas. Yeah, I mean, sure. I, don't, I don't know how you beat uh, putting a picture of you deep-throating a banana on your embassy, <laughs> but, I mean, I'd like to see where it goes next. I think that, the, you know, and interestingly enough, the banana used in that image is the same one that, you know, I famously used as well. <laughs> it was? Yes. That banana gets around. Um, no, but Obama, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we need to go steal their mascot or something, you know, before the big game. Yeah, or like uh, get a picture of Obama oh. giving Putin like a gigantic purple nurple. Like a double purple nurple when he takes his shirt. You know how Putin takes his shirt off for every photo op? 
Yeah, get a get a good picture of like a double purple nurple on those glorious Putin nips. We could just have like a, uh, you know, you could just have like Obama, like Putin's like on his like hands and knees, and Obama's just like sitting on him, and like just fucking flashing cash in his face and shit. Like, yeah, USA, we got money, bitch. <laughs> Since we're going to be, like, you know, doing economic sanctions and shit. Or maybe just draw a laser dick on the Kremlin or something. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. maybe yeah, we might, be getting, we might be getting too mature with this, you know? Just yeah. big, not even, maybe an inflatable dick on the Kremlin, yeah, you know? Like, those, get, but like, are, but get really like, black brutal. ops to go, like, undercover and fucking do some Assassin's Creed shit where they mount the fucking dick. Yeah, and like, then they inflate just, it. it has to be a really crudely drawn dick, though. It can't be, like, an actual dick. I, no, I, no. If I, have, if I have one criticism of the the Russian thing. It was a little too detailed, a little too. Yeah, yeah. I I just want to see a crudely drawn dick on the Kremlin as a response. And you know, and then at, at midnight it could shoot like cum, but it'd be like white streamers of paper that you know get <laughs> yeah, all over yeah. the streets and shit. That would it'd be, be pretty good. awesome. Yeah, we need to get on this. I want to be made the uh, the head of the U.S. Army U.S. Army's uh, prank division, <laughs> so we can respond to this outrage. Countries, in short, he says, keep your food. We don't want it. Phil Black is in Moscow to tell us more. Hi, Phil. Hey, Carol. Yeah, as recently as a week ago, the Russian government was saying we don't do tit for tat sanctions, but now they've clearly thrown that policy completely to one side, and you're right, they're saying no to Western food. And this is really significant. For the next year, they are banning all imports of beef, pork, fruit, vegetable, poultry, seafood, cheese, and milk in all forms, fresh, frozen, processed, whatever. And this applies to the United, uh, the United States, obviously, the European Union, Australia, Canada, and Norway. No to Western food. This is significant because Russia is not capable of feeding itself. Its, its domestic agriculture industry cannot meet that well, demand. You know, so what this means got, is that Russia must... If you got too many people to feed, just let some of them starve. Then you don't have as much. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe that's, the, maybe that's the thinking here. I don't know. What do we ban to get back at him for this? Like Matroska dolls? Yeah. F fuzzy winter hats? <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of something that comes from Russia. Um, <laughs> caviar, maybe. Mm, yeah. They they do make a lot of caviar there. Huh. Snow, a lot of fucking snow. Yeah, they make snow. We should ban the export of snow from Russia. <laughs> Crushing their economy in one fell swoop. Yep. <laughs> now try and boost that. Pro, its ability uh, and its efficiency uh, to feed its own people and it's going to have to look for imports from other markets as well probably asia probably uh, south america otherwise it could face people in russia shortages. are going to get real fond of wontons very soon yeah you want shrimp fried rice <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that ben was Wodka. racist ban wonka um. No more vodka. Vodka. Oh man, that would suck. If that—that's what they import. Vodka. Yeah, lots of vodka. But oh shit! You know let's not. Let's not. Let's not do this. Let's just. Let's apologize. Yeah. Let's apologize. And and, yeah. <laughs> There's other places to get uh, vodka from, but it's not Russian. No, it's not. Food increases in prices, and that could ultimately blow back against President Putin and his government. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I thought it was kind of funny. It's, it's just like, I mean, the problem with the idea that it's going to blow back is that they're just like, he just has that, that status of like, he has the right level of beloved and feared that no one's ever going to think that anything that he did is the cause of anything bad that happens. Yeah, It's always going to be someone else's fault. Oh, this is the West fault. Oh, this is some other incompetent bureaucrat's fault. Whatever. It's not going to be Putin's it, fault. I think it could blow back, though, in terms of their ability to feed people. It's like that. That really isn't that what they say is like take away the food. Like you, you. If if all grocery stores disappeared tomorrow, in one day there would be 
basically zombies running the streets and eating each other. It, well, I mean, like, look, it, it, I mean, it hasn't really stopped North Korea from being under like this the strict control of that regime, but. They're they're pretty brutal in how they they enforce things though. Everyone's like terrified of the prison camps, and everyone's basically conditioned from birth to basically have a religious reverence for their you know whoever their beloved leader is at the time. Yeah, I mean it'll be interesting to see because they've got this westernized kind of media now in in Russia, and uh, when when I say westernized, I mean like Fox News. You know, so we can maybe go back to news stories later. Okay. Drunken pheasants. What is the Sound best like way to pheasants. gain confidence? And what you is your a fucking favorite? idiot? <laughs> Boo! 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 Run for mayor someplace else. I think he said pheasants. That's why I'm angry. And least favorite Paul's ego video. Thank. Oh, favorite and least favorite Paul's ego video. Is that what is that what the question was? Yeah, yes. I think so. Oh. So that was on you, Paul. I, well, let oh, me... I have to answer what my own favorite yes. video of mine is. Yeah, because you're here, so you got to go first. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I like, I like. Uh, I I uh, know for a fact I could not answer this question about my own channel. So yeah, I don't blame I mean, you for being like I don't know. The the, um, <laughs> the American Ashamed video I think is one of my favorites. That is a great video. I would say that that probably would be at least in contention for my favorite Paul's ego video. And because uh, that one just was like, you know, a genuine outpouring of emotion that happened spontaneously. It was a and, and it ended up causing a lot of talk, which was good. It was one of the last times I had any significant interaction on YouTube, you know, with other with other people beyond, you know, people were making video responses to it and. That just that just doesn't happen anymore. Well, there's so. not even you can't even do video responses anymore. Yeah, That's I mean gone. they've removed, but I mean people you, you people don't even bother to like respond to other people's videos really. I mean you guys are the only ones really doing it, and you do it here on a podcast, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we found a format where we can make it work again. So My least kind of favorite. Neat least favorite paul's ego video is anything like any pick any of the first like four videos on the channel they're awful i would <laughs> say i would say the video that you tried to make against me defending brett keen is probably one of the worst ever oh yeah um and that, then uh, yeah, yeah 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 i get i remember that one the uh that was that was bad too that yeah. was that's made that, that's not only was it bad but it's just made worse by the history that happened since you yeah know what i'm saying <laughs> You know, yeah, like, I, I, I wasn't in hindsight, it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, why did I wasn't even... just wrong. Like, I was ultra fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like being wrong and then having it come back and kick you in the nuts every time something stupid happens with Brett Keane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. I mean, I felt I, I remember I was I was under the Brett Keane spell for a while, too, though. So I can't really be too critical. <laughs> you, you know what, dude? Brett Keane is such a good glad hander. Like, cause he, when he, when I made that video, cause most of that video was him. Yeah. Um, when I made that video, I felt good about what I was doing. Like I was doing him, a, like he had me in this room and he was like, Hey Paul, you know, you could really help me out and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I'm usually not the kind of guy that, that, that acquiesces to stuff like that, but he, he like charmed me. Yeah. And he does like, that. Yeah. He's, he, and then, you know. That's like his one real true, like his true, his true talent is just being able to like kind of manipulate people to his will in a very short term way. Like he hasn't mastered the art of actually keeping them on his side over a long right. period of time, but he's mastered the art of just getting people to be like, wow, this Brett Keen guy is pretty cool and he's real nice and he's helpful. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and he seems like a real down to earth guy. And you're like, wow, I just, just want to help him out and just help him succeed and enable him, especially since he got this raw deal on YouTube just trying to protect his family. Exactly. <laughs> and people attacked his family. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course they did. Because Brett Keane is always the innocent victim. That's yeah, the that greatest thing about him. Be, that was a series. That was a two-part series uh, video. I made one after it that was even worse, I think, because I, I tried <laughs> to pull the whole, ha, 
you reacted just like I said you would card. And it didn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it just, really didn't fly. So, yeah, that, know, it, that, I never understood that as an argument anyway, because it's like, yeah, well, you know, it's like I, I fucked your wife and then you're angry. And it's like, I knew you'd be angry. It's like, you know, it, it's just like whatever. Of course you could predict what's going to happen. Right. One of my favorite Paul Zigo videos was one that he made about, I, I think you went out on a date with uh, the woman you, you ended up marrying, and uh -huh. you, you ate sushi, and, oh, and you, yeah. couldn't, you couldn't stand sushi, and you're about to, like, puke all over the table the whole time. Yeah, yeah I spent uh, about an hour and a half with one piece of sushi in my mouth. <laughs> trying desperately, trying desperately to get it to like slither down my throat, you know, as it gets slimier as you hold it. In and your mouth. throat it was, is just rejecting it. It was the worst. Yeah, that was the worst uh, first date. Like, it, it did not happen like a fairy tale with my wife and I. Like that first date, <laughs> she kept leaving like uh, in the middle of the movie. So we went and saw a Mighty Wind, which is that I don't know if you've ever seen it. That stupid mockumentary made by the guys that did. Uh, uh oh fuck why am i trying to talk about things like this when i'm stoned just don't even worry <laughs> about it just keep going uh, yeah 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 so anyway yeah she kept leaving the theater like she'd get up to go to the bathroom eight different times and then at the end she was like do you have any tattoos and i was like yeah i've got a tattoo and uh and she goes oh i fucking hate tattoos it was it was <laughs> the worst it was the worst fucking first date i never thought i was getting called back but, why did uh, she? Well, why did she ask like that then? You know? I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. leading you. I mean, like even if you didn't have a tattoo, you'd almost exactly. be like, "Yeah, damn right I do." <laughs> I can't show you right now, though. And then I'll show you later. About, like, yeah. Run to the tattoo parlor. I'll be right back, sweetie. Yeah. Run to the tattoo parlor. Come on, put something quick on me. I don't know. Whatever's cheapest. <laughs> Woodstock, Here you go. It's it's a, yeah. You know. <laughs> I got Woodstock on my tailbone. It's like a tramp stamp. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's my badass tat. All right, what's next? I like how this okay. fucking... No, we didn't. I like how this random dude's face was just on the screen the whole time yeah. we were talking about this shit. Yeah. It really was. <laughs> uh. Hello, drunken peasants. In the past, TJ has said that he believes that no, MRAs are just as bad as feminists. However, in the debate last podcast, you guys tended to agree with Janet. I can see like why you wouldn't want to identify as a MRA, but I don't get why they're equally bad. Even in uh, TJ's last video, Feminism Against Women, he said that he believe there are no more real women's issues in the Western world. And uh, it's apparent that you believe there are men's issues. So it seems like a men's rights movement would be more fitting. Also, why did you decide to have <laughs> Awesome Rants as the feminist in the debate? Well... The reason we had Awesome Rants as the feminist in the debate is pretty easy. She's the only feminist that we could actually get to come on our show. And she was very reasonable. Right. So <laughs> that's why that was the case. And I would, I would resent the idea that I agreed disproportionately with Janet. I would say that I agreed with, you know, each of them on different points. And I kind of tried to keep my opinion to myself for the most part. You know, I intervened a few times when I thought it was maybe slowing down a little. Um, I don't know that I'm not, I'm not really here to comment on, um, whether, you know, who, who's like the biggest group of assholes on the internet, whether it's the MRAs or the feminists. When I say they're both equally bad, I mean that they're both making this fundamental error of thinking that you can, you know, remedy inequality between the sexes by focusing only on the interest of one side, um, right. That's can, what I view as the fundamental issue there. Yeah, you can solve a binary problem by focusing on one point in that binary. Right. There's ones and zeros. Let's focus yeah. on the ones and try to figure things out that way. It's like, no, right. you have to have a broader picture. So that's my criticism, really. 
of of both sides. And I have actually pr- I've actually brought those criticisms to Janet Bloomfield, and she seems to agree with me, honestly. I, but I mean, I, obviously, she has to, she's going to continue to lie with the men's rights movement because there is no real. I guess gender egalitarian is what I would say. I guess there's other people use different terms, but um, I don't really see a, a larger movement, uh, organized movement for something like that yet. But I would imagine that it wouldn't be far off bet- before people start, you know, to develop that as that the gender politics issues kind of keep rising in you know culture and social media and so forth. Yeah. Paul, do you have a dick joke to go at the end of that? Or yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I gave you a lot of fucking time to come up with some kind of dick or fart joke there, and you then did. I'm just finished, and you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I just I agree. I know, but you <laughs> were supposed to, to you were supposed to come up with a dick or fart joke though. <laughs> I, that I'm was sorry. insert dick or fart joke, and then Ben was the backup in case you could didn't have anything. But, Shit. Shit. But no. Man. Fuck you guys you, failed me. You guys failed me. The show's Fuck fucking you. canceled. We haven't yep. played that in a while. You want me to play, night, play that? Especially, it's even better now that his show is canceled and he's fucking disgraced and shit. Or I don't know, maybe it was the other one that did that. Who cares? Fuck you, Bill Maher. Fuck you, <laughs> Bill Maher. Fuck you. Fuck your mother in our fucking asshole. Go fuck yourself. That cunt is a douchebag, and I fucking hate him. He gets on his dumb fuck show and talks shit like that all the time. Fuck yo. Fuck yo. Oh, fuck yo. Fuck yo. I like it. Hey guys, like it so here's my question. Which one of the two following scenarios would convince more theists that there is probably no God? A. Contact Good. with a perfectly rational civil- alien civilization that have never had any religion and the whole concept of God is just unintelligible to them. Or B. Contact with an alien civilization that does have a religion, but their religion is obviously derived from their biology. So, for example, if the species practices sexual cannibalism, then they have a commandment saying, Thou shalt devour your husband after you know him. Thanks. So which which one of those scenarios is more likely to to challenge theism, I guess is what he's asking? Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, theistic people tend to kind of have an attitude of like, well everyone else is wrong i mean they have no problem saying the rest of the world is wrong when it's like we believe in jesus yeah. well a lot of people around the world don't in fact the majority of people don't believe in jesus they're like well, well they're all wrong and going to hell looking at like particularly american christians i think they'd have a much harder time with the sexual cannibalism race they would you know, I don't know. There's would... a lot of that already in, in there in, in Christianity. I don't really think that's that strange. I mean, you already go and take the fucking sacrament and eat the, the blood and flesh of Christ and shit. Um, and, yeah, uh, you, you know, got a point. there's there's a lot of sexual and cannibalistic stuff in Christianity. So I don't even I... think it would be that much of a stretch for them. See, I can already envision the outreach campaign, though, to the atheistic aliens. Like they just like, oh, well, we got to bring them the light of the Lord. They just ain't never done heard of it. Whereas if these other things come down and it's a sexual practice or, a, you know, a, a religious practice for them to masturbate in public, they're going to be like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> Damn what the alien. Fuck is this? I think they would still have the same reaction though. they'd be like, these, athe- these aliens are heathens. Manifest destiny, bitch. This planet is ours in the name of God, the father. Hmm. It'd be like the new Crus- crusades, basically. <laughs> oh, it'd be the, it'd be like the fattest, laziest crusade ever, though. Can you imagine like American Christianity rising up and be like, yeah. <laughs> "We got to convert the, these heathen aliens." Convert we gonna them. send them back to their heathen planet. Yep. I can just I'm I'm seeing the fucking Duck Dynasty clan just fighting aliens there, <laughs> and Honey Boo Boo Child throwing <laughs> grenades and shit. <laughs> what? I don't know. That would be a frightening sight. <laughs> I think she might try to eat one halfway through, though. <laughs> and she'd All just right. inflate like a cartoon that swallowed a bomb. <laughs> like, some sm- would... like a little plume of smoke would shoot out of her lips afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She'd be fine. 
very drunken peasants uh, from Australia. Big fan. Uh, I'd like to thank TJ just quickly uh, for helping me to decide to become an atheist about two years ago. Been watching your videos ever since then. TJ, you're a horrible influence. I know. On the children of the world. The children. You took the light of the Lord away from this man, and you will pay for that on the judgment day. Okay. That's all I have to say about it. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. Pretty fucking good. Um, quick question. Uh, in America, the word cunt is, uh, it's got a lot of stigma attached to it. It's, uh, pretty offensive over there. Uh, a lot of feminists I know, uh, have a lot of trouble with it. Uh, there, there's a lot of, like, whiplash when someone says it over there, apparently. Uh, I know you've copped a lot of shit for saying it before. Um, TJ, so just quickly, uh, in Australia... The word cunt uh, is a word that refers to a mate, like if a guy brings you a drink from the bar and uh, he says, uh, here you go, cunt, you say, thanks, cunt, no, thanks for the drink, cunt. Um, <laughs> so do you ever think it... Oh, man, I just want to go there just to be able to do that. Yeah, what that the fuck's fun. up, cunt? Yeah, hey, cunt. Nothing much, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm going to start calling people cunt and just see how it You'd goes. be like, hey, it's cool Maybe in Australia. Should. Because, you know, everybody knows that these curse words are the, they're the most fun words to say. Maybe we should just invert the meaning. And just be, yeah. I mean, we already have started. Like, I call my friends motherfuckers all the time. Hey, what's up, motherfucker? I refer to everything as my, you know, like my shit, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, that, that so shit's over there. That's because you guys are sailors with potty mouths. Oh, Unlike yeah. me, I'm a refined and dignified gentleman who never uses profane language. Good for you, TJ. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> You'll be like that in America. Call like me by my Christian name, Lance Sloan. Regular old term, <laughs> like people just throw it around, like cunt doesn't mean anything here. Uh, I call all my friends cunts. Um, okay, we got the cunt concept. Be like that over there, like just black like saying the f word, really. Um, right. I say fuck all the time, but right. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. Thanks for answering my question. Uh, what? Hope to. Watch a future episode, so uh, they're pretty fucking good, bro. What was even the question? I, yeah, I was going to say, I might just be high, but it seems to me that he just told us a story about how he calls all his friends cunts and then said, uh, yeah, thanks you know, for answering the question. Hey, what, what question? question? I don't. I didn't hear it. Did you, Ben? I don't. No, no. But I, I think, I think he maybe just wanted us to comment on it. Okay. Well, my comment on it is, yeah, there's like things are different in different countries. I mean, that's how. Yeah. The culture things work. You know, it's kind of funny. Like in the U.S., a fanny is is someone's ass, but in the U.K., yeah. a fanny is a vagina, which can yeah. lead to probably a lot of confusion. Yeah, like fanny pack. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be over there sticking it up their butts. Yeah. Well, there's a funny pack. Why is he still here? I don't All know. right, this okay. is my third question for the Drunken Peasants podcast. Uh, my question for you guys is this. If he you has a very ovular head. <laughs> his head is oval. ovulating. Yeah, I mean, like, if he, if he just painted his neck black and then drew some little white legs and, like, made his face white, he could look like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> It'd be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, you're so mean. What? <laughs> I would do it if my head was that shape, but it's not. My head is like a fucking giant he, melon. He could be. <laughs> he would be Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> DJ just has <laughs> yeah, to be Humpty Dumpty. I would do it. That's okay. I'd fucking, I don't care. You I'd, would, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would be like, <laughs> I'd even do videos. <laughs> okay. Every fall. <laughs> Anyone on get YouTube, it? who would it be and why? All right, see you. Bye. What do you say? I didn't get the question. Yeah, I didn't get it either. <sighs> Go back, Ben. We didn't get oh, Humpty's right. question. This is my third question for the Pay attention. podcast. Uh, my question for you guys is this. If you could terminate anyone on YouTube, who would it be and why? All right, see you. Bye. Does he mean terminate like kill or terminate like their just account. end their account? Like forever. Um, I, you know, I, really, I don't really think I would do that to anybody, honestly. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. Like the, the obvious choices would be like, Brett Keen and stuff like that. But, like, I would never want to, like, have Brett Keen never come back. He just does it to himself anyway. Right. I, I mean, I, and, 
I, I just, I mean, like, back. there's, I, I mean, like, if there, if someone has a really stupid offensive opinion, I think we should let them speak, and then everyone should just make fun of them. I think that's more effective than being like, they can't speak because someone might be convinced. It's like, you know, only idiots would be convinced, and then we'd know who the idiots are. So, it's I mean, I'd good. like, I'd like to terminate Onision because he's a cunt. No, that but, means friend in Australia, so you can't oh, even yeah, call him oh, yeah, that that's anymore. Right, that's right. <laughs> I, my, I call my mates cunts all the time. Somebody gets you a drink and they say, hey, cunt. I don't even think I would terminate Onision's account, though. Cause I yeah, just, I don't like, think I would either. I mean, I would just, I'd, maybe I'd be tempted to because he's a douchebag. But at the end of the day, I kind of believe in, like, his, his right to say what he wants or sure. do what he wants. So I'm not yeah. going to, like, really, like, you know, I just... It's really yeah, not I'm, something. I, it's not something I, I want. I have the desire to do is go around terminating other people's channels because I mean I know that it's a lot of work to run a fucking YouTube channel and I wouldn't want to just like I'm just gonna destroy your work because I personally don't like you. You fucking piece right. of shit. I yeah. mean, it just seems like a profoundly selfish act of like an immature asshole. Yeah, All the right. court of public opinion probably takes care of anything on YouTube that needs to right, be Right, exactly. Care. Exactly right. Let's see what's next. What's up, drug and peasants? How you doing? My name is Daniel. You probably don't care what my name is, but... Do you? I, I do. You ben. do? I care about Daniel. Okay. Maybe you're just some fucking callous piece of shit that doesn't <laughs> even care if Daniel dies tomorrow. But Daniel happens to be someone who's very near and dear to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a TJ only question. Oh, it's a oh. TJ only question. My favorite kind. And I wanted to know what is TJ's favorite image board website? So give me an answer. I like that Marilyn Manson is playing in the background also. Why the fuck can't Ben and Paul answer that question? That seems kind of strange. Yeah, my my answer would be supremely boring. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> you don't what, know what, what the is he like. He's like, talking about image boards like 4chan and shit. Oh. Where it's just like you know, there's just Got nothing it. but like people posting images and maybe like some brief commentary and shit. They're really kind of boring sites. There's not, I mean, like it's kind of an outmoded like idea, even in my opinion. Like, yeah. I mean, they're they're just kind of like really boring, listless communities. I find. So I, my answer would be that I don't really care for them. Well, there you go. <laughs> TJ yeah, <only> bitch. <laughs> Hello, alienated low-ranking members of society. Uh, it is I, the tepid blooded child of Patrick Coleman, and I want to, to and I wanted to ask you: Would you take death over this transvestite? Death would be a release next to this travesty. Okay. I don't even... What the do fuck know, was that? I don't even fucking know. Do you fucking watch this shit before you add it to the fucking roster, Ben? <laughs> or are you just like, anything that people said, and you're just like, yep, add it to the list. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm supposed to do there. <laughs> I just like I just feel like I'm like sitting there like I'm, is that a, is there actually a question here or is this just like designed to be confusing? It is. Or are they referring to something that doesn't even like I'm unaware <laughs> of some new fad on the internet that everyone's going to be doing for the next like three months and I'm determined not to fucking pay any attention to it. So every time I see it, I just scroll past it really fast and mumble how stupid people are under my breath. Is that what this is? Yes. Okay. You ready for more? Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's have oh, it. Yeah. Bull cut kid, go. Hi, Scotty. Hi, TJ. Hi, Ben. Scotty ain't oh. here, mushroom boy. Um, I just had a question <laughs> about, like, uh, what's your guys' opinion on, like, Satanists? Like, uh, not the... Uh, Satan! ...don't believe in God and the devil, but the ones that... Uh, well, like, pray to him or worship him, like, in ways where they're, like, praying for people to die. Like, uh, for example, my ex-girlfriend uh, had a journal where she would write names in um, for <laughs> killed. Um, one of them was Obama. Um, 
<laughs> okay. What the, uh, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> is this kid what? describing a crime? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yeah. this, this like 14 year old kid, like, about to confess something to us. <laughs> like, I don't know if I want this on my fucking. <laughs> I don't want this on my plate. <laughs> you have to give me more than I'm asking for here, kid. Oh. One of them was Obama. <laughs> One of them was I can't even deal with that right now. Like, I'm going to have to go flip through a law book and find out if it's even fucking legal for us to have said that. <laughs> He said that his ex-girlfriend wrote Obama's name in a book of people that she wanted Satan to kill. Is that what he's going on? I don't know. That's what it... Because he started out with a pretty lucid question that was like, what do you guys think about Satanists? And then we're hearing about his ex-girlfriend writing Obama's name in the Death Note book. <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck is going on here? Not because he was a shitty president, but because he was black, which she was quite uh, a racist. Um, glad me and her are not together anymore. She was fucking batshit crazy. And also... No! Um, also, like... Uh, she said that she was, like, being haunted by demons. But, which I'm pretty sure she was just hallucinating, which uh, TJ... Um, I remember in one of your Q&As, you said that, uh, uh, sorry for all the uhs, I have trouble talking. Keep going. Stuff oh, like God, that. just go. Power um, through. Power through. Mainly because I have Asperger's social. Power disorder. through. You guys know what it is. Um, uh, what the fuck was I about to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, you said, uh, I remember in a Q&A, you said that, uh, you had sort of hallucinations like that caused by, like, sleep problems and stuff like that. Um, I was just wondering what your opinion was on this topic. And, uh, bye. Yeah, I had, um, I think they're, I don't remember if they're called hypnopompic or hypnogognic hallucinations, which are basically when you're just coming out of REM sleep, you, you're, you're basically, like, part of your dream kind of carries over into waking, and you can see, like, hallucinations and shit. And I experienced that on a few occasions. But it sounds like your ex-girlfriend is more, yeah. like, sch schizophrenic or, or something like that. I mean, I don't want to try to diagnose someone on a secondhand account when I'm not even qualified to diagnose someone at all. But it sounds like there's something a little bit more severe going on there. Yes. And you might want to talk to an adult about that Obama thing. Yeah. Right, you know. That's... I don't. I, I seriously doubt that Obama has much to fear from a probably 14 or 15 year old girl, but it's probably yeah, no. still worth mentioning to somebody that that she's got a death book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the The death book might be something pertinent to to bring up to somebody. <laughs> to somebody. To somebody. Especially if there's people that she actually knows in there. Right. Might want to let you know. Yeah. Might want to let someone know <laughs> about that. Right. That's that's not a normal thing to be happening. Yeah. Unless you're Richard Nixon. So do you know people died of Ebola? <laughs> nice yeah. segue there. I uh, I had Ebola. No, you didn't. I, yeah, I did. That's why I missed the last show because I had the Ebola virus. And you got I'm it from fine eating now. Chinese food. Yes, and I'm fine now though. P. F. Changs. Yeah, I mean you can't even call that Chinese food, really. I mean, it's like I had a. I had a touch of the hemorrhagic fever. My oh, eyeballs yeah. started to liquefy, and then I, you know, I went into the doctor, got a booster shot. I'm fine now. I'm back. No, no. <laughs> I just used the sheer power of my awesomeness to cure myself. Got so. it. That's how we do it up on the top, Paul. This is the CDC's Emergency Operations Center. Think of it as the nerve center of its response to the Ebola outbreak. Scary music, scary music. started buzzing everywhere. While we were here, the activation level just went up to level one. They make the music they're playing make it sound like Ebola is just like creeping up on you from every fucking corner. Like, yeah, the Ebola virus imminently affecting a town near you. <laughs> Race against the clock, scary music, oh my god. Yeah. 
I don't know. This is like there, there's when, when like the when you use this kind of soundtrack, I think it kind of um, undermines any sort of attempt at objectivity that might be going on. You know? Yeah. No. The the music and the production of it, and just it, it makes it seem disingenuous. Like like it's a uh, like it's <laughs> like it's a an emotional an emotional uh, plea rather than a fucking news story. Just be afraid of this. Like, <laughs> why like... can't we just do like Walter Cronkite used to do and sit down on the news desk and read the fucking news? Like, why do we got to be in the CDC? This guy doesn't want to be talking to this other guy right now. He's at a stage <laughs> one fucking, look at CDC issues highest response alert. And I think right before we paused it, the guy said, uh, yeah, while we're talking, we just went to the, to, to DEFCON 1 or whatever the fuck. Like, Death he doesn't want to be talking one. to this douchebag from CNN. It's a waste of his fucking time. <laughs> Can we just... just in the last couple minutes, what does that mean? What that means is just um, more people and more resources dedicated to the response. In that room, you could feel a quiet determination and a sense of urgency. What you're looking at is what the CDC looks at, a map of the world, trying to figure out what infectious diseases are happening and where they're happening. As you might imagine, a lot of focus on Ebola right now. They're tracking that as well, real time. They've been doing it since March. Take a look in here. This really jumped out at me. Mid-May, they thought things were basically under control. But then look what happens at the beginning of June. Everything takes off. This is on its way to becoming the worst Ebola outbreak in history. Did this guy just explain a basic graph? To us? <laughs> yes, he did. Because we're <laughs> stupid. It's like, <laughs> look how you think it's going to go down. Yeah. But then it goes, it goes back up. It's like, it yeah, up. we it can up, see. That indicates a rise in Ebola. You know, <laughs> yeah. Fucking like we know what a graph. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone understand. Like even stupid people watching this, like even just from watching movies and shit. Yeah. They're like, are, it done went up. Wow, like, it, it got higher. Look at it. Yeah. it, it, it was, the it line got higher to correspond with more instances happening. I understand <laughs> this concept. <laughs> Who the fuck is he explaining this to? And why, why, like, he's at the CDC, and this is a shot that they decided to go with, is a fucking poster on the wall of a fucking line going up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's at the CDC. Get some get some pictures of people in virus suits and shit. I've seen <laughs> outbreak. I know what goes on in there. Yeah, like Doc and for no reason, just have a shot of a fucking caged monkey screaming and wailing <laughs> against his bars. Yeah, yeah. And let's while you're at it, get some more ambient lighting in there. Get like that fucking like hushed kind of harsh green lighting, you know? <laughs> the harsh green. Yeah, get like the harsh green lighting and everything's really dramatic there and are shit. Four lights. Right. There you go. We need that kind of shit going on yeah. in this story. If you're going to do the scare tactics, do it right. Monroe is helping lead the CDC's Ebola response. Not an easy task at all. But was there mistakes made? I mean, is, is there a reason why this outbreak is worse than any other outbreak in history? The initial event, the lightning strike, if you will, was right in this corner between three countries in a very remote part of each of those countries. And so it quickly spread across the borders. Here in the United States, different questions. For example, if Ebola is not airborne, then why were there such extraordinary precautions taken for Dr. Kent Brantley and Miss Whiteball? Turns out it was more an abundance of caution rather than a necessity. We're pretty confident that any large hospital could, could handle an Ebola case if one were to show up um, at their doorstep using traditional Man, isolation. let's just fucking put this out there that only pussies die from Ebola. Because <laughs> I got Ebola and I did not think it was a big deal. Did yeah. you guys, I, I just posted a video on my Amazing Atheist channel about uh, this guy named, um, fuck, what was his name? Rick Wiles. And he said that the Ebola virus is actually a gift from God, that it's going to eliminate the atheists, and it's going to eliminate the sluts and fornicators and pornographers, and it's going to eliminate the gays. And it's going to eliminate people who have abortions. And it's going to, and if you're, but if you're washed in the blood of the lamb, it will not affect you. So Ebola is basically an agent of God, and we should welcome it to our good Christian nation.
Well, I hope that someday I find myself that out of touch with reality. <laughs> Just for the, that, you know, like, it's got to be fun to be that crazy to an extent, right? But yeah, but I'd like to be able to turn it on and off. Like, I don't want to be a psychic medium and a shaman, if you get my drift. <laughs> right, I gotcha. No, no, you could be all those things. In fact, we can introduce you to someone <laughs> who can help. Okay, okay. If, uh, if, if he has gotten out of, of jail yet, has he? <laughs> I was thinking, not, not to completely change the subject, but I was thinking about, like, what stunt do I have to pull to, to match that? Like, a guy got arrested <laughs> in the middle of the show. He's a psychic medium and a shaman. Like, even if I develop psychic powers, like, you how should, am I going to match? You should get Tim the bartender to come to your house and, like, stage a rape scene <laughs> on the show. Just be like, Tim the bartender comes in like, yeah, I heard what you said about me, you fat bitch. <laughs> bends you over the table, oh, and you're like, ah! <laughs> no, he doesn't bend me over the table right away. First, he puts me in tight corduroys. Put these tight corduroys <laughs> off, motherfucker. Yeah, Let exactly. Me my emotions now. Put these tight corduroy pants on, motherfucker. Yeah, squeeze your ass in them tight corduroys. They're too small. Ain't no such thing as too small. Fit in that shit. Get in them motherfucking corduroys or I'll cut you. I literally won't fit, sir. <laughs> Rooms with uh, a uh, negative pressure room why? and with traditional uh, droplet and respiratory precautions. And while I suited up in multiple layers when I was in Guinea just earlier this year... ...that can be worn, worn by healthcare workers when they come into contact with patients. The CDC says a mask, goggles, face shield, a protective gown, and gloves can provide all the protection you need for most situations. That's Oh, that's all. Just that easy, handy travel kit. Yeah. The Ebola travel kit. Someone should market that right now. Just to take all of those things they just recommended, put them together in one thing, and be like, the Ebola kit, only nineteen ninety nine. I bet somebody's already working on it. <laughs> yeah. Ebola kit. The Ebola kit. Stop yourself from getting a bowl, and then they can have the Ebola kit plus with even more bullshit that'll prevent you from contracting this unlikely to contract disease. <laughs> it worked. I bought it, and I ain't got a bowl yet. <laughs> oh, damn, with, te with testimonials like that. I never took it out of the box, but I'm glad I do have it, though. You, you can't know, prove that I would have got. You can't prove that I wouldn't have got a bowler without this. So yeah, that's all that matters. Another day begins without drinking water in Toledo, Ohio. We are still in status quo. The non-consume is still in place. The National Guard delivering water by the truckload. The Red Cross handing out gallons. Come get some. Come get it. Come get it. Yeah, so basically this whole city, probably about, uh, you know, like a smaller city, about 500,000 people, went like four to five days without having water that they could use at all. And what caused this? Uh, it was a toxic algae that built up on the lake front where they get their water from That's and they, global and, warming and they and they knew about it years and years ago uh the you know the the people who are in charge of that shit they knew about it but didn't do anything about it until just you know until this happened well what did people start getting sick and then yeah yeah they, you, they uh, it couldn't they couldn't drink it and boiling it i guess just made it worse yeah and uh I guess showering in it, you could have like a reaction, like break out in hives. So, wow! Someone should draw one of the pictures of Paul. Should be Paul showering in green algae <laughs> and breaking <laughs> out in hives. Yeah, me swimming in the lake, the fetid fucking swamp <laughs> lake in Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, that that poisoned all these poor fucking people. <laughs> like that's that's what did it was the fucking down. I was I was upstream. <clears throat> Bathing my disgusting, <laughs> fat, jiggly, pimply, splotchy red body in this fucking in this fucking stream, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's what made it, people. It sick. carried it carried downstream and sickened the the citizens of Toledo. They may show yeah. it too. We'll see. 
store shelves are empty and people are clamoring for cases. If I don't have water, my baby doesn't eat, so that's going to be an issue. You can't wash dishes, you can't wash up, you can't cook, it's, it's hell. 400,000 people in the can't Toledo drink. area can't drink tap water. Boiling it will only make the problem Yeah, boiling it will only make the problem worse. Yeah. Yeah, when Paul's ego bathes upstream for you, don't even bother boiling the water. <laughs> Just move. <laughs> the it, all it does is you boil it and it just you see if you look under it a microscope you just see like millions of his face just like <laughs> yeah. pressed up and he's laughing like laughing. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. my hideous jowly face, <laughs> just staring. <laughs> His jowly face, just replicated Crust. over and over again, like gigantic bubbles. crusty boogers in my eyes, and <laughs> green slime flowing from every pore on my disgusting face. <laughs> <laughs> Worse, the warnings first issued on Saturday. Everybody, just stay cool, stay calm, uh, and um, bleh. that's uh, that that's the governor. Bleh. Fuck John. It's the Casey. governor and the and the mayor. We, we uh, the only reason I recognize Kasich is because we live in, in Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and Kasich is a cunt. Yes. Not in the Australian. Sense Not in either. the Australian sense. And we'll get through this. We'll learn from this. And we'll bring improvements. The issue appears to stem from... Holy fuck, Paul. Did you do that? <laughs> you see that shit? Paul must have oh, farted in that it, water. That's what's going dude, on Dude, I, I had a really hot day at work, and it, I was swampy. And when I get swampy, swampy. this is You're like this swamp is ass. Happens. You're like yeah, swamp dude, ass. I had sw like swamp taint. Oh, uh, yeah. fuck. Swamp Which is even taint. worse than swamp ass. Swamp taint. Yeah, I'd like to see swamp taint take on swamp thing. Like, that'd be <laughs> the ultimate <laughs> battle. <laughs> well, look, I poisoned a whole fucking town. Yeah. Bring it what, on, swamp thing. What the thing. fuck has swamp thing done? Yeah, Nothing. seriously. Nothing. He ain't saved no day I ever fucking heard of. You can see uh, up at the top of the map there, you can see Detroit. Like, Detroit is, is right there. Where all the the green algae's up there too, but I didn't hear anything about them having to turn their water off. So no one cares, even if they did. <laughs> Just be like, today in Detroit, more bad shit happened. Eh. That stuff uh, just up north there. It, that's Canada. So I don't know. They don't even drink water in Canada. No, they don't. They just eat. Snow. They just like absorb it. Yeah. From algae blooms growing in Lake Erie. This photo shows a previous bloom so big you can see it from space. Routine testing of the water supply uncovered the problem, turning up two water samples with dangerous levels of microcystin, a toxin dangerous sometimes released by algae ego. blooms. More <laughs> testing. When Paul's ego bathes in a public waterway, it's so <laughs> disgusting you can see the funk from his taint from space. <laughs> <laughs> space space age funk taint oh yeah is underway but additional results are needed before the ban can be lifted i am not going to take any chances with this community's well-being and health businesses and restaurants are closed officials say the water is safe for adults to bathe in but that's not recommended for people with sensitive skin or weakened immune okay. systems the if 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 you're if the water in your area is like it's safe for adults to bathe in i would still not i'd be like i that's not enough of an all clear for me you know i ain't i ain't fucking with that no no toxin can cause sickness and affect the liver in the worst cases it can lead to liver failure you know, don't appreciate it you don't know about it until you don't have it alexandra field cnn new york yeah i guess there was massive price gouging for water and there was oh, even there was. fights for water and shit like that too because humanity is awesome yeah <laughs> Like, we should help each other in this time of need. It's like, fuck that shit. People need water. Raise the price of water to fucking $30 a gallon. Wow. <laughs> Gouge Wonders. those fucking desperate pieces of shit so I can get a little bit ahead and exploit this tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awesome. Came up with a badass business scheme. 
And that's pretty much human nature. Yeah. So. Yeah. We good. we suck as a species. That's pretty much all I'm saying. Um. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're good, man. What's going on, guys? Oh, nothing much. Nothing much. So I wanted to ask you. Um. God, what what was that fucking? Uh, there was there was a moment in one of your videos that I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. Uh, what the? Well, so I, I many guess just, moments, TJ. So many. Deep I know. Moments. What was so it, what many was with the profound statements? It, came so out. many moments where I think you guys made a real connection, and I saw a spark, <laughs> yeah. a little bit of a spark. What was with the corduroy thing? That's yeah, yeah, the, the tight that's, corduroy. That's my number one question. I got it. Man, know. I was doing. I, look, see, the the thing you have to you have to realize, <laughs> TJ and Ben, is that I was in the zone, right? Right. I, I understand burst, the zone. I actually do understand back, what you're talking man. about there. That was like you know. Bernie Mac slash Tim Black slash Reverend Al Sharpton, like all in one. I don't know if I'd put you quite up there, but but it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good. You know, you can. Hmm. I, I I understand the zone thing because I mean I've I've gotten into the zone every now and then where it's like, boom, 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 boom. so right, right. And then you just start adding superfluous details just to make it seem like you have like a superior grasp of yes. what's going on. Exactly, and see, it worked because you thought I actually knew something about your wardrobe when I yeah. when I fucking don't. I don't. <laughs> It's not even close. Well, okay. Okay. maybe a little bit. I mean, it's more like a I, leotard. You know? I will leotard. be honest. I will be honest. I get in the zone too, where I, uh, you know, every once in a while, as I'm ripping into somebody, I, I drop a an obvious homoerotic statement. So, <laughs> no uh, shit. <laughs> so uh, you know, I understand the corduroy thing. Mm. Yeah. Oh, but first like, thing I got to do, man, is I got to thank you guys. Look. Thank you, TJ. Thank you, Ben, for allowing me to be on the platform with you guys, man. Yeah, sure. Some nah, cool man, shit. Yeah, you are officially no cool motherfuckers, man. Oh, that's oh a, okay, because I, I think your black card has to be taken away for being on the show. Because you said if, if, if black people even watch the show, their black right. card has to be taken away. So for being on the show, I think you are now officially white <laughs> just for being on the show. I would be an honorary white man. That's true. <laughs> hey, you know, another thing, when you were talking about us living in the Midwest, I mean, it's like, I kind of feel like you were picturing like a bunch of like Are we white like some farmers green acres, on motherfuckers and shit, yeah. like chewing on like hay seeds. And... <laughs> yeah, I did. I kind of picture you was like somewhere, maybe Kentucky, maybe, I don't know, Nebraska. No. Some we're shit like, like in, we're in Columbus, Ohio. So I mean, like there's. Okay. It's not. It's like a city setting. We're yeah, not, we're most. not. We're not like a bunch of country bumpkins. Yeah, but you no, know what no, it no. was? This is what it was. Like the first time my picture popped up on the screen, you were like, "Oh shit, he's black." <laughs> oh. So that gave well. me the impression that you weren't used to seeing a lot of black people. And if no, you're not, like, he's in the Midwest. You could probably no, no. go like a month that without was... seeing a black dude. No way, not here where we live. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. That was just me. Just be, like I was just trying to like. Also, play, play with racial sensitivity. TJ's TJ's little. from like the New Orleans area, right? Oh, so, shit. yeah. Okay. And I grew up. I grew up like, you know, like a forty-five minute drive from Detroit. So, okay. yeah. Uh, and Paul. To, yeah, Paul has actually see, never seen a black man though. Yeah, no, no. I've never seen. He's I've never isolated. Seen seen one in in the flesh, but I have seen them on the <laughs> internet. So, so you so you ever been with a black woman? Uh, well. I haven't never seen a, a black person before, <laughs> sir. Uh, that would be kind of hard. Hmm. They say no, once uh, you go black, you never go back. So I was just checking. The the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice, black right? The berry, sweeter juice. <laughs> <laughs> what juice are they talking about there? By the way, I've always wondered. Grape juice. That would be grape juice, TJ. Uh, yeah. That was Paul. But yeah. That was Paul. Oh, that's Paul. Oh yeah. What's up, Paul? Yeah. The, nice to meet you, Tim. Nice yeah. This is Paul. Paul's ego. He's he's been around on YouTube for a long time. Okay. And we okay, we we recently had a, a contest to see who could draw Paul the ugliest, and we'll be showing those pictures later. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, pa Paul was a uh, complaint because like a lot of people send in like art to our show and shit, right. and um, it, apparently every time anyone's ever drawn Paul, Paul was dissatisfied with how he was drawn and felt that his pictures were very unflattering so i told people that i would give a 25 dollar amazon gift card to whoever drew the most unflattering picture of paul and we got quite a few entries uh, so many that we can't even show them all gotcha. but we'll show quite a few 
And that's cool uh, as shit, man. You guys yeah. are so big that you can have like a raffle and shit. I couldn't I couldn't do that with my amount of my amount of subs. I don't I don't have enough. People. Well, how many how many you average in, how many views you average in for per video? Shit, per vi you know what? I do I do news events, right? So right, it yeah. depends on the news cycle. Right, sure, I sure. get that. Yeah. I'm really beholden to that shit. So like right now we're talking about what's going on in Ferguson, Missouri. Right. Yeah, we were talking we, we were thinking about talking about that in a little bit here too. Okay, cool. Well, I'll hold yeah. my fire on that then. But based on that, I'm doing pretty well right now. But next week, I could be fucked. So, you know. Yeah, I kind of understand <laughs> that to an extent. Because I, I don't know. I don't really tether myself so much to like current events as much anymore because it is so volatile like that. Yeah. Where, like, one one day you're like, oh, my God, I'm making, getting so many views, making so much money. And the next day it's like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> Maybe if I go dance on the street corner with a hat out, people will take pity on me and throw maybe, nickels in that motherfucker. Maybe if I maybe if I wear my wife's underwear and twerk in front of the camera. I did that. that yeah, I know. I know, right? <laughs> you I'll do anything. Do what you gotta do, man. I mean, you gotta, you gotta in this yeah. game, right? Yeah. You gotta keep the steaks in the freezer, man. What I do is uh, I just find obscure shit that I think people might want to see. Like I got one video. It's kind of sad. It's one of my most popular videos. It's a guy who was caught. Having sex with a dog six times. Six times. Was six it, times. No, no, but that wasn't you the guy. We we covered a story about a guy who had sex with a raft like three times. <laughs> it was like an inflatable raft. <clears throat> What's worse, having sex with a dog or having sex with a raft? A dog. But I at least a say. dog is a biological organism. That's what I would so say. So you could and, at least. No. But like you could at least see that though. And th and that's why that would be rape. Right. And, like, but I, I mean I agree with you. But yeah. like at least. <laughs> At least you're fucking a living thing. No, but that that yeah, but doesn't it, make but it I mean, better. Like, but, it, no, not, but I'm saying like from the perspective of like no. understandability, like who right. fucks a raft? All right. You know, I mean, like there's. Nothing. I would rather fuck a raft than. But a how dog. would you even get hard to fuck a raft? I don't know, but I'd rather fuck a raft than a dog. Yeah, you could fuck just Ben. Pretend you, it's your I know couch. you fuck dogs for a fact, Ben. Don't even lie. <laughs> fuck you. But yeah, that that goes to show you how good my base is because that's got like over hundred thousand views. So that's yeah. You think he fuck. would give up with the dog fucking after the third or fourth time getting caught? How do you even get oh. caught that much? How do you even dog? get close to a dog after you fucked oh. a dog that many <laughs> the times? The thing about this shit was the guy they thought some they thought he may have been molesting their child. He was like a roommate, uh -huh. and one of the roommates had a child, and the child was acting kind of funny. So they set up cameras in the house to try to catch him to see if he was doing something to the child. Turns out he wasn't messing with the child. He was messing with the dog. I bet you the child watched, and that was what was fucking him up. There you go. Something like that. See, there we go. It all fits together like puzzle pieces. Paul, you want to jump in on this? Uh, well, <clears throat> you asked um, how do you even, like, find <laughs> six dogs to fuck. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of dogs out there, as I I've heard. <coughs> That are As totally into being. They're totally into being fucked. They're into it. They're into wow. it. They they'll, they'll flaunt coaches. it right in front of you, walking around with that sweet, <laughs> tight corduroy ass. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a poodle in corduroy, corduroys, shit. and Paul was staring at its ass, and that was weird. I didn't need that visual, Paul. Thanks. Um, That's actually pretty sad, though, man. I mean, I think your earlier question. I think fucking the raft is better, just because. It's not rape, because the rat. Right. I mean, I like. Let me just let me just change the way I'm phrasing it, because I understand like from a moral perspective why fucking a dog is easily way worse than fucking a raft. <laughs> but just from like a, a perspective of me like relating to what's going on, are like, you about I to can talk about theogenies and shit, man? No, no. I'm just saying <laughs> that I I understand someone fucking a dog better than I understand someone fucking a raft. Yes, okay. we're still okay. talking about it. Man, there's the fuck some is weird you talking shit, about atheists. Atheists. <laughs> atheists. You you need to incorporate that line, man. Now, so Tim, Tim, I got a question for you. This, this is what up? What up, homie? So, in I'm not I'm not exactly sure what's going on here because I thought there was going to be a, a little bit of acrimony between y uh, you guys. You seem yeah, to be. Up? You seem to be pretty cool with Ben and TJ now. I mean, I mean, you know, look, man, I made a video. I, uh, I, I disagree with him about that video. That's what it was, dude. I, I watch the atheist sometimes. 
I watch TJ sometimes and I told my subs, I said, look, I'm, I'm going to start making bash videos about certain YouTubers that I watch, introduce them to you. And I'm just going to take a video I disagree with and talk about it. So the first video I did was Alex Jones. Right. Right. And he did something about chemtrails or some shit. Second <laughs> video I did TJ. And I haven't done any more because I don't want no drama. See what I'm saying? Okay. But that's and, what and, happened, man. And by the way, Tim, we, we said that anyone that flagged you is a piece of shit, honestly. We, yeah. We don't endorse and, and, anyone flagging anyone. Right, right. Yeah, right. we totally we're totally against that. Um we, we, you know, and you know, thanks for that. I appreciate it because I know you didn't have to say that shit. You didn't you could have just said, well, he got himself in some shit. Now he got to get himself out. So no, I no, 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 no. I don't believe anyone's channel deserves to be flagged for that. I mean, like, you know, that's a, that's that's petty bullshit. I mean, you know, right, fuck that. Right. Um, but they, you know, they took it personal, man. I mean, look, man, I, I said some harsh shit. Yeah. <laughs> so they took it. <laughs> it's this all good. it's all just fucking wrestling trash talk, though. I mean, yeah, right, it's like we, we right. got to we got to do the fucking Tim, show. We'll see you at SummerSlam. And, and actually, man, I know I know they want to see me mix it up, but I really don't have a problem being the gay jokes. You guys, you know, you you know, you do your thing. That's your lane. <laughs> That's your lane. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I uh, I don't have a problem, man. I mean, you know what? I'm seems, supposed to. I'm, seems we're like you to might. Fight, man. We're supposed see, to fight it out. Seems like you might have a little problem with with people being gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I don't. Actually, actually, this is the way I look at it, man. How could I have a problem with something that's none of my fucking business? Well, I, I, <laughs> you, you did. I mean, you did in your video put a picture of, uh, you know, and, and and I remember your intonation too, very Baptist preacher. That we don't fuck other men in the ass. That's true, but just because I'm not pro gay doesn't mean I'm anti gay. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what so, I'm saying? I mean, so, so you're like, saying you're like gay neutral. No, man, look, look, I don't care who you spend time with or what you do, um, as long as it doesn't affect anybody else. I'm sort of like, um, I guess I, I guess you say I'm more of a libertarian when it comes to that. Like you live know? and let live kind of shit. Yeah, that type right. of thing, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, when TJ kind of brought it up and was kind of coming at me with it, I said, well, this is the road we need to go down in order to keep this shit entertaining. Um, let me just pull it out. And that last video, dude, that was me playing a character all the way. That yeah, was, I mean, that you was even Baptist you even feature Westboro shit. So you even came on at the end uh, out of character and talked about it. So I mean, yeah. I think that was was pretty pretty cool. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm right, sorry so for disappointing I, folks when not being more pissed no, off. No, 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 you're fine. No, no, you're all good. Don't worry I'm about good. that. Um, we it, it's better to show them that fucking people can get along rather than just delivering on their worst expectations you know what i'm saying oh no they yeah. want they want the blood though they TJ. want the they blood. Want blood they want carnage they want the blood the tj blood. versus tim in an epic blood match i mean I thunderdome heard saying like yo this is gonna be the biggest shit since like a long fucking time on youtube this shit right here is gonna be like pay-per-view people were saying that no that's just they yeah, were saying no. that man Actually, ironically enough, later on we're going to cover a story where this YouTube guy wants to do a pay-per-view cage fight with TJ. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, let's uh, let's actually get started on those news stories. <laughs> cool. Why don't Why don't we cover the one that Tim uh, was talking about earlier first? Okay, we can do that. Let's hear what he has to say. All right, uh, let me. I'll bring it up here. All right. Let's see. All right, here we go. A night of pure chaos. This is your warning. Leave the area. Disperse. People pushing the limit with police. Racial tensions and nerves on edge. Even an officer we caught on camera gave in to his rage, calling protesters animals. Listen. Bring it. Many okay, hold on. angry. So I, I love how they're acting like that's not just how co a lot of, like a lot of cops already just act like that. They're like it even drove this officer to the breaking point. Like no, that's probably just his personality all the fucking time. Yeah, Do yeah. Not yeah, know they, any fucking cops. They normalize it. This this yeah this cop was driven to release a little bit of his rage. You know, like <laughs> he he holds no culpability in in what he said. Right, right. I mean, I look at it. I look at it on the other side too. I mean. 
who knows how long he been out there hearing all types of shit for like hours. Like, you fucking pig, you piece of shit, you know, and maybe he just snapped. He had a snapping point. Like, when I'm driving in my car, somebody cuts me off, I might say some things I don't normally would say, but when you're pissed off, you say shit. So I yeah, leave but, room I mean, for him being a I would say being though, too. I would say, though, that if you're a, a cop, like, you have to put your temper aside. I mean, you have to have sort of an objectivity towards the situation. Like, I like I have – my brother Scotty is a hothead, and, he, you know, he has that same shit in traffic where it's like, you know, someone cuts him off or something. He's like, wish I had a gun right now so I'd kill that motherfucker. But <laughs> – but, I mean, it, you know, it, it's a good thing that he doesn't have a gun. It's a good thing that he's not a you know, officer of the law designated with protecting the populace because he's a hothead. And this guy, I think that if he can't handle a situation that a police officer is supposed to handle right. then without, you know, cracking and saying something that is supposedly out of character. And I have to, I have to question his choice of words, too. Why didn't he just call them, like, motherfuckers or something? Why did he call them animals? That's a very interesting choice well, of words to use. I, I think, I think that's at the root of this entire thing. I think yeah. that's the nerve that that's gotten struck here, is that there is this kind of racism in, in this deep South area uh, of the cops against uh, against these minority communities, and I I think that that's that's why he called them animals. Yeah, and uh, and, and, and you know. This whole shit bubbling over the way it's bubbled over, guys. I look at it like this is just the this is the thing that tipped it over. There's probably been underlining things that have happened for years. Well, I know, know that the I know one thing that underlies this problem is that um, in this particular town, Ferguson, Missouri, right. uh, black people are twice as likely to be arrested on a traffic stop as white people. So there's there there's there's a pattern of racism in the police department there that's already been established right. prior to the, these events. Right. Um, and lack of diversity is another thing. I mean, they've got they've got 53 officers and only 3 of them are African American, but it's a predominantly black area. So you 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 know, you got to kind of mix it up and bring some some familiar faces <laughs> in your, yeah. you know, in the situation. That would help. Doesn't mean that it would change everything because Blue is a color too, you know what I'm saying? Well, you would hope that the people that, and this just is me, maybe I'm fucking crazy. You would hope that the police would be representative and, and, and actually come from the communities that they police. They, then they own a stake in that community. True. You know what I mean? Then we're not, we're not busting people in from outside to, to run around in a community enforcing the law that they don't come from, they have no stake in. Right. So, right. you know, and, you know yeah. None of there's, this shit. There's a lot happened. of shit about this case, man. That's that's sad. For one, there's no dash cam footage. I was pressing for dash cam footage. Like when that comes out, we can just put this thing to bed. But in in Ferguson, they they're not required to have dash cam. So what's yeah, that about? The, there um, is there is yeah. video footage though of the victim in the street. Yeah. And his yeah. family running up to him and stuff like that. So there's definitely video footage. Yeah, and, but it's after the fact though. I yeah. mean, it's not what led up, and that's what. You know, I'm losing subs now because I'm on the side of the victim. In my, in this case, I see it as being the kid that's ki that was killed. I call it an execution. And um, but I mean, the we... fact that we don't see what transpires before the guys in the street, they're pissed off that I'm choosing sides. But in my opinion, if you shoot an unarmed kid who's a distance from you, then you're wrong. Right. Yeah. I agree with you there. Um, yeah. And the thing about it is that we've covered so many stories just here on the Drunken Peasants. Cops of killing cops people. killing people for no good reason. So this happens all the time all across America. I mean, I mean, right. there have been times where we haven't gone a week without covering a, a story or two about police shootings or police corruption. And the, pro the real problem is, like, you know, none of this shit would be happening if these police departments just had the slightest bit of repercussions for officers who fucking do this shit. Yeah, we actually covered a story out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I used to live, where... Probably uh, probably about five heavily armed officers, almost like yep. with military weaponry, gunned down a guy with a with a pocket knife. Right. And then they shoot yeah. him with with beanbag guns while while they are after they already shot him. Yeah, he's dead. Now we'll use the yeah. non lethal measures. Right. <laughs> like, okay. Right. It seems to be getting up. And my question always is: 
is it is it just getting out of hand now or is it just now that we have all this oversight with all this video do we are are we just now learning how brutal police can be to well, people well you know what it really is 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 um after 911 all these uh all this strengthening of law enforcement was legislated and you know now every fucking police department is a is a SWAT team with tanks and fucking military grade yeah. weaponry Right. That's that's what I think is the most profound thing to come out of this story is the militarization of that of the police force. You see snipers and shit perched up, you know, right. you see these armored vehicles and and cops in full soldier regalia. I mean, that type of shit is that is that what we need? I mean, like no, look, I mean, if 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 when these I mean, like, we used to have SWAT teams to go in, like, a hostage situation or something like that. Now they fucking send SWAT teams to serve warrants, to search premises for drugs. Right. I mean, it's right. not necessary. It's fucking overkill. You don't need a fucking and, army of fucking guys brandishing assault rifles while just to serve a fucking warrant. While, while they're in there looking for drugs, they're like, oh, there's a fucking chihuahua. I better shoot it before it bites me. Yeah. yeah, they're always shooting people's dogs. Yeah, yeah. Flash think, banging people's uh, kids. Yeah, I think it's a it's a combination of like you say, not since nine eleven, the militarization of the police force, and then just the the fact that we have access to all this shit. I mean, dude, I think it's always been here. It's just now that the way communication is spread out and you get things right away, you know, via the internet, that we're able to know about this stuff. Yeah, and you there's know, no civilian oversight either. For these cops there you go but yeah that I, I remember that story about new mexico that was that was said if i'm not mistaken that guy in new mexico he was like his crime was he was he was sleeping, sleeping in, in the, the desert or some shit. yeah right like, yeah there's uh there's an area out without a license or something yeah yeah there's there's an area between like the regular city and then there's the foothills and there's yeah. a lot of fancy homes up in the foothills but there's also a lot of just empty dirt you know, and he was just sleeping up there, and that's right. basically what he did. And for that, it, he earned a death sentence. Yeah, from Albuquerque's police department, which uh, is has killed more people than New York City's police department per, uh, not even per capita, just you know, more in people general. in general. <laughs> You're talking I like a story on that, and I, I know they said, well, it's because because they recently fired their chief, their uh, their commissioner got a yep. new one. And I remember him saying, well, we have a lot of mentally impaired folks. I'm like, shit, New York's got a lot of mentally impaired <laughs> yeah. folks. They got They're more in, just in They're general. Upset. Hell, There's my a lot fa more my family's got a lot of mentally impaired folks. There you go. There's Someone argue that I'm among them. <laughs> you know, so. the, the whole state of New Mexico only has like two and a half million people. You know, the city of New York itself has way more than that. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't, doesn't make sense. Multiple, man. multiple times more than that. So, yeah. Let's, it's, uh, let's, all right. Let's play some more of okay. the story. About what witnesses say was an unprovoked attack on an unarmed teenager. Michael Brown shot and killed Saturday by a Ferguson police officer. We watched as a struggle played out Sunday night. Some protesters who took to the streets trying to keep the peace while taking a stand against police. This is really a peace march. It, it's nothing to, it's nothing to start to hurt a police officer. This is all about peace. It's not a peace march anymore. I mean, you hear what's happening. You see them, these confrontations between people and police officers. Yes, and it, it didn't get outrageous. Others who simply came to cause trouble. All right, police are still stationary right now, but I want to show you what's happening over at that JC Wireless. Uh, people broke through the glass, and right now you can see people running in and out, um, apparently looting that store. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I, I, I told people, I said, look, man, there are people who will take advantage of a situation regardless. So you cannot, yeah. let's, let's separate the idiots who are breaking in and stealing shit. Let's separate them from the kid that's dead because he didn't have anything to do with them looting. Let's also separate them from the protesters who are not doing anything like that. There I you mean, go. The, there these you people, go. How, how, about we, how about we not mention them at all and focus our attention where it really needs to be on the fucking cops? Well, I mean... That's uh, the, the, they're the ones who are being used. They're the ones who are being used to justify the police presence there, though. That's true. That's true. I mean, Which, well, if there weren't people that were doing this shit, like looting and fucking setting shit on fire, 
Yeah, then there would be it, no justification for those cops to even be there, really. They'd be there anyway. They sure would well, I be, guess, but... I guess the cops were a little too busy, what, calling protesters animals and firing tear gas at them. Right, they're not even these people. They're not even stopping the store. looting. They're just yeah. they're just standing around like, like we're just we're here to contain yeah, the like protest. They're doing it in front right. of a fucking news camera. Right. You know, if yeah. they're gonna, <laughs> why wouldn't there be any cops right. there to see every, that? Every single one of those people is going to get arrested though, because they're all being filmed doing it. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's gonna. Yeah, I mean, it'll happen. They're gonna put out mug shots on all of them. You think so? Yeah, they do. That. And that's, you know, that's but you know what, policy. though, even even though I'm against the looting, I got to say this, man. If you know, you know, they're filming this shit, you know, that there's news newscasters in the area filming it, you know, it's a likelihood you could get caught. So I'm thinking the people that are going in there who are still in stuff, knowing that the odds are against them, they must be pretty bad off. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so I don't know the economics in Ferguson. But it's got to be a reason why you would risk going to jail for a pair of shoes. Right. Instead of saying, let's criminalize you for that, let's also look at the reason why somebody would have a mentality that their freedom is, is, isn't is worth a pair of shoes. Right, which is which is why, you know, I'm saying, why even show the fucking looting at all? You're, what, you're, what you're seeing is desperation Because the poverty. movie doesn't work, man. The movie don't work without the bad guy, and they got to have a bad guy, and the bad guys are those looters. It should be the police. Yeah, the bad guys, to, to my mind, are definitely the police department. Um, I think that most of America views the police department as the bad guys in this story. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the looters are like, meanwhile. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? exactly. <laughs> yeah. In some so other location. Yeah. Cell phone video captures the frenzy of stores being looted. Some people threw rocks and bottles. The sound of gunshots rang out several times Sunday night. We had to take cover. All of this started as a peaceful march Sunday for Michael Brown's family. You took my son away from me. You know how hard it was for me to get him to stay in school and graduate. You know how many black men graduate? Not many. Because you bring them down to this type of level where they feel like I don't got nothing to live for anyway. They're going to try to take me out anyway. The big what is, uh, okay, yeah, like, I, I feel bad for her and everything, but what the fuck is that guy doing to her? I don't know. <laughs> I was you mean the guy the holding her? That's yeah, her, yeah. That's, that's her husband or boyfriend or something. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I was like, what the hell's going on? Like, I was just wondering what the hell she was wearing, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know I should be focused on loftier things, but Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, you're the fashion police now, huh? Yes, TJ? I am. <laughs> Put a shirt on or something. I'm kind of split on this, on her on her statement, dude. Um, You can't say that kids don't stay in school because they don't think they're going to live. Some kids are just a trick. There are some kids I guess that would apply to, but I think some of the shit that kids go through who are in these type of environments is a lure of the street. You know, it's a lot of shit. It's it's our movies, it's our TV, it's our music, it's it's drugs, it's hanging out with your friends, it's being rebellious, being a teenager. It's not just, well, cops are trying to kill me. You right, know? exactly. But, right. You know, she's, you know what she's, I'm saying? She's, she's definitely taking a very like oversimplified, dramatic kind of, stance on it i mean well it's kind of understandable in her position though um, exactly I, I i agree yeah you're, you're but i mean right. i i kind of agree with you on the allure of the streets thing especially if you're in like a really impoverished area where the criminals really are the ones who have the most success that are the most easily accessible role model right. that you can take a look at you know right and it's just that i don't ex i don't expect her to like articulate that so i'm not knocking it for it i'm just saying there's other there's other reasons for it, you know, but hell, man, her, her, you know, her son got murdered. Right, so, exactly. Yeah. So you got to give her some slack. She gets a pass all day. She sure. gets a pass from me on her statement. Yeah, of course. I think all of us would agree with that. Um, sure. All right, so let's, uh, is, there, is there any more, Ben? Yeah, yeah, there's more. Let's take a couple look. minutes. Yeah. Victim's friend says they were walking together when Brown was stopped by a police officer. Witnesses say the teen had his hands in the air at the time he was shot and killed. But police tell a different story, that Brown instigated the altercation, physically assaulting the officer while in his car and struggling to take his gun. Which the is why we need na national legislation saying that cops have to wear fucking cameras already. That's... Let's I've, uh... stop with this disputed, you know, the witnesses say this, the cops say that. Right. And fucking put a, put a camera on every cop.
I think they oh, said. Oh, I'm that, sure uh, there were cameras. <laughs> yeah, like where is the footage from the camera? Right, right. the The problem I've seen is all the footage I see is after. You know what I'm saying? It's after he's outside the car and away from the car. Cops keep saying something happened before that. That's what I can't get a picture of. I can't see it. So, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to yeah, determine. I mean, but you got to draw I mean, a conclusion. You know. Yeah, they, but who the fuck would reach into a moving cop car and try to grab a gun from a cop? Like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. He was high on the crack. Yep. That's <laughs> that's what TJ's on. That's why he rocks back and forth so much. Where the fuck did my phone go, Ben? You steal my phone again? Yeah. You're always taking my shit. There's a lot of interesting pictures on it. There definitely are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> keep going. He was supposed to start college like Monday. Wow. This well, happened on Friday. His first day of class was going to be Monday. So I don't know if he, you know, I don't know if you can say what was on his mind was fighting a cop that Friday. And trying to grab his gun, I, I actually, don't know. Actually, was it Saturday? I'm getting it was, I think it was, it was Saturday. Saturday. It was a Saturday. It was Saturday. Okay. Yeah, Saturday. Doesn't matter. It happened, and it was very yeah. recent. I just want to let you know, Tim, that in our chat room, our audience is saying that you're very seductive, and I just want to let you know. <coughs> All right. Questions spark yeah, people if they ever to remake take Shaft again. We are. We hold it down for the community. Caucasian, African American, Asian, everyone. It doesn't matter what color you are. People. Get out here and support people. your people. I saw Police made several arrests, several hours of insanity, for the moment distracting from the greater call for justice. Yeah, some of the arrests they made were of journalists who were trying to cover the event. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, right about Antonio, that. One of the, uh, I, I had a video just yesterday, one of the reporters was Antonio French, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's very, right. I think, yeah, and I, I meant to mention him, so any of, any of my subs are watching, I want to mention that. I mean... They 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 grabbed up these reporters for what? Filming them in a McDonald's, not moving fast enough. Yeah, I mean, this was, yeah, it was basically just like let's intimidate these reporters so that maybe they'll be too scared to cover what we're doing here. They, they've got footage of the of the cops firing tear gas at Al Jazeera. The newscast. Are they? Are yeah. they? Uh, are they like on paid administrative leave right now? Like that typical bullshit. I don't even think that anything has oh, come no. to that. No. Who's that? You mean the actual cop who shot Michael Brown, or you mean? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah the, it's the... one. It's one officer. Dude, that case is so screwed up, Mandy. First of all, I listened to the nine one one tapes from the dispatch. The officer who shot Mike Brown never even called it in. <laughs> Aren't you supposed yeah. to do that? <laughs> yeah. When yeah. You fire your weapon. You're supposed to call it in. They, the cops at dispatch didn't find out about it until it was on the news. Wow. It's kind of like Dick Cheney. <laughs> Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney, you know, he shot his friend in the face with a shotgun, and no one knew about it until it was on the news already. Yeah, but he was embarrassed, though. That's a little different. Oh, he <laughs> blushed. He, he was blushed blushing. a little. Aw. He's never going to live that shit down, man. No, definitely not. Bang! Fuck it! <laughs> I would say that he won't have to live that shit down, but the man is a cyborg, and he'll yeah. he'll live longer than all of us. Yeah, he can, yeah, he's he can gonna outlive me. When uh, when the Rob Zombie song is like, "I can never die," that was they were talking about Dick yeah. Cheney. He's yep. immortal. He cannot be killed. He's had like twelve heart attacks. None of them have killed him. <laughs> God's like the God's like, damn! I keep trying to get rid of him. I can't. Luke, tell your sister <laughs> that you are right. Okay. <laughs> We're going to show some entries. From... Let's go ahead and take uh, ourselves off the screen so we can more fully. Well, I guess we'll have to anyway. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to do this so that everyone can see. Oh, Tim, Tim, can you this? see the screen that we're sharing right now? Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, Yourself? I got you. I can, yeah, I can see myself and I see Paul. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going to bring up the uh, draw. Paul's ego ugly, whatever the contest was. Ugly Paul contest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jesus. Am I yeah, prepared I for this? I can... You're good, Paul. Prepared to be faced with all my flaws in front of a live studio audience. Nothing <laughs> Nothing could be worse than what you look at in the mirror every morning, Paul. That is true. <laughs> you have a point. What? All right, here we go. So, all right, here we go. <laughs> So okay. some...
Some of them are better than others, okay? Yeah, this, this is this just a I quick think sketch. Kind of dapper. I think that one's okay. Yeah, Paul, you know, that's not too bad. You look kind of retarded, but... Paul, you're bit. like sloth from the fucking Goonies. Right. Your, your Which, eyes... They don't I match at them. all. By the way, we cannot control when these come up and, and off the screen. So, like, we, yeah, we're just gonna let them go. Each one is just gonna be on the screen for like thirty seconds or so. So, what would? Oh, okay. So here's Paul as a bullfrog because Paul was like, "Why do I always have to look like a motherfucking bullfrog right. every yeah. time?" Well, I don't know. Asked, so they, yeah. this, that last picture was pretty accurate, actually. Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. Not bad. And yeah, if you really it. look at this one, one of my eyes is higher than the other one. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They have I a point. Have... I love you, chunk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. This, with it, with this, this, it's kind of lazy, water. though, you know? It's just... Yeah, I mean... All right. Oh, here's Paul much. bathing in Lake Erie, infecting the town of Toledo, Ohio, oh, with his there we go. nasty <laughs> algae uh, swamp taint. They just yes. made your body Carl from Aqua Teen yeah, Hunger Force. Yeah, which is... <laughs> Which is strikingly accurate as well. <laughs> Do you I'm wear a the gold chains, Carl? But you know, I, oh man, if I if I had a little more chest hair, I'd rock all kinds of gold chains. <laughs> <laughs> I just let them nestle in there. But I like this one to catch too. A catfish. This one catfish. I like a lot because there's a satisfying tinge of green. <laughs> oh, beware oh. my jowls! What is going on? With, <laughs> what's going on with your nipples? Why are my nipples crying blood? Because <laughs> they have to look at your jowls all day. <laughs> That's what I like I like this one. This is a good one. What am He's... I eating? I don't, I don't know. It looks like you're eating. Or you're puking. Yeah. Either one of those. I don't know. I and then there's a, and the, the, the giant belly and then a tiny little nubbin of a penis. This? <laughs> I don't even know what's going on with this one. This, this is I Love Brett Keen. XOXO. <laughs> yeah. Um, you and know, it's a horrible drawing. Yeah, yeah. Really I, well, <laughs> be nice, TJ. Be it's, nice. <laughs> there's, like a do they actually think they were going to win the $25? With <laughs> but once again, notice, and this is a flaw I didn't know I had, one eye higher than the other. <laughs> Every <laughs> time. Apparently I'm a little Google-eyed and what's, I don't know it. What's wrong with you? There's, All oh, right, ten out of ten would draw again. Yeah, yeah. We, by Evan, <laughs> age thirteen. We laughed really hard at this one. That one is pretty obvious. Would draw again? <laughs> did you like Paul? Did you like drawing Paul's ego? Would you draw him again? Yes, ten yeah. out of ten. I would draw him again every ten time. <laughs> one of the best things I've ever drawn. <laughs> this one's not very disgusting, though. No, no. It, it looks like something out of like River City Ransom or like. Yeah, uh, here okay. we go. D that, the only problem is that doesn't even look like you at all. Paul, you oh. fill out that shirt really well. Oh, What's wow. with the hair? Your hair is not black. And why it does it look now. like something's been chewing on my arm? Like, <laughs> like, like I've got varicose veins all over me. I've got, like, pink eye. <laughs> I think you're just high. You've just been smoking yeah. a lot. Maybe. And, and why? And why do I have? I have a banana, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you have it in this one too. <laughs> here, TJ. But you say here, TJ. Look at your oh, hand. Okay. Got it. <laughs> what is wrong with your <laughs> hand? Look at <laughs> your hand is just a single string that it emits from your <laughs> cheek. I am the travesty that is my face, and you're worried about the crudely drawn <laughs> hand. <laughs> Look at this thing. A number of two. You got going on there. It's interesting. I've got quadruple <laughs> chins. <laughs> I only count triple. What? What? <laughs> what? Well, hold on. I don't even. Oh, this is yeah. not, this is not <laughs> even. That does this one not is, even close. I would, I would like. That? Is I this like this Andy one. Warhol or something like that? <laughs> What's going it's on? It's like a very. Uh, unconventional interpretation of Paul. <laughs> yeah, and I'm wearing super tight corduroys. I don't know if anybody yeah. knows. You <laughs> yeah, you are. Oh, yeah, oh, that's man. true. That's where yeah, I got your corduroy thing from. You look all bitten up again, too, though. <laughs> I do. Paul's yeah, in the yeah. oven. He's getting oh, baked. As a Dude, Harlequin TJ, fetus. you made this, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, You combined. made this. And once again, one eye higher than the other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this and one is... Pretty tough to beat. I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's skill. Who did that? No, no, that's it's like a gross. It's like an epic oil painting or something. It's I don't even know. Yeah. It looks like yeah, someone really good, put good. like some serious effort into that one. Yes. Yeah. And, and here's, here's here's Paul as a as a trans woman. There you go. Nice rack, Paul. 
Thanks. <laughs> Very nice. Are your bigs? Are your uh, boobs that big in real life, Paul? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a pretty accurate representation of me in a wig, makeup, and bra. Uh, <laughs> so I've got to give them to it. Or and you would know because that's your, <laughs> that's your Saturday night. Yes. Are you this attracted to Saturday. yourself, Paul? I am. He, uh, yeah, yeah. Only only time. when I'm done up like this. Here's, though. Paul's he goes swamp, swamp taint. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Swamp wreck. Swamp taint. <laughs> That's creative, yeah. though. That's creative. Why well, I, I asked Paul on the last show, he said, you know, he you know, he was at work, it was really hot. He had I asked him if he had swamp ass, he's like, more like swamp taint. So yeah. That's that's where that whole thing came from, and he is like he is now like Swamp Thing. You know what? This oh, I love this one. I would say this one is is our is our runner up for the winner right here. Oh yeah, Jesus. wow, I love it. Yeah, isn't that this awesome? Looks like something that could that's... be in that American Splendor comic. Yeah, there's there's flies flying around you like you're just like a piece of shit or something, <laughs> and I'm just covered in like unpopped whiteheads. Like I don't even give a fuck. Like I just. I just go out in public with white heads all over my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you got a case of the Ebola. Oh, bro. God. <laughs> so go. someone made you John Cena. Be- uh, well, Paul, of course. Paul Cena. Yeah. I don't even watch wrestling. So. <laughs> yes, you do. Sorry, guys. Yes, you I watch do, so I, much wrestling. And I love Cena. Oh, well, you're garbage then. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. How accurate is that, Paul? Would you say, you know? Um, the physique is a little yeah. off. Just, little just off? A just a little. You're more just muscular, right? Yeah. Um, he's, been, he, he's putting in work in the gym, though. He's, he's getting big, so I Birds. give him that. But... Birds. <laughs> okay. I don't even understand this. <laughs> <laughs> I like how your eyes are just bleeding. And then again, another eye higher than the other one. Yeah. That's the one thing that binds all these pictures together. <laughs> it really does. That's the one trait everyone seems to agree on. Paul's Wor- eyes are uneven. <laughs> yeah, worryingly enough, even the ones that are just Photoshop pictures of my actual face. <laughs> my eye is higher than the other one. <laughs> oh, Paul's- man. Here's here's you as a as a as a juggalo, Paul. I'm oh, down God. as a clown. Am I shoving? Wait a minute. Am I breaking. shoving a juggalo in my own ass? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think it might actually be uh, Shaggy Two Dope. Yeah, I think you're your actually ass. shoving Shaggy Two Dope up your ass while, while wearing, wearing a Brett Keen shirt. A, a Brett Keen shirt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he says that your pig hat is also Brett Keen. Now this is another good one. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't know if it's insulting enough. Though. No, oh, no. Shit. Yeah, see that one's pretty damn good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is pretty good. Dude, it's that's a... gotta be your new avatar right there. That's nice. Yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> they I like they... how your mouth is open and you're drooling. Yeah, yeah. A mouth, I mean, that's, mouth the, that, that's the only thing that this <laughs> one's missing. It's just not disgusting, you know. Yeah, it's not. It's not disgusting enough, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, it's too uh, flattering. Too flattering. There we go. Zigo the Hut. Zigo the Hut. Zigo the Hut. How did I miss this one? Each on a one upon a no Wow, that's awesome. Wow, Paul, you 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 like pulled that out of your ass like so quickly. Whoa, 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 whoa. Voice changer. That was good. <laughs> they, Pug's ego. They tried to make you look like a pug, but instead you look like an alien oh. from Star Trek. Oh, yeah, like a Cardassian or something. Yeah. <laughs> Hideous, sallow rolls of fat all over my face. I, love <laughs> I thought that, you know, I, I was like, hold on, this looks just like him. I don't know. This is Paul. <laughs> And there's somebody, some resident of the town whose lake I'm bathing in off to the side saying, God damn it, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> and the fish are dead. <laughs> and the fish are belly up. <laughs> this, is, this is not even, this doesn't even look like it's like meant to be that unflattering. It looks like they just yeah. drew you. I don't yeah, think they understood really... the purpose of the contest. <laughs> yeah, this is another one that's just not gross enough. I'm, not, I'm nowhere near fat enough to start. <laughs> Your eyes are kind of even. Yeah, my eyes are even. Not. Nah. There's no drool coming out of your mouth, no snot bubbling out of your nose, no fat <laughs> no man tits. There we go. You look like a fucking, 
I don't even know. You look like a you look like a Mexican militant or something. <laughs> what the fuck is hanging down below my stomach? I don't know. Like, is that a giant set of balls? Uh, maybe. Did they I just don't know. give up and trying to make a leg? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, whatever. Well, you, maybe maybe you're wearing a skirt. I like this one. This one's this one's uh this one's pretty close to the top it's, for me just because of the don't give it. Got some like charm. I don't know what's going Here's, on in the water look there. At the, look at the eyes here. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> I told Ben it looks like Danny Trejo melting. It does. <laughs> it really does. Shit. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> the level the level of fucked up this is. This is nice. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. we, we we just ask. We we say, hey, you know, draw a picture of Obama smoking a blunt with with a Rasta hat on, and that's what we get. Look at <laughs> this is the worst one ever. <laughs> tell what? Ben, tell us what the tell us what the kid who sent you this said. He said, I can't draw very well. <laughs> very well. <laughs> oh no shit. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like I like your outfit though, Paul. It's pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> And my pigtails? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Those pigtails? I don't know Side what it's birds, supposed to be. I can't yeah. tell. I heart TJ plus Brett Key. Yeah, he wants both of you. This is, another this is good a one. good one. Yeah. You look like Santa, kind of. See, this one, when I saw these, I thought that this one, once again, one eye bigger and higher than the other. Yeah, yeah. But this one is the, really the most accurate, I think, because this is how I spend most of my free time. Yeah, they know what you do. Not, yeah, and a shirt is not supposed to be a belly shirt. And some boxers sitting in a fucking torn up computer chair yelling at somebody on the internet. That's, there you go, that's Paul. That's pretty much the way this goes. Accurate depiction. This just looks like... <laughs> you have tits. It looks like Jesus Freak more than it looks like yeah, you. Yeah, Jesus Freak. And how many times did they have to like erase? And I redo? know, right? They're such <laughs> this, this, they're such perfectionists to get such shitty results, you know. <laughs> they tried really I, hard and they still that's failed. Fucking horribly. horrible! I wish. I know, right? <laughs> Wait, look at the eyes. Look at the eyes. But that's I mean, I with this say. person, they never would have even. Here's Paul. Your eyes. I, I think they're a little more even in this one. <clears throat> this one's like, I'm just it, moly. It bears Mullet. no resemblance to Paul. Is though. it is it Coughlin? It no, it doesn't look like Coughlin. <laughs> it looks like an old Fred Flintstone on a gnome body. I don't know. <laughs> but they did have me. They do have, and there is a sign in the background that says Toledo. Yeah. I oh shit. That. So they looks did like that guy from Cheers. I think his name was Norm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is where you look like like Fu Manchu or something like that. Shang Tsung wins yeah. flawless <laughs> victory. <laughs> Fatality. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look I look pretty fucking cool. Yeah, this yeah. Way. This doesn't even look insulting. This is like kind of just awesome. Like this is what you'd look like yeah. in an alternate dimension where you're a badass. Yeah, or if they made a fighting game character of me. Right. You look like a fucking you maybe not the <laughs> boss, but you look like someone who would be in the lead up to the boss. So are you ready to play the winner? Yeah, well we're about to show you now we're about to show you the winner. The winner actually submitted a video entry as well. So okay. we're about to we're about to play the video of the winning entry. Yeah. And he overdubbed it with uh, us talking about the the contest. <laughs> I have <clears throat> I have a quick question about the fan art. Yeah. Why do I look like a fucking bullfrog in every? <laughs> like I look awful. Like, <laughs> I know. I, look, I, I realize I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but Jesus Christ, cut me a little slack, people. Fan art people. You make me like so slight, slightly charming and handsome, you know. <laughs> no, Jesus you gotta shit. be a fat tub of shit every time. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm a, I, I want just because you big, said that, like, I want I want I'm announcing the disgusting Paul's ego fan art contest. <laughs> Wow. I will give a twenty-five dollar Amazon gift card. Really? Wow! To whoever draws the most disgusting picture of Paul's ego and sends it in to the drunken peasants on our Facebook. Yes. Oh my God! And there it is. There it is. Wow! Damn! That is some. Yeah. That, that one's pretty unbeatable. Is, I know, right? Is this like a typical Saturday night for you, Paul? No, Saturday is tranny night. This is oh. uh, this is Sunday. Yeah, this is what I well, this is my job. This is what I do five days. <laughs> this is Paul's job. 
Yeah. <laughs> he just begs I, for money on the corner. Yeah. And and for whatever reason, I'm starving doesn't really go over well. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Could you help a, help a brother out so I can, can I get, get some food? <laughs> can I get 50 cents for a Subway sandwich, pal? <laughs> Yo, know, you're out there begging for money for diet pills. Look how fat I am. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look, I got one googly eye and a tire. What what is it with the eyes, Paul? Did you ever realize the eye thing before now? You know what? It's one of those things that it's one of those things that I've tried to ignore about myself. <laughs> Not for the anymore, time bitch. That that I will never be able to ignore ever again. <laughs> Hey Paul, I don't one. think they've ever drawn you with shoes, dude. What's what's the deal with no shoes? Yeah, I don't know. They think I don't wear shoes either. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Which is I, just an animal. He lives in a Which dirt shack. He lives in a yeah. dirt shack in the middle of California. Yep. And all I've got right. is the internet and a microphone. <clears throat> Paul, Paul, I I found a picture of you, uh, or I found a picture on the internet that I'm not sure if it's you or not. You're uh, like you're like running around with a with a gun in your hand. Um, a gun in my hand. Yeah, yeah. Now is it not you? <laughs> I I don't think so. I don't think I've ever run around with a gun in my hand. Oh man. Is, is it the one with the big American flag in yes. the background? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a dude, there's a dude that looks exactly like me out there somewhere. That was during like that was like 6 <laughs> years ago there was a bunch of tornadoes and that guy got big on Reddit because he said he was going to go fight tornadoes and a bunch of my friends were like, "Dude, Paul, you does look like Reddit. him." Yeah, <laughs> it, but it's not me. I have to. I have to say it's not. Paul, me. you should have just taken credit, dude. Should've I should have. Like, yeah, damn right. Reddit right. superstar Paul's ego. That's right. Own it. Own it. <laughs> Build your oh, legend. God. Well, <clears throat> at least I know what rock bottom feels like now. <laughs> oh no. No, but that oh, last no, picture not... is very impressive, man. That that now, was very impressive. Several of those pictures were very impressive. You've got a uh, you've got a pretty artistic audience here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, they're pretty cool. So, uh, Paul, did you want to uh, maybe see uh, you know or, or Tim, either of you guys? Did you want to put our artists to the test, give them another contest? <laughs> I could do this. This could be like a weekly thing. I could fucking I can give out a twenty five dollar Amazon gift card every week. <laughs> Mm. All right. Mm. Hey, hey, I've it got doesn't it. matter. Man. Yeah, I, what, I think whatever, it should dude. work. Whatever. I think it should work like the subject of the original contest gets to pick the next contest. Oh, okay. So we got to ask the guy who won what he thinks the contest should be. Then I want. No, 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 no. The, the, the subject. Oh, okay. Subject you're, so the you're contest. the subject. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm empowering myself to be the number one picker here. All right. What's your contest, Paul? I want the best picture of Tim the bartender. Oh, uh, make sweet love to TJ. TJ. Oh my God! <laughs> because that's the way we like it. <laughs> Hold on, I I need Brett Keen to to unscramble that. <gasps> Paul, I want to know what are you using to change your voice there? Uh, it's I I have a. a a four track recorder that I run everything through. Really? It's got, wow. Uh, we need to so, get that, Ben. It allows yeah, ben. you to do smooth jumps. Yeah. Smooth jumps. Yeah, we uh we wanted to have uh we wanted to have Girl Does Ran on here sometime, but we, we need like the voice modulator that she uses. Yeah. For like the you know, the high pitch voice that she uses. <laughs> right. How did you get the name Tim the Bartender? Oh man, it's wild. You like um I started doing I started my page on Facebook. And what mm -hmm. I would do is every night I'd say some shit about relationships and life. And I would end it with the name of a drink. Well, I started with a name of a drink of a drink. Like I'd go, I don't know, margarita, and then I'd make a, you know, make a little quip or something. And people liked it and it kind of caught on. And one of my friends said, Hey dude, you should start a fan page. And that's it, man. I just started doing this. It's Tim the bartender. Oh, I see. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's gonna pay off for me eventually. <laughs> yeah. 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 So is is your only channel Tim's take? Oh, I got a. Uh, I have a relationship page, man, where I talk about the ladies and the, <laughs> and the men, you know, 
and you know, just like keeping that shit tight. You know what I'm saying, TJ? I could give you some good advice, man. Cool. But you know, I keep it realer than real, man. Realer than real. Realer than real, bro. Awesome. So yeah, that's that's Tim the bartender. Then I got Tim's take. So that cool. rounds me out, man. Yeah. Yeah. I like Tim. He has multitasking. Hey, what kind of what? How did you go from uh, doing relationship advice to doing news stories all the time, though? Dude, what was it? Oh, you know what? I just, I was looking for something else to talk about. And one day I, I, I saw this news story and I was like, you know what? I did that and I liked it. I said, you know what? I'm going to make a separate channel just because I don't want to mix the two up. And then it yeah. kind of, it sort of took off. I mean, I'm at like 8,000 8, subs, which is, you know, not a lot. But in a year, it's pretty good for me. For me, yeah. you know. Fuck. It, so you know. what relationship <laughs> advice would you give the guy whose picture you're looking at right now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, you know what? There's somebody for everybody, man. L l you know what? Lose yeah. enough weight to, so your hands can reach your cock again. <laughs> that's, that would be step one. That's, yeah, that, that's the only step. There's nothing really more that could be done beyond that. <laughs> 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 Masturbation, nothing, nothing's wrong with that. Probably be what, yeah. That's a good idea, TJ. Yeah. You, that's you might all, have a knack for this, man. You might need. Yeah, to that's all Paul. Thing. That's all Paul has. In his, yeah, know. that's all right, Tim. You're gonna you're gonna get yours next next time. You'll <laughs> see. You'll see. Somebody, somebody on Twitter has got to be one of you. You know, one of the drunken peasant fans who sent me a picture of this guy. He said I look like from some fucking dude from. Some slasher movie or something. I don't know who it huh. was. Right, Captain Spaulding from uh, it. The That's Devil's it. Rejects. Like and... You look just yeah. like Captain Spaulding. I'm like, go f fuck yourself, man. Who the fuck <laughs> is Captain <you>? Spaulding. <laughs> they do kind of have a similar facial structure. Dude, I will that's say. Up, man. That's fucked up. <laughs> 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 Captain Spaulding. I've never seen it. I don't know. Tim, it's pretty. Tim it's pretty as good. Captain Spaulding making sweet love to TJ incoming. Oh See? my God, See? Paul, settle down, Paul. Do Do you want to watch? No this? one's ever done anything like that to you. Do you want to watch on. this video about no. Gorilla One Nine Nine? Nah, that fucking shit's boring. He that guy's like dull as. He dirt. wants to cage fight you, TJ. But he's just. I mean, even when he wants to cage fight me, he's just dull. I know, but that's the funniest thing about. All him. right, go ahead and play it if you All really right. want to. All right, here we go. Here's Gorilla One Nine Nine. He believes that Jesus Christ was crucified on top of a pyramid with UFOs hovering overhead. And uh, he wants to challenge TJ to a cage fight. Uh -huh. There's a YouTuber called The Amazing Atheist. Uh, I personally don't know what's amazing about him myself, but okay, some people think... Okay, pause that... right now. So, like, last time we saw Gorilla199, he was, like, just bursting TJ's over with praise for me. No, he's but, an actor. But he was, say, he was saying in a very flat way, he's a very talented writer. He's a very talented actor. Now he's like, I don't see what's amazing about yeah. it. Like, what the fuck? You ch you fucking flip the script on me, Gorilla. What the hell? Son oh, of a well. bitch. <laughs> and he's got his shirt off too. He's about to let the monkey out on you. Yeah. He's about to yeah. he's about to climb you like a tree, TJ. You better watch out. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna happen. He wants to get you in the octagon. <laughs> he's amazing. Cock and he made a video where he challenged um, Chuck Norris to a fight. I mean, I had to laugh. But I think... That was ages ago. And also, I could totally take Chuck Norris in a fight. He's a decrepit-ass old man. <laughs> right now, you probably could. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck does Chuck Norris got going on? He used to be a good martial artist, like, when he was young, like, 40 fucking years ago. Ooh, so scary. He's an old man. His bones are rickety. All I have to do is fall on top of his fucking short little ass. <laughs> he ain't yeah, gonna be able to fucking get me off. To be, that's for sure. Right? No, no, no. I could take fucking Chuck Norris. There ain't nah, nothing bad. Really, about he, Chuck he made the video just to get um, views and um, just just to you know, well, just to get views basically and to, and to make money because he. Oh, 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 could you stop for a second, guys? Can you stop yeah. for a second. Why do people have a problem with people making videos that get fucking views? I don't know. I think it's what? just because, like, if, if, if they can't do it, then no one should be allowed yeah, to do yeah. it. It's like he, like, like he thinks that if, if only he was as much of a sellout as I am, <laughs> he would be making all kinds of money, but he has principles, <laughs> and he would never do that. Maybe he can't do it because he can't fucking do it.
Exactly. Well, this this guy believes that there are normal people like him, and then there are tares, and then there are Freemasons. And tares are like the reptilian overlords of the earth, and Freemasons are their human like slaves, basically, right? Right, they're like servants. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's and on then, that fuck dice shit. Yeah. He's on some pretty he's crazy shit. He's been doing shit. it for a long time, yeah. too. Like, Does probably like five or six years. It, you know, people follow Oh, him? yeah. Oh, what? yeah. Yep. He's got a little following for himself. Yeah. You know, a friend of mine told me, when I told him, I said, I'm trying to expand my channel. He said, what you got to do, bro, is you got to start doing conspiracy theories. You got to talk about Illuminati. <laughs> And, and then you'll blow up. Then you'll blow up. And I was like, but I don't believe that shit. He's like, it don't matter. That's the shit. That's you, you might got. as well start covering feminism and talk about the patriarchy, <clears throat> too, while you're at it. Dude, do, I, think, I think you should do the Illuminati shit. You know what? You should go after the Illuminati shit, actually. You should go find the people who are talking about that and be like, this is a bunch of bullshit. There ain't I, no evidence for this. I did a couple videos on it, man, but it's dangerous out here it's hard for a brother because hey man like like if you didn't call your people off i'd have been fucked tj so i don't I know didn't... if i want to risk that i mean maybe maybe you're right if i go at a general thing but that getting trolled shit that sucks man uh -huh. that's yeah well i could get i'll tell you i've been on i've been at this shit long enough to know that you're gonna get trolled every once in a while no yeah. matter what I, it, it, yeah. Oh, yeah i mean if you could just see our chat room right now it's it's just like full of trolling and spam and by the way shout outs to the nicest most welcoming chat on youtube the drunken peasant yeah. chat. <laughs> i love all of you i love each and every one of you thank you for keeping this such a positive and upbeat place to be yeah it's like uh the the worst is when our only female guest jacqueline glenn shows up oh, and then she's and, not our only female well guest. well the one that the whole audience knows what she looks like. Right. And then there's like a, a thousand like pervy comments every 10 <laughs> seconds. It's pretty funny. I so, would crawl so, through so a desert of glass saying, naked just to lick Jacqueline's pussy. I would drink her bath water. <laughs> well, that's good that you said that, Ben, because that'll, that'll get me ready for when I get a lot of like nigger comments, and I'm sure they're going to be in the <laughs> comment section. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. I should myself for that pain, for that. Oh no, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's gonna be there, definitely. That's they, gonna be there, dude. But, yeah, because. But, but look, I mean, like, you know, when, when Robin Williams just fucking died, and people already fucking uh, scared his daughter off of social media with their fucking rude comments just about that. Like, yeah, it's your fault. He's dead. He killed himself because of you. You stupid bitch. <laughs> like. That's so there's just a lot of fucking really mean asshole people yeah. out there on the fucking internet. I mean, yeah, and and we don't have anyone to the, right now since Scotty isn't here. We we don't have anyone to like police the chat room at all. Yeah, so. we need we need the that's that's people complain about Scotty being a fascist, but you see what happens when he's not around yeah. to be a fascist. So. And and Tim Tim just because you said it, it's all lighting up like crazy now. It's it's the <laughs> love, baby. It's the love. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah. But yeah, oh, a guy one got, night. he got his oh. got his Twitter suspended for that shit. Who did? Yeah, the, a guy I know got his Twitter shut down for. Um, he said he didn't do it. He said another guy did it, making comments to uh, Robin Williams's daughter. Right. That's weird. Yeah, yeah Twitter Twitter went after those guys, man. Kicked them wow. off. Oh yeah, hardcore. That's, that's yeah. ridiculous. Fucked up. All right. No 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 fucking no fucking morals, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So Gorilla199, TJ, is about to make a challenge to you. Right. I forgot about him. And, oh, and he bad. says, I'm, I'm a 50-year-old man, but TJ, you're also a middle-aged man. Right. Um, anyway, what I was thinking was, um, seeing as um, uh, TJ, the, the amazing atheist, um, hasn't forgotten about me and sent people to invite me onto his podcast, which I completely ignored because I'm... You know, no, you I'm didn't. You made a video about an invitation it. invitation from people sent on his behalf to ask me. I'm sorry, but, you know, who does he think he is? You know, Once again, he... just a couple of weeks ago, you were saying you did want to come on the show. So what the fuck are you talking about? It's almost like he's crazy. Yeah. Almost. Just, just a little bit. What the fuck? 
let's What's uh this thing where he's middle aged and you're middle aged. How the fuck if he's he, what uh, twenty years older than you, how the fuck Yeah, is, yeah. TJ was probably <laughs> Yeah, yeah. TJ was probably like twenty three or something at the time. Yeah, and uh, I, I actually got in a little uh, tiff with this guy when I was like 23, 24, and he said, uh, TJ, you're telling your audience you're 23. You're a middle-aged man. You're not 23. You're a middle-aged man. Yeah. So he was, sure. that's among his other conspiracy theories. He that was like I'm a compliment because he's trying to say that you're, you know. That you're yeah, he's saying so I'm very mature. Intelligence. That you speak that I come of, across as much older than I am. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> of course, of course. He, has he watched this podcast? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he yeah. has. Probably. And he's convinced that we're tares or Freemasons. I think that he thinks we're Freemasons. Okay. Shit, he knows. He knows. Actually, the video. Start the video. He knows. You're going to ask someone ben something. Is a and tear. You ask I'm a Freemason. Someone yourself. But the point is this. Chuck Norris is otherwise predisposed. And he's, you know, he's quite an old boy now. Um, myself, well, I'm I'm over fifty, but you know I'm, I'm pretty 50. game. And I was wondering if the amazing atheist would like to challenge me uh, in Chuck Norris's place um, to you know to an agreed cage fight, you know, agreed one. You know, not this isn't a, a bullying video. You know, please don't let me be accused of bullying the amazing atheist. You know, I'm just saying if the amazing atheist were to uh, invite me to step into a ring with him, um, then. I would accept, but I would accept um, on this basis. I would accept on the basis that um, the loser gets nothing. Okay. What is he talking about? Like, how's the winner going to get anything? Like, well, he's saying that he wants to charge for the event and that whoever loses doesn't get who's any. Who's going to pay? I'm not paying right. for this no shit. No one's going to pay to see me beat the Shaggy Gorilla 199. Paying. I better get in for free or I'm not even going. Right. Even Ben doesn't give a shit. Yeah, I don't care. I might pay. You might yeah. pay. Yeah. I might pay to watch you beat the shit out of Gorilla One Nine Nine. I don't even think I could do it. I'd feel too bad about it. He's he looks so scrawny to me. I don't know. He's showing in the in the lower left hand corner him uh wrestling with some jujitsu guy. Wow. Yeah. That that's to prove his skill set. He's he's enhanced. He's an enhanced grappler. He loses the match. Yeah, he did. He I actually sh he shows us a match that he loses. It's not even what? I mean, yeah. okay. Just kick him in the fucking nuts, man. Get it over with. <laughs> I would just I, fucking uh, elbow drop his head. Like a fucking like Mario stomping on a goat. You'd be like Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah. Fuck Ooh, yeah. yeah. Like Before Mario. I think on that there's goal. a lot of people who, um, <laughs> on his camp anyway who would love to see him give me a good hiding. Okay. I'm sure there is. I'm sure that the ones on my camp would be like, you know, Chris, what are you doing? You know, you're you're a Christian and that. Well, yeah, I'm completely against um, against violence, but sport is sport, and that's you know, it's an, it's an agreement between people. All they right. agree. I'll tell you what. Since violence is violence and sport is sport, I challenge you to a chainsaw decapitation match. <laughs> and whoever is decapitated first wins. If no one is decapitated at 30 minutes, a bomb will go off that will set both of you on fire. No, no. The, whoever is decapitated first is actually the winner. So oh. he probably will prevail. He'll, he'll accidentally cut his own head off? I don't know if it'll be accidental. Uh, he'll just be like, look, I'm about to win, mate. <laughs> and then he's dead. It just seems such, some, such, such a, what's the word for it? A pompous, snide asshole. Yeah. Like, you know, and he's insane to boot. He's pretentious, you know, like... Yeah. What the fuck is that, man? The fuck? Somebody <laughs> follows that. They like that. I, I don't know, man. Bravo murder trial? What is that? <laughs> oh, that's the kid that... Play that one. Oh, you want to see that? Fuck this Gorilla 199 shit. You're done with Gorilla? Yeah, I didn't even want to do it to begin with. I know. Okay. <laughs> so... This is a funny story. All right. I've, I've, I've read Court this. resumes today in the bizarre trial of a college student, listen to this, accused of murdering his friend, then asking Siri where to hide the body. Florida police say Pedro Bravo poisoned and strangled his roommate, Christian Aguilar, back in September of 2012. Poisoned the... and strangled. It's very Damn. thorough. Damn. I love how the newscast is like, now for a funny story, a guy killed his roommate. <laughs> He strangled him and he poisoned him. <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, 
He asked Siri, where to hide the body? This guy poisoned and strangled his roommate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that's <laughs> oh, that's rich. What a wacky story. I it's know, so right? wacky. Uh, <laughs> roommate was dating his ex-girlfriend and get this they say bravo then asked his iphone for help disposing of the body hmm. detectives testified that bravo told the digital assistant siri quote i need to hide my roommate siri's response what kind of place are you looking for maybe i should have done it in the voice what kind of a <laughs> scary <laughs> swamps reservoirs metal foundries or dumps joining me now siri actually seems like it's pretty useful for that purpose then <laughs> yeah. uh well, it seems like that purpose is to catch people who are trying to do that. Well, I don't think that's how he was caught, though. No? Okay. Because there'd be, there'd be too many people who ask questions like that to Siri just for a joke. Like, I've heard people people say anything to fucking Siri. Really? Oh, yeah. I've seen people be like, Siri, how would you like it if I raped you in the ass? And it'd be like, I would not like that very much. You know, she'll... <laughs> And it's like, you know, so people are always saying crazy shit to Siri. So, I mean, there's no way they caught him on this because... Oh, it's probably after they confiscated the phone. Right, and then they looked at it like, did this dumb motherfucker ask Siri what to do with the body? Holy shit. Yeah. Call the press. We got a fucking story for him. That's funny how they can just do that be like, listen to this stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> listen to how dumb this guy is. Trot him out in front of... The he shouldn't even be punished any further. It's his punishment, just us knowing that he did this is punishment enough. Just let him go free. It's like how, the, the Siri murderer. How dependent was he on Siri? Like, is he like, how do I take a shit, Siri? All right, now, you know? Siri, should I wipe my ass against the grain or going with the grain? <laughs> Siri, how long should I heard hold the flush down? I like that Siri would have helped him find a swamp, though. And yes. Like, look why you know. he did it. Look why he did it. He did it uh, because the guy was dating his ex-girlfriend. If he so had he gone to you for advice, he never would have done that shit. I'm, exactly, exactly. That's some sad shit. That press for the Punani. Well, just like you said, though, TJ got into his relationship because he sucked his father-in-law's <laughs> dick. That's right. That's, <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is the best relationship advice I think I've ever heard in my life. Hey, you, you gotta give a little, right? <laughs> <laughs> Present with a peace offering. Oh, 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 oh! I gotta clear this up, man. Okay. TJ, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. I was not talking about your dad. I didn't know about your dad. So I want to say fine. that right now, man, because that's people have been hitting me with that nonstop on every page I fucking own my website. My my personal Facebook, my professional Facebook, my everything, and, and I didn't I didn't think that you that you knew about it. So I mean, I, I didn't know I about it, like... and and I never said that you never lost anyone. My thing was a guy who's saying you should come out. To me, it seemed like you were that you hadn't lost anyone. Right, like, but I mean, like. You know, the thing the thing I don't understand about that though is like if you I mean when I when I did that video I mean I specifically say that you should really like feel your parents out and make sure right. that they're not going to have that overreaction you know so I, I pretty much told people who have parents they don't think they can handle it probably they shouldn't you know bring that up right. so right right yeah and, yeah and you know what in the video I know you guys like you put it on the screen and shit, but at the very end I did say that. I said, well, oh, you okay. know, to be fair to TJ, he did say, "Don't come out." I just don't think you should, you know. It, yeah, I get your point. You true, All right. true that, true that. All right, I didn't, I, I, I didn't remember that part, or maybe we cut it off before then. But, but yeah, um, it, it wasn't okay. funny anymore. Like uh, that was towards the end and shit. So can oh, yeah. you feel the love tonight? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> What's happening here? Oh, nothing, nothing. I was just singing. Can you? Why? Because <laughs> the two Why? of you just, you know, worked something out. And... <laughs> yeah. You know, man, I feel bad about that shit, man. You're an antagonist, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> You're a little shit stirring motherfucker. That's why I, no I, one I, loves you, Paul. I, 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 I know. That's why no one fucking loves you. That's why you. I'm sitting here by this garbage can begging you for change. <laughs> Is that where you are right now? You're That's there right where I'm now? at right now. I got oh, a headset on. Holy. People are looking at me weird. <laughs> you right. fucking Put your shoes on, Paul. Put your fat, shoes on, frumpy, man. malignant pile of shit. <laughs> yep, scratching all the white heads on my neck. Oh. <laughs> With the the pus, pus just drips down. 
stains your shirt that you've been wearing for the past six weeks. Good point, TJ. Shirts. Oh, yeah, true. We got to pimp the fucking shirt. Yeah. We're stupid. We should have done that hours ago. Yeah. Oh, well, put the shirt up. All right. So here's the shirt. It's at teespring.com forward slash drunken peasants. T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G dot com forward slash Duncan Peasants. Well, is the link down there in the fucking description? Uh, Maybe. I don't I don't know. At any rate, go buy this shirt. We need to sell 100 of them before August, and I think we've sold 18. You mean before September. The end of August. Yeah. Before the end of August. Yes. Thanks, Ben, for your fucking correction, you piece of shit. You're welcome. It's fucking... Well, someone, someone has to keep track of time for you. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm fucking awful. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, I think that happened when I was like six or twelve or nineteen. I don't know. If you don't wear this T-shirt, you're not cool. Paul and uh, <laughs> pa- Paul, you, Paul and uh, Tim can't see the shirt, yeah, but we it's can't pretty see cool. The shirt. It's cool shirt. Oh. It's cool. Yeah. Is it, All is right. it, does it resemble the drunken peasants like emblem you got? Oh, no, it's, or whatever. Oh, okay. There, okay. There it is, right there. Paying every day. <laughs> yeah. That's somehow we that. somehow we got on this thing. I think it was actually like in the first or second show where we started calling all the newscasters were calling it pot, so it's we started pot. calling it pan. And we're like, like we're like pots well, and pans. Why is it even called pot in the first place? Like I don't even understand that. So we're like, ah, oh, we should just call it pan instead. So that caught on for some goddamn reason. And then this shirt happened. Yes. And you can yeah. buy it. That's that's interesting. Yep. But no, it's cool though. It's a good who did the uh who did the picture? Who did the picture? I don't know, one of our fans. Uh, a fan uh from Finland actually. Finland. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck, man. I need fans like that, man. My fans don't <laughs> make me shit. <laughs> you know what? The funny thing is, even though the Amazing Atheist channel is way bigger than the Drunken Peasants channel, the, the Amazing Atheist fans don't make me shit either. They're, this channel just attracts those kind of people for it's some me. reason. It's me. I'm so charming. Ben's charisma attracts yeah. them like flies to honey. What can I say? All right. There is one, now, now I think about it, since we had this little back and forth, there is somebody who came from your page who did make me an icon. I can't. I don't remember his name, but he sent it to me. In fact, I was afraid to open it because it was like an attachment. I was like, oh, shit. You know, yeah. this guy, who's this guy sending me a message saying, open this. It's, a, it's you know, he said it's a logo. But I opened it and it was a, it was all right. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. He did it out of the, you know, just being a nice guy. He, he sent me that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, it's cool, cool when people just, you know, they. They share their talents with you. We do have a very artistic audience here. It was, it was pretty cool and pretty fucking scary at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about this NASCAR bullshit. You want to talk about that? Yeah, let's go to that. Okay. Tragedy on the racetrack. 20-year-old race car driver Kevin Ward Jr. killed after he steps out of his car and onto the track. Hit by one of the sport's greatest drivers, Tony Stewart, a three-time NASCAR champion. He just looks like an asshole right there. Like they they captured like a picture where he looks. Well, I I don't know much like, about NASCAR because I think it's boring as shit. Me personally. too. Turn left, turn left. But I've I since this happened, I've read several stories that say that he's supposed to be like some kind of major asshole. Yeah, and he's been around. Yeah, and he's you know he's well known. He's been around for a long time. That kind of shit. Okay. I'm just I'm just doing it. I don't get. All shit. right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I don't know. You know what? I saw the film on this, but I don't know much about him, dude. Heard he's a dickhead, though. Yeah. Hey, he's, like, he's, he's got like, like a reputation of being like right. You know, he, off the handle type thing. They that, said he has a very uh, hot temper and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I mean, there's really no way to know if he saw the other guy or not. I mean, the, he's also known as one of the best. Right. Too. So it's like, but I mean, the stupid fuck that got killed runs out in the middle of a fucking track during a high speed race. I uh, mean. Uh, it's just kind of dumb. Have you seen the video? Cause yeah, we're I've okay. seen the video. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Let's it's take just a, a, take a look. unbelievable there. tragedy. Um, 
our hearts go out to um, obviously Kevin and his family. The deadly hit coming after the 14th lap of a 25 lap race on this dirt track in upstate New York Saturday night. Watch what happens as Stewart's car closes in on Ward's, cutting him off. Ward's car is forced up against the wall where he spins out. As the race continues, amateur video shows Ward out of his car, pointing his finger seemingly in the direction of Stewart's car. One car swerves around Ward, Stewart's car hits him. Him. Ward's death now under investigation. Mm. They don't show the actual moment of yeah. impact, though. They don't show it, but I think the video shows it. Right, yeah, the video does. I've seen, I've watched the uncut video. Right. And uh, it's kind of crazy because it, it looks like Stewart kind of swerves at the last second, but it's not really enough. And then the Ward guy gets caught like under his tires and flung across the fucking dirt. And, uh,. Then, then there's some stupid. The great thing about the video is some bitch in the crowd after that happens is like, "Woo!" Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's some bitch out there is like, "Yeah, he probably did." Woo! Yeah. 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 Wow. That's what happened. We have a little racetrack in the town I live in, and this type of racing goes on. And and when you go, there's all. Whenever there's a crash, there's always there's always that one woman that goes, "Woo! Look, baby, look." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, somebody probably died. <laughs> Another human life was extinguished before my eyes. My pussy's wet. <laughs> <laughs> but with, the, with that racing shit, it's like, if you don't see an accident, is it really entertaining, though? You know I what don't I'm know. Saying? Like, it's just, you know, it's too monotonous for me. I got to see something. I need some drama. Some people, some people feel the same way about hockey. Like, hockey's... You, you know, in, in the NBA or in the NFL, if two players get into a fight where they're, like, punching each other in the face, they get, like, suspended and fined. But in ice hockey, you know, two two players can beat the shit out of each other. And they got to do that shit just and to then stay they just awake. Sit, and then they just sit in a box for five minutes. And then they right. come back and get to play again. And some people, a lot of hockey fans kind of feel that way. We're like, if there's not a fight at the game, it wasn't as exciting as it could have been. So, I mean, why not just go to a fucking fight? You know, we got like MMA and shit. Yeah. Now. I don't know. Maybe they you just know, want I, to see it on ice. I just I want to see fighting on hockey. ice. Ice. But I violence. heard that hockey is great live. You got to go oh, see yeah. shit live. Yeah, live it's better because you can see the puck. It's like on, on TV, it's a little dot. Man, I've seen that shit on TV. It'd have to be more entertaining live. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> by default right live there's yeah, beer exactly. <laughs> yeah that you helps get, you can get shit faced with a bunch of other idiots there's also live. the yeah. impending terror of the possibility that a stray puck might strike you in the face and fucking kill you very unlikely but it's still there it happened mm. in happy gilmore Come oh on. yeah because that that was like a true story <laughs> it was practically a documentary dude <laughs> practically from him again. My children give me a great sense of wonder just to see them develop into these extraordinary human beings. And a favorite book as a child growing up, it was The Lion. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I'd read the whole C.S. Lewis series outside to my kids. I was once reading to Zelda, and she said, don't do any voices, just read it yourself. So I did, I just read it straight, and she said, that's better. One of the children he so loved. One of the children grieving tonight, because their father killed himself in a fit of depression. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? You can love three little things so much, watch them grow, and they're in their mid-twenties, and they're inspiring you and exciting you, and they fill you up with a kind of joy you could never have known, and, and yet something inside you is so horrible, or you're such a coward. Or okay, Shep. <laughs> Can we, can we, can we stick to the fucking news, please, Shep? It's something Thanks. so horrible, or you're just <laughs> such a coward. I, I didn't, don't know. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess it's his job to make these sort of like sweeping moral Sweet. pronouncements. Yeah, Shit. sweeping generalizations about an illness he clearly knows nothing about. That's that's fucked up. <laughs> you, you're. I, I mean, like, I, I, I kind of can see that maybe. You know, it was just one of those things that kind of came out in the moment as he was doing his little soliloquy. But he probably shouldn't be soliloquizing on the fucking news anyway. I mean, he's not even really one of their commentators for the most no, part. No, no, he's, he's like, a straight He's supposed news to be guy. like the straight news guy. So it's kind of strange that it would be him that was saying this. Like, I, can, I mean, if it was like Sean Hannity or Bill O'Reilly, 
then uh, maybe that would make a little more sense. But I don't know. That's right. you know, I, I'm just trying to figure out why would you say something so callous? I mean, right? You know, he, I mean, he has, to, he has to know that it's like depression is a condition. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's it's something many Americans suffer from. How could this? Like dismiss 15, this shit like fifteen percent of the, Americans you know, at some point. There, there is a common belief among held among many people that suicide is cowardly. Unfortunately, right, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's you know, I mean, the, anyone who's driven to that point is obviously going through a lot of suffering internally, and they're just like not able to handle whatever is happening to them. I mean, I guess that I mean. I can I can kind of see if someone really didn't understand what depression is and that depression is like, you know, a biochemical phenomenon that's a condition just as recognizable as and diagnosable as any other condition. Right. They wouldn't ha they wouldn't make that sort of you know pronouncement of just like oh well you're a fucking coward or something. Uh, right. Robin Williams was not a coward. Right. He was a very, very fucking good man who uh, did a lot of very great things. And not to say that he was some kind of saint that should be um, canonized or something. But, right. you, you know, you certainly, certainly shouldn't disparage him. And very certainly not right after his death when his family is still grieving. There's nothing cowardly about killing yourself. It's, in, in my mind, it's always the exact opposite. Not to, not to make it out like it's a positive thing, but, I mean, to... To take your own life, I mean, is is there anything more like, is there anything that requires more bravery than that? Especially the way that that these people do this, like hanging themselves or blowing their brains out, that kind of stuff. That's just, I mean, I couldn't even imagine, you know, doing that to myself. You know, right. I don't know. Yeah, Ben, I but, think if you ever kill yourself, what you should do is you should like tie up a lawnmower. <laughs> And like turn it on, yeah, and just kind of dangle it over your head, but then have a candle under the rope that's okay. burning the rope. Okay, I'm taking notes. And then <laughs> when it snaps, the lawnmower lands on your face and mangles your fucking head. <laughs> Perfect. I think that would be a, a fitting end for you. <laughs> fitting? Yeah, a fitting end. And then TJ, you could come collect the pieces and throw the garbage bag in the alleyway that I live in. Yeah, I'd be like, "Hey, Paul, I, <laughs> Paul will eat me. I took Don't pity. Do it. I yeah. took pity on you. I brought you some some chopped sirloin. Here you He's go. He's gonna eat me. I brought you some. I brought you some bin, and I'll be like, oh, god damn, that's good. That bin is good eating.' He'll, he'll, I'd fry it up for you too. No, no, no. Yeah. He'll do that thing where he does like the shish oil. kebab thing. You know, he's got like the thing that he's like turning the rotisserie. Right. He'll have me on like a rotisserie <laughs> thing over a fire, like a fucking hobo." Hobo fire. Yeah. A uh, over right. a garbage fire. Let's, let's yeah, go the, on with Shepard Smith. Uh, no, I mean, we're, we're done with that. Oh, no? Yeah, the, the, moral of the, <clears throat> the moral of that story, shut the fuck up, Shep, and just read the news like a good little news monkey and don't <laughs> fucking, don't opine on things that you don't know about, you dumb fucking piece of shit. Right. Basically, and, and you know, I can't, and maybe we'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he doesn't fucking know that, you know, somebody who's suffering depression um, they're just in a place of, of misery and instead of looking at it like, you know. You know what, I'll, I'll put it this what way. Could be going, listen, TJ, like, what could be going through this person's mind that that's the only option they see that's viable? Right, I mean, I mean especially someone like Robin course. who had a family that he obviously loved very much. Right, I, right. I mean, right. you know, it, it, there, there's, it, would take, it would take in a lot of pain for him to make that sort of decision. <clears throat> yeah, that's, and that's... What I'm and that's that's what I wanted to drive home about it was is that depression being somebody that suffers from it um, is at times just the loneliest, scariest thing. And um, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of bravery just to go out of the house some days when you've got really, really bad clinical depression, not to bring the podcast down. But um, oh, I damn think, it, Paul. I'm, I know. I'm so right. Bummed out now. Oh, God damn I'm it, just, Paul. You fucking downer. <laughs> nah. Play the fucking violin for Paul. I know, seriously. No, no. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, Paul. Because I mean, I, I, I've gone through. I haven't been through a depressive episode. I'm happy to say in a very long time. Although I still have some of the malaise associated with it. But I mean, there was a time in my life for that. You know, it was a period of like at least five or six years where I was like constantly 
in the in these cycles of depression. And um, you know, I know that it's it's basically like the the most joyless, empty. Everything seems pointless. There's no motive to do anything. Uh, you you take pleasure in fucking nothing that you do do. Fucking sucks. Exactly. Uh, Only two minutes. Hey everyone, you here at the Vigilant Christian Mario, and you're here for a unique uh, video. Hey everyone, today. you're here I with to make uh, a... Vigilant Christian Mario, and uh, I just want to make a video for everyone. Yes, he does. <laughs> We're pumping iron. A quick video addressed to my subscriber trolls. My and for those of you trolls. who don't know what my subscriber, subscriber trolls. trolls are, are subscriber people who trolls. have subscribed. He almost sounds like like, hey, I'm a subscriber troll. <laughs> hey. Like I've only I, I I've only heard the first like 15 seconds of this video, and I can already tell what it's gonna be. This guy's gonna go like, you guys are just bringing views to my videos. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for the attention, troll. <laughs> That's so probably just, it. Yeah, yeah. Out. Abuse a fucking view. Abuse a view. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Thanks man. for the view. This is the Vigilant Christian Mario. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, Paul. To my channel for the simple purpose of thumbing it down and mm. putting negative comments. Yeah. I have subscribers and viewers that literally hate me, hate the content that I put out, and watch me every single day. Hold on, let's pause so there want... for a second. By I mean... the way, this is <laughs> Tim. I... Tim, I don't know if you're familiar with this guy, but he's made videos about how Disney is satanic. Oh, it's a shit. part of a evil satanic plot to uh, make little girls into whores when they grow up. Uh, that kind of thing. He says yoga is satanic. Too. Yeah, yoga. <laughs> yoga. You know so what? I've seen videos where people actually believe that shit. I yeah, know. well, this is one of those guys. <laughs> when you, when you, they, they think when you start like chanting or if you go into a moment of meditation that all of the de the devil can seep into your mind, your psyche, and and fuck you up. So that's that's where they get that from. Yeah, I've watched a video on that shit. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. You, you make yourself susceptible to the dark side. To demonic possession. Do, 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 do. I'd like to take a moment here to thank you for taking the time and watching the videos. In fact, the time you spend watching the videos helps the videos get seen by more people. Wow. The actual views dun, dun, help dun, me uh, rank higher, and bing, therefore my bing, videos place bing. better online. Paul, so whether or not people. Paul, are you some kind yeah. of psychic visionary? I'm, I must be. Either that or I've seen this video 150,000 fucking times from every douchebag on the internet. I think he's a member <laughs> right. of the Illuminati. I just wanted to make a quick video thanking my haters and trolls. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> everyone ha I mean, one thing that does kind of ring true, though, is everyone does have that audience that doesn't like them but hates them. Right. Like, we... Like I, I, I mean, like I know there's at least like a good solid core of like two or three hundred people that only watch my videos because they hate me and want to argue with everything I say. There you go. I'm sure that Tim has some, and I'm sure that you have some as well, Paul. Um, uh, probably not anymore, but yeah, it's at one point I probably did. You probably still have them rattling around. They yeah. probably would. Every time I'm sure, every time you do upload something new, every like you know five years or so. <laughs> the trolls show up like, hey, Paul, decided to come back to YouTube, huh? Well, that was a mistake because you still suck. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I stayed And it'll always look, and it's always somebody who has a, you know, no picture, no real name, no, no shit, you know, anonymous fuckhead that wants to give you crap about doing your thing. Yeah, and it's usually someone who's like, you know, I love when they argue about something and then you look like you you look it up and they're wrong and you fucking bring it up to them and they're like, well, that, I, I'm i actually talking about this other thing that you yeah. don't know anything about. <laughs> I'm I'm ending this conversation because I don't I don't feel like wasting any more time. I talk to an idiot like you. You're a fool. Right. right. I, I had to start doing the uh, doing my own transcripts, man, my own my own closed captions. Cause I'm like, damn, man, I got to argue with you over this. You know what? I'm going to start typing them out. So now you can just go and you, since you can't hear, maybe you can read. Oh, wow. We're way too lazy to do that. Yeah, I would never do that. Shit. Yeah, no. I got to do it, man. I got to grow. <laughs> That's how you grow because you it moves you up in the rankings. Right. <laughs> well, our thing is like we do like a three to four hour show. Oh, fuck. No way I'm doing that. That translates into like oh, no, eight no, no, hours. No, I mean, 
I mean, for like a regular page. Not for this, though. This is crazy. No, yeah. no. No way. No, no way. No. No. So let's let's hear the Vigilant Christian Mario cry a little more about the trolls, but sarc- it, it's almost like a Ryan Wiley type thing where he's like, <laughs> well, uh, thank you, actually, for fucking with me. I really uh, appreciate that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's great. Come to my videos to view them, to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it really doesn't matter because YouTube just recognizes that more people are coming to see the content and therefore will uh, make the content more accessible to more people. Yeah. So really, internet trolls uh, that come and thumb down my video as soon as it's posted, thank you so much. Really, really they're do doing me a favor. You. Um, you're so happy the they came and did that. Weird way. The amazing thing about being a Christian is that no matter what you do against us, it works out for our benefit. Wow. It's, so, it's like Paul, plain- not, o- not only did he uh, do the angle you're talking about, but he actually says that it's because he's a Christian that that works out that way for him. Right. Like so God has I- given him like a bunch of breaks that he wouldn't give to someone like, say, me. Right, yeah. So if I were to like pin him down and take a shit all over his face, that would be to his benefit in some in some way. Actually, Paul, your shit is quite nutritious, and I ate it, and it, it you know it sustained my life force. So really, it's a positive thing. It's packed with a lot of vitamins, bro. Yeah. I just want to thank Paul for uh, shitting all over my face the other day because, uh, you know, everybody knows that that uh, put my name out there in the search engines. So. <laughs> in a game of chess, and although all of a sudden we've lured you in and it looks like you've made a good move, it was just all part of our plan in the in He's the playing chess. And checkmate, yeah. you're done. Everything works out for the good of those it's, who uh, love God. What's that saying about how you, you, can't, uh, you can't beat a chicken in a game of chess? I think that's, like, what's going on here. It just, yeah. you know, shits all over the board, kicks the pieces up in the air, and declares itself the winner. He's clearly well, playing chess with this one. telling them your secret if it was right. going so fucking well? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, if it's going so great for you... Why would you put out a video explaining it? And then all the trolls could be like, hey, wait a minute. He's yeah. right. Because if it was 1996 and there was a chance that something like this would work on an internet troll, like make them actually consider <laughs> well, going away, at, then that would seem to, that look would at seem the fucking, to be detrimental to your channel. Look at the fucking troll's computer. I think it is 1996. <laughs> right. Look at that fucking thing. Oh my God. Yeah, that? yeah, that's what it is. It's one of those old monitors it, you could bludgeon someone to death it's, with. It's all DOS based. <laughs> Shit. DOS. Yeah. Epic. Got so I just want to take a moment on. this morning to say thank you. Thank you for the thumbs down. Thank you for viewing. <laughs> um, thank you for telling your friends how crazy this channel is and how they need to check it out. Uh, because I'm so loony and stuff like that. Because you're bringing people to us. Does he uh, sound the- like he's near cr- tears to anyone else? Because <laughs> I'm so loony. He does. <laughs> thank thank lot, you for bro. telling them how crazy I am. <laughs> Thanks thank for, tell for them telling everybody what how a lunatic uh, I am. <laughs> how stupid I am and how I fucked my mother. <laughs> Thanks for telling everybody about how I fucked my mother and my sisters when I was growing up. <laughs> and how I'm just a worthless piece of shit human being. You're really helping me out in the search engines. <laughs> search engines. Oh, YouTube engines. just recognizes that as a piece of traffic. <laughs> I got 10 more viewers because of that. That was worth it. Totally worth it. It was totally worth it. Let me go blow my brain, brains out now. <laughs> uh, ministry, oh, and I thank you for that. You're playing an awesome role in uh, the plan that God has in using this ministry. <laughs> I so love. Thank you so it's much. God's plan that people shit all over this guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's God's plan. Like God's plan is God for somebody to you. come and like call you a faggot. Like that's God's <laughs> plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of God's grand design. And on Thursday, August the 14th, uh, I can has cheeseburger will say you <laughs> equals faggot. And this will advance your ministry. <laughs> <laughs> what plan is going on? <laughs> God is fucking smoking crack. It's <laughs> like, I know what I'll do. I'll help him by sending trolls his way. It's all part of my brilliant reverse 
psychology strategy to make him feel good about himself by building his <laughs> traffic by sending people who hate him to watch his content. <laughs> See, a lesser god would send supportive fans, but I'm too clever for that. I send bitter haters. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. You, you, you know, if you're an all-knowing being, yeah, you can come up and be very creative. That's what it is, a creative god. I guess so. That helps every time... by hurting him. That's, that's the whole <laughs> Every time something about doesn't that make sense. The thing you got to have working for you in order to buy into that. It's like. <laughs> yeah. I hurt you. I hurt you to help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God's like his BDSM master. And God bless each and every one of you. And I look forward to seeing your thumbs down on this video. I think we're going to answer some questions now from uh, our viewers. We're going to take a look at some of that and kind of spitball some answers. Last time we did this, we ended up just making fun of people most of the time. Yeah, most but of the time. All maybe right. this time we'll be a little more civil. Probably yeah, not. What's Hell, this guy doing? I don't know. I've never seen anything like that before. What's your smoke story? What's my smoke story? I think that's what he said. Hold on one more time. Let's see. You asked him what your smoke story is. Like, what's your first time smoking? What's your smoke story? You know, I mean, uh, I smoked a few times, but I never really got high. And then yeah. one... Do and then one time, uh, you know, I smoked with uh, my wife, and you know, I I was I was always the asshole that was like, weed don't do nothing for me. People who smoke weed are losers. Yeah, it's a waste of time. That that was very clear in your videos before I I actually was it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I I definitely had that attitude, and then um, and then finally like. My wife was the one who uh, who finally just broke it down and was like, come on, come on. And I'm sitting there, and I'm fucking smoking. I'm like, oh, God, I can't believe I'm smoking this shit again. Don't do nothing for me. Never enjoyed this. And then I, I go to set my drink down, and I tried to set my drink down on the pedal of her bicycle, <laughs> which is not a stable surf. I'm like, holy shit, why did I try to do that? That's weird. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm fucking high as a goddamn kite, and it's awesome. So after that, I was like, wow, this is great. And like, I, I went from like, I hate weed to like, I am a total stoner in like 0.2 <laughs> seconds. I'm like, oh, so this is what it's about. Now I'm going to smoke every day that I can. Anyway. Hey, 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 hey. Smoke pan every day. What about your smoke story, Ben? Smoke story like my first time ever? Or just an interesting story about smoke if the first time is not interesting. Oh, wow. It would probably be like back in high school, me and my friend, we went back behind a, a furniture warehouse and smoked. And it was it was like the end of winter, so there was a lot of melting ice like falling off the sides of the buildings and shit. And my friend thought I was making some weird noises, but it was actually like the ice falling from the side of this building. And he's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with all those fucking noises? Why do you keep making those noises? And I was like, dude, it's not me. It's it's the fucking water running off the side of that building over there. He's like, no, no, stop making all those stupid fucking noises now. And like it was it, it was a pretty stressful situation for wow. for a few minutes. Yeah, not not the not the funnest uh, situation. That's the worst high ever. Yeah. Um, Paul. The the first time I ever got really high because I think I think. Everybody has a couple of times where it's like maybe maybe people get really blown out high their first time, but like first time I didn't smoke much and so nothing much happened. Uh -oh. The first time I got mm -hmm. really high was with a, a friend of mine, and his dad had this piece um, that was like a, a you have to picture it like a lopped off hand giving the mm -hmm. bird, and that's what you smoked okay. out of. The bowl was in the palm, the carb was on the thumb. And you packed weed into a little bowl on the end of the finger. Yeah. And I got wow. it. We, we took a couple of rips off of this. And I don't know if it was just better pan than I was used to. But I spent the next fucking like 10 <laughs> hours on my friend's couch just listening to everybody as they walked by. And just like, Paul, you, you know, I want to get the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza. I'm like, yeah, pizza sounds delicious. 
yeah, that was that was the first time I ever got really high, and I've been in love with it ever since. I like how you could tell a story about you laying around on a couch, and it's entertaining. Um, <laughs> Tim, I don't even know if you uh, if you smoke, but I'm sure you probably do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. You know, not really, man. When I was a, when not I was really. a teenager, I I couldn't smoke, man. I was that guy. If I smoked, I got paranoid as shit. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And my friends hated about. that, man, because we like get ready to get, you know, get with some women or some some girls, some teen, you know, whatever. And I'd be the one that just start freaking out, like, "What's that?" And they're like, "Nothing, man. You're high." And I'm like, "No, nah, man. Something's wrong. Something's wrong." <laughs> so it took years, man, for me to like be able to smoke like a normal person. But I, I got to admit, I'm always afraid that shit's going to happen. So it's just not for me, man. Unfortunately. I got gotcha. you. I've, I've, I've had a few paranoid episodes. My paranoia is always like, even now that I live in Ohio where, you know, like amounts of weed under like three ounces or something are decriminalized. So it's not like I'd even get into some shit. But every time I get really high, I become convinced that the police are like imminently going to be breaking into my house and like, get out of fucking town! I was like, oh, my God. And, like, if I get high enough and paranoid enough, I can actually start hearing, like, every noise that happens outside. That's them getting in a fucking position. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. I'm doomed. I'm doomed. I've got, the, I've got another great weed story if we've got time. <laughs> Do Go it. Ahead. Okay. Um, I used to live with this, this guy who was a classical pianist. His name was Jonathan. He was a and- what? He was a classic, like a classical pianist. Like he played classical fucking piano. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Not a. Penis. He also had a classical penis. He yes, had, he had a clear classic penis. And we uh, ended up being roommates. And mm. he had this fucking baby grand piano shoved into this shitty little apartment that we shared. And we got high one night, and I was like, dude, my favorite classical song ever is called Allegro Barbaro and it's just basically somebody pounding on the fucking piano it's the loudest thing ever and it's like four in the morning and I'm like dude play Allegro Barbaro for me right now <laughs> and he's like right now man and I'm like now dude I have to hear Allegro Barbaro you don't understand so he gets on the fucking piano and plays a brilliant rendition of Allegro Barbaro and right at the end of it fucking knock 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 and the door was cracked so the cop just kind of lets himself in. Oh, shit. Of course. And this is in Arizona where they send you to jail. and You don't pass go. You don't collect $200. You go directly to jail. And so I'm like, holy fucking shit. And it's just hazy in the house. <laughs> and the cop goes, huh. Well, I got to be honest with you. I was not expecting this. And I was like, oh, shit, what? What you know? Because I'm I'm looking at all the weed spread out on the fucking table, <laughs> you know the 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 our pipe is just sitting there. I mean, we didn't have time to hide anything. And he goes, I honestly thought this was just going to be a radio call, but you're actually playing piano, aren't you? And and Jonathan was like, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, officer, you want to hear some? He's like, No, no, it's a little late to be playing piano, boys. Y'all have a good night. He turned around and left. <laughs> so so I know we shit on the cops a lot, but there are some cool cops out there because I know he smelled it. <laughs> I know he saw it. He could have booked us. We would have been in Joe Arpaio's jail. I don't know if you guys have ever done a story about Sheriff Joe Arpaio, but Yeah, I know, I know of him. I don't think we've he, ever done him here on the drunk. Well, at but... least one good thing came out of Arizona for you, Paul. You got the lifetime driver's license. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I'll have I'll have a driver's license till I'm seventy. So, yeah. Next question. Next question. All right, this is my fourth ah. question for the Drunken Peasants podcast. I love the Humpty Dumpty joke, by the way. That was really funny. <laughs> you remember that guy? That, that yeah, was the yeah. guy that you said looked like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> I said I said that his head looked like an egg. Yeah. <laughs> it's shaped like a like an egg. Okay. <laughs> um, my question for you guys is this. In your guys' opinion, what is the worst movie ever created? All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. You know, um, 
Transformers. It's kind of a difficult thing because a lot of times if a movie is really bad, it kind of gets an entertainment value of its own going. So Which, to me, the worst movie would have to be a movie that is so bad that it doesn't even have that going for it, that it's actually painful to watch. And for that, I would have to go with Manos, The Hands of Fate. I don't... It's, it's a yeah. B movie. It's unwatchably slow it makes no sense the plot goes nowhere the camera like the the entire movie is actually only d like all the voices for the, like the camera they shot it with couldn't actually record so, audio so all of the voices are just dubbed over by one man and one woman so is it like is it is it worse than troll 2 would you say because no, troll 2 is fun and enjoyable and like this is such a bad movie ha <laughs> uh -huh. But Manos, The Hands of Fate is just like an exercise in uh -huh. like boredom and torture because like literally like the first 10 minutes of the movie are just the two main characters driving around and nothing is happening. <laughs> like it's just continuous shots of driving and driving and driving and driving. The only thing that would be worse than that is like one of those art films where like Andy Warhol presents a seven-hour shot of the Empire State Building or, you know, some bullshit like that. That would right. be worse. But in terms of people who actually tried to make a real movie, I would say Manos, The Hands of Fate is the worst I've ever seen. Manos. The Hands of Fate. Hands it's kind of become a cult classic, but it's o only for how notoriously awful it is. Same thing with, like, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Right. But, you know, like, I would say that Plan 9 from Outer Space is a way better movie than Manos. Probably. I've, I've only yeah, ever it. seen Plan 9. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, what, what do you think? Do you think there's something worse than Manos? I, I, wish, I wish that I did have something different, but Manos is just the absolutely, in every criteria, worst film I've ever seen. It is, right? I mean, it's impossibly I mean, bad. It's impossibly bad, and, and nothing is ever probably going to beat it. I don't. I don't think anything will ever beat it. Um, I think it's a once in a lifetime, once in a once in a medium kind of fucking movie. That and is the just thing, and the bad, and the great thing about it too is it's not like one of those movies that's supposed to be bad. Like it represented someone's genuine effort to make a good movie. Well, that's kind of what I like about the so bad it's good movies too, like yeah. Troll Two and Birdemic. Um, you know, because I like that somebody sat down and was like, yeah, man, they're watching dailies of this and they're going, yeah, man, this is going to be fucking awesome. And they, they have no idea that it's terrible. The room is another good example of that. Right. Um, the room is another terrible movie, but Manos, Manos, um, transcends even that it's not so bad. It's good. It's just so bad. <laughs> it's so, so bad. Have you ever seen that, uh, Tim or Ben? No. 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 Never, never even heard of this shit. Okay. It makes me. You're, you're lucky. I'm There's making few... sure. I'm, I'm writing it down so I don't have to ever sit through that shit, though. A lot of the movies I've seen are like the so bad it's good category, like like uh, Pink Flamingos, John Waters' Pink Flamingos. That's a, like a bad movie that's kind of good with how bad it is. But I think he's doing that intentionally, though. I think so. Like, I think he knows that it's so bad it's good. And he's like one of those, those guys that just goes for that. And that, that, that doesn't usually work for most guys. I think it kind of does work for Waters. At least it did in his early career. How about, how about the Super Mario Brothers movie? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck. That's a terrible movie, too. Wow. Yeah, that's, pretty, that's pretty bad, but... But you know, it like at least it had like at least it understands how to pace a film. Yeah, it, it had <laughs> it had so many like big names in it, especially for the time that it was made. Right, Dennis Hopper, John Leguizamo. Um, what what the dude that played Mario? Uh, the guy from yeah, he was from Roger, Roger Rabbit. Rabbit and shit. Yeah. Uh, I, Bob yeah. Hoskins. Bob yeah, Hoskins. and um, so. you know, I think there might have been, I don't think that was pretty much the only name recognition in there, but but uh, um, those were like the the top three stars of the movie. Yeah, I mean, and that movie was terrible. Yes. It was really bad. Horrible. But, I mean, even that, like, e even that you can kind of watch, like, especially if you're really high, you can watch the Mario <laughs> Brothers movie and enjoy it and laugh at it and make fun of it with a friend. Yeah. They, they, it, they tried to Manos, make it... Manos transcends that. You can't sit down with somebody and watch Manos with the intention of, like... Yeah, like, we're going to make fun of this piece of shit. I can't even. Because it's just so droning There's, and I can't even unwatchable. Imagine. Yeah, it's like, you guys. I almost want you guys to watch it so you know I'll, what the f 
we're talking about I'll in terms of to... just like the pain of this movie. All right, let's go on to the next one. Sure. Next question. How's it going, Drunken Peasants? Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, what is your response to these reports who say that atheism is a religion or that atheists are secret Christians who just deny God just so they can sin? Thanks. Um, you know, like people who believe that are probably going to believe that no matter what you say. I don't even see any point in engaging with someone who's that close-minded that they don't even trust your word for what you believe. And they think you're, you're lying or part of some conspiracy or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if, if the get-go jump-off point of a conversation is you're a complete fucking liar and I believe nothing that you're going to say, there really <laughs> right. isn't a whole lot of a point carrying on a conversation beyond that. I, yeah, uh, I mean... I, I don't think that qualifies as a conversation, actually. <laughs> exactly right. You know, it's like if, if you're gonna if you're gonna start the conversation with you're a liar and I don't believe a word you say, then there's really nothing you can say at that point. Why would you even bother wasting your fucking breath? Right, right. What do it you? It sort think, of reminds man? me of like when when uh, folks who folks who don't believe that people say they're born gay. Sort of the same right. concept, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like you know. Who, who knows you better than you? Some other person is like, I know that you're really this way. It's like, no, you, you don't know about me. Right. I, I, I am the way I am, and you fucking don't know. So you're, you're you, and maybe you understand you stuff, but you don't understand me stuff because you haven't even tried to get to fucking know me. Right. 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 All right. Move on to the next one here. Josh Daniels. Josh Daniels. What's up, Drug and Peasants? Uh, my question for you guys is... Why don't you guys criticize Mormons more? Because I feel like they're the most crazy out of all the crazy ass fucking Christians. And you guys never seem to talk about them. And I'm just wondering why you don't ever say, hey, fuck Mormons. Hey, fuck Mormons. Yeah, fuck Mormons. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I mean, fuck Mormons. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel they're any more crazy than any other religion, honestly. Right. I mean, it's, it's all. I mean, you just because their religion's newer and it's based off of another religion. That's kind of how people view it, though. Like, everyone says, like, oh, Scientology. That's, like, the most batshit. It's, like, really, it's not any more batshit. It's, it's just, just more newest. recent yeah. batshit. That's all right. it is. Um, and as Tim has probably noticed by now, our audience is predominantly black women. So, <laughs> <laughs> Basically. I was yeah, wondering why he didn't tie, untie that knot in his fucking headphones. Oh, my God, you're right. That's pissing me off now that you point it out. I'm like, what the Shit. Fuck but, oh, my uh, God. That's so lazy. Just fucking. You know, I couldn't even stand that. That would piss me off. That just makes me angry to look at. Get him off the screen. You, you I'm more what? pissed off at his him for not untying his headphones than I am at Mormons. I, 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 will, I will do this, man. <laughs> Let me do this, TJ, and unveil sure. the truth about myself. All right. I ahead. was raised as a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, really? Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So, so, so it's, all, it's almost like. It's almost like uh, Prince and Michael Jackson. They were both fucking Jehovah's right. Witnesses. Yeah, well, one of them's still alive, so he still is one. Yeah, 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 yeah. true. I don't. Well, was uh, he raised? I don't even. Was he raised a Jehovah's Witness? Didn't he convert I later? I thought he converted later. Yeah, he did convert. Okay. But okay, the thing yeah, is, cool. that's why. Like when I was fifteen, I kind of took the advice of somebody similar to you, TJ, who said, "Man, you need to come out." And I kind of like said, "You know, look, I don't want to do this shit anymore," and I ended up having to leave home. So, like, I was yeah. in high school, like, living on my own because my people were definitely not cool. So, like, that's kind of the backdrop for some of that other shit, like, why I felt like, you know. Um, right. But I, I wish I would have waited till I got out of high school, but I understand yeah. what you're saying. Well, I just figured that's, why I, that's why I made sure to preface it by saying that you should really evaluate your situation <laughs> first. I wouldn't just say, like, everyone should do that because not everyone's parents are understanding yeah especially a religion like jehovah's witnesses right. you know like it's a little more extreme you, uh, you can't even take a blood transfusion right, you know? I, no it's like they disassociate you i mean i don't know if any yeah. of your listeners know about this shit but yeah it's but you know that's in the past you know me and mom we're, we're cool now but uh yeah man well, yeah and that's like that reminds me of that mormons man because like the Jehovah Witnesses didn't even let like people, black people couldn't even be it be in their religion until like 1975 or something. Ah, uh, yeah, that's kind of like Mormonism. Same with the Mormons. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's why. Originally, I mean, originally the Mormons <laughs> said that black people were black because they were being punished for being neutral in the conflict of God, uh, you know, Jesus versus Satan. 
the yeah. black people were those who who didn't take a side, and they were basically punished by yeah, that's uh, by having you know blacks. And in. then, but but then there were like white Native Americans and stuff like that too. Yeah, Mormonism is pretty fucking yeah. crazy. It's <laughs> it's fucking wackier than an episode of Doctor Who. They, I don't know. They, it's kind of up. to me though. It's kind of <clears throat> like cute wacky. You know what I mean? <laughs> kind of like funny <laughs> wacky. Not like wacky. not like scary wacky like. Uh, you know, right wing mainstream you mean Christianity the magic is. Pants and all that shit? Yeah, the magic underwear is kinda <laughs> cute. You know what I mean? The fact that they think that they're gonna people an entire planet after they die is pretty cute, you know. <laughs> That's kinda neat though. It's kind of a better like honestly, their heaven is probably the best concept of heaven I've heard. Because the Christian heaven is just like, there's like harps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's and, like, well, that's lame. And, and you're there with God, so you're like always kissing his and ass. And then the, the Muslims are like, fuck that shit. There's fucking virgin pussy up there. There's it's just like, like a nonstop orgy going on. But you only heaven. get 72 of them. I'm like, honestly, 72 virgins is not a lot for an eternity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty fucking limiting. I mean, you know. <laughs> Even if you just fuck one every 10 years, 720 years later, you fucking tapped all the pussy you got, and you got an eternity to go. So that's no good, really. But then the, the Mormons are like, fuck that. You get, your you get a whole planet where you're God. It's like, holy shit, that sounds awesome. Yeah, Joseph Smith was like, he was, he was on point with that one. Right. His heaven is probably the like, best well. ever. Endless celestial sex. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Mormon Jesus was conceived through endless <laughs> celestial sex. If it was endless, how is he ever conceived, that, though? That Mormon cartoon is fucking hilarious. Oh, it's so have good, you, dude. Have you ever seen it before? I have seen yeah. it. I've okay. Seen it. Tim, yeah. have you seen that, that no, Mormon no, cartoon? I haven't seen it. No. You got to watch that sometime. <laughs> it's it's basically it's a it's a cartoon that explains the belief of Mormons in a way that'll make you like really. It, it laugh. looks like heavy metal. It looks like it's animated by the same people that did. I'm pretty heavy sure metal. it was some like funda fundamentalist Christians who did it, but it's actually still awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, anyway, next question. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Ben, Scotty, middle-aged banana man. Oh, yeah, I stole that from Ray Comfort, TJ. Uh, anyway, I've got uh, two questions for you guys. Uh, my first no one, one likes is, your questions. Now that Ray, or uh, not Ray Comfort, now that Brett Keen has been dealt with, uh, who do you guys think will be the next arch nemesis of the Drunken Peasants podcast? And uh, my other question is, uh, what is your guys' personal opinion of G-Man? Like, uh, if you know or ignore his uh, religion and shit like that. It's kind of hard to Like, what do you guys it. think of him personally? I think he seems like a pretty cool guy. Anyway, thanks for taking my question, guys. Uh, I love the show. Keep up the good work. I, li I like how he's wearing a Pink Floyd shirt when probably, like, his grandparents listened to Pink Floyd. I'm sure he listens to Pink Floyd. <laughs> Pink Floyd is timeless. Fuck you. Go to hell. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, I love Pink Floyd. Um, anyway, uh, what was his first question again? I don't remember his first question. Oh, who's going to be the next nemesis? Well, Tim was our nemesis for a while, but it seems like he's so our friend So was Ryan now. Wiley. We, we've had a few of them. Ryan Wiley, I think, is still our nemesis, but it's like a, a cold war at this point. <laughs> it's a ceasefire. I think, ben, I think Ben should do a heel turn and become an enemy of the drunken peasants. Ooh, should that I? would be a twist. I know, right? No one would ever see that coming. Shh. Um... As for G-Man, I think we kind of already discussed our feelings about G-Man later. I mean, we all kind of like G-Man to some extent. He seems like an earnest guy. He's, he, he seems sincere. Uh, he's reasonably friendly. He's not, you know, he's not really, he doesn't really, I mean, he kind of forces his opinions on you, but it's really not in an overtly, you know, aggressive way, honestly. So. The, the few negative points I'll say about G-Man is, like, he doesn't act like a man who's almost 40 years old. And uh, he, you can explain something to him like a hundred times and he won't get it, not because he's not smart enough to get it, but because he doesn't want to get it. Right. The you willful know. ignorance. Yeah. That's always sad to see. Um, I think Paul likes G-Man too, but I'll let him speak for himself. Yeah. I mean, I, I do, but I can only, I can only handle so much G-Man. <laughs> You know, he's yeah, one of those guys. He's one of those guys that's nice every once in a while, but uh, it's the it starts to grade on you a little bit. You know, the 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 nice making 
when he thinks that you're going to burn in hell, you know, <laughs> like <Yeah>. writing. <laughs> And not only that, but, like, the fact that he turns so much towards that topic, you know? I like how right. he just proclaims himself the winner of a debate My or, favorite, or discussion. I also like the way that, like, literally trying to explain any simple concept to him. I mean, like, if he, if he wants to get the concept, he'll get it. But if he doesn't want to get it, right. then you might as well just be bashing your fucking face against a wall. Yeah. Sounds like you guys so, had a lot of conversations, a lot of debates with him. Yes. Oh yeah, we've we've been we've been through the ringer with G Man a few times. Yeah. Damn, I sounded like a dumbass when I was like, "You probably 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 never had any black people on your podcast." Right. People are like, <laughs> "Dumbass doesn't know G Man yeah. is like a fixture on this podcast." <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> well, I I don't really I never really, I didn't really I wasn't like really doing like the dumbass thing because I just figured like well he probably hasn't really seen much of the show. Oh, right. no, I'm talking about your subscribers. <laughs> right. Oh, right, yeah. I could see them being like, oh, fucking moron. You don't know right. shit. I'll tell you what, though. Like, We also had a black feminist on the show. Yes, we uh, did. Tori uh, something or another. But, yeah, G-Man awesome tries to rap, though, and it's he, he's gotten better, but he's so, like, he has the worst, like, lyrical rhythm I've ever heard from anyone. Why does he feel he, he has to rap? Is it because he's black? Does he feel he has, has to rap? Because I've seen nothing. people say he sucks <laughs> at rap. He he, he raps have... like John Cena. He's pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I I think he I think he have you ever have the... Tim have you ever heard any of G Man's rap? I heard a little bit of it. Like yeah, I got off. It, it was not yeah. I clicked yeah. off. It was bad. It was bad, dude. Yeah, it was bad. Paul, what, what were you about to say? I'm sorry. No, I I I I think Tim's on to something. I think he thinks he's like. Because he's a black guy, he's the heir to this ability to rap. And while I know people like to make <laughs> sweeping generalizations like, you know, white people have no rhythm and black people, you know, do, there are, there are exceptions to the rule. And G-Man <laughs> is one of them. Right, right. Clearly, he's one of them. And so that's why I think G-Man does the rapping. And, you know, if I were G-Man's confidant, you know, if he were to talk, I'd, I'd probably tell him on the real G-Man... Take it down a notch with the rap. Take it down. <laughs> uh, not, but you know, honestly, I will say that his that his beats, or at least the beat for his last uh, thing he did was pretty good. And he said he made it himself. He said he yeah. made it. He said he made it himself. I, I mean, I'm assuming he's telling the truth. I don't want to assume he's a liar. No. But you know, uh, if he really did make it, which I believe he probably did, if he said he did, then I, I would say that was actually pretty good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the rap itself. Was he needs not a better too mic too. Uh, you know, I don't know if that would help in his case. I think he just needs to stop. <laughs> All right. He'd Good sound more to... clear, but he'd still suck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just higher definition suckage. And, and, you you know, and I don't mean to team up on the guy because I don't know him, but I did hear the rap, dude. It wasn't good, so that's... We're not even, I mean, look, we're not even being mean right now. It's just a fact that his rap sucks. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No human being with, like, the ability to hear and recognize music would listen to that and be like, this is good. I see the, uh, the troll G-Man in the chat room. Is... It's not the real G-Man. <laughs> he's but... upset. <laughs> he's he's talking he's talking crap about your rap battle that you're gonna have with G Man, uh, yeah. T T J and G Man are gonna have a rap battle. Yeah. It's Even gonna... though I'm I'm white as a fucking <laughs> sheet of paper. Hey hey hey, that's racist. Hey, Eminem yeah. is white. Eminem can rap. Uh, that's true. He can. Not just not um, just Eminem. There's a lot of good rappers out there that are you know. Yeah, white. you're you're right. I'm I shouldn't stereotype, but I I am white. Not only on the outside, but on the inside. You are very white. You are very yeah. exactly. I'm white through and through, so there's no rap ability anywhere in me. But I still think I can beat G-Man. I'm pretty confident <laughs> of that. Damn. All right, next one. All right. Why is he wearing a towel on his head? Okay. Racist. Mouth okay. breather. Yep. What's he doing? I don't know. What's that's it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All, right, All right. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Duncan Peasants, my second question for you is, what's the dumbest thing you've ever said on YouTube? Uh, I went on YouTube with a towel wrapped around my head and breathed really loud. And then no, Ben. The camera like, ben, uh, the dumbest thing you ever said on YouTube was when you were drunk that one night 
and you kept asking, you kept trying to refocus the debate that that G Man and Dusty were having to the same point that had already been discussed like several times before. You're like, and you kept explaining the situation. Like every like ten minutes, Ben was like, let's 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 let's, let's get back to the point here. This all began. This all began when. When Dusty, when G-Man said that he supports slavery, and Dusty said no, and then Dusty said that any, the Uncle Tom is anyone who did, and that was, you know, and that's, and we need to talk about that, you know? And I'm just sitting there like, Ben, just, just let me take it. I'll take it from here, Ben. I'll take it from here. You're, you're not good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I was talking, I was talking gibberish later on. I don't know what the stupidest thing I've ever said on YouTube is, but I, I think the uh, you you did kiss fake Sagan on YouTube. Well, that's not really <laughs> saying anything. Um, no, but probably the, I would say the, the at least from the audience perspective, me insulting soccer was probably the most pissed off anyone got. Really? Yes, yes I lost. 2,000 subscribers for, uh, for insulting Shit. soccer. Wow. Shit. Shit. I yeah, love I made, soccer, by the way. Well, I'm, I do not, and I made a video about it years ago. And this, this is literally when I only had, like, I don't know, I didn't even, I think I had, like, twenty or 30,000 subs, and I lost 2,000 of them in one fucking day because I fucking <laughs> insulted soccer and basically said it was boring. Um... And soccer fans apparently do not take that sort of dissent well, I guess. <laughs> they don't even like it when you call it soccer. No, they were pissed that I even called it. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's football. Football. Right. Football. And they call American football hand egg. Well, well, can I add something here? Yes. I think the dumbest thing I probably said was probably in response to you when I said, oh, if I'm a, are you going to call me a ho, then you a hell of a fo, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Taking that shit up right there, that, that was pretty stupid. Yeah. <laughs> At least you know that, though. People liked it, though. I, well, I'm, I mean, it's entertaining. I like it, 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 it when you call them the amazing analyst. Oh, yeah. Analyst. And then you but said, because he examined That your actually ass. applied to the, to the argument. Right, that's true. And he even made he. I remember him even specifying like not analyst, analyst, because he examines your Takes asshole. Your asshole and he, he, he magnifies <laughs> your asshole. In it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I think we're out of questions, and um, I I need to get going. So I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap the show up here. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, unless Ben has anything else on the agenda no, no, before we need we to got. go. Okay. Any uh, Tim or Paul? Any either? Of you guys want to say anything before we uh, we say good night yeah, here? Yeah. Feel free to say anything you want. Uh, no. Just thanks for having me, guys. As always, yeah. it was a it was a blast. Oh, we, we we fucking love you, Paul. I know that we give you some shit with our little contests and such, but <laughs> like we honestly just love the fuck out of having you on the show. Yeah. And well, Tim, you were a great guest as well. Thank you so much for dropping by. We really appreciate it. I'm hey, glad man, I, that it wasn't uh, the uh, the contentious bout that everyone wanted it to be. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed having you on as well. Hey, uh, man, I want to say thank you again, and thanks for telling people not to flag my channel. I appreciate that, and uh, yeah. that was very Christian of you, sir. Yes. <laughs> well, I am I am a devoted... My, my true... Per, the, the Amazing Atheist is just Lance an internet persona. Sloan. My real persona, my real person that I am, Lance Sloan, Yes. is a devout Christian who believes in Jesus That's and loves true. him. That's uh, true. Uh, all 